We ain't come to play, we don't run no way We gon' elevate, watch us elevate Thank you. 
Alexander from Paris, France, the city of love. Je m'appelle Alexandre Asheron Maya. I will be your host for the EMEM Master Spring 2024. This is a lovely studio, but I can't be alone. So let's introduce the desk for today. I have the most French person alive, Aragon and well, Aesthetics. <laughs> well, my name is Aragon and I am feeling fantastic. <laughs> it's bad, man. We take bets seriously. <laughs> Wait, that's French Batman, surely. <laughs> that's the It's me. true. How is it not? I mean, you did, you did well Wait, it needs following to be more up. more like a cake. If I yeah. to be like that. Okay. You are not expecting this, but out of the blue, we keep bets really seriously. And I promised Edagon something yesterday. You recall? I do not. Was Refresh it coffee? Me. It wasn't coffee, was it? Croissant. A croissant. I eat a oh. croissant in a berry. Wait, we get them for breakfast. There's like six of them. What's the point? Hey, I got you a croissant. Yuck. I am feeling the Paris vibes now. And I know. Oh, do I get one too? Grumpy and you have something else. Oh, I'm cutting. The so cameraman. That's, oh. cameraman. <laughs> Here's proof. We have what a croissant. Is it? Wait, no, this is actually. Oh. Let me get a bite. No, don't <laughs> what? <laughs> do I not eat it now? It's it's on me. I yeah, apologize. It's clear, it? I I apologize. I it's on France. me. I didn't expect this. Hang to on, happen. bring the camera back. I want to <laughs> say how much don't. I love France. France is goated. France is goated. I really like France this so is goated. Everyone's yeah. so friendly. So yeah. And they have good. Let's be honest. And Jim is amazing. And Amy <laughs> Masters is amazing as well. So let's move on with the show. We got to know the desk, but who's casting? Who's screaming? Who's going to bring us all the action-packed Michael Bay inside of some of Rift? Games, it's going to be initialized and Solari. You're looking lovely today, Solari. We are looking pretty fabulous. I love oh, he's you're looking he didn't fantastic. say we, he didn't say you guys. I, I, I genuinely preempted. I thought he was gonna say me too, and he just, just, just <laughs> left me on You know what? I'm gonna pick myself. I look lovely today. It's great. I think I also made Aragon look fantastic. I think you did. I did. You did a good job. Work. Thank you for following through on that one. You Adam. took it off. No worries. I did take it off. What the hell? The deal was first Why? five minutes. It's true. He, he's committed at least as far as I needed him to, so that's fine. <laughs> How are you feeling, Solari? I'm feeling amazing. I'm feeling fantastic today. Finally, where I belong, you know? Oh, finally. You were there yesterday. Yes. Yeah, but it was with oh, you, mate. It's different know? with you. <laughs> Something oh, just happens. Obviously not with, the, with the right caster. That's fun. <laughs> so we already know the casters. We already know the desk as well. <laughs> but are they good enough? Let's test them out. Desk, are we ready? Oh, we're ready. For a game of... To play. Guess who? Uh. Pixel Edition. So this is quite simple. We will show up a video of something that is pixelated and zoomed in as well. Slowly oh, no. it will zoom out and it will get some focus. You will have to raise your right hand to take a guess. No, the left. I won't take the, the left as an option. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> raise a hand, I, I don't know, raise a cross line. I I you do you. So let's start with the first one. As we go along, mm. okay, okay. I will give you clues of who's there, of what is there, of uh, what item, what mob, what anything. The first one, let's kick it off. Guess My who Halloween. Pixel? Who is it? Oh yeah, the ocean. Uh, <laughs> yes, Edagon. Aesol. Aesol, that's a oh. point for Edagon. Okay, so I didn't leave. even need to bring in the clue. Uh, I'm sorry to be so silly. I thought it could be like the ocean or something. <laughs> it could be, but... I love how we're still going. Hell what the yeah. Just now to we show you, know. okay? We went through the trouble of making this. Thank you, production, by the way. This is our and so you get this three is a bang points. Cool idea, cool idea, I will this say. Cool. Oh, this is only the beginning. Let's oh. hit for the second one. And he shouted out, he's gonna raise his hand. Who is this one? Yes. Gangplank. How? Captain Gangplank. How? No. How is this possible? No, you no way is that Captain Really? Yeah. I I, I have no idea this, How did you this get would that? happen. <laughs> that's actually you Gangplank. Absolute nerd. Can you give something that's not in a solo lane? Hey, look. I hit me with anything. I got this. I spent 30 minutes making clues. Okay. Let me use them. Okay, but next one. I don't need them. <laughs> next, next one. I gotta, it is I gotta guess now. I'm You're sitting at six now. points. This is this is not how the game is supposed to go. <laughs> Third. Oh my god. <laughs> Third me... one, please hit it. I'm choking on my croissant. Okay. Do you like to play piano? Uh, I'll test your memory. Uh, yes. Is it gin? Because no. it's something musical. I take this after gym every day. Wait. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even I let you have one, by the way. I but, didn't put my but hand. But it was so it. pixelated, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> Wait, what? did you get it on the first pixels? Yeah, the so cap I can't the believe you got the Captain Gangplank. That's insane. Yeah, that, it was I, only like, pitch black. That was literally just could be anything. That could literally be like you know Tom <laughs> Nine Cruise. Nine points go for the uh, Edagon. Have uh, we got more? Yes, we have five. I, I'm going to try my best to make sure you can come back. Yeah, can okay. I go first? Let's I'll go for the reverse sweep with five. I need to go first. The fourth one, hit it. 
I can go AD and AP. Ooh, this Let's one, play dodgeball. Sure on Do you know what this is? No, I'm no, annoying. No, yeah. Listen to oh. my clue. Oh, is, uh, yeah, yeah, is it Rex? Okay. No, no, no. No, it's Jinx. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, you can have that. Uh, can I have it? <laughs> Who is it? I said Jinx. It's a Jinx. But I did correct myself, so. <laughs> You said Rexai. <laughs> well, where are you seeing Rexai in that color palette, bro? The bro, cool bro. thing is, it was not supposed the to be Jinx. So the cool stuff to <laughs> it's actually Jinx. He has 12 points. Uh, uh, last one. Wait, wait, wait. Before Hang we on. hit it. I didn't get that. I said it first. Before we hit the last one, the last one is worth 15 points. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is silly. Anyone can win. Anyone mm -hmm. can win. This game is uh, unpredictable. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Listen for the last one, and I'll give my clues yet again. I can go AD and AP. Yes. Oh god. No. Fuck. Talk more. No way. <laughs> no way. Dude, I like this oh, game. Oh, I thought like the this game. News. I like this game. We should do it again. The last, Run it back. The last clue would be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm done with this. Oh, back again. <laughs> hey, you owe me another croissant. Oh gosh. Yeah, you have mine. <laughs> it's not even a cluster. I know, but it's close. Well, with the perfect score of way too much, Eragon, you took the game out. It, it, well, you participated. I got one right. I think I played a bit too much Loldal. I think that helps a little bit. But 100%. Think, like, this is, this is, I, I'm I think so he scared. Des he deserves the win. Well, I do believe you guys are aware of what is happening on EMEA. You know mm -hmm. the champions, you know everything, but do you know the groups? Do you know how it went as well yesterday? Today is a day two for group stage, which means we will have some teams moving on, the top two from each group. We have four groups and the bottom two, well, they're gone. You miss, you're gone. That's easy. That's EMEA Masters. So let's see. What happened in the first day? Shouldn't we just? Man. Any big, big surprises? I mean, we have a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> you want to start or should yeah. I? Just I mean, I'll, I'll take it away. I think there's so many big surprises. I think Group D is super interesting with the mm. one-two ties all the way across the board. I think a lot of people maybe thought Gentlemates were a dark horse and mm -hmm. maybe they go in second at the very least. But True. seeing all the one-twos across the board is really surprising alongside Heretics. Lost Heretics going one-two, almost zero-three. I think we saw yesterday. They really they could have lost, I think, against Zero Tenacity. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, there was a lot of time when they should have lost against yeah. Zero Tenacity mm. on that note as well. Um, I'll just say it. I know we're going to talk about it in a bit, but the Arabian League's big surprise right now, doing yeah. really well. Uh, I was just reaching out to Nigma Galaxy 2 head coach series, and he was like, actually, we kind of ratted against uh, Gasones. I said that correct? You did it. You did it. Gasones. Um, yeah. But yeah, like they should be 3-0 and zero by their standards as well. So yeah. uh, right now they, they feel like, you know, maybe the best team in the group, which is a surprise with BDS Academy in there as well. So... Again, Arabian League actually just kicking ass, taking names at the moment, which is huge. 100%. And then you look into Ultra League, for instance, Zero Tenacity, Zero Three. Yeah. A team that built yeah. up specifically to, to surpass EMEA Masters. I, I just want to say something. Gladly, we have Solari here, so we can have yeah. some representation. Oh, ultra, ultra, yeah, not doing very well. Yeah, yeah. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I mean, I, I, they were the me. team that adapted so well to the lane swaps with, exactly. with Milonix, you know, his uh, Cheese Udia proxy into going down. It was really smart, yeah. I was so, super smart. I think they had the best adaptation. We saw Orbit Anonymo try and handle lane swaps. It wasn't pretty, but Zero Dynasty of the entire day, I think they did it the best. Yeah, I mean, from what we saw on stream, I think their transition in mid game and like they're fighting around neutrals, their setup wasn't there. I think yeah. that was something we kind of noticed sure. and saw that. Um, and I know that'll be broken down as well, but like here on the second day, it's kind of annoying when you see, you know, so many good teams like bringing out lane swaps yeah. and other teams are like, man, we can't really adapt. I think Zero Tenacity actually had the best adaptation we saw yeah. on the English broadcast yesterday to lane swaps. It's just a shame that Zero Tenacity. What happened to the leads? That's the thing. Well, yeah, it went down. Disappeared. Just are, you trying to, are you trying to get me to talk smack while Solari's <laughs> out here? Just like talk smack in Ultra League? No, me. I couldn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what happened yesterday? Might as well take a quick recap Ooh. of every single match we had on stream we as well. Here. And I'll I'll let you folks talk about it because yeah, I want sure. to get your opinion. Um, this is obviously the 3-0, you know, group at the <laughs> yeah. moment for Eintracht. Like, a really, really good start. I think as well, you know, Zanzara's flip around. Because remember, this was the time, this is where we got the, the Kaiser Leona mm -hmm. topside early. This was actually a lane swap yes. game. Um, yeah, so we got shown that we can have other duos that can lane swap. And I think more importantly that, you know, uh, the early game for Eintracht is really, really solid. I don't know what you want to say on this Aragon, but I, I think this is a really good game to start no, with. Absolutely. I mean, they're just dominating the group. I think they have the most wins of any team in the tournament right now, Eintracht Spandau. And I'm yep. kind of a little bit surprised because I didn't think they were that dominant. They were pretty decent in the finals, but still doing really well, surprising. Uh, really, really. I mean, Zanzara on these early ganks, finding the angles on the Rek'Sai was really impressive. Yeah, great. I think as well, uh, Power of Evil had a really, really good game in the Azir. Yeah. Again, a bit of a legacy player. So... Kind of nice to see. I know for Lions Creed, you yeah. know, in the cast yeah. time, 
I, initialize was really loving this. I need to yap about this. I think Go for it. Banderas, Who? he did Banderas. Banderas. He did so <laughs> damn well in the early game, finding that solo kill when he really shouldn't have. It was against a full our first item, uh, Renekton, yeah. into walking down, knowing there'll be a skirmish, hold, and not even having to TP, finding a triple kill. This kind of blew up in the entire game because then he could just face check for free. As you said, blew up the entire game because all that pressure in the only lane yeah. that was mm -hmm. working for gentle mates was then taken away. And then there were a couple of moves like bot side when there was double TP or there's a TP commit for Herald, over commit from Lion's Creed. Like yeah. gentle mates then go for the invade, overextend there, punish well. Another moment here where the, the chase and follow after they overcommit on the on the Kasate because every single fight they were overcommitting onto this Kasate using yeah. so many ultis. I think there was such a there was a really really cool that Vi ultimate right there through yeah. the Azir wall knockback to mitigate the CC. But in general, just like you're saying, this Banderas, this was uh, against their bridge, and the problem was Banderas. Banderas. The the Kasate was too tanky for the scaling of the Zeri and the Azir. They could never come online in time, and he was always able to face and just walk into River when whenever he wanted to. Yeah, it's such a sick game. Uh, really good Kasate performance, and again, kind of stifled. Gentle mates early game. Like, this was a team, even though it's LFL third seed, LFL has a higher reputation. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a big finish. Then SK versus uh, KC Corp. Ooh. This was the game of the day. It was interesting. The start from finish, it went yeah. around the clock and then it ended on a weird way. Yes. Yeah, so, the entire, like, so they had a very early game focus yeah. team competition, KC Blue did. But the scaling of SK Prime was crazy. Yeah. The thing is, though, uh, KC Blue played side lane so well that they stalled out the game despite not being able to 5v5 for a solid 20 minutes, right? They just absolutely held on to the game. There was loads of times when Vladi on the Azir was threatening the end, and then you just have this beautiful engage. Team fights like this is why SK Prime won. Oh, I mean, this was so nice, especially from the Zac that went 0-3 yeah. early. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, again, that lane swap that came through didn't go well in the early game. I think we need to kind of label as well that Poppy was a mega pick against yep. this draft where I really like SK Prime's draft running into KC and that's how they were able to stall it out. I think that's how they were able to find so many successful team fights in a row as well. Yeah. I mean, commiserations to KCB. I just think Vladdy deserves a shout out. He does, he does. The damage he did, I remember the, the, the damage graph, he was doing so much yeah. more than anyone the entire damn game and he was their only win condition on the sideline. Even though he had such a big goal, yeah. like the gold lead on Kalista, but moving on into the next game, oh, what can this game, game this one, this yeah, this one was so me. fun. Yeah. I wish I was casting this game because seeing the Darius <laughs> pick, I was really hesitant about it because it was huh. a composition where it was kind of hard to stack. There weren't a bunch of melees that you could just wail on and a bunch of CC. So seeing him lock it, I was a bit hesitant, but it was Jack's plank. He loves Darius. He finds, a, uh, he leashes level one, finds a solo kill on the bounce back with the ghost, which was super impressive. And unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. His irons are falling. And again, uh, you know, another part of the game that kind of went wrong here because Boostgate found themselves through early game. Uh, yeah. Let's let's kind of label Napkyung had a really good laning phase yep. because of Chef, you know, the yeah, volley exactly, games yeah. that knocked down the, the Vega. I know you and I were talking about this in rehearsal because Slow Q didn't get a chance to play the laning phase and actually slow down time for the yeah. Vega. And one of the biggest parts was like the rest of the map was melting as well. The Darius ends up yep. getting counter solo killed by Tang Yung. The bottom side was going well for Boostgate as well. And uh, it's really sad to see because Desire were being hyped up coming into this matchup considering they did start with a win. Then falling behind yeah. there kind of showed us why uh, that comp was a little bit volatile. Yeah, absolutely. And in this game, the last one, I don't know if it was the last one or not, but Gasonis, I think we it saw was. what Gasonis are. Yeah. They are a team that drafts losing lanes, loses early, and then they are really damn good at team fighting. But I feel like that's a limitation um, when you're so one dimensional. Yeah. This the, the amount of gold lead that Supermassive got and then throw through the, it took one team fight in the end and one kick. Uh, from Skeens mm. to turn them around the entire team comp. And they managed to lose uh, Gosonis with Hextech Soul, which is so rare. Oh my God, it's more rare considering, as you said, like it was like a 6k go. gold disadvantage they had as well. And yeah, this Beautiful. is a team fight. The Skeens kick was there huge. It is. You know, you'd call it a bit of a wombo as well. And I think, you know, Supermassive finding the win there was quite a big deal. Now, this Best was actually game. the last one. And this yeah. is the one you this want to talk about. This was the last one. Uh, All right, so there this you is go. your moment. This is your, yeah, your this moment. This is beautiful, right? The, the tech from Melonic to deal with lane swaps where he goes top, sneaks in, right, dodging all the wards and the players into dying and proxying a wave to delay the tower plating uh, trade on the other side of the map. He insta runs down bot because mm -hmm. of how low death timers are. He can join in on dive down bot. I think if he dies here, he can maybe get a faster recall because he wouldn't give over a kill. True. Run top and potentially be level three um, or level two and survive a gank up there as well and be able to secure CS. But still, really, really nice adaptations. And this is the early game we were talking about. It, it, was, a, it was a good early game. And that early game adaptation, unfortunately, didn't lead in mid game. Like yeah. team fighting started to come out from, from Heritage and like props to Carlson who had such a good Zach game as well, such a good return after starting 0-3, yeah, yeah. like another 0-3 starting a, a Zach as well. And yeah, just finding some of the really good team fights, uh, Certus as well on Orianna, some clean mechanics and I think Zero Tenacity kind of 
realize that they were losing yeah. ways to push the game ahead and actually stagnate. I just want to highlight uh, Jack Spectra. He is so good that on this too, Aphelios. Yeah. He always tanks uh, Callista Draven bans every single time. He takes so much in draft resources, but still finds like some kind of hyper carry to be able to play. Yeah. Um, he he just 1v9s every single time. It's, it's not much more to say. He's an insane any carry. I mean, again, he's already LEC caliber. He's just yeah, man. trying to find his way back. Exactly, he's trying to find his way back, and this is the perfect stage to do so. But imagine I'm a solo queue player, and I look into this sort of competition. I'm like, what is happening? Why is everybody lane swapping? These picks as well. If I find this on my solo queue, I'll probably throw my PC out of the window. Yeah. So uh, I need to understand better what is happening and how can we deal with this on the second day? I think this is important. Or get into challenges. That's a start. Get out of gold. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you I... mean? <laughs> Sorry, you probably want more. You probably want more than that. But yeah, get better at the game. I'm also projecting. But yeah. Edagon, <laughs> go on. Hit me. Explain to me Explain. how this lane swap and priority is working right so now. Okay, so the reason why you do it is to dodge out in bad matchups, either in top or bot, right? And ensure scaling, usually on a champion like Jinx, right? And that's why she has 100% presence. Yep. Um, you take her top, and that way you can trade platings. Usually you'll be down a plate or so. Um, and that is why she has 100% presence, because she's so damn adaptable. She can be played in front of back team compositions, reset compositions, uh, lane swap potential. Um, and that way you dodge out on potential kill lanes like... Callista Varus, you know, Callista Nautilus, et cetera. And we're in a game state as well where range is actually really, really important. It's yeah, something that's okay. been talked about a lot. Like we're getting a lot of Azir Orion. I mean, we're getting a lot of team fighting comps as well where, you know, one big burst engage sets the, sets the tone. Jinx plays really well off resets as well. That's, you know, something that yeah. we talk about a lot with Jinx. Really hard three item power spike as well. Like one of the best create 80 carries in the game. Yeah. And there's a lot of versatile supports that can pair up. We can get things like engage supports paired up. Enchanters as well go really well with us. So... I know this comes to the point of Jinx, mm -hmm. but like when, you know, scaling in the game right now is being looked at with yeah. very big eagle eyes, then it makes sense that Jinx is 100% priority. I think a really big thing is like if you look at a lot of the rest of the prior picks with the Vi, with the Nautilus, with the or, uh, Talias and stuff like this, they're all single target bursts, yeah. which okay. just ensures the uh, the reset that comes through, which is why other reset champions are fantastic as well, like Ari, right? That They all work so damn well with Jinx, mm. um, and that's why she's so priority. I wonder if we're going to see more like anti-engaged champions come through that answer, uh, potential dive stuff like the Lissandra into the Ari. You know, we saw Vigar already come True. through like one into the Ari, and I think that's absolutely, you just box in the dive. Uh, I wonder on this note as well, with all the lane swaps we're having, and I think the success that's kind of shown the surprise if Jinx starts getting banned more, like we're, we're not yeah, actually exactly. looking at it. It's a bit glass half empty just saying, well, you know, Jinx gets through. And it's been first pick in a lot of these games. Yeah. We're looking at the drafts, especially from the Arabian League. First pick Jinx. It's been yep. happening a lot. I yeah. want to talk about that then. Let's talk about the Arabian League because we didn't Do get you. to see them yesterday, mm -hmm. but we're going to get a pick on today. And how are they doing so well? I want to understand more about that. So what about starting with the uh, Geek case? Yeah, uh, I mean... <laughs> I was so impressed. We were watching the VODs uh, yep. backstage. I believe Geek is the team with Boda and uh, Aurelia. Or yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was super damn impressive. But yeah, as you can see the drafts here, front to back team compositions mm -hmm. with Lulu Jinx. It's super standard for the tournament right now. You just lane swap away from potential bad matchups and you just base race uh, and secure the scaling on the Jinx and you have the Scion as well. I think you have to stop banning Jinx or taking away the Scion. Some teams um, ban away on red side Scion so that you don't have the okay. best lane swap potential champion in the game as well. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like kind of remembering the game we saw backstage. <laughs> I was giving you time. <laughs> I, I, like, I was like, uh, I was like, hang yeah. on a minute. I'm like, I'm getting confused between the teams because when we went backstage, we're yeah. watching this. You know, again, yeah. Jinx priority lane swap that uh -huh. came through in another poppy mega pick game as well. Um, but we're also looking at the Aurelia game too. But <laughs> yeah. I just want to say, like GK Esports, mm -hmm. you know, again, another team that is adapting to this lane swap meta, and I, I think a lot of the better teams mm -hmm. are doing it because they realize that the teams like Pajiktas and uh, other like mid-tier teams at the tournament haven't prepped for it or just aren't in a state where they understand yeah. what's going on. That's really interesting for, because some teams finished their placements or, or their tournaments a long time ago. And yeah, like, for this like we talked about this with Ultra League. They hadn't played for a, a month. month ago. Yes, exactly. And, and there were no hints of lane swaps. Then. Lane swaps only came in the past half month where uh, NIP and the LPL were doing yeah. it in Screams. And got it really leaked. blew up, right? All yeah. of a sudden. You and then the G2 LEC. started enacting it. And then that's like proof of concept, you know, mm -hmm. when LEC bring it on a main stage in the upper bracket final. And people are like, actually, this works. And yeah. it can. And then it's LCK, sort of, then it's everyone. That's right. right. And now I think we see a little bit too mm -hmm. much sometimes yeah. <laughs> um, where, you know, you could just play the lane out uh, standard. Bit. So this was the Bong team, right? Uh, so I have to I, correct. I, I told you, yeah. I told you that GK it's, top later was Bodo. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's I just, Bong. I just mixed them up in my <laughs> head. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Bong, I mean, throwback to him. 
Bin versus Bong, World's Play-ins. Yeah, I Rainbow mean, Seven. You can't not mention it. I mean, he goes from top play-ins teams and now he's just destroying ERLs. Through, like, yeah. Absolutely. Funny yeah. style on game, but still yeah, like yeah, <laughs> great okay, role sure. player too. But yeah, I think uh, uh, you had a point on Giyu though, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people come in, uh, again, talking to series, uh, coach of Nigma Galaxy, yeah. and he was saying that at the moment, like, Giyu is a person who's mm -hmm. on a redemption arc because he was hyped up as, like, you know, one of the best players, not only in the region, but maybe in, like, minor regions as well, mm -hmm. uh, to paraphrase. So <laughs> this is a guy that's, like, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, like, Arabian League faker, but <laughs> but again, he, he's really hyped up and he's a, he's a big talent in the scene. So it's not only this team, we also have Nigma on the other side yeah. that uh, yeah. actually brought us a big surprise yeah. yesterday and we actually have a revenge matchup today for them, yeah. or even the enemies. So Nigma, we need to talk about them because it seems like Arabian teams are sharing in terms of uh, gameplay between them, <laughs> not only in terms of champions, as we take a look into this one, even though I get to see the Jarvan there, yeah. the Atrox is, is the staple one, but there we go, the Jinx, the Jinx, the Jinx. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a so, surprise, yeah, they're definitely sharing. One. Is that from <laughs> yeah. Arcane? It, it does seem like this region <laughs> loves their lane swaps, right? We yeah. also watched another game from Nygma, I believe, where it was like Boda on Aurelia, and that was super Counter interesting. Pick. Which yeah. it's, it's, it's very different because you play full for topside in that regard yep. compared to just lane swapping and playing mm -hmm. for the Jinx gold in the economy. Um, so having having Boda on some kind of weak side pick uh, is, is a very stark contrast, which shows they're adaptable, right? Yeah, they're yeah, not yeah, just yeah. playing one style every single time. It's versatile. I mean, a further to your point as well, the fact that again, you know, we saw so stark contrast of playing towards topside and playing for bot. Yeah. It kind of shows that, you know, yeah, the Arabian League is uh, better than a lot of people expected. And I just guess. on that note as well, like when again talking to series, had a lot of talks to series. Um, he was saying, like, you know, now they've kind of gone from, well, having limitations on the region where they can only have, you know, a couple of imports to now getting the same limitations to the rest of the regions where they're kind of charging up. And I, I feel like the Arabian League now is starting to be looked at a little bit more seriously, only because of, not only because of the start of their performance, but the players and the quality that they've been able to pull on their rosters. It's too. ramping up. It is ramping up and very quickly too. Well, might as well look into the schedule to understand what's the menu for today so we can take a peek at those two teams that we just discussed about because we have some interesting matchups <laughs> and I want you folks to pick me the match of the day as one mm. is eating and the other one is it's glancing. Cool. Gentlemen, we'll take on Lions Creed to begin the day just as we had yesterday. This is a matchup that we're going to rewatch and see what happens. Editex will take on the Sixth's Esports, then Papara Supermassive versus BDS Academy. Carmen Carp Blue will take yet again SK Gaming Prime and then BDS Academy versus Nigma Galaxy. And to wrap it up, the Sixers Esports versus Geek K Esports. It's good that we actually get a Arabian League today. I know <laughs> yesterday we didn't get to see any, so we get to yeah. show that on broadcast today. Yeah. Like we, we've been talking about it and finally people get to see it for themselves too. And remember again, as you said, match of the uh, match of the week, but match of the day, Enigma <laughs> Galaxy and BDS Academy yes. is there because that'll decide who to actually tops the group by the end of the day, if all things continue with success in these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. I think that entire last three block of games is super sad. Good, you have yeah. the Arabian League, the French League, like there's so many high tier games right there. I think also the first game of the day is pretty intense in That's terms of standings much. because that group is entirely 1-2, yep. right? And last time we saw Gentlemates with Lions Creed, there was a bit of an upset with Lions Creed actually went out against Gentlemates. So True. of these two, you'd expect them to be top two and actually go through. So can we show uh, the standings yet again? We saw at the beginning of the show, but for those folks who just arrived, well, welcome to EMEA Masters 2024 Spring, but also to take a peek as how they are. And now after saw, seeing the, the menu, look at Lion's Creed 1 and 2, just as you pointed out, and Gentlemen says 1 and 2 as well. So I think for day two, it's about who adapted better in terms of mentality yeah. and then what coach was capable of getting a better draft for yeah. today. Just want to drop something in here. That was, that was super interesting. I saw on Twitter um, this morning, actually, it was the coach for a French team. Uh, mm. Shout out to him. He said, power of evil has become an absolute menace in scrims recently. Like, oh, he's yeah. so hard to deal with for Ein Spandau. Um, and they're already 3-0, you know. There's a, I think there's a world we just see a 6-0 Ein Spandau going into playoffs. Oh. Um, and just because of off the back of Power Evil and how well he's doing. They do look the strongest in the group from what we've seen in the VODs too, so I could see that coming through. I mean, again, they might be the only 6-0 at the end of the day, depending mm -hmm. on what happens for, I think it's GK is also turning 0 in the yeah. top of their group A. Yeah. But yeah, that would that would put a statement on and I don't know. I don't think people would be expecting them to come in like Prime League being strong. A lot of people are like, watch out for LFL. Uh, watch out, what's what's the other league we're really scared about? Yeah, uh, Prime Super League. Superliga. Yeah, Superliga. Superliga. Well. Yeah. Like people said that, but no one Lost told me anything. Ethics, probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no one told me anything about Prime League, dude. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> German representation. So, I want to make a test for both of you. Ooh. Not only that, but... Is it more food? Because I'll tell you what, this was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. 
for a goal. <laughs> Not only that, but I have to give the prize to Aragon. I forgot about that one. Okay. Why? Because of the game. Pixel oh. who? So I noticed you wear glasses. I do wear glasses. I brought you another pair. Give me them. From France. Yeah, from flag. If I take off the ones I'm wearing now, I won't... How do I open this? I think I need a pair of scissors. Production! <laughs> what do you mean? Just rip it. You yeah, go gym rip, rip, every rip. day. <laughs> oh, true, actually. Oh, there is... They, they, I Damn, can't. if I knew what we were fighting for, I would have tried harder. But the problem is... <laughs> <it's, laughs> Do I put them over the top of my regular ones? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. Double vision. <laughs> I'm fashionable. They right? are stylish. You know, they caught, they sort of suit your vibe, but I'm wearing them. That's so. okay. Hey, you earned them. Thank you. So what I'm going to make the test. The test. Okay. <laughs> I can look at you. <laughs> the go test on. is mostly about how can we adapt from yesterday to today. In your opinion, when you're looking to champion select, what is the priority in terms of removing away and bringing in? We both agree on Jinx ban. Jinx Hell ban yeah. is the okay. adaptation for today. Scion, uh, alternatively, but I think yeah. Jinx is just even better. Another one as well. Uh, I think you know the Zac adaptation. Maybe in like second phase, yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of teams have resorted to like R four, R five. After seeing the lane swap, after seeing the B one Jinx of picking up something like Zac, which can halt yeah. off dives. The amount of hilarious dives we've seen, and you and I doing VOD reviews and looking at the, at the yeah. Zac being like <laughs> the anti dive king, yeah. halts and stagnates a lot of these. Uh, you know. The tempo swap comps. Yeah. So I think a Zach is another one. Is there anything else that we've missed? I think uh, I would probably, I mean, personally, right, this might not be a great take, but I don't like Udyr. I think uh, this ah, champion is... I don't think uh, anyone well, likes Udyr, bro. But isn't Udyr one of the only champions that is capable of doing what he did yesterday? He has the option of doing that. that but he falls late game. But, and he's a great level one, but he's just such a blob when it comes to the, any kind of skirmishing okay. post like level nine, right? It's but, so miserable. Bro, I mean, Sion can do that as well after a couple of cues. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not as... Tempo right. heavy is Udia with wave clear, but I think there's other champions that do yeah. it too. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think the biggest one is Jinx though. Like, is, it, is the best. And then I want to see what happens when Jinx is other meta. Do we still get lane swaps? You know, with other champions. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Or do we get standard laning, which is what I want. I want regular League of Legends. I don't know about you. Oh, that I would be dumb. lovely. Are you sick of lane swaps? I am done yeah. with lane swaps. Really? Absolutely. I think it's great for the game. I mean, we're going to get it at MSI. <laughs> So well, to it. it's a test, but today we're testing on day two for group stage. We know only eight teams will pass through and eight teams will be promoted to spectators and will join you on chat. Hmm. So to join you on the first game, we'll have to go into a small break before we jump into Casas and Champion Select for the normal hmm. game of League of Legends, hopefully. So like a savage or in the game. I'm so chaotic, I show up to cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. Stand up guy, they asking me who am I? They wanna know who that, who that, I tell her give them a try. They'll soon find out and move back with eyes open or wide. I'm here, the ruler's back to take it over for life. Yeah, you know I'm major high, run it so iconic, they all treat me like the mayor. Everything that you did, I have done it all on paper. Super like I'm Sonic, see you later, get your weight up. Yeah. Applying the pressure, swell my soul, the out when I let up. I'm on a roll and I'm in control, so get a hold, cause I am that fit up. Don't need a pro to decide who is better, never will fold and never will settle. They call me a problem, but I come and solve it, I promise a novice can handle me never, ever. I know a bad, ain't come to play. So like a savage or in the game. I'm so chaotic, I show up, it cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. I know I'm bad, ain't come to play. So like a savage or in the game. I'm so chaotic, I show up, it cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. I know I'm bad, ain't come to play. I'm so chaotic, I show up, they cause a problem, they diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. I'm so alive, my enemies running high, they witness how I arrive, they all tuck in their pride and cry. I'm so alive, my heart is cold as ice, I started to not right, they all tuck in their hide inside. Who gonna stop me? I am the man and they all a copy, look at them stand, they look at sloppy, I got these hands, they straight like it's rocky, I got the plan of becoming a leader, you just a fan, so stay in your pocket, I am the plan, the man and you watch me, people they saying I'm really chaotic, yeah. Uh -huh. I know I'm bad. Ain't come to play, so like a savage or in the game. I'm so chaotic, I show up, they cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. I know I'm bad, ain't come to play, so like a savage 
I'm a renegade. I'm so chaotic, I show up, it cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. everyone and welcome to your Amir Masters airline flight setting off here from the <laughs> wonderful city of Paris taking off over some amazing games and summoners left and landing right back down here in about six hours or so right back where we started I'm initialized that's Solari we'll be bringing you through the first three games of the day how are you doing, my friends? Amazing, thank you very much. It's a very comfortable chair. I they have this good. one. Yes, they are I'm very like, good. I like. I feel like the rec reclining is pretty good. I can do it yes. pre, like during takeoff as well, which I feel like would get me in trouble in an actual airline. Uh, most likely, yes. We can see a lots of person doing. Still, <laughs> with all those shenanigans aside, we have got to bring our eyes to this first game of the day, which you should be able to see right there behind us, namely Lions Creed versus Gentle Mates, and this group has gotten very, very tight indeed. Eintracht Spandau currently. Kings of the group, 3-0, and o, looking pretty clear and away, the favorites here. But everyone else is tied at 1-2. and two. This game is going to matter so much because Lions Creed won the game yesterday kind of against some expectations. Yes. Banderas, Banderas, Banderas. <laughs> popped off on a Cassante that was put behind early and kind of started running over the game. But that was the one win Lions Creed got. That means this game, this rematch, will prove critical to the team that wants to try and escape the group alongside what is looking likely to be Eintracht Spahn. The thing is, yes, there is this win for Lions Creed, but it wasn't a decisive win. It wasn't yeah. a very clean win. There were still some mistakes on the map, and I really wonder if between yesterday and today, we're going to see some of those mistakes that we saw yesterday in terms of tempo, in terms of the decision-making on the map and in the fights, if they have been addressed between the two. Yeah, and that will be interesting, because of course, Lions Creed are a team that is fantastic when they get to play the lanes the way they oh. want. Ah, look which at Banderas. is incredibly <laughs> aggressive. And that, to those who do not know, is a shout out to our dearest host, Archeron, also host of the NLC and a big time Pantheon player yes. and occasional cosplayer. The hovers do come through from our boys over in the NLC semi regular when's, when's my Evelyn hover, guys? Come on. Like, Where's my you know, Swain hover? You're not NLC, though, are you? This is like... You know, I was there once. One times. time. That's yes. true. That's true. You get the honor yeah. remember. That's fair. You know what? I take that point. Still. <laughs> The immediate first pick here from Gentlemates is the Maokai. It also prevents things like the Lucian being easily locked in from the likes of Jinja. A lot hard to play that champion when roots come flying across. Response immediately though is Johan on a Lee Sin. Azir in for Temps. Two champions they're very, very comfortable on early on here in the draft. What should be worrying for mates right now is if you look at the bands, we have three very interesting bands coming out from Lion's Creed. We have yeah. Jinx, Rumble and Vi. And that tells you that if they want to be focusing on the bolt lane, they can go with the likes of Ziri, for example, of something that doesn't necessarily have too much mobility, but mm. enough to be worried about the anti-mobility coming from the mates. And now, mates would not be left with any tools against that if that's what Lion's Creed want to go for. Yeah, I mean, you can see the immediate lock in there of the Zyra Rakan, knowing some of those other options are yeah. down, of course. Camellius very experienced on the Rakan, but more importantly, someone like Bao as well, <gasps> put a lot of time in on the um, Zaya last year in particular. Those who were following him when he was on his EMEA Masters Championship Road in spring saw some fantastic things out of yeah. this guy, Zaya. The response from Lion's Creed, though, was a very rapid Milio lock-in. You were pretty excited about that one. Yes, because that is first of all a support that we haven't seen in a long time. And now with while. meta shifting so much, I wanted to see more enchanters. And I feel like this is a good spot for Emilio to be feeding in, especially if we're talking about the AD carries he can be paired up with. This has to be Zeriban or Lucian Nam, either Zeri or Lucian Ban. God damn it, I can't speak the, the anymore. Lucian so has excited. already been banned in fairness in that first round. And in fairness, considering oh, I said that the Maokai first game with Parties and I, I, you know, I, I put my hands up, I kind of missed that slightly as well. <laughs> Too busy setting yeah. up stakes. But then the Aphelios is going to get banned here mm -hmm. as well. It's another good pairing with the Enchanter. Does make some sense. Of course, Jinjo's put into that. I wonder whether we see something like a Caitlyn ban as well. Jinjo kind of known for having that one in his back yes. pocket. On the other side, though, it's the Tristana away from Aika who just put a lot of time into that one. It is the TF away from Ragnar who, again, 
certainly known for having some of those slightly more yes. um, oppressive champions in the champion pool. So both away. Uh, the Cassante against Banderas after yesterday makes some sense as well, though. Never mind a Caitlyn, though. They're going to go yeah. towards something with a little bit more utility, even if the early lane is still very strong. It's the Ash. That is not something I expected, but that also means that there is somebody else at Landscrate want to be playing around because mm. Ash cannot really be built into your hyper carry for the team. It has to be either Azir now or that is going to be some really aggressive top lane for Banderas, and I would love to see that. It's also very strong once you hit that level six mark, right? Because Lee Sin plus Ash, your pick is really, yes. really strong. So I, I definitely agree. But it's it's been a little while since we've seen Ash be consistently picked, not in a support role, actually. That's true. She's often been more more dangerous as that flex option than anything else. So interesting that locked in. Ragnar though, going back towards the Renekton, had a very strong early laning phase. This time we'd have to deal with the Cassante um copy pasta scenarios. <laughs> We saw yesterday from Good. Banderas, that's off the table. Immediate follow-up there with the Aurelian Sol, which has been so potent into the Azir, so potent in Amir Masters in general. A lot of scaling, a lot of front to back, a lot of zone control from gentlemen. I like it because, yes, there is a lot of scaling, but at the same time, there are so many tools if they want to play around the early game aggression, especially on the top part of the map, but not anymore, most likely, okay. because Banderas decided not to go with something aggressive. That's going to be on, you know, these days picked as a protection between the swap of the lanes here and there, but it is just such a solely top laner because it is almost impossible to do anything about him. When it comes to Renekton on the top lane, if you want to stop that aggression, what do you pick? Something like Gragas or one uh, Rek'Sai, and that's pretty much it. Gragas. Gragas, Gragas another that's option there it. for sure. So you've got very, very solid front to back. Lots of defensive options between the Milio, Breath of Life, all the CC you've got. You've got yes. the Shuffle Away, you've got the Arrows. So lots of pick and, and disengage there. I'd argue potentially the damage yeah, post exactly. mid game could get a little bit interesting. It's not like Ash scales poorly, but the Zaya pretty understandably is going to scale better, you'd imagine. Really it's soul. a really soul. Yes. Exactly. You feel like that if the front to backs just end up being pretty even post that mid game stage, could get a little bit trickier for Lion Creed. But if they can make that mid game roll, you know, Ash is Ash Lee Sin can get things snowballing, certainly, if they get the option. But that's something we already saw yesterday, right? They picked up pretty much the same composition in terms of when it wants to be active mm. in the game. It wants to be active early, but especially during the mid game. If everything goes to a very late game, most likely they are going to be losing those team fights just because the sheer scaling is going to be so much more massive on the side of gentlemen. But mid game, we're talking about a potential dominance for Lion's Creed. Yeah, exactly that. It's not quite as... Um... I'm going to use the word agree, just it's not the right one, word I'll do, as excessive maybe as Lucian is, where it's like, you spike now, you want to make it work. Yes. Ash is not quite as um, reliant on making those one to two item spikes work the way that um, maybe, maybe the Lucian is, as you're saying, but it's still, I agree, something similar in that regards. But we'll see where the gentle mates are able to manage it out a little bit better this time around. Yesterday, they uh, ended up having to play around the top side due to some interesting early starts from the jungle. They got Ragnar a lead, and Ragnar ended up being oh. solo killed. Yes, that was very painful. We there. still don't know what exactly happened there. No, because, we, saw, we saw the yes. end of it, but the start, it was, maybe it was too graphic for stream. Maybe that was what it oh. was. Maybe we've all seen too much Cassante. We don't, we don't <laughs> need more of that in our lives. We know what Cassante can do and to Unfortunately so. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, um, either way, not in the game this time around. Slightly different look there. Um, also, again, it is worth pointing out the scorelines that somewhat unexpected. I think Gentlemates, as an LFL team, were expected to be a lot more consistent than they were. Lion's Creed weren't entirely certain what level they were going to be coming in at. What was the volatility going to be like? But Eintracht have left this group high and dry. We're on to the rift. And one of these teams might be left kind of stranded without an easy way out of the group. You win this game, you're putting yourself in an excellent position to at least claim second place if you lose it's not all over of course yes but it starts yet. to go out of your hands and that is a very dangerous position to be in not a lot of time in this tournament to fix things you had overnight to try and make things look a little different and already we're seeing just that straight five man fan no one looking for those early aggressive wards so far Nobody's playing games right now. Everybody's playing one big game, but nothing uh, smaller in between. Everybody understands that there is a lot at the stakes. It might not seem drastic right now. As you said, yes, if you lose this game, it doesn't mean that you're out of the groups. But considering that the group is looking pretty tight at the moment, your chances of getting out if you lose right here, right now, they are going to go down very rapidly. And on top of that, I think Ashram gave a very interesting portrait of gentlemen yesterday. He said they are the LFL team that doesn't feel like an LFL team. And tends that they are very bloodthirsty and they want to see a lot of fighting. And that is something I would like to see from them today. The only thing is, I don't think we're going to see any of that early except for the top lane because Ragnar on Renekton has the most chances of showing off in the early game. I think also it is worth pointing out here that within 
between like the, the Zyra Khan, obviously very lane dominant, also quite tricky post level yes. six to get on top of. Aurelian Soul flying away, the singularity slow, all those things. Maokai in general and the ability to counter gank to shield lanes. You have got that ability to play out those lanes a little bit more safely than maybe you yes. would going to be able to in the in the mid game of, ye of yesterday's uh, showing down between these two teams at the very least. However, you are looking at the other side. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the Ash. I'm seeing the Lee Sin. Orn starts getting ultimate your ability to maybe, if you can get shove, suddenly throw ultimates from absolutely yes. downtown and trying to catch someone out in the jungle could prove pretty dangerous if Lion's Creed can do what they love to do, which is namely pressure those lanes, get Johan <laughs> battle warding, start everything off from there. And with Johan and Lee Sin, why would you not want to do that? That is the point. Lee Sin wants to be proactive in the early game because that is his main strength, especially if you compare him to Makai on the other side of the map. Makai is going to be incredibly useful in those fights later on around the objectives. But before that, Lee Sin is going to straightforwardly win those 2v2s, 3v3s if they decide to show up on the same lanes at the same time. Be certainly something to keep our eyes on. Nothing super scary happening in this early game. Both junglers pathing in opposite directions. Started on their red buffs and went kind of away from that. Maybe we'll see Johan have a look down at this bot side. I don't know how easy it will be to find any ingress. Maybe come down and put a ward in and play for that scuttle crab, but not too much more as Maokai will similarly try to stay on the side where his Renekton has a bit of shove. Ike taking a pretty ugly trade there from Temp to slid forward very well. Now he's going to go forward afterwards with the Astral Flight and trade that one back pretty well. Unfortunately for him, can't get too much more when the level up comes on through. Now oh, it's just down to this straight up beating each other up, right? Because no mana for either of them and mana costs are pretty high for both of them at this level. So they need to back off. No blood just yet. Not quite yet. Of course, especially with the change to really Insult, you do actually want to do a little bit more brawling early, ironically. Because that's how you get your stacks now. It's not just from the wave, it's a little bit more interactive. And I think that's yes. partly why we have seen a bit more Aurelian Soul into the Azir, because you can just trade your health for those stacks and feel okay about it. You want to feel okay about it, honestly, because later in the game, this Azir is going to be scary, especially because it's them playing Azir, but this Aurelian Soul, Aka has a lot on the shoulders mm. right there, because A-Soul in the late game is a beast, but he has to deliver against them. Reset came through from White and immediately saw an engage and Jinjo flash ghost away from the attempt gave from Camellias, aware there could have been some serious danger down there. And those summoners down on the Ash could prove pretty problematic if we see any repeat plays. If we see any repeat plays, because it looks really risky right now, but it doesn't look like anything is going to happen around the bot lane just yet, especially with Kha'Zix still around. Oh, I might be wrong. Lee Sin's coming, but isn't here quite yet. That means Jinjo immediately knocked up, overcomes the Aurelian Soul. First blood comes down. White trying to get out of danger, but Johan is here, tries to get the slowdown. Does get on him. White flashes away after the Bramble Smash, and they get out with only burning the single summoner there. Bow down the ghost too, but that is a very clean tower dive, and Johan just not quite there in time. Yes, and it is just a problem with the timing, right? Because for gentlemates, they were able to rotate Aka so much quicker. Well, it's really so It's not very hard to rotate him quickly from the mid lane to the bot lane, but he was there much before Johan was able to be anywhere around this bot lane, and this gave made such a big advantage around this turret that they go down, they take a couple of shots, they get out, nobody dies, nobody's even less than half HP at this point. Yeah, Johan is just out of range of the cripple slow when he ward hopped forward, was hoping to make that one work. So, he able to slow white there. Of course, didn't have to flash away, so at least you get that. But that is a pretty small recompense for that unfortunate play down bot side. And of course, the Aurelian Soul that picks up the kill too. So, Gentlemates feeling very pleased indeed. A lot more coordinated in the early game and punishing the summoners blown by Camellius just before that in the bot side. Ragnar is doing Ragnar things though in the top lane. Look at that. But that does, it doesn't look like he goes about that too much, but that is definitely not a very good right. spot for him to recall anymore. Tempt. Chunked out here, needs yeah. to be a little bit of frame. Was very swift to shuffle back towards the tower, but Johan is gonna come over and start to fight. Ragnar throws down the dominance, but the pop is just huge. Too greedy with that uh, proxy farming and goes down there as Banderas hits level six and presses R a couple times. Banderas. <laughs> Not again. I can I can imagine everyone in the green room as well just echoing. It's like. Banderas. Most likely, that's exactly what they're doing. But that is the power <laughs> of Orn, right? It's yeah. not just a very tanky champion with such a great engage tool. He also deals a lot of damage, just Ouch. like Aesol does. Ooh, that hurt. Tempt. That doesn't have the teleport. Will be, unfortunately, for him, forced to do go for a bit of a reset. White has taken the opportunity as well after the skirmish topside to get onto the grubs early. So we'll do that despite the top laner going down. Um, so there is that trade, at least, for Gentlemates game. Normally in favor of the mates, but it's not by any huge margin or anything yet. Level six is a long way off of this bot side. Jinjo just about hit by the grand entrance there. 
annoyed by that one. But he's got a campfire and that'll help keep him warm despite the <laughs> slight altitude problems. I don't think that's exactly what Ash wants, to be fair. She's that's only actually about the... very true. Yeah. Yes. Um, I like, I like what, what What do you think? Like, does, does Ash even care about the call? I get the impression she's just I like... I feel like the call never bothered like, her anyway. I knew that was... I, I, <laughs> the moment I said that, I like, was like... Setting that one up to be smashed for six. Like, oh dear, well, there you go. You oh. did it to yourself. I'm sorry, wow, mate. Oh, I just need to let it go. We'll move on. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. My knowledge of frozen puns is pretty limited, so I'm probably going to leave this one there before he gets increasingly tired. I don't think there are any more puns to be fair. Don't, don't make that reference, because that's going to just encourage me. <laughs> Johan just hit six. White also has, so he'll be a, a known quantity and we'll be looking to shield out any potential aggression down here. I don't think we're going to be likely seeing a 3v3 quite yet. The mid lane is still locked in lane, so just going to be some wards put down. And Gentlemates are the ones with better control right now. But there is a dragon already alive for quite some time, and both mm. teams are looking for a possibility to take it. But with White around, with White having an ultimate up, it's going to be really hard for Lion's Creed to find an approach to this Drake, unless they can lure this out, this ultimate before the Drake starts. Yeah, Johan spotted out there again by the sapling toss. They are so annoying. Even yes. after all the nerves, it's just, just the most like obnoxious bit of vision control. Ah, Maokai, what a champion. Um, <laughs> stand. So champion. no one is starting at the dragon quite yet, though I say that, and White has actually decided to at least go into the pit and throw down a few more saplings. We'll hex flash over the wall to try and avoid where Johan may be lurking and waiting quite wisely. So that ward in the Raptor pit, I think we'll have spotted them out, though. He was pinged on the yes. mini-map, so there's a known quantity despite his attempts at smoke and mirrors. Uh, he tried his best, but unfortunately, yes, this was a very nice word from Lion's Creed, and they know that this is their uh, chance to start things around, mate. There's the engage towards the bot side. Oh. Sing, nowhere to go. Wait, flashing away. The Ignite, though, surely brings him down. The cozy campfire keeps him alive. Now, Camellius trying to run away, has to flash. Is hit with the sonic wave. Jumped on it. Flash for the kick. Knocks him back. Jinjo can't get the damage. Now, Bao has to go up to the air, who just about hits level six. Lots of summoners blown, but no one dead. Looking for the Q. Can't quite find it. Now, Johan in danger. Needs to be aware of that nature's grasp. Twisted advance afterwards is dangerous. Johan gets a shield, but he will not be able to go anywhere. White has turned up well enough. Decent healing is good, though. Wait, what the heck? White will finally get the double Bramble Smash. Johan goes down alongside Kasing. It has all gone very, very wrong for Lion's Creed, who could not secure the kills, despite having the initial man advantage. Oh, they're still fighting on the top lane there. Look at that. The oh, ultimate on Madeiras. Will throw down that Dominus, knowing that the ultimate's not available. Bandra is going to be forced to return back towards the tower and actually burning down pretty heavily from that Dominus continual damage. Maybe forced to TP here back to the lane. Quite possibly, but can we talk about what happened on the building for a second? Because that was a very good beginning for Lion's Creed. The initial idea definitely is there because mates are getting in and Lion's Creed having the vision understand that they can go in as well. But what bothers me is actually the vision itself, right? They know that White is in the bottom part of his own jungle. They know that he can rotate rather quickly, so that that makes me ask the question, what is Johan doing so close to the enemy turret at this very moment? Because White hasn't used the ultimate yet, and the moment that this listen is caught out, there's no way out of it anymore for anybody. Yeah, maybe it's different if he lands that Q. He probably gets the kill with the execute yeah, quite there. But possibly, it's, yes. But it's uh, it's definitely a known quantity for this guy who does like to try and take that skill check. We've seen this before. They love to make those mechanical tests happen and uh, what happens if they lose them well sometimes it gets a little bit ugly and while the gold lead was initially relatively close it's not so anymore ragnar as we had a look at him forcing banderas out of lane has actually claimed four plates top side in that matchup bot side we've seen a number of kills go against lion's creed as well this is a much more consistent early game and it's not all focused towards the top lane this time around and we're getting close to 2k gold no we're not getting anywhere close to 2k we're actually at one then. point it <laughs> was pretty close but now it's getting away from it but still there is a gold lead for uh gentle mates mainly coming from the 80 carry and from the top lane. but i love this gold difference for the 80 carries for bauer especially mm -hmm. for gentle mates this is a rather important milestone to hit because they want to get their Isaiah accelerated Zaya on two items is going to be a menace in those team fights, especially when the ultimate is available. And that's the point where they want to get hit. And the ability to blow that ultimate somewhat limited in some ways. You've got the Ashar, of course, and the, the Orn ultimate as well. If you can stagger those well enough, for, you force it with one ability, follow up with another. Maybe you've got the access, but you don't have as consistent engage here from the support role. Um, because because Kazin winning that Milia. So it might not be as easy to pop the Featherstorm on yes. cooldown as you might otherwise like. Johan, though, taking the opportunity, knowing the Grubs are going down to pick up a Dragon. Not the earliest Dragon of all time here at the 11-minute mark. So a little slow to stack those one up, but at least has been claimed there by the NLC first. He tempts being slowed down by the Rhyalize and the Singularity at this point. The release zone gets really obnoxious. 
throws down a few more soldier autos, but it's an even enough trade. We saw very big plays yesterday from Tim. He was one of the biggest players for the team, pretty much on toe to toe with Banderas. So today I am as well expecting a lot from him, especially being on such a big playmaker. But so far, yes, the lane hasn't really been very kind to him. He has been farming Ooh. very nicely, which I cannot say for the top lane. Unfortunately, Banderas is really struggling there right now. Yeah, Ragnar gets every play and first turret pretty much isolated. He's died the one time from being a little over eager with the proxy farming, but that's been it. Mid lane, Ika has to flash away as Temp finds a beautiful shuffle. Does he have room to get on out here? We'll throw down the Falling Star. Ragnar has roamed down the river to shield his mid laner. So that's Summoners and Ultimates down, and Temp feeling pretty okay about that option. Ragnar, I think, will be here to claim the wave and allow Ika the opportunity to reset. Nothing Lions could can really do about this prime fortunately, because the timings for the objectives are still not up. Still almost four minutes, because mm. the next Drake is going to come up so late, because the first one was also taken very late. Honestly, I, have, I haven't seen such low prime for Dragons oh. for a long time, but this arrow is not it! But the Featherstorm still pops. That's not available. That means you can still start to jump on him. That will be the ults down from both Bao and Camellius in trade for both ults on the side of Jinjo and Kasing. So relatively even trade there. Really favoring either side as yet. We turn back towards his top lane and a one and a half thousand gold lead individually. Right now for Gentlemates in the bot side. Might flashes on in. Nowhere to go right now for Kasing, who is just living up to his namesake. That's Kaching, but for Gentlemates as they cash in on the support. <laughs> And that, that is very unfortunate for Lionsquare because Kaising is ideally the last person they can afford to lose in a team fight, especially thanks to his ultimate and now the Moonstone that he just picks after he dies. He needs to be alive for the majority of the fight, any skirmishes and fights they are having, and he needs to have the ultimate up and available. It is not the ultimate with the longest cooldown, but it's still a rather painful one, and the fact that Lionsquare had to sacrifice it so early when this all action on the bot lane started meant that eventually it was meant to be at least one kill for Maze as a result. Banderas finally claims himself a play at the top side, but that is a very paltry um, consolation something. prize. Yeah, compared to a full <laughs> turret and a huge CS lead, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty rough to see Eclipse first here from Johan. I think like a Sundered Sky, at least so far, wants to be a very aggressive player. Indeed, one item's beginning to be completed across the board. I'll note that uh, Bao has his before. Jinjo, after the early game, has gone so heavily in favor of the Zion Ricard lane. We'll see whether that matters. We've got two minutes to until the Dragon, so... I think by that point, Jinjo should be at parity, at least in terms of first item completions, at least. Depending on what item it's going to be, I still wonder how much equality there is going to be in terms of the damage between the teams, because while on the mid lane right now, we can say yes, they should be going pretty much toe to toe on the bot lane. I would still be worried on whether or not Jinjo is going to be able to match what Bao is going to deliver in terms of the damage. And that's why, again, I think the main bet for Maze in this game should be their obnoxious amount of damage, especially look at Aka. Look at this beautiful icon next to his health bar. This is the upgraded ultimate, and oh, I would yes. be very scared of this one if I want to take any objective as Landscreed right now. Sky's Descend is so difficult to manage, and uh, he will not be pressing that R button until that dragon is spawned. Oh, you can nearly no. guarantee it. Maybe uh, it'll be used over by the Herald, but I don't think Lion's Creed are going to be willing to take this fight with the way the map is and the fact that that item hasn't been completed yet for Jinjo's Ash. So that will be Herald over towards Gentlemates have also claimed the first six grubs, so a lot of damage potentially be done there if they can get a good charge with the Heralds. Temp, though, continues to uh, extend a bit of a lead here in the mid lane. Has been playing up the Sazir matchup very, very well. Johan still in the bush. We'll spot off that uh, far side alteration. We'll hit Camellius with a Sonic Wave, but we'll be unlikely to take you. <laughs> the moment I said that, he's just the there moves. to make me <laughs> Just kidding. Think yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was very fast indeed, but... That, oh, that was fast out. too. And actually, Temp here can maybe look at this one. There is a phase rush on White. Remember, he doesn't have the teleport Ooh. the flash. He used a great arrow afterwards. White going to be throwing up the white flag. Goes down. Johan picks it up. And that's just before the dragon spawns. Great moment there for Lion's Creed and a necessary one. There's only 20 seconds on white, it's the death timer, but still it is 20 seconds that mates are without their jungler, which means Lion's Creed, in theory, are free to recall right now, get more items, hopefully, finally an item for Ginger, we're going to see about that, but if it's going to be an item for Ginger, I would love to see Lion's Creed go and try to contest this dragon. It's a hex dragon, which means unfortunately not, not hex all this time, but still such a good dragon to pick up individually. Yeah, there's the resets coming on through, and of course with white not there, his ability to go down and set up things like the sapling minefield a yes. little bit more limited of course so we'll have a look at this replay because this is just a nice angle frankly it is pretty much a clear 1v1 right because by the time tempt comes here it is late but then this arrow Beautiful. is pretty much the thing that sets everything up finally a good quality arrow that hits and the 
pretty much provide Tyrion with a clean kill. And Lee Sin didn't have to use ult. Tem didn't have to use ult. They're both available, so yes. you didn't have to burn too much to pick off the jungler. Now we get to see this kind of posturing around the dragon. It's gentle mates. They're in the river first, but the wards currently favoring Lion's Creed on the hole. They'll throw down a couple control wards and force their way into the river through bot lane prior. But this is going to be still very hard. The arrow is coming back for Ginger very, very soon, yep. but not soon enough. And with the ultimate available to White, again, no way for Lion's Creed to find any way around this ultimate. Yeah, it would have been a tricky one at that. And of course, for all that you killed off the jungler for, you had potentially that easier time to set up. You still have to deal with the fact that, as you said, the Sky's Descend That's is true. so nasty to manage. And they just didn't want to have to deal with that one. So they will give up the dragon, of course. Did claim the first dragon, so it's not the end of the world. But you already noted the scaling here with the likes of the Aurelian Soul, with your front to back in general, Zaya's two, three item power spike, very strong indeed. It could get a little bit dubious here for Lion's Creed unless they can start to find some angles of their own. Especially if Lion's Creed don't do anything about the upcoming dragons, because this is the soul that I haven't seen in a long time. This is the, oh, the fire soul. Is it the fire soul? The fire dragon? Uh, Infernal soul. In Infernal soul, yeah. Thank you very much. But the thing about these dragons and the soul is that they scale very well, and that is going to help gentlemen so much with all the scaling they already have in the late game if it gets their Lion's Creed. Might not stand a good chance against them in a clear 5-5 five five fight. Increasingly difficult as well with the fact that these structures are falling down without any real response from Lion's Creed. Both the turrets in uh, top bot lane falling down. Mid lane can still be attacked with the Herald, which they've got in infantry for white. So the map control alone proving pretty difficult for Lion's Creed to overcome so far, at least. And Ragnar, I'm sure, will be getting the thumbs up of approval from Aragon for this early game mm -hmm. Renekton performances. Just playing out this matchup super, super well at 18 minutes already at the two item mark here. You can't ask for too much more. No, Can, if you ask for anything above that, you have too much audacity, man. 1.2k lead on this top lane. Banderas has been holding the lane, but he hasn't been able to do anything else. And frankly, he hasn't been holding the lane that well because the throat is already down. And that means after 20 minute mark, when we start talking about the Barons, it is going to be increasingly hard for Lens to do anything around this part of the map. Of course, now the Banderas hit level 13. The next few levels will start to be when those ornaments begin to come oh, on through. So that can perhaps change that scaling question. Yes. Those additional upgrades, those additional uh, influx of stats can be very potent indeed if they end up on the right items and the right carries at the right times. But still looking at a two-item Aurelian Soul, this Renekton that's hit this point of power so freely. You've still got the Skies Descent that hasn't been pulled. Herald now coming down in mid lane. If you lose every outer turret as everything goes on, Banderas though, it's a brief knock up there in the mid lane. White will drive that Herald straight into the structure. Johan finds an engage on Camellius on the side, gets a bit of a chunk, gets a knock up onto Banderas who cannot get the R2, but wait, just about in time. He'll hold the tower for now, used a couple ultimates to do so, but the turret just about stands. It's so interesting that mates decide not to fight, and that is not the first time we're seeing them having a very good setup for the fights because they're bringing the Herald in, they have Echo with this Kai's Descent, they have all the ultimates available, but they deliberately choose to back away from Lion's Creed. They are waiting for more power spikes on their side. They're waiting for the second item in Bar, most likely, at this point. And after that, we might see the temple on the map shifting a lot. That might be it. Johan's going to try and smite this one up. It's smite the way! He mismites it, has to flash over the wall, it drags White here as well. That can get scary. The arrow afterwards, the wall on Ica. He's now in danger. Does have the flash to go through. Look at Bow Camille, trying to get to damage. They've gone onto the Aurelian Soul, who cannot bring this guy falling down. Dragon dead. Make it St. George for the NLC, trying to make some damage happen. And look at Banderas, who's locked up in the front line, buys some time, tries to go for the knockoff, but mistimes it. Now the damage comes back on through, and Banderas has to flash away. Lion's Creed do get the pick. It's all a bit frantic, but in the end of the day, it's still going to be gentlemates that get time on this mid lane tier one and trade that for their jungle, their mid laner's life. Gentlemates still have a lot of damage even without their mid laner, and that is what we're going to keep seeing in the team fights uh, upcoming. But it is the fact that Aka went down before being able to press the R buttons and bring the skies down. Tempt, you oh are boy. in danger. That's a three man die. Baron's just spawned. He's got no ultimate. I think he's just dead to right. Does a serious amount of damage back, but the Aurelian Soul there means there's not much more to be seen. They'll back away without the teleport on Banderas as well. I think this might just be a Baron start for Gentlemates. Quite possibly, yes. Yerhan is alive. Yerhan is around. Everybody else is around, but Lance don't really have that many ultimates available. No arrow, no ultimate on Johan as well. What can they do? Millis on a flank, white pretty low. Aurelian Soul with the Skies to send. Very scary indeed. 
Rakan can look for the angle, is now spotted. Johan going to try and get the quickness to get onto Kasing on the back line. Down to 3,000 HP. The sky's descent. Comes on down. Trying to jump on Johan. My god, Ragnar does damage. Trying to kill off the Lee Sid. No sapling slow. Forced him to flash away. In the back line, Bandera is buying down. Ragnar flashes into the pit. Baron secured and gentlemates beginning to run away with the game. And Astral flight forward for a little bit more DPS with the Breath of Light. And they back away. One pick on ten leads to a lot of damage to Lion's Creed. Banderas was incredibly tanky. He lived there for almost a minute in the midst of the fight, which was stuck between the Baron and the everybody from the enemy team. However, I wanted to look at Aker in this fight because he's a very important objective in this fight. He has the ultimate. He has to finally use this type. And he keeps himself as far away from the enemies as possible. Knowing that Johan can have a very good access to him thanks to the Baron feed. He moves a little bit more south on the map, goes a little bit closer to Banderas this way, but he's not too scared of Banderas apart from the no cap. He just wants to land an ultimate, deal the damage and stay alive afterwards. The Jinjo and Tempt weren't at that fight. Imagine if Banderas was doing that while Ash was DPSing, ah, it could have been you wish. so different. Instead, it is Gentlemen with the Baron, with the 5k gold lead, with another dragon to their name, and with absolutely everything going their way over the last five or so minutes. Slight madness with White going over the wall of the Baron pit before all of that began, with standing still. Can begin to shove on in, attack these tier twos, and really take Lion's Creed off the map. Because Lion's Creed don't really have much of the map left, to be fair. Gentlemen still have two out of the three outer turrets available to their name, while Lion's Creed are losing the inner turrets as quick as it's even possible. Still six void grabs to the name of Gentlemen, which means they cut through these turrets as fast as a hot knife through butter. And there's uh, not that much butter left. This toast has been that well and truly true. spread. <laughs> Lovely fan. I was going to say buttered again. That didn't quite work. So I had to find another word. What, what can I say? You know, a... I don't know. Spread. Apparently, was the term we went for. And here we are. Finally, Ragnar has picked up some boots, by the way. For a long time, he was just oh. sitting with no boots. Went straight towards the two items. because just wanted the damage, brother. You I can't blame him. Understandable. Yeah, some, you know, that, that, that's, my, that's my kind of guy. There we go. Uh, <laughs> lock it in as well for White. Just going for that full utility build on the Maokai. Alongside, there's some Kales now on the Rakan. Access to people like Ika, Bao going to be increasingly difficult for Lion's Creed, who are still struggling to get towards those two items. Um, can see second item now completed for Johan, who's still been farming well, of course, and Tempt in particular up 70-odd CS in the mid lane. He's doing his very best to stay relevant. Is still even with this Aurelian Soul, despite the structural gold and just global gold that's been picked up by Gentlemates in general. Just don't know whether that's going to be enough, especially when you see the kind of gold lead you're seeing in bot and top. There is still Kaising with a Moonstone, but there is an arrow right. coming. Oh, not right. hitting anybody. Does go wide, alt for alt. Do get a knock up again on the Maokai. Does not get hit with the Sonic Wave. Throws down a Sapling Toss, and Gentlemen will back away. Not an ultimate burn for the Disengage and attempt at the Engage, but no one dies. And all the while, Ragnar wasn't there and has been happily shoving the mid lane. No, oh, very happily so, but now Lion's Queen have to make a choice and they have to rotate somebody to stop this crocodile from destroying their mid lane completely. Lion's Queen have to play this out very, very patiently right now. They cannot really overstep. They cannot really go overly aggressive. They can afford to play defensively thanks to Kaising. He has the heal available. He has the Moonstone available. He can provide them with a lot of safety to just withstand this siege while the... Oh, the Baron buff is over, actually. That's a good time for Lion's Queen to find something. Bit of respite and... Uh... A little bit of an upgrade there for Tamp well, who just picked up a Leandri's Lament, courtesy of Orn Forging Services. Um, that was my skin. I feel like I want a Crime City Orn skin, now that I think about it. Like, all the forgeries. Oh. Like, forgery stuff. Actually, yes. I, I think, that, I think you could have some serious fun with that. I know we're finally getting, like, the, the pseudo trucker Orn with the train conductor. Yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying, the next caster, you know, like, led call for an Orn skin, I'm just saying a forgery Orn would be great. Do you see this champion's damage? I, I, I do, by the way. What, I, what do I have to say about it? Because Bandera I have nothing done that. to That's got to be Sunfire damage and all the knockups. Hang on. Yes. That's got to be the damage around the Baron. That's actually Yes, silly. it has to be that fight at the Baron Pete, huh. right? It's been a while since I've seen an Orn do that much DPS, but that's a little alarming considering the compositions. That is alarming, not just because it's, hey, how is Bandera is that good? It's also, hey, where is the damage for Lion's Creed, right? Because they're supposed to be playing around the AD damage coming out of Ash, AP damage coming out from Tempt. Tempt is dealing damage, but Ash is what worries me a lot on this call more and more, because it's either the damage that you need to provide the consistent DPS or the arrows that need to hit every single time. Yeah, and it's been a little bit... Maybe the word I'll use is absent. Not been exactly yes. the most exciting Ash forms we've ever seen. 
And Aris looking for a knockup, does find it onto right now into the call of the Forge God. The arrow afterwards! That yes! combo works! We asked for Ash to start doing something that'll do. Ragnar, though, has got the dominance. Here come the rest of Gentle Mace to save their top laner. Tempt is here, the teleports have flown. Dragon spawns in just over a minute. Now Lion's Creed need to get out, having brought the whole of the enemy squad towards them. They burn a lot of ultimates get out, to try get and make out. that one happen. Camellius now looking for the engage angle. We'll throw down the control ward. Nature's Graft comes on through. Ike has the skies ascend. Johan looking for the flank. A bow just wrecks his face. The feathers no. are sharp as anything. The skies come crashing on down. Temp tries to buy any time at all with his soldiers. Does get a kill on the Renekton, but the follow-up damage is just too much bear to bear. A triple kill for Bow. The Iker will get a double on top, a full house for Gentlemates. They've got a wave and a dream and a possible end to the game. And Lion's Creed had one spot at this lane where they could not afford to fight and they decided to just go into this spot all together and be like, hey, Aka, by the way, you have an ultimate. How about you just send those guys right onto our I, heads? It, I think it's just over. It like, is over, yes. They're doing days. it. They are just going to keep running at these towers, going to get some repawns coming on through, going to put down the redemption, try and keep some of these minions a little lower, but it's Kasing alone alive. Three seconds on Jinjo. Nexus exposed. Gentlemates, get vengeance for yesterday in catastrophic style. They'll kill off the Rakan, but that is it. Gentlemates are two and two. Their dreams of getting out groups well and truly alive. 11 to 5. And yesterday, when we were talking about this matchup, we were saying that both of the teams were extremely impatient with their timings, with their fights, with their decisions. This time, we saw so much more patience from both of them, but especially mm. from gentlemen, knowing when to go aggressive, knowing when to back off, knowing the timings of their team comp and finding this one very good team fight in the end. Yeah, exactly that. And actually, shout out to Ragnar. The individual yes. lead he built was so monstrous. Shout out to White's play around bot side, getting Bao all of those kills. The Ash, the Orn falling so far behind men. That the spite actually temp playing very well on that as it yes. getting such a gold lead. Johan linking up with some of those CC combos to try and threaten some people. It was always going uphill. It was always a bit Sisyphean, you know, rolling that boulder only to yes. be crashing back down with just the weight of that gold. And shout out to Aker. Honestly, to me, it was such a great performance. Not maybe during the laning phase because it was hard standing against ten, but later on in the team fights, knowing the positioning, knowing the timing so well, it was such a joy to watch this early in Seoul. Yeah, and the fact he was just holding those skies to send yes. for as long as he was, like, Lions could be there again, we don't want to fight this. We don't have the item on mm -hmm. the Ash. We don't want to fight into this Aurelian Soul quite yet. This could get yeah. really scary. He just holds it, because we're fine. I, we yeah. don't care. We're scaling just fine. You're not getting anything done. This is a great place to You're be. You're the ones who need to find something to do. We're just fine. We're chilling. We're waiting. It's okay, guys. We scale. Yeah, and, and then what we then have to look at is the rest of the group. Because Eintracht Spandau, 3-0. Yes. Gentlemates now 2-2. Two two. For the likes of Anonymo for Lions Creed. Getting out of this time. group is suddenly a lot trickier. Lions Creed are going to be kind of needing an onomo maybe to grab a game off Gentlemates even. They'll need to try and get a game off Eintracht. That's pretty tricky indeed. Still waiting here a little bit to see whether production want us to throw it over or not. We might be waiting a second or two because we can keep filling. I'm happy to we do that. We can keep filling. There's so much we to look do. handsome. We it's have a lot to talk very, about. I do really like your outfit though, by the Thank way. Thank you very, very much. stylish. Thank you. I love your outfit too. Jesus and I think God. we're matching quite nicely. It's like, you know, give a bit of coverage. Yeah. I'm to do that. I mean, I really like this one. It's, it was a Christmas present, actually, but enough about Christmas presents. Oh. Oh. Ooh I've la been la. given my beret back. Thank you, Judge Aragon <laughs> Frollo of Notre Dame Cathedral. I believe you and the crew are ready to take it away on the analyst desk anyway, so we'll give it over to you. Huh? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> it's never normal here. It's never normal. It's that cat meme, like, huh? <laughs> We're back in Lion's Creed. Well, it happened. I, I'm just Spain without the S. That's why I'm from yeah. Portugal. Yeah, I'm the neighbor. Just Spain without the what? The S. Like the oh, right, letters. right. Sorry, I heard the way you say S sounded like it had another S and an A in front of it. So just... Erdogan, how are you doing? <laughs> I am I sad. Look at you. I'm Spain without the S as well. I am really disappointed. I love my boy, uh, Banderas, but that was... Uh, Who? Banderas. <laughs> but Banderas. You know, that game was kind of disappointing, I think, especially in the side lanes. I mean, top lane is a bit inevitable. You know, getting five plated in isolation is quite tragic with the way Demolish works. But, you know, both side lanes on top of that with the Ash milieu down bot side is kind of sad. I think we need to talk about the Ash because, yeah, I mean, you, you brought up the point down bot where you're like, okay, this needs to be pulled up before six. Like there needs to actually be a lot mm -hmm. happening in this 2v2. Um, we had a lot of theories backstage as to like what we could see bot. You know, one of them from Aragon was Draven. Seeing with the milieu yeah. pairing as well, yeah. maybe would have been a better result as well. Lucian was taken off the board. But I think the biggest 
the biggest strange uh, irregularity in the Lions Creek draft was the Milio on three, hmm. where normally normally you're picking your duo bot with Milio because like there are so many options you could ban out, and Milio has limited pairings. Like Aphelios being one of them, that was also banned out of the way as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that kind of limited the options and Ash was like how where yeah. Lions Creed went. I'm not sure it was the best option in the end. But when you get the, the AD carry, like the Ash, we were talking about it, you get some expectations. I love that yeah. word from you. You get some expectations. I'll yeah. just quickly touch on that before um, go I go ahead. to your point. It's yeah. The Milio specifically, I think, support good into Rakan and also good into Maokai ultimate. Yeah, That's the entire thing, right? In team fights, okay. you just you don't have to worry about the root, which is huge. But to go back to your point, Archeron, um, yeah, you have some expectations when you play Ash. This champion, it's a really big lane bully, of course. That's why Ash support is so good. Largely, a lot of the time, you can you can absolutely dominate lane. You get perma push, and uh, you can convert that into plates, dragons, and what have you yep. uh, that Bob Pryor gives. The problem was, mm -hmm. this is not what happened. You had both side lanes getting absolutely blasted. I think they got the push early on, but then the wave bounced back. And then the ASOL with Pryo mid uh, managed to dive bot with the jungler. And that's where my question is, where's Johan, right? This guy, he wasn't covering bot side he and was he light. wasn't playing around bot enough, yeah. in my opinion, to facilitate this early game. Because if you do not have a lead versus Zaya Rakan, this is a duo that will absolutely take over games come mid game, um, even level six onwards. It's so hard to walk up to. Them. Even though Johan brought it back, like his his mid game Lee Sin, I think was what was keeping yeah. him in the game for yeah. so long. Um, yeah, it was a really rough early game, and the fact that the Maokai got the dive off, I think you know, kind of cemented the game in as well. We already talked about the Renekton top as well, where Bandetta Bandetta's was missing out. You know, on his but lane. The main objective enough. was not there to keep that bot no, lane pushing in. Yeah. The Lee Sin making the plays, it was just dead. I think uh, you had Temp trying to make plays to re yeah. recover, but like pro props to Gentlemates. I don't want to take Gentlemates, right? 100%. They had really good macro in the mid game. They pushed in both sides. I remember mm -hmm. one sequence in particular. They pushed in both sides, slow stack both ways, exact same time. Both Renekton and Ace will come from side lanes, collapse mid, and they have the Rift Herald at the same time, get a bunch of damage down. Just synchronized plays like this were super nice. And in the end, I think it came down to a pick on side under tur under an Azir turret with, a with an ultless Azir. Yep. He just dies instantly. They, they force Nash, that Nash start, and the game kind of booms open after that. So the macro and the micro was a well read coming in from yeah, gentlemen. Like putting them phase and, and yeah. team fights. I mean, At the it was end clean. Of the day, it was kind of a stomp, honestly. Yeah. 100%. E even though like the game itself didn't reflect that, but it was a huge stomp going against Lions Creed. So the revenge is completed for the LFL, which means NLC is one step away from uh, going spectator. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it's a bit of a cop out. We always say it, but like, you know, it's the final day. There's only two days of play before he... What did you say? Eight people joining spectators? Yeah, getting they promoted. will be promoted to spectator. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Try like that. This <laughs> was, <laughs> this this was the dive down the bot dive. side, right? Where on the bounce back. And this is what happens because of that. When you don't have a lead on Ash Milio, right? Any kind of misstep quickly can just turn into a one shot because this duo does so much damage. This is like the 2v8 duo, right? Um, and this kind of play, I mean, you can see Johan with the micro. I think all game long, Johan, despite losing, yeah. he was keeping them in the game with these kind of like micro outplays where he would consistently stay alive longer. Like you see how long he lives here with lifesteal, dodging the feathers here on the pullback. There were so many nice plays, but it just wasn't enough because of the state that the Ash Milia were in. So with that in mind, this means that Iron Creed is in danger. Yeah, the team, gentlemen, it's LFL third seed is on a comfortable position, at least at their group, even yeah. though they started on a 1-2. And we're going to look into the next game, which will be Enigma versus Supermassive. We're okay. going to do a quick switch around because we're going through every single game at the same time. And mm -hmm. obviously some groups take a little bit yeah. more time than the others. There are a few games that actually go to 15 minutes. So we have to adapt as we go. I mean, I think Supermassive, a bit disappointing this tournament, whilst the Arabian yeah. League, I'm really looking forward to seeing no, it. This is the first time we're going to see uh, just how well they're going to be playing. Um, I think we saw some VODs, me and you, we took a look at some of the VODs, Hysterics. Um, mm. A little bit messy at times, you know, not super clean games, but they keep pulling out wins somehow, whether True. it's the mid-game onwards. they got a lot of flavor, they got a lot of individual yeah. flavor, and I think that's the exciting thing as well. Like, uh, we already talked about Nygma's top lane, and I know folks are sitting at home, like, looking at the Gentlemates and the LC overview of what the game we just witnessed again because today's going to be a tight turnaround um you know keep the flow going i just want to say that enigma coming up is i think one of yeah. the most exciting teams in the tournament again their draft priorities have already shown us so much like we're not going to get drafts like we see here in the game i feel uh -huh. like we're going to get a lot more flex picks up towards top side um on boda who is like probably one of the best top laners in the tournament 
So yeah, I do wonder if we're going to see this like a uh, trend of red side jinx ban just continue for the day. And True, this is like the tournament, here, yeah. the tournament adaptation. Day one, jinx, 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 jinx. Day two, no. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no one yeah. is having that. It's right? a good adaptation though. I mean, again, Lions Creed were the ones that banded away. Like, yeah. A red side third ban. So but um, props to them. The thing is, we know that the Arabian League they just spam lane swaps, right? So this adaptation, I think, is going to be really important for Supermassive to potentially take that away too. I mean, we see like with jinx ban as well. We see a lot of other AD carry bans too. I'm kind of curious as to where else we go because there are other AD carry lanes that can lane swap mm -hmm. like the, the, we've had yeah. an affiliate lane swap we've had a castle leona lane swap as well i wonder if we go back to like i, I think sometimes when these champions mm -hmm. are down you, you go to something like zeri kaiser dive comps into the into the zeri oh, so yeah. can come out as well um we've seen a bit of a Felios, uh these days i think these are some of the champions that can come out but true you know um zeri kaiser that's that's the top of my list i hope so because then you get kaiser dive compositions and burst reset comps as well Question, do we get access to a Lucian like we did Lucian Nami, like yeah. in uh, LPL. Yeah, LPL. 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 I mean, the only problem is, I will just say historically, uh, LEC or, you know, any other region <laughs> apart from LPL, LCK, yeah. can't really play Lucian yeah. Army that can, well. Can you be Elk? <laughs> can you? Be, no. <laughs> no. No, no so, one can. <laughs> but yeah, it's about playing aggression there. So that's what we're waiting for. So um, yeah, again, excited to see these two in action. Uh, Nygma Galaxy, we didn't get to see yesterday. Like again, no Arabian League teams yesterday. Papara Supermassive were a little bit yeah. disappointing with the roster they, that they have. You're like, you see someone like uh, Armut, right? Yeah. And you, you think, well, you have high expectations for the world's Mad Lions top laner. Yeah. He wasn't firing yesterday. Um, you know, a game that, again, was really hard fought and yeah, just... Yeah, I think he was losing to the Aurelia to top side. Um, I think he, his flash did get blown early, which makes it very uh -huh. hard for a Jace into an Aurelia, of course. Um, but yeah, struggling in general, not living up to the expectations I have him, because I remember him as this really good laner. His, he, his name was synonymous with stuff like Wukong, who would just go in, True. right? Um, so I'm going to see a bit of a bounce back then. So when you have players with that sort of experience, obviously you're expecting yeah. them from going to day one to day two with a different sign into the game. Like, yeah, okay, I mean, we know what to fix. But again, it's not, you know... Not to be like a cringe kid, but it's not, it's not, it's a team game. You yeah. know, it really is. Um, it's about how well teams adapt, right? Like Jinx has already won adaptation, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's about individual experience more so. It's about like what the coaches are pulling up and from their day, from their 24 hours can adjust on the fly. Because it seems like the teams coming in from Arabia actually are so uh, keen to this sort of meta. So not only are trying to adapt to the yeah. meta recently, but also you're finding someone that is like their normal ground. And there's some difficulty when you jump into that one. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, look, again, they're probably more adapted than other regions like Ultra League that played in a month. So, <laughs> you know, uh, when, when they're the ones lane swapping and already making the adaptations, the yeah. owners of the other teams to, to match. Yeah, My I question mean, is, do we have the groups updated? Because obviously we're going through a few games and we reached a point where we need to take out the calculator the calculator. The calculator. Really, for four different games. The foldy sheet. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have to do that. But before we do that... One plus two. <laughs> <laughs> As I went to get taught math by aesthetics, <laughs> oh, yeah. we're going to take a quick break. How many minutes? I don't know. You'll tell me because the you can answer after this. How many? Take a guess. How many minutes we'll have? Uh, seven. Glad you take a shot because you're so terrible at games. We'll have three <laughs> minutes. I'll see you soon. <laughs> I would have said four. <laughs> Yeah. 
this, but it only makes it better when you win. And hey, you know I think I got paranoia. My team win every quarter. I said who made the order. I know pain is the greatest. Uh, in this my supply. I had to push, I had to cry. I had to look my demons right back in the eye. Out of anything I learned, I do know one thing. I know you have to lose it all if you gon' ever gain. I know that you don't put the fight into the last frame. And if you ever make it out, remember where you came. Fancy seeing you there. Long time no see, chat. Good to have you back. I'm still no slice. That's Solari. Still mate, yes. So apparently. You yeah. sure? Uh, I'm, 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 maybe, I might be Aragorn. Maybe, you know? maybe, we had this I, confusion yesterday. True. Yeah, yes. I think it's I think it's the, the beret cloak thing. You know, the, it's hard to yeah. do I mean, I, I can't look as good as no, you, unfortunately. So yeah, it has yeah. to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Moving away from silliness, we have got us a slight change in schedule. We are looking this time around at Nigma Galaxies versus Papara Supermassive. Very interesting matchup here in Jigs. Of course, these are two teams from the two newest regions in the tournament. Of course, the Arabian League this time around have been popping off. Yes. I think people have been a little uncertain where to rate these guys. They had a pretty solid showing last year, Matt, but it wasn't truly region or tournament defining. This time around, they've both come on through players, Nigma Galaxy and GK. And now in group stages, they've started taking heads. They are currently two on one. They're ahead of Paparas Massive, who on the other side, have been struggling a bit alongside Takira as a whole, Besiktas notwithstanding. Yes, our only sleeper party is super massive. They were expected to be one of the favorites coming up from their region, but yeah. yesterday, yes, you could see some struggles they were having in their game style, but Nigma Galaxy, however, I have heard so many good things yeah. about them, and I'm so excited to finally have them on the broadcast, because especially talking about their top lane powerhouse, Bota, Yes, it is definitely something we need to be looking out in this match, but especially just look at this matchup on the top lane, Boda versus Armo. Personally, to me, I will have my eyes on this top because it's yeah. going to go wild. I think that's pretty fair, especially considering schemes as well as often a focal point yes. of uh, Supermassive and then dragging a lot of the team up towards that top lane armor, of course, will be pretty familiar to a lot of European views, particularly, of course, he used to play on Mad Lions before that was actually on. Of course, I believe it was. Was it Supermassive he was on when they took down Mad or was that... Um, Wildcats. I always forget. I think it's Wildcats, but Wildcats. I might not be true. I need to go check that one out again. I always yes. forget. So long, but either way, he was obviously playing over in Turkey before all of that. So yes. in some ways, it's an interesting position for him to be back in his home region and in a lot of ways. And now going up against Nigma Galaxy, who have been on that tear, as we've been saying, Jinx first pick now for the side of Nigma Galaxy. Some of the Panthers got a lot of timing on, of course. And Jack Troll locks in the North for something he's put so much time into. It has a many supports of the last few years and looking to get some dominance and pick options straight out of the game. Honestly, throughout all these years, because I have been following Jack Troll's personal career for quite a long time, and it feels like he has always been playing primarily Nautilus. It's, I don't know if it's his favorite champion or the team always demands him to be playing this champion, but it's always to me you know, a straight line from Jack Troll to Nautilus. I think it's also fair to say that a lot of supports have defaulted to the champion. He's just That's been true. so useful He's just over, so good, over yes. how many years at this point. I think most professional sports will have a high number of Nautilus games. A bit like the Azir or the Oriana over yes. the years. You know, if you're playing mid lane, you probably have to have touched Speaking those of, by the way. Point. Indeed, speaking of, locked in immediately for the side of blue. On the other side, very rapid lock in of the Jarvan for Citrus, the Braum as well. Your ability to lock people down to keep the Jinx safe pretty high at this point. 
Luger debating Azeri to maybe try and escape from some of those walls the job no, will be putting no, up. No, 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 no. That looks a little bit risky there. I am not sure about Ezreal pick. I haven't seen this for a long time, but Luger is actually one of those rare Ezreal players out there. He has definitely put a lot of time into, of course, back when he was over in NA on Lysa Seal and NRG did put some fair number of games into that as well out there. So I don't think it's entirely surprising. You can see that not entirely unseen the tournament, only 8% present, so not yes. super high, but uh, certainly not a complete rarity in the yeah. uh, tournament so far. Let's see what else is going to bring to us. The mid lane picks are going to be interesting to me, but we have to go back to the elephant in the room, to the top lane, because it hasn't been picked so far. We already saw a little bit of bounce dedicated to it, namely this rumble in the first rotation from Nygma Galaxy against Armut. I wonder if something else is going to go against him, because honestly, in the yesterday's game that we saw from Papyrus Supermassive, Armut was such a big powerhouse for the team. When the timings were right for his Mega Gnar form, you could see how much he was able to do in the team fights. And of course, Armut synonymous with Anar, that the, the, yes. the, uh, the old storylines from LEC perhaps still mm -hmm. hold true that he is a very proficient and powerful player of that particular champion. He's got R5 here, so does have the ability to pull the Luke Skywalker option with Red 5 standing <laughs> by. Can look to find that key clutch moment to try and deal with Boda, who has been doing things like picking Aurelia into Jason, running over games, did oh, that yes. just yesterday. Very, very proficient on a very wide variety of champions and will probably be asked to blind pick here, but Perhaps the question then is asked, Armour, who is not known for having the greatest champion pool of all time, what does he have here to potentially manage Bodo, who has been such a standout star so far for the Arabian League's number one? But that's why Papara are leaving this decisive offer pick for Armour, because they just decided to lock in Lee Sin for skins for yep. the jungle. We already saw skins from Lee Sin. We know that he's capable of doing a lot of things with this Lee Sin, but this is going to be Renekton in the end for Boda. Very aggressive, early game dominative pick. That it is, and it allows for a little bit more shove and perhaps something to try and get a little bit of priority in a game that you might not always be guaranteed to get that, of course. Jinx with the Rocket's not bad at doing it, I suppose, yes. but does mean that Armut, in a surprise to perhaps you <laughs> in Europe, will lock in the NAR, seeing that it's going to be into an act, and this is a stalwart match up on the top lane that we've seen over years and years and years yes. and years. And years. It feels very nostalgic at this point, to be honest. I haven't seen it for a long time, but now it's, it's not back. as common anymore. Yeah, so unfortunately, like the good could... old days are gone. Yeah, and the armor has a single tier out there. But either <laughs> way, Paris Supermassive had a win yesterday. Yes. It wasn't very. It was a very hard win. It was a exciting game. Yes. But I wouldn't call it necessarily the, the, the heights of League of Legends gameplay. And I don't think it's the height that the Paris Supermassive are capable of showing either. But they are, as it stands, at one and two. Yes. They are not looking like they are anywhere near a lock to get out of groups. So here, the thing is, they win this game despite how good Neymar Galaxy looked yesterday, and they're certainly tied up in scoreline. And the fact that you won a game in shaky fashion doesn't change the fact you won a game, and you have got that all-important W on the board. Yeah. You can still win this game. You can still push forward and try to make sure you are out of this group. There is one game separating every team in this group. At least it was at the beginning of the day. The Galaxy on the other side, they win this game and suddenly they open up that little bit of breathing space. They make that a little bit more likely that they are one of those teams getting out of this group. Most likely they will be the ones getting out of the group, right? Because right now, if I recall correctly, they should be sitting at the same score as BDS Academy. Yeah, are, also so. two on one, yes. That is a very stuck group, I gotta say. But Nemo Galaxy, they are one step closer to getting out of it compared to Papyrus Supermassive. So for Supermassive, this is a very important one of those decisive games that they are having in their schedule right now. And they are pulling a very interesting pick for this one. Honestly, I'm just looking at it and I imagine the team fights in the middle of the game are going to be rather explosive from their side. But even without that, the pick potential is insane with skins on that Lee Sin that he's very proficient with, with Oriana and Ezreal and uh, the Nautilus on top of that. If they catch somebody off guard of Nygma Galaxy, if they catch them on the lack of vision or lack of awareness on the map, this is going to hurt Nygma Galaxy very bad. At least they've got the, the Braum, the Java and the Renekton who are decent enough at playing frontline, brawling yes. their way out to yes. try and make that pickoff option that little bit harder. And of course, they've got this hyperscaling long-range duo that has been Taking over Amir Mass is just that little bit. Uh, really installing the jinx. Hit the rift. Hit the galaxy. Took down BDSA, one of the tournament favorites yesterday. We didn't get to see it on stream, sadly, but they were one of the ones that provided that huge, huge upset. They win, beat Supermassive here, and they are setting themselves up so well, so well to be one of those teams getting out of the group stage. Citrus hanging around the mid lane, wanting to see whether there might be an angle for a. Of an invader award on these wraps, perhaps where Skeens is 
currently hanging around, but as it stands, not too much to be seen. Skeen's a known quantity now, though, because of the flag, and Citrus, because of the ability usage, will also be a spot on the map. We, again, are just looking at each other from our parts of the jungle there, respectively, but not really overstepping any lines, any borders, right? Oh, Citrus might be a little bit, but I want to talk very briefly about Papyrus Supermassive, because yesterday they had one big issue. Maybe Jackdraw was part of this, because right now he's stepping into Danger Zone. No talking about teams, none of that narrative nah, business instead. We're going to have to deal with the fact that Braum has got a very scary passive indeed, and Jackdraw has to flash out immediately. Pangjin burnt the ghost to make that happen, but it's still going to be the summoner advantage nominally to the side of Nygma Galaxy. Of course, Jackal has is running the Hex Flash, so can still play relatively aggressively. Yes. Uh, even if he is down that key summoner. However, it is rather hard to play aggressively into, not into Jinx maybe, but into Braum, because Braum is historically the pick that goes so well against Nautilus, because he can absorb all this aggression into himself, right? And then Jinx stays safe, just like that, look at that! Yeah, but then what happens afterwards? You just get frozen in place, the passive comes on down, the throw at Ignite, Luger steps on forward, beginning to ward out, both AD carries, just running at the opposite supports. Jinx now excited, Pang Jing trying to do some damage, the minions are attacking Luger, flash away, trying to play the round, there's still a heal, there's still a heal, it doesn't matter! Patrick gets the double! No beta required! Nigma Galaxy here to play! Round one already won by Nigma Galaxy on the botlet. That was a very interesting and an explosive fight. And in the end, we're left with almost no summoner spells available on this botlet. A little flash for Clown still. He died graciously, still having this in his pockets. And a heal for Luger that he didn't ever use in this whole fight. I wonder why. Maybe, Maybe there is no answer. I, I guess felt that even with the use of the heal would not be able to either ex escape the Jinx or be able to... Can you even escape or, Excited or, Jinx? Yeah, or, or even do enough yeah. like healing to actually survive the extended fight, but that means you lose a lot of the wave, you only get a little bit off the reset, at least you get the tier on that, I suppose. But the other thing you want to call out is that because of where Luger was, he was taking minion aggro as well yes. as Jinx, which was really rough to see. Especially on such an early level, so it was what level one, level two fight, level one fight. Level one, I think they level got level. One. Did they get level three partway through the fight? I couldn't tell they you. They might have, <laughs> but that was a very early fight, and you take a lot of damage from those little minions onto you when you decide to fight in them. Well, in the end, yes, two to one already. The score is for just three minutes in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Ingma Galaxy already showing us some of the cards they have in their sleeves. I also appreciate that the moment you said, "Yeah, I feel like Nautilus has a rough time into Brom." <laughs> you yeah, know, that passive really difficult, puts up the door, blocks a lot. Of the initial first coming off, but it's like, well, there's exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They just decided Sometimes to showcase that to me. Thank you, Jack Troll. Yeah. Appreciate it. He's my Polish brother, by the way. I mean, he's not my brother, brother. He doesn't know that I exist. But more, more brother, what are you doing? Moment there. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's a very interesting player to me personally, but oh. he is going to show it to me right now again. It's not going to dissuade them from looking for an aggressive player. Still level one. His clowns finally levels up here and schemes. Well, safeguard to Luger, and they call off the dive, thinking it perhaps that touch too risky, and I can't blame them. I think it might have gone a little bit close to call, so they decide against it. Also means, of course, that Skeens is now something of a known quantity. You can see as a result, Citrus has decided, well, I can get a hold of these Raptors that are just spawned. Krugs are about to spawn as well. I can look at those, decide against them. The warning ping comes out thinking it might be too risky to be there. That was a very risky moment for Super Galaxy's bot lane to move forward though, because you could see on the mini-map that there was a wild Aurelian soul moving through mm. the map through a map because his lane was in a such good spot that he shot it in. He goes to the bot lane to see if he can help them out a little bit. The three on three could have been really rough for Supermaster. So it's rather good for them that nothing happened in the end. No conflict happened on the bot lane and everybody's back to farming and looking at each other. I also have to say that uh, the fact that we're getting Arguably the biggest kind of top lane person to watch in the tournament. Yes. So this kind of guy's coming in, Boda. He's playing Renekton right now. We've got Aragon waiting to sort of like rubbing his hands. Yes. Taking all these notes, going that right. <laughs> Break down this Renekton. Let's show exactly what's happening. Um, could be a big deal in this post game. I think we could get some very interesting info on this player that so many people got eyes on. Bot side though, flag drag into the flash to get the knock up the chompers afterwards. The combo is just clean nothing left but sparkling gold for Panjin to put in the inventory three and oh at five minutes for we the jinx we didn't really talk about Panjin before the game started because we had so much to talk about everybody but now we have to talk about Panjin. he has three kills already in the pockets a massive lead compared to this Ezreal and we all know how powerful jinx is going to be in the team fights the moment she gets excited this Panjin is going to be so ahead in terms of the item tempo compared to loser that nigma galaxy can start the fights including jinx much earlier than it normally 
normally would have happened to them. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a good look right now for the side of NGX who win out that 2v2 early, get a return gank afterwards. And with this dragon on top of this early game looking excellent, especially considering they're the ones with the Jinx Aurelian Soul. They're the ones with the Scomp that is really looking for the later game fights. Boda, though, for all the praise he's been getting, about to get engaged on it. So oh. good flash and some very clean footsteps to avoid the follow-up. Skeen throws up the thumbs up. It's Boda that gets out alive. He is such a smooth operator down the top lane. You can see why some people on Twitter have already been calling him the Turkish faker. I believe that was the, <laughs> the phrase that they were using. I am inclined to agree with him already. Just these two little sidesteps were absolutely beautiful. But now he's the one getting the boots in. So feeling a little bit more comfortable on this top lane. The top lane is going toe to toe. 50 minions for both and zero gold difference between the top laners. That's not something you really see every day. Especially if you compare it to all the other lanes where they're going back and forth. Yeah, it's certainly something to keep our eyes on. And uh, it's worth pointing out, this is this is Pangjin's at least, at least going by the stats I can get a hold of. It's his first year of better play. <gasps> he's not had a lot of experience here oh. coming over from Korea. And he's put time into Kaiser. This will be his sixth game of Jinx, I think, oh. all time. Of course, done very well with that. So he's still played a fair number of games. But this is the only season 14 we've got the stats from. And try doing very, very well here. Coming to Emir Masses from a region that is still trying to carve out a space for itself in this team, carve out a space and a reputation for itself in the tournament. And last year was okay. This yes. year, I think it's looking a little better than just okay so far. And the other side, it, it's it's Turkey, right? It's this region that were once a staple of international tournaments for MSI, for Worlds, now in Amir Masters. And in some ways, this is perhaps the least clean, the least sort of scary we've seen this region look in some ways. Like This is the first place team. They're at one and two, and they've been a little bit outplayed, at least in this early game. In some ways, it gets just a little bit nervous here for the Turkish fans back home. You do feel a little bit nervous. That's very true, because Turkey has uh, has already a name and a history in the EMA mm. Masters. It's not Huge. a very long history, but a very loud one. If I'm looking at Nigma Galaxy, however, for Arabian League, the history is uh, not very long as well. But for Nigma Galaxy, it is even shorter, because last year in the summer, they tried to get to EMA Masters, didn't qualify. But wait, Aurelian Sol. Enough for oh, that baby. background info. The combo is clean. That's much more like it. Braum is here, but I'm not sure that Dawn's staying up for long. will throw down a heal. Find himself alive for now. Citrus can maybe look to come over the wall if they overplay their hand, but super massive. We say, look, bit of a questionable early game. Some of these plays looking a little over eager. That one, much more dangerous indeed. But now Jack Troll, an unfortunate oh, path back up, has to flash over to the same <laughs> wall. Twice this game, not even 10 minutes on the clock. Something about a nickel if I had that happen. <laughs> You'd uh, have two nickels, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Perhaps two more flashes. <laughs> oh, that is very unfortunate for him, though, to not have any flash in the bottom for the upcoming couple of minutes, especially since the next Drake is coming in two minutes. It's going to be the second one for Enigma Galaxy if they decide to go for it. But another unfortunate thing for Enigma Galaxy this time, the fact that this Ace Hole died on the laning phase. Look at his items. He is that close to getting to his real line. That is such a big power spike already for him in terms of how much he can do on the lane, how much safer he feels on the lane. He just wanted, to, the poor Dragon just wanted to stay on the lane for a little while longer, get to the item recall, and then join the team into going for another Dragon. But that never happened. Quite yet. Yeah. But you can. You, you kind of cheat the Dragon stacking, right? Because you've got an Aurelian Soul, so you've always got the right. additional Dragon, right? Yeah, um, doesn't count towards Soul, though, sadly. Wait, so then you can take uh, Shivana and just need two matter. Dragons, exactly, as bot lane. Um, Jack Troll, in a dangerous position, does have to pull themselves away. And again, Braum proving dangerous oh, in this 2v2. Yes. Difficult to manage. Still, doesn't lead to too much more right now. The gold lead, just under 1,000 in favor of NGX. The door Ooh. blocks the ultimate and prevents the delay on the reset there. Over towards the Raptors as we go. Blue Thinker coming over and contesting a smite away on the big chicken. And just might debate throwing a dragon strike down to claim the little ones, but will decide against it. Blue continuing to walk on forwards. Does still have the shockwave. Won't use it. Jackpot also roaming towards the mid lane was ready for a potential skirmish with Grumps, not Grumps, uh, Grubs, Grubs also the spawning. Grubs. First three claimed by Papada Supermassive earlier in the game. Could look to get towards that all important five grub mark for the Void Mat spawning. But would like to have six. There is not such a big difference between five and six. But for Enigma Galaxy, it's important to try to snatch away at least two of those. It's not going to be easy, though. Yeah, big engage. Shockwave after his excellent Citrus in danger. Armor times out that Mega Nast so beautifully indeed. Clowns gets his nose honked and needs to get on down to there. Boda is now over. Skeens takes away the blue buff on top of it all. <laughs> and can then go back to the Grub. Super massive. Making a huge play by Grubs. 
a blue buff is just a dessert on top of everything, but I love it so much for Papari Supermassive. Yesterday, one of the big mistakes they were making the team fights was not respecting the Mega Knot timings on Armut. And you can see how big of a player Armut is if he's allowed to play his Knot properly. This time, finally, in this fight, we saw it happening, and what a beautiful result for Supermassive. That evens out the gold, that gets them at least those five grubs. The sixth, I think, about to fall as well on the minimap. And looking a lot more even after a pretty dicey early few minutes, particularly in that bot lane. Citrus will at least trade objectives across the map, get towards the second dragon. Get to see what Rift will be playing the rest of the game out in a moment or two as well. Luger looking for a potential steal, but he's solid 30 seconds too early for that one, I think. But Jack Troll is here. I'm getting worried because when Jack Troll is around, he goes in and you know that. Hang on, they're going to make it happen. It's just haunting around and making sure the access towards the bot lane not going to be as easy for Pang Jin and Clowns as it might be otherwise. Clowns towards oh. There we go. Singularity comes on down. Breath of Light comes clearing out the way. But it has to at this point with the Rylize with that E. Able to clear waves pretty easy. Just keeps him grouped up in a single moment. Jack Troll actually in a dangerous position. Gets a huge knock up afterwards with the death oh. into that huge shockwave. Citrus gets the flag and drag. It's one kill already for the side of NGX. Making it one back. The rocket though from downtown cleans him up skeins. Just needs to hop on four and cleans one back. I think that is in the end a two for two. What a bizarrely close fight. I take up apology. Pangjin dies somewhere in the bot side as Luga gets the 1v1 under the turret. Madness just occurred on the rift. I sure hope we see the replay of what exactly happened on the bot lane because that must have been a good fight and a good revenge fight for Luger finally after what happened in the very beginning of the laning phase for him. But Skins was such a big highlight for me. Skins and Jack Troll together because the fight starts with Jack Troll being caught almost completely off guard. But it is the beautiful knockup that comes immediately after that as a reaction. And then Skins does some magic in the team fight. I need to see the replay of that because that was a beautiful one. Then Flash and Heal manages to get the kill after the rockets come on down, but now we're going right back into matches. Jackal just about gets out of the Cataclysm with the timing on that dredge line. That was inches away from disaster, but Spider Nautilus escapes once more. <laughs> Spider Nautilus does what Spider Nautilus does? Or uh, yeah. How would this Apparently said it's somewhere out there, J. Jonah Jameson is asking for pictures of diving spider people. <laughs> which part, of the, the which, which part of the Spider-Verse is Nautilus? <laughs> you know what? I don't think I want to know the answer. Is this like an arcane crossover? Is this what's going to happen? I would be down for that. Just make it happen. Oh, uh, okay. Now you bought me. Yes. You, you can take that one for free, right? <laughs> Get for Tisha touch with Marvel. <laughs> Just send us a D-shot, please. One for both will be fine. <laughs> At least as well, for obvious reasons. Uh, yes. Um, in her human form, preferably, she has too many legs in the spider form. I don't like it. And she has the amount of legs that the spider has, which is in fact... I don't like spiders and the I'm amount not, of legs they have. Great not judging, either. but... Like, like I, I, I genuinely have, like, it's like a family story, the, like, oh. legend that I... Like, spiders love me. Oh. I don't love spiders. They, they just sorry. like They turn up in and around my person on a regular basis. Your star-crossed lovers who were never meant to help me. I don't want that in my life. <laughs> Like, like, seriously, it's been like inside pillowcases, books. Oh my god! I had one fly through a window of a speedboat. <gasps> like, it was, it was, it was Can you not off. continue, yeah. please? No, I mean, yeah, I, I appreciate it's you, but it's be, careful. Yeah, it's making me quite, quite yeah. uncomfortable as well. Maybe, maybe go back to League of Legends. Where... Yeah, you know what? It's safer here. No but spiders. This is much, this is much nicer. Much yes. safer. Yeah, especially for super massive. Look at them. Look at what they're doing on the bot lane. Very nice, safe bot lane, especially with no outer turret available anymore for Indian Galaxy. They have to rotate board on the bot lane because now the bot lane definitely has to go on the other side of the map. What else they can they do here? And serious credit over to the likes of Luger as well for the recovery after the early lane went so yes. desperately wrong. They've now managed to get feeds across the map. They're up at one and a half thousand gold. That's a pretty solid point to be at as plates have fallen. And you are going to be scaling just fine yourself. You can start to try and break the Dragon Daddy, of course. Name the Galaxy not out of this game by any met metric, but a play like this could prove interesting. They try to double patch in. The rockets go flying. The turret is down. Two dead. The teleport is a disaster. It's a clockwork massacre in the top side. Skeens picks up the jinx, but she's already done the damage. She got to wear her. Where are you thinking you're going blind, Monk? There's nowhere to be found but the grave. Shut down, going the way of Aurelian Sol, Enigma Galaxy. The moment we say it looks good for Supermassive. Oh no, it's not. Oh no, it's not, not at all. 90.
to 7 is the score in the end. And Ying Macalix is strongly leading. And that is the power of Jinx, right? Even though Jinx is the one dying in the end, it didn't matter too much because it was only skins left in the fight for Ying Macalix to devour. The moment Pang Jin gets excited in the team fight, there is no going back for Supermassive after that. And the team does everything to make sure he gets excited and he stays safe for the majority of the fight. And you have to start calling it out. The TCL finals. Supermassive won, yes, but it was an absolute bloodbath. Yes. With, yes, some good mechanical plays, but some dubious calls to engage where leads were thrown away looking to extend them. People who had great win conditions in early game, losing it out later on pretty consistently across the board. And we saw it even in the win yesterday. So back and forth, great plays for Papara Supermassive. And then slightly head scratching moments too. That's another one of them. They try to jump on Jinx. They get jumped on by uh, the, the, the Charm. And it all yes. goes wrong from there. Now they're going to start sieging on into the mid lane. And that lead they built up, it's all gone. And they're right back to square one. And they have look at their soul. Look at the timings for the oh drag. And the drag is up, not the best soul, but it's the soul regardless, right? And there is no way Super Massive can fight with this dragon right now. They go in the skies, just set up on their heads immediately. Skeen's looking for a flank, maybe he can find the angle. It's a decent Ezreal, but the True Shot Barrage doing some work. Citrus with that Cataclysm back up and available. Between that and the skies descending, it's looking like potentially the end of days for Supermassive. They must find a moment. The Event Horizon is approaching. It's a good kick. The skies come descending, but the health bars aren't looking fantastic. Right now, Vinic Galaxy over the wall goes to Haas to get a kill. The Rocket not quite enough to get a kill with the Jackal, but afterwards, the Flag and Drag claims a few more. Supermassive are crashing under the weight of their own hubris they should not have fought. They lose the soul point. Pangjin is zoomed in on. This Jinx is just untouchable now. It's not only Jinx who is excited after this fight, it's all of us who are excited for Pangjin and for Nygma. Galaxy 14 to 9, three dragons in their pockets and so, so much gold for everybody. That was such a great fight in terms of positioning of everybody, especially I love looking at Boda. He was zoning out skins for the majority of the action around the pit because he knew that the jungler of the enemy team is not allowed to get anywhere close to the pit. And I cannot wait to see the gold graph for this game. Yes. It is going to be an absolute roller coaster. Put your hands up back home and scream if you want to go faster, because it is going <laughs> to be absolutely unreal. We were looking at a you know, 2,000 gold lead one way. It's now switched over a few minutes later, straight back to 3,500 gold the other. That's what? 5,500 K? 5,500 K? 5,500 gold. Swing there, which is pretty huge to manage. Two items now completed. Pretty much across the board for Enigma Galaxy. Not there yet on the other side for Supermassive. At least you've got that in for the Ezreal. You're waiting for that death cap completion yes. for Blue, which would be a huge point in power. But until then, it is very much Nigma Galaxy in the Ascendancy. They've got themselves Soul Point. They've got themselves the Aurelian Soul, of course, in that Jinx. You now, this only gets harder from here. It doesn't get any easier for Supermassive, that's very true, because yes, the scaling is going to keep coming and coming further and further for Enigma Galaxy, and the longer the fights go, the more items are going to be for Jinx. On two items, already a monster. On three items, what is uh, what, what is scarier than a monster? A spider! She's growing additional legs with more it. items or something. I'm oh, sorry! <laughs> Fine, okay, but do you get what I'm talking about? Jinx is going to be extremely scary for Supermassive, especially because you Should don't be really have any approach spider, to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the point, right? Skeens, in, in theory, is supposed to have an approach to her, but he can. Oh, he can now. Yeah. That was beautiful! Managed to get on the package, he's still gonna flash away. Despite the heroics, despite the angle, cannot kill the Jinx. Luger still dies, overcomes Nick for Galaxy with the Star Forger himself to make something happen. Finally, Armour kills off Jinx. Maybe they can start to turn this one around, but the Aurelian Soul still untouched, still a threat, still looking to breathe a little more life into this galaxy of theirs. Jack Troll thrown under the bridge where he belongs. No more tolls collected. Skeens alone survives. You kill one carry, but that's the problem. There is more than one carry off the side of Nigma Galaxy. Very nice play right there from Almud. Finally getting the Mega now getting onto Pangjin immediately and in removing these things from the equation because the initial engage did not work out for Supermassive. But what does it matter? If nobody can do anything to A-Soul as the aftermath of this fight, look at that. The inner turret on the mid lane completely gone. The map is so opened up for Nigma Galaxy right now. The Baron is surely next on the menu for them. And the thing is, they managed to get the Jinx, and it was done so well. Skeens yes. gets this huge angle, but Jinx still survived. Still gets to throw some damage out. Armour finally comes in. 
cleans up the Nar, but Luke is already dead. The Aurelian Soul is untouched. You've burned everything to kill the Jinx. You've got no way to threaten that dragon anymore. And the end result is still... Well, you can see it in the graphs here. That is a oh. pretty significant lead at this point. A over 1,000 DPM difference, I think, there between the two carries, if I'm reading those numbers correct. I think you are reading those numbers correct. And those are quite depressive numbers for Supermassive right now because they need to work around them and they need to find their ways back into the game. But still no second item for Blue. Still no hope for Supermassive to get to these Baron. They need to come up with something creative right here, right now. But how can you come up with something creative when you have no turrets available to you? It is very difficult. And, you know, we saw the numbers there, perhaps not as drastic as you might expect considering how the game's gone. But that's an Ezreal, right? He's been queuing tanks the entire game. His numbers were always going to be high. True. And, you know, normally it's Ezreal as a poke champion who should be leading those numbers. Mm. Nearly whatever the game state. And that's a pretty scary position to be in. We've got ourselves just under a minute until Sol for Nigma Galaxy. So many of these towers have now fallen. The map looking a lot smaller and a lot darker than they'd like. Tehash stepping on forwards with the Astral Flight brings the skies descending onto Luga. There's Citrus who flags, drags, and helps his mid laner bring down Luga one more time. Nautilus falls just after Jack Troll. Nowhere to go but an early grave. They've got two additional members. They get a shove in mid lane. They can turn back towards Baron or Soul at their pleasure. Armut, are you sure you're on the part of the jungle? Because it's not belonging to you anymore, my friend! To hop away, Speed's now in danger, gets slowed down by the Rylas. Cataclysm afterwards could try and kick someone out. The damage afterwards is a super mega death rocket. Helps claim one more, and Jinx gets excited. Armut cannot claim anything at the back end of it all. Blue will shockwave a Renekton alone. That's about it. I apologize. That was just command dissonance, but. Fortunately for them, the shockwaves just haven't been connecting alongside everything else. Right back towards the Baron they go. Additional kills secured. Game looking more and more unwinnable for Papara Super Massive. And more and more like a surety for Nygma Galaxy. There is such a big difference between Nygma Galaxy and Papara Super Massive. And that is how well coordinated the teams are. Because Super Massive are quite a nasty coordinated team. But it's nowhere near to what Nygma Galaxy have been able to showcase to us in this game. Because they are playing the game save the Mr. President, right? And they have two Mr. President. They have Jinx and they have Aurelian Soul. And the rest of the team make sure that they stay as protected as possible. That they have the kills delivered to them. Soul live. Infinity Edge completed for the likes of Pangjin. This could well be the last gasp for Papara Supermassive. It is an unforgiving schedule. Amir Mass is brutal in the extreme. The number one team from Turkey, they won it. Back in spring did this region with the Wildcats against Unicorns of Love, Sexy Edition at the time. They're going to be down Sol, they're going to be down the Baron, and look at the names on that team. Every single one has spent a significant amount of Tier 1 play in EU, in NA, around the globe. And to be in this position, to be struggling to be coordinated and understanding of the map when they're trying to make plays happen, it's just not been happening in the way they're looking for. Once again, Armut jumped on, has to jump away with a crunch. A tier two falls and their option this game just so severely limited now. There, without the blue at the moment, blue is in the top lane, removing the turret, getting at least some gold for the team, but he will have to TP back very, very soon because look at the speed with which Nygma Galaxy are going through the enemy base. Jinx excited once more with the destruction of another structure towards the mid lane. They will now rotate another minion wave ready and waiting to help them take down that tower. Skeens lands, a sonic wave, he gets in. Matt might be the angle they need. Pantin backs away though. The guy is descend. Luger is dead. Jack Troll is dead. Armut is dead. Super massive are dead. What is a black hole to the maker of stars? He's looking for a pentakill. He'll find it. Dias brings Nygma to three and one. It's the pentakill for the dragon. It's the pentakill for Nygma Galaxy. It is the three one to Nygma Galaxy. The Arabian League did not disappoint us this time. What a beautiful performance from everybody. 27 to 11 and they go further. They are closer and closer. They're getting out of the groups and showing everyone what this new league is ready to bring to EMA Masters. Wow. So many people so uncertain what to make of the Arabian League and the people who were following this league were saying do not sleep on this region. Do not doubt what they are capable of. They are now 3-1. and one. They took down BDSA yesterday. They end the game today with an absolutely gorgeous pentakill and Aurelian soul. 
you have to start wondering how threatening and how fast this Dark Horse could run because they could genuinely win the race here if they continue on the trajectory they have. That was pretty exciting. That was very exciting. It's again, it's as excited as much as Jinx was in every single fight of theirs. The beautiful pentakill in the end just solidifies how good everybody is on this team individually and together as a team combined as one single unit. They're almost unstoppable at this point. I mean, on the other side, though, you've got to start commiserating a little bit for Paris Super Massive, yeah. who now find themselves in a very difficult position. Of course, it's not quite lights out for them yet, but it is looking pretty dire. However, that'll be enough from us to break down that game. Another stylish Arabian League victory. It's the desk. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you. That was exciting. It was good fun. It was good fun. Let's talk about picks. <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready? You just repeat everything they say. Like, yeah. you're like a <laughs> yeah, parrot. I heard that yesterday. <laughs> it was fun. Yes, it was fun. He taught me that. Yeah. Erdogan taught me that. Renekton. Sam is handsome. So that was a Sam lovely day. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you got you baited. <laughs> you got you baited. Don't, don't, don't storm. Don't. Broke him, you me now. No, I didn't broke him. So you, you broke him, him. Okay, no, he plays like Evelyn. He plays Evelyn. His zero is equal to the. It's passive. a bit inflated, I think. What yeah. plus four hundred OP usually? Evelyn mains, I think, higher than they they should be. Yeah, ah, that's exactly no. true. Renekton yeah, mains four hundred lower than they yeah. should Let's be. Let's not flame him In my because case. his zero is like the passive of Evelyn. He's invisible. So moving on to the yep. <laughs> his one, I, I want to talk about storyline on this situation where you look, yep. love your production. You get the Thank jinx. You. you get the Jarvan, and then. You go for the Ezreal. I want to understand what was the plan. I saw two fingers Sorry. raising, so pick. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Like Ezreal, okay, <laughs> so what they've done is they picked Ezreal into Jarvan, so they don't have two immobiles, right? And they don't get a lot of value to the Jarvan. Yeah. Um, the problem with you, when you do that is you start to run out of room for volatility to snowball against a potential jinx Azel combo, which we see a lot now. And this, this duo is such Exodia come mid to late game if you do not snowball early. That when uh, when you don't draft these tools to play early game, and you only give yourself a very limited window in the mid game with the Lee Sin plus the Ori Ball, which we saw, um, you don't have the limit. You don't. You can't use the limited window to snowball the game to shut down the Jinx Aesol well enough. And I mean, I think that's why it's a mistake by Paparazzi with Massive yeah. not to ban the Jinx. We talked about the Jinx earlier on, yeah. and if it doesn't play the lane swap, it's still flexible to play. You know, it can still play the two too, right? Yeah, depending on what the lane was, and the lane here with this the Brom picked up. And I, I think that's also why, for the other side of Papara Supermassive, like you were talking about, okay, the Ezreal can play into the Jarvan, right? But playing into the rest of the comp of Nygma Galaxy was an issue. And we saw in this game, like, picking Ezreal into Brom, first issue, right? The 2v2 became an issue because Jack Troll unfortunately had to burn Flash over yeah. the wall, no summoners in lane, and then versing a lethal tempo Jinx was hard to, to give out early resources. Yeah, it was definitely uh, an interesting ball, and I think yeah. giving over that double kill, you, you all in a Braum with lethal tempo uh, yeah. on the Jinx, and it's just it's just losing, right? You want to take these short trades on Nautilus versus Braum and chip away at the, the, the Braum's condition in lane where he has to run out mana, he has to eventually reset, maybe eventually, you know, his HP is low enough to take an all in. Um, and that just snowballs the Jinx to a point where you, you know, she's so accelerated. And then this play comes out topside where this just really seals the deal, right? At this, after this point in the game, you can't really come back well enough. Your your options are so limited. Skeens can't keep out playing despite yeah. being so good on Lee Sin yesterday and today. He can't out, out it, play he, and he. And he was Nathan. really good. Like Skeens yeah. like gets props from, from both of us. Um, as you said, Lee Sin yesterday, what sealed the deal and what won them the game. This is what almost brought the comeback. And I feel like it would have been a very different situation if that double wasn't given over, it if exists, that timer yeah. on the Ezreal yeah. flash of Luger by uh, by Citrus wasn't burned as well to give a, a third kill over to the Jinx. Like if there wasn't as much gold early on in this hyperscaling Eddie carry, then for Nigma they wouldn't have had that window in the mid game so early on yeah. to abuse the scaling we talked about of the yeah. Exodia duo, your words. And I just want to highlight, you know, Nigma they played well, right? Boda, yeah. I want to highlight in that last team fight we just saw before this one, he was very successfully uh, zoning off Skeens on the Lee Sin to deny any kind of... The only way they win this team fight is if Skeens gets some magical kick yep. of the carry. But you had the Renekton, Boda on this Renekton, zoning off Skeens on the Lee Sin, refusing to let him pass so that by the time Lee Sin ever got in range, he was so low, he just had to disengage. So really good team fighting coming out of Nygma as well. So there was one window, and in my opinion, that was Skeens opening the window. Yeah, I mean, again, short window, though, because of what happened in the other game with Jinx. Yep. Also, props to Blue. I think that it was how the Lisa and Orianna worked together, yeah. which was, again, such a short timer that they really abused nicely. 
but I mean, it is really oh, hard man. when like Aurelian Soul we're seeing, you know, back in the meta, and he has a really limited punishability. Yeah, if that's a word. I mean, it's just it's just the best ult in the game, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's so nutty. Once you get to this point in the game, I mean, it's just the, oh, if gosh. you're not snowballed. Remember when started. they asked for the Aurelian's buffs? Yeah. You remember? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, the, the thing is, like, you should be getting prior with this Orianna into the ASOL as well and use that as a potential snowball tool, but there's just nothing to go to the sides for. You have no setup in the Nar early. You can't punish from an active with the Nar lane. Mm. You can't punish using the Ezreal because the Ezreal is just not as much of a stat stick as potential other champions early, and the Braum negates any kind of Nautilus engage. So you're just stuck as skeins with an Orianna with no setup early game, and you just have to run around praying to get to that mid game. And with such a conditional comp as well, I mean, the, the Braum is such a negating factor when you're so far ahead as well and you're only doing limited yeah. damage how frustrating is it to burst this comp yeah you know when when brom stops half of it exactly Nima played with a comp that is so easy to execute and yeah. their, their, their yeah. gameplay it's was just beautiful you the three kill jigs but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it like, kind of helps as well mm. but uh yeah i'm just i got i just oh it's a news report what happened i'm gonna give you the message well i know it's a team game I've heard it before. No, but, uh, I did say that, yeah. <laughs> I know, just I'm just explaining you. Just but case. when you look into, into Supermassive, you can't keep count of, uh, hey, Skins needs to save us. Yeah. yeah. On this sort of stage, you can't allow that. Not allowed. No. So, I mean, ultimately, just to put a ribbon on it all, right? I think what it came down to was Skeens had an excellent jungle matchup. He got jungle resource to get a jungle matchup into a blind Jarvan, right? Fantastic matchup because you're so mobile. Um, he also had tools in the prior and the mid lane. But he had to keep making the plays in the mid game. And if he didn't, if he ever fell behind, if a play ever like fell apart, they would lose the game. It was all on to him. And unfortunately, they just couldn't keep doing it. On the other side though, Nygma, well, we finally got to see them and they're exactly yeah. what we expected, no? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, Boat, a is, powerhouse. Boat is a bit of a powerhouse on Renekton, right? Like we've seen flexibility from him. If anyone out there has been tracking his drafts as well, the bot 2v2 um, set up for success, which was nice. And I, I feel like, I mean, these guys are these guys are probably through. Let's be real. What's that yeah. third win? We three and one now. Yeah, I think, I think three so, yeah. and one. And I feel like as soon as you get over the hump of of three and one, you know, most likely it's you're really in a hard not to go through. It, yeah. I mean, when you play Renekton like that, it's almost like you can get to challenger with Renekton. It, yeah. You could definitely do Don't it, talk right? To me. <laughs> you could <laughs> definitely do it. Yeah, I mean, look. Yeah, there's a way. Yeah, for sure. Right? And I imagine this team is just so confident now that you're just going to see them play better and better because they're like emotional snowballing. You know, you just keep winning and it feels like True. the enemy team can't even touch you early yeah. game. You're winning 2v2s down bot side. You're not losing top despite counter matchups. It's just going to get better and better and how, better for this How league. frustrating that would have been for Skeens though. Like further yeah. on that point, just seeing the jack roll flash and like that yeah. bottom lane going a, an elongated 2v2 versus Jinx. Yeah. And Jinx and Brom, like... Jinx, Brom, just Beginning of the game, you're still doing Wolves. I'll be so double and you're like, kill. please, please <laughs> don't all in trade. We're <laughs> my, about to jump into another problem. one, and that's why we need to take a quick pause. But do you know what game is after this one, after the pause? We just showed it below. I saw Papara again. Again? I saw Papara Supermassive in BDS Academy. That's a spicy one. Why'd that's you wink just... at me? Is that correct? I'm, I'm actually giving you a hint. Because I know you suck at games, so yeah, I'm just giving you a I do not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a quick pause and we'll be right back after these few minutes. So don't go anywhere. I'm watching you. I'll see you soon. Talking 
I'm sick of it oh, The same old stories I ain't gonna listen to this No, no, you had me so bad Welcome back to the Warcast Premier Masters Spring 2024 Championship here in the group stage. I'm Initialize, still Solari, and we have got a qualification slash elimination match here. We're back with the Para Super Massive. They're going up against BDSA, who are currently three and one. On the other side, it's Super Massive at one and three. BDSA win this, they get a lot top two. Paris Super Massive lose this in trade, of course. They are locked out of the tournament. It is a must win for both teams. This is a do or die for both of them, right? I mean, for BDSA, it's not as much as do or die. They're in such a good spot right now, but there is still Enigma Galaxy with the same score as them. We just saw them winning against Papar Super Massive. Actually, not much time for the teams between the games to rest, but I hope Papar Super Massive did have a good rest in between these two because this game, again, if they lose, it's all over for them. The last stand for one of the three Turkish teams we have in EMEA Masters this year. It's going to be so difficult because after losing that last game to Nick Galaxy yes. in the manner they did, the Aurelian Soul Pentacle at the end oh. of it all, it is difficult to say the least. They'll be over on blue side this time around. BDSA, our first time looking at them in the tournament here on the English broadcast. But of course, these names should be no surprise, no stranger to anybody who's been following the ERLs in many minds. This is the team to look at, despite being the second seed from LFL. They may well be just the tournament favorites, period. Fans are excited to come on through. Fi, Ash, Callista, Kadui being targeted, understandable. He is a very dominant player. On the other side, Nama loses the Nar. The Rumble's down as well. The Lee Sin away from Skeens, who, despite the loss, was certainly a threat throughout the yes. game on the chat. Yes, they were very scary. You can see just how much effort they were putting into trying to get to these very important carries on the side of mm. Nigma Galaxy and shutting them down. And again, when they were being played around, the team was really finding their successes. But this time, yes, these two picks not available and they are opening up with a jinx for a Luger. Uh, just had a very interesting laning phase between these very champions last game. So this time, maybe time for revenge. A little bit of that. And this time it won't be the Ezreal Nautilus into a brawl, yeah. which was a rough deal. Oh, yes. Um, for all that Luger played the Ezreal, hey, I think. You know, he was still struggling, the team was still struggling to stay alive. The problem is you've locked the jinx and BDSA 
are no slouches when it comes to being able to punish champions like that. They immediately lock in a Talia for Rika. They're looking at something like the Javan for Skumon. Yes. But we'll wait to see what it gets locked in. And Nunu would be hilarious for Skumon. <laughs> Notorious for the hover and the occasional pick of that yes. champion over the years. Instead, we'll go towards the Volley there. Another icy champion. Another champion that can make things happen early. You link that up with the Talia. Point and click into a seismic shove. It's pretty difficult to manage. I'm hovering this area right now. Picking her is going to be a little bit risky into these two champions that BDSA have already showed to the opponents, especially into Talia, who will not let, ideally, Ari move around in the team fights. Yeah, I think you can play up this matchup. You can, well but it's enough. a tricky one. And, and it's worth saying, so the last time I saw this one, I think it was Knight beating up Rookie on it. Uh, <gasps> actually, yes. one of the things you can do is Yes, you get stunned up on the first use of your army, but after that, you're free to dash as much as you yeah. want. It only stuns you up one time. So you can still do quite a lot of work around it if you're playing around the niche stuff. Jack Troll, though, Ooh. will lock in a champion he was once oh so known for. The Thresh locked in. Yes. It's a good pairing with the Jinx. It's a way to keep her safe, especially when people are looking to dive onto her. So going back to comfort in this must win match up for, of course, the squad from Supermassive. And my God, that's an insta Twitch lock. That's a rat. That's a rat right there in the BDSC. When did Cage will get into a mere match? Exactly. Is, is XD hey, Derex in chat? Huh? Where's, where's he gone? We lost his Derex. <laughs> we need it right here right now, please, because this is important. This is <laughs> this is the first time I'm seeing Twitch on the pro scene in ages, at least in the games that I'm casting. So we, we, saw, I, we saw it very briefly in the likes of LPL where it was able locking it in, but it was yes. in very specific um, scenarios. I think it was into Smolder or the Senna, or one of the two. Uh, and you basically try to like now. really aggressively attack the the, the early scale yes. the scaling champions to try and get on top of them. I don't know what this one's going to be as yet. It's likely going down towards Kudui. I don't think we're going to be seeing Volley Bear top and Twitch jungle. It's been a while since those <laughs> things. Oh, so yes. we're assuming Twitch JD carry, and it has been a moment from that. They're looking to ban away some of the key supports from it. That will be the Milio, of course, which can enchant it. Maybe something like a Lulu on top of it. On the yes. other side, Jarvan and the Rek'Sai off the team. Yes, I would love to see some enchanter go into Paris hands. Honestly, I would love to see anything go into Paris hands because for me, he is one of the most exciting players going overall into this tournament. I'm a big supporter and joyous, but everybody should be enjoying Paris, especially for Paris Supermassive because they have quite a history together, right? Yeah, so of course, when uh, Paris kind of first came into the scene as a support and has now made himself into such a stellar player right up there as arguably the best support in the whole system right now, he started off over on Papyrus Supermassive, mm -hmm. he moved over to the likes of Wildcats and Bishik as he played on the big three. Yeah. And he's now left the region. He's now on BDSA, arguably the tournament favorites, potentially to knock out his old team, his old region here from the group. <gasps> A lot of history yes. there as Paris locks in Pike as well. This bot lane. They both go invisible. They both jump sword. I try. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. You would hate to play against them it's right so now. Obnoxious. You have to admit it. Exactly. It is almost unplayable at this point. It's not just, you know, physical. It's mental. Yeah, I oh. mean, Viego locked in now. So you've got yourself a reset combo with the Ari Viego. You get one kill. Jinx, Viego, uh, Ari all get that kind of reset going. Yes. So you're pretty happy with that. I'm assuming we're not going to see the Jin locked top. <laughs> so we see what Armut wants to go for. Like, Supermassive, it, it, the comp makes sense. It's just on the other side. BDSA yeah. have gone into the kitchen and pulled out something a little avant-garde. Yeah, some cheesy stuff happening on the BDSA side. Like, yeah. if you look here at Supermassive, like here, it's fine. But then you look at the other side and you're like, oh my God, what is going on for Supermassive? This is not That's going to be an easy one. Just look at that. Yeah. What is this? It's... Okay. Madness. Also worth noting here as well, Genax, who... Um, Steve famously had a pretty solid run over in the early yes. before he came down here um, to the ERLs. Wide champion pool definitely got some strength to him as giving given the red five counter pick decides to go towards the Aatrox, which is a solid enough matchup yeah. into the Sante. Of course, you were kind of needing a little bit of frontline considering the rest of your team, particularly your mid down through support is pretty squishy. Yeah. So I think the Aatrox makes some sense. There's also a possibility that Luger and Jack Troll will decide to completely abandon the, doplet, the bot lane, sorry, and try to go towards the top lane. Yeah. And in this case, we see quite often that Aatrox may be not the most popular pick into those lane spots, but still a very solid one because he can still stay under the turret, unkillable force there, farming up, absorbing at least some of the experience that is coming his way. And, and it does feel like we've seen less of the lane swaps today compared True. to yesterday when we saw regularly lane swaps with the Jinx in particular. I've seen the Twitch <laughs> once and it's just immediately on the brain. XDDs kind of filling up what is supposed to be on, you know, casting things like words and entertainment and instead of, you know, it's just Twitch emotes. What can I do? Yeah. 7TV is corrupt, isn't it? 
Same here, obviously. <laughs> so I guess at this point, Solari, I think it obviously makes a little bit more sense what supermassive comps want to do. It's kill first target, get the resets. Yes. Murder thing. And they have good resets, right? Yeah, for, for the side of BDSA, I, I'm assuming it's much more about the vision control into pick yes. combo, right? Yes, absolutely so. They have to be really careful about their vision control because if they can catch somebody on the enemy team off that, it is almost a guaranteed kill for them, especially with the Twitch Pike combination moving around the map. Yeah, because Folly Bear lands a stun. Talia, Pike, Twitch pop out of nowhere and blow up whoever's there. That's exactly it. My issue then becomes what happens if the mid game goes wrong? Is then you've suddenly got Ooh. a Pike and a Twitch trying to deep fight. Not as easy, perhaps. Of course, you are looking at some champions that do like to play around low health bars and. Pike loves to punish that, so that's that could true. prove difficult. But at least on paper, I feel it's going to be a bit simpler, perhaps, to execute a team fight as Supermassive. Yes, if we're talking, if we're talking about you no know, mind games and just a five on five, for example, around an objective where everybody sees what exactly is going on around the, the enemy team, it is much harder for BDS Academy to find a good approach onto the enemies because yes, they have some engaged with a volley beer, with a follow up from Talia and Aatrox, but then what exactly are Twitch and Pike are going to do in this situation? Because they're going to be very susceptible to the enemy damage, and there is a lot of it: the damage and the backline access. Interesting to watch because uh, the thing is, the access to the backline to some of these high priority targets, particularly the Jinx. Yes, you have got so many avenues of attack especially if vision control gets limited that if you start losing control of those walls the umbral glaive starts coming on through twitch starts slipping off vision with the ambush and you go well i have no idea whether i can even touch this way and then yeah. you're dropping farm just off lack of knowledge and then even if you do take the fireball then you know you guaranteed the moment you do that the pike is actually there yes he's it's already like, on your back schrodinger's pike you know is the pike there in the lane or not the answer is yes. The the wave. Yes, yes. The, the moment you ask this question, you already know the answer, unfortunately. It's like, you know, when you toss the coin, usually they say you already know what answer you want from this coin. So with Pike, it's the same. The problem is, I don't think I'm qualified to talk about quantum superposition on, on, <laughs> on cast. I can make these kind of vague references to cardboard boxes and cats or creatures of undeath that may live within them. But like, I, I, this is this is what I've got, guys, you know? Like, I have to leave this very shallowly because we start heading. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly timey wimey oh, yes. stuff. And um, really, what I'd rather be talking about is Pike pressing R. Yes. That sounds it's good. very easy. He presses R and somebody's dead. Almost guaranteed because uh, how many targets does he have on the enemy team? One, two, at least three targets that are going to be I, very I, easy, horrible. Yeah, I feel like even the Thresh, unless they really get snowballed, is not mm. going to be the easiest not to stay alive. Of course, has got CC and ways to punish the Pike going forwards with the play the hook of course and then one of the changes that happened to pike was that not pike to thrash was hitting the hook reduces the cooldown so you can kind of chain those hooks into a long sequence of cool plays but um even so thrash that was once a champion that was all over pro play every player was known for their thrash has really become much more of a, a pocket pick now than than a staple in some ways it feels like nautilus really has taken on the role that the thrash might and honestly pike or blitzcrank if you're wanting something a bit mm -hmm. spicier over the thrash so what you're saying basically is that Sante has a very big load on his big shoulders oh, right now, right? Yeah. Because he has to be the one to carry the team in the big team fights. He has to absorb all this damage coming from BDS Academy. And I, frankly, how exactly are they going to deal with this Sante? Yeah, I mean, that, that could get difficult. Because again, like, I suppose there is a world where Twitch goes towards something like a Blade of the Green King, even if that's not really the build. But what towards else can so he much. go to? Is yeah, this so like, again, like, my knowledge on the Twitch builds these like Kraken Slayer tends yeah. to be a bit more like Rage Blade used to be a thing. Um, I guess we can see what, what going towards my. Full disclosure, my knowledge on Twitch builds is perhaps a little limited. I'll do a little bit of research when we get a chance uh, in game to see what the, the average pi oh, I mean, Twitch main is doing. We but saw Kaltis playing quite a lot of that's Twitch. That's true. When she, did, she did cosplay it oh, recently yeah. as well in the extraordinary I fashion. Seen this I mean, it was, it's a pretty good video, guys. Go check out Kaltis' Twitter. There's, there's, there's extremely awesome content to be viewed and possibly Absorbed. considered <laughs> just in general as to the mental well-being of people involved because that was mad. That it, was, it was a whole thing. Like it was like it's like you know when you get those like those bargain bucket cosplays. Like what could I do? Is like well I've got some tights and a block of cheese. Like this, <laughs> like this toy crossbow that kind of works. I see works. where you're going. It was it was extremely excellent. I, I, I enjoyed it. it. It was good fun. Still, we've got a little bit of time before yes. we get into game. Just get worth production. We're looking at about three minutes time, guys. We've got a little bit of time to break down what's going on. And uh, jokes aside. Um, there is a concern here for BDSA that if they do fall behind and actually what happens is they go for one of these plays, they overplay it in the mid game, 
you give one kill over to Papara Supermassive and so many people just crack their knuckles and run at you with extra stuff available. The Jinx passive, the Viego passive, the, uh, the, the Ari, Ari, you know, the Ari right. of course, and then the reset on her. Um, it's, oh, it's Essence Devouring. Um, Essence Theft, the passive. Yes. That's the one it is. Um, you know, you get all those resets there as well. It's super huge. Fresh gets to throw another hook. All these things are very, very scary. So if someone like the Pike becomes a liability or the Twitch coming out of the ambush ends up being picked off a lot, I could see that getting quite scary if they're not, you know, prepared for that. Because that is the problem with Pike, right? If Pike is set ahead, he's going to be a massive nuance for the enemy team to deal with. However, he's if he's left behind, we would pretty much see Pike just running around the map and clearing out the vision of the enemies. And that is everything that he can do. Because in the big team fights, yes, he leaves around those squishy opponents. He leaves around finding the execute angles onto them. But if he cannot find them, if he doesn't have enough damage for that, he dies and that's it. I think the other thing that probably is going to be worth keeping our eyes on is that towers for the side of Paris Massive might be more of an illusion of safety than actual safety. Yes. Because you have so many ways to turn off towers. The Volley Bear in particular, he's got that old Ohm Wrecker style passive. Talir can turn up with the wall. Twitch, Pike, turn out from invisibility. Aatrox could be the person the lane you're turning up to. We'll have the teleport as well. The ability for BDS Academy to collapse, dive, and mitigate a tower. If you're there by yourself and you're not ready to respond to Supermassive, the five-man, you know, Goomba squad could come along <laughs> and turn it into a Mario game real fast. Because there is a lot of map mobility for them, right? And honestly, I would expect the bot lane to not really stay that much on the bot lane. Both of them, or just separately, at least just Pike, they're going to move around the map a lot, helping out wherever it is possible. I think Skins is going to be very help very thankful for that, because he is usually the one trying to set up things around the map as much as possible. If Pike is helping them out, such a good thing to do. We are finally on to the rift for this oh-so-important match. A reminder of the stakes. Supermassive lose. They are out of the tournament. No longer able to reach that three-win mark required to match BDSA or Nygma Galaxy. If BDSA win, they will be four and two. They will lock top two. That is a huge, huge win for them. Of course, they'll likely be fighting off with the likes of... Nygma Galaxy, who did beat them yesterday, of course, for that top two. Of course, no guarantee there. We don't know what's going on with their Minions match against Bastones. I believe it will be. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. The level one wards, the level one attempts from both teams here. Maybe amounted too much, but some early vision. That ward put down by BDSA is a known quantity for by Papara Supermassive. I wonder whether they'll try and go and sweep it out in this early game. They would have to, right? Because we talked about the importance of the vision, but especially for super massive, it is going to be crucial. They need to have as much rating as, pos as possible on both Kidui and Paris to understand how they're moving around the map. If they decide to collapse onto you, you better be prepared for that. So I'm expecting a lot of vision from the blue side in this game. Exactly that, and the eyes on that mid jungle. Blue skeins on the Ari Viego combo that is. Very dangerous indeed, and Skeens is someone who has defaulted to Viego in the past when he needs to be a carry, when he needs to be um, called upon to be the one that really takes the team over the line. He really tried in that last game. That Lee Sim was dangerous, making yes. angles onto the Jinx I didn't think was likely to happen. The, the follow-up wasn't quite there, but the play itself, the mechanics on show, were solid. And the thing is, you look at this roster for Power Power Supermassive, and as we kind of alluded to in that last game, every single player has been in tier one at one point or another and are really looking to try and find their way back up there and falling out in groups in this manner would be galling blow to yes. that dream, that aspiration that so many of these players in this tournament have. It's going to be rather devastating for them and that's why I can see why they decided to go with such an easy composition this time. It is very straightforward. You want to get the resets. You want to get at least one kill in the team fight, and after that, things just get accelerated for you. Nothing really mental to think about when it comes to how you want to position yourself in the team fights. But again, I am really worried about what BDSA can do to them if they decide to be a little bit more proactive in the map in the early game, because for Supermassive, they don't want to play around the early game. They want to wait for level six, and then they want to look forward towards the dragon fights and the objective fights in general. Be the plan, of course. And if you can get towards those objective exactly. fights, if you can get to a place where you have an idea about where Twitch and Pike are, their known quantities, it is so much easier to play out the fights. And if you do get that pick, if someone overdies, you get that one kill, you get that, you know, that that, that kill first combo. That, try that again. Kill first target moment. You feel so much better as this squad. In some ways, that's so much easier said than done, especially considering the. Uh, Lack of experience, I suspect, Paris Supermassive will have into 
Twitch Pike as a bot lane at the very Who least. Who has experience in the Pike Twitch <laughs> bot the lane? Most common, it has to be said. <laughs> exactly. I don't think that's something you um, you prioritize to practice against that open. But right now, look at that. Nobody's resetting so fast. So Twitch and Pike are surprisingly still staying in this bot lane. So we have enough vision for them, at least in timing. But Skumond is moving towards his bot part of the jungle where this Cuddle Crab is waiting for him. But I wonder if anything else is waiting for him because look at Supermaster's bot lane. That's the <gasps> hook into the. Tempted phantoms of like the uh, the E that I can't remember the name of briefly having a both moment there. The ambush is popped off. Do we getting some damage back? We'll decide to expunge a little more damage. Skewmond is down here though, and Jack from Luger in danger. This is looking like a bit of a heist. Another boat skewer lands, and the phantom undertow not even tight uh, required this time around. We'll get flayed back under the tower. Skeens flash spectral more to make it a one for one. But that is still the first blood going into the pockets of BDS Academy. And the question here was, who is going to get this first blood? Who is going to start getting the resources? Because both Pike and Twitch want to get their money, but it's going to be Pike in the end. Oh, are you sure? Paris takes a little bit of a chunk there. Skeen's still hanging around, but he's not going to be able to get too much there. Paris just backs away. Still got the harrowed path down, so Skeen's still there. The problem is, of course, that... He's had to hang around a little longer than I think in some ways he would have liked him. Mm -hmm. The fact he was a spotted quantum means you can see Skewmon on the minimap immediately looking towards those grubs, knowing the resets will not be there for Skeens quite yet. Nope, and knowing that Ahmed is not going to be around this top player, or even if he is, his mana pool is not really allowing him to be absolute anything or to move towards those grabs. Plus a very good position for Breaker on the mid lane, just opens up those grabs for BDC for free taking. Oh, Paris. Oh, that's just a median, that's all. Look to be scary here still. Not gonna land too much more there. Oh, here we go. He's obviously on this bot lane. Paris, the player he's been. I remember when I first started casting the Masters and uh, troubling at the time. I was like, look, you've got to pay attention to this guy. I really do reckon he's the best support in the ORLs. He's really grown into that. So many people have been so impressed with this guy. And um, he is definitely showing it. He's moved away yes. from Dekia. He's come along into BDSA. We all know the expectations at this point that are on this team. And locks in Pike. His his AD carry, one of the old Prime League superstars in Kadui. I mean, hell, there's a lot of old Prime League players here. Rika, Janax, Kadui, all from that DAC region nationality-wise. Uh, a lot of the Prime League analysts jokingly call that their extra team as a kind of result, <laughs> despite the Swiss flag by the team name. Um, you know, like, this is a very exciting, very confident bot lane who have got this kind of creativity in. Paris definitely has a lot of creativity for him in general, because if you look at the sheer size of his champion pool, it is it's insane. Actually, there is not a single champion I think he hasn't played on this bot lane as a support. But I especially love when he goes into the likes of Pike, because he's a very aggressive player. He wants to be the playmaker for the team with the majority of the games. And with Pike, honestly, especially now with the gold already pouring into his pockets, I believe that is a very good beginning of the game for BDSA Academy. Beginning of a very important game for them. Nice stomp there. He was looking for a little bit of something, but did land the Bone Skewer into the Phantom Undertow. But now we're looking at Blue, who comes on over with the ultimate. Gets a charm and Skewmond, a little too aggressive. And gets taken down. Dragon was secured, at least by BDSA. Will come at the cost of their jungler afterwards, as Blue is very rapidly there and picking up a couple stacks for his Dark Seal. That is Arya, right? That is always the danger with her, that she can move her way from the uh, mid lane exceptionally quickly, coming in already with this stack of her ultimate, which means that she gets here quickly, gets the job done, gets out to the mid lane, not losing anything off the wave. This time around, towards instead the top lane, we look just briefly. Twitch makes some noise, the play comes on through from Jack Troll. Paris taken a little bit low there as the rockets still fly, and landing a hook after this could do it immediately forced to cleanse. Luger and Jack Troll, despite the madness of the Peck ban phase, are actually doing pretty well individually in this lane, especially considering an early kill went against them. They're actually up a fair amount of CS. Of course, it will be evened up somewhat here as that wave under tower is claimed by Kadui, but probably up about 15 odd CS is a good starting point for the Jinx that was initially under threat. And this Jinx is the first one to hit level 6 on this lane, which is why that was a very good moment for Jekyll to try to look for an opportunity for a play for his bot lane. Didn't really work out, but the moment was there definitely for Supermassive, and I'd love to see that they decided to at least try to go for it. Will be that, of course, worth noting as well, we've not really seen Kudui or Paris get out of lane as yet. Of course, it's still relatively early, but you're not going to want to see those to dip off vision, look to be... Uh, kind of an unexpected factor somewhere on the map or maybe having 
members come to them might be the other option. But as it stands, it's going to relatively standard laning phase, which as the Paris Super Massive can turn, that sounds great. Yeah, so that's exactly what they want, right? They don't want any crazy shenanigans, except maybe for the top lane where it's going to be this beast fight. Now, especially that it's level eight for both of the top laners. But yes, the moment, as long as they know where the enemy bot lane is for Super Massive, that is very good news. The mid lane, we look briefly. It's not been uh, the focal point so far, but of course, the Talia and the Ari, two of the staples of the mid lane meta right now, two very capable champions of snowballing their way towards victory. Good Q3 there from Armut will force Gen X to respond to the all out with his own world ender. Skeens is here as well, and over comes Blue. This is a solid roam. This is what BDSA was supposed to be doing. Over they go, looking for the charm. It goes wide as the flash comes on through, but even that will not keep Gen X alive. Armut picks up a kill in the top lane. I don't think BDSA expected Blue to rotate towards the top lane this time because they would expect Blue to rotate somewhere immediately. So the moment he was away from the vision from BDSA Academy, there was a little movement from Reeker towards the bot side of the map, but that is not where Blue decided to go this time. And now this is the grabs, but not for taking for Supermassive. Not this time. No. Skeens didn't smite either. Don't think he had it on cool, uh, off cooldown. So Skewman will still likely be able to get towards that six grub mark here, at least the five, so I don't think Anyone over from Supermassive are going to come and contest. So, big moment there for BDSA to at least get that additional set of objectives despite their top lane of falling in the dive. It's not over yet for Atrix. It is unfortunate to be behind, and Atrix hates playing from behind, but it's not too bad of a behind him. If you look at the gold difference between the top laners, he's still doing relatively fine there, being able to absorb at least some uh, more minions than Armut has been. But this is Armut we're talking about. This is Xante we're talking about. One, one word to, to say to you. Yes. Abundance. I didn't do that one very well. He could have gone lower, but I messed it up. You're actually so much better this time, yes. Can mm -hmm. you say, can do it again? Maybe yeah, not may now. Maybe, maybe after Blue and Jack Troll have made their fight occurring, as uh, Rika oh, does yeah, some yeah, decent yeah. fancy feats. Gumon coming on over, but I don't think Rika can stay alive. Wait, maybe! Not quite enough. It will be a one for one right now as Skeens is here. Does have the flash. Will be, may be required to use it. Jack Troll flashing out himself as Gumon brings down the storm, as well as Kadui and Paris roaming on up. Mid lane at the mid lane it is the trade there as everyone and their bot lane turns up to make that play happen. But the kill distribution from this exchange on the mid lane is not as equal as the final results of it, but wavering because Parus oh, is hunting. Luka needs to be afraid. The bone secure lands. No, it doesn't as the flash is well managed as Luga asks questions and Luga answers well enough. <laughs> He was waiting for it. You could see that in his movements on the lane, right? The moment you don't see the enemy both and you're like, are they next to me already? Are they in that very bush? Are they behind me? Yes, they are behind you. You better flash away. It's not done. Paris now in danger. Gets played, still gets over the wall. Skeens, though, Ooh. immediately breaks the hearts of Pike. Picks up his body and gets on out. And great timing. The dragon is coming up in three seconds, and that is for the taking for Papari Super Massive. Skins is going to come out of his very beautiful reset, but this is the first dragon of the game for Papari Super Massive, at least. It is going to unlock the soul for us as well. May well just do that. And reminder BDSA's last game of the day, it's Nick the Galaxy. If they lose this one going up against the top team in the group, there's a well for a Super Massive Piquazones. We could be in for a very spicy end of the day in groups. What? Feels the dragon by just walking up and smiting. <laughs> Thank you for the leash skins, I guess. No smite on you. Mm, don't mind if I do. Yeah, that was that was a moment in gameplay. <laughs> uh, I don't think Skeens had smite because of the earlier play onto Paris, I want to say. So a little bit unfortunate there. That gets BDSA actually towards a second dragon there. And they've got the early six grub. So despite really good play for kills from the side of Supermassive, they aren't getting as many objectives as they might like. And the gold lead, only 200, isn't exactly world ending. No pun towards the Aatrox <laughs> intended. The issue on the other side is actually you've gone towards a pike. You've gone towards the Twitch. You are uh, supposed to be a little bit more about the pick and snowball yeah, skirmish from this right? point of the game. So if they don't start rolling from this point, despite the objectives going their way, I might still think it's a, an okay game state for Supermassive. Exactly, because they can keep forcing BDSA Academy, BDSA, sorry, to go for those bigger fights when they know what is going on with the half the vision, and BDSA will not have any upper hand against Supermassive in those. They need to try to find some more creative ways to move around the map right now. Especially now that the Blade of the Ring King is finally there for Twitch. There it is. That'll be helping a little bit with some of those HP stackers, the Viego, the Thresh. Sante as well will get some of that as well. It does make some difference there. 
It's a big first item now at level 8 as well. Could be pretty threatening, but actually top side. Genex about to be jumped or tries to throw at the back, but look who's here. It's the gank squad. We saw this a few minutes ago. It's just a repeat, but this time he can't even get under his own damn tower. Skeen's on a killing spree. And again, so much rotation from the Fire Supermassive, and not where you would normally expect it. I love it that they are putting so many more eggs into the basket of the top lane, and Armut more specifically. They're trying to empower their top lane, and honestly, their top lane and their junk, the other ones who are going to deliver such good results later on in the game, if you invest into them a bit. Oh, there we go. Do we throws down the ultimate, but the spray and pray really amount to all that much because a uh, dark passage will get them away from something that was once called a rat attack tap. Oh, that was such a good name. It I'm was so mad that they changed it. Just so annoying what to say do you fast. Mean? Have you tried? Rat -a -ta -ta -ta. That was cool, but I that, that was all right. It's just like your mid team fights. It was it was it was um, a challenge for the play by play in me. I would accept this challenge. It's such a cool name. It's I don't know. I don't know why you're complaining. But spray and praise just more. You know what? It's fine. We'll have this conversation. <laughs> off, there. Uh, off towards the herald we go. Uh, as Skeens will help secure this one for his team. That would be the first objective they managed to claim all game. Still, got ourselves a couple of minutes until what would be so point for BDSA if they could claim it. Cloud Soul is the one on the rift. And now Paris, not quite at Umbral Glaive, which I suspect will be his first option, but still with that sweeper able to roam around with Kadui and threaten those pockets of darkness that will be difficult for Papara Supermassive to face check. Interesting enough, this is usually the soul that is disregarded by quite many players, but I feel like in this particular scenario, it is so beneficial for both of the teams because yeah. the amount of additional movement speed you get, especially when you press your R button, for Papara Supermassive, for example, all the recess they want to go for and their recess being dependent on their ultimates, that is going to be a massive soul to have. The only problem is they have four dragons away from it right now. Yeah, they've got to get a little way towards that. On the other side for BDSA, it's like a couple more is not that hard to, to get, especially considering the position they're in. Finally looking to get a turret as uh, the bot lane one falls oh! on the top side. That was an attempt at the zap. Won't quite come on down. Nice little look in there from Luger, who hasn't had the easiest tournament. I think it's fair to see. He's been under threat a lot of the games. This time around, though, this is by far the... The least flippy we've seen Supermassive. They were so willing to throw down in every other game we've seen of them. Um, this time around, much more stable, much less willing to make mistakes happen. And Skeens on a Viego. I think this is his 25th game all time on Viego. Second most played champion. Um, very comfortable here with the lead he's got. Can certainly look to lead his team to those team fight victories. Though a moment from Gen X to catch out Luger. Oh, not again. How many times have we seen this one happen? Now Jack Troll in danger as Rika comes flying on him with a Weaver's Wall. The moment we start praying, the moments like this begin to happen in the mid game for, B for Super Massive. BDSA claim another kill. The death from below for Paris claims a little bit more gold for his squad. It is those seemingly smaller mistakes from Supermassive side that tend to snowball for them so massively in the games like that. Just walking into the jungle, not having enough understanding enough vision onto the enemy's positioning. And it's not even Pike and Twitch they were talking about during the draft that were the danger for them this time. It was Aedrox, it was Riku with very good repositioning of that Talia. Two more kills for BDSA side. A little bit more breathing room for them, especially around the bot side of the map where this dragon is coming up in just 10 seconds. And that was why they were trying to come on over, is to fight for control and vision, and it all goes that little bit wrong. We'll try and dive on in. Armour gets a bit of a look onto Kadui. Goes all out. Kadui trying to flash away. Will not survive. On the other side, though, does manage to actually pick up Ari on the way out. Jinx is back. Luka trying the best with the excitement. The hook onto Skumon alongside a heartbreak to try and claim a few more. The reset to come on through. The rocket won't claim another. Big knock up from Genax with that dark in blade alongside a sky splitter. Rika though, still dangerous. The health bar is so low from Papara Supermassive and despite the fact they got those resets, they could not claim more. It's a two for two in the end. We were talking about the importance of BDSA Academy's bot lane and how they would maybe try to play around it in this game a lot, but I'm seeing Riku being the main star of the team at the moment, mm. especially in this fight where everything was a little bit split in the two positions where Armut was going completely crazy under the enemy turret after he got out of the Herald. But it was Riku repositioning himself so nicely in that fight, making sure that he deals the damage. And he has a lot of damage with an item and a half only in his pocket. And that's despite the fact that Twitch got like comboed by the Cassante so yes. aggressively. Yes, Twitch took Ari with him somehow. I'm not quite sure how that yeah. happened, but 
Still he's prayed, he prayed. Yeah, and then the, 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 the time after that was like, look, well, we've got the reset for uh, Viego, Ari, and the Twitch is dead. This should be great, right? And uh, uh, right? Rika just said no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rika is, has been playing amazing so far in this game. I wonder if he will be able to continue like that because so far it is still a pretty equal game. There is a 1k gold lead for BDS Academy, but Supermassive are looking towards trying to secure more Hook. on the map, especially now. That could be a bit dangerous. Skewmon in danger doesn't have the... Uh, ultimate to try and get out of danger, neither does he have the flash. He's managed to slice a bit briefly, but will still likely go down. Shut down, going the way of Luga. Another reset begins to fly. The Chompers were preventing Paris from joining the fight. Rika standing there, still in danger because, of course, Skeets has stolen his jungler's body. <laughs> what a horror movie that is. Oh. Instead, we'll jump over the wall. Instead, pick up a Gromp. Nice pick off there for Supermassive. Now looking to reset. Will Paris interrupt? Throws down the Bone Skewer and does just that onto Jack Troll. Skeens, my still face check post! And vice versa, actually, I should have phrased that one. <laughs> it's the Viego who is the one who knocks. Yeah. Um, get out of danger for now. Turret on the, in the mid lane, though, while all this was happening, does go the way of Kazooie, who decides to pick up the objective in favor of BDSM. Now, then you add the new issue is arising for BDS Academy. Where is their front lane? Who is going to absorb the damage? Because whoever absorbs the damage right now is dying very quickly because of all this damage. So far, it's Kuman jumping into the enemies relentlessly, but Volibear is not a tank. No, and I think especially you can end up in this position in Volibear, I, I often see, like, where you, you get stuck at this point, where you've got the yes. Sundered Sky and not a second item, and you're, like, twiddling your thumbs with jungle income, just not really being a farming champion, trying to make things happen. This moment in mid lane might be not the time to talk about it, though, as everyone is appearing ready to go. They get a massive pick onto Jack Troll, and away Skewmon goes, giving himself a Stormbringer and some HP to get out to safety. Blue, though, can maybe keep going on forwards, but the Unraveled Earth prevent an easy ingress towards Rika, who did make it difficult to continue to R forwards. Pick for BDSA. A minefield, and Rika gets out of this situation. But where exactly is he going to go now? There is not much happening on the map, apart from Janex being uh, doing pretty much what Aatrox player is supposed to be doing at this point. That Goldcraft there, it has barely Ooh. moved. It's basically oscillated between 1k one way and 1k the other. The first as we got it is right now at 1.8 at 20 minutes. It's not a huge difference at all. Skeens, huge player for this team, might be caught out. Dodges the seismic shove, there's the hook afterwards. Paris in danger, they do get the kill. But Katui in the backside unleashes with a spray and a prey. But Luger ain't no religious man, he's a heretic. Bringing down a few more members and the plague is silenced. Skewman will at least bring down Jinx afterwards. What about Janax? You can continue to trade. It's even enough so far. Three for three. Armin cannot survive the world ender himself. Aatrox forces a flash out of blue. And it's a bloodbath in the enemy jungle. But just, just about BDSA come out on top. It was a brawl. It was a very chaotic brawl. And we love it this way in League of Legends. But I gotta say, Skewman this time did damage coming out of the Paris Supermassive was a little bit more spread between everybody in BDS Academy, especially with Janex going into the ultimate right there in the midst of the fight. So for Skuman, it was a better position and he did the only thing he was supposed to do in this fight, trying to get onto Luger as quickly as possible to shut him down, to eliminate him from this fight. Because while Luger was alive, it was dangerous for BDS Academy. The moment he goes down, they can finally breathe. Despite the scoreline, despite the tournament, Going so against the Paris Supermassive, in some ways, this feels like the most command they've had in some time. Uh, a good moment in some ways for them. They're still willing and able to throw some punches back. Yes, it wasn't a win, but it showed they still had some fangs. They've still got this Viego with two items, five, one, and five for Skeens. Not on the least in this time, on the Viego, a champion that does scale that heavy amount better. They've got two items on a lot of members that matter. Down 3,000 gold. Yes, they've got Soul to fight in 30 seconds, but I think. They are going to be in a position here where they can cause some serious damage. They can, and they will have to do it right here, right Wall. now. The Dragon's coming up, the wall's coming in. He comes on towards us, a stun onto Armour, but he's still at Cassandra, still very tanky. Goes unstoppable with a W. Hook on to Janax. Dangerous position. He's pulled right back out with the all out. Shut down, going the way of blue. Skewon goes forward, though. Does get Jack Troll, and away he goes with the Stormbringer. One for one as it stands. A reset trying to be brought forward by Armour. Blue. Trying to buy some time, but Kadui out from the ambush prevents the reset. But now he's in the enemy jungle, gets hit with the charm, will not fall though. And instead, Paris brings down the pike. Ah, oh, death from below, poison to boot. It's injected straight into their veins, and BDSA can go towards Baron. 
But for Papyrus Supermassive, this is death from above. This is death from the team that is sitting above them and that really wants this victory to get out of the groups. And with this team fight, they might be getting so close to doing exactly that. Finally, this Twitch and Pike Brooklyn has been unleashed a little bit later than we would like to have seen it in this game, but to what result regardless? And the dreams of making it out of groups and into playoffs are dwindling for Papara Supermassive. They are looking tantalizingly close for BDSA. The kill score's been close. The gold lead no longer is. The objective lead certainly no longer is. We've got Soul on the board and BDSA looking to claim yet another prize after that fight in the mid lane. Because now they have the Baron buff, the only thing that is left for them to take. No, there are two things for them left to take. This Dragon Soul and the enemy's base, of course. <laughs> and the Nexus! Yes! 50 gold! <laughs> Actually, it, it ain't much, but it's something. It's best 50 gold you've earned in your life, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Towards the Dragon, there goes Kuman and Kadui doing that one out. Paris, now with that Umbral Glaive and additional Dirk able to really contest so much of that vision. We said it might become a, a problem as the game goes on, and now all those towers are down, now the Baron is in. Massive's ability to retain control of areas, have pockets of vision, so much harder to manage. Paris, step on forwards, can maybe look to get onto Skeen, such an important member he is. Quiet make it over there. And instead, they'll pull back towards their tier two, and the dongle is dark and full of terrors. Blue is still on the... No, Blue is no longer on the top lane. He's coming back now. He has been sitting on the top lane for a long time, just trying to deep push, trying to put some pressure on the other side of the map while everything is going down on the bottom and mid sides over the map. But now the teleport is back in and he's just rotating towards the team because he will need to help them out to withstand this siege and to clear out the waves. With Ari, with Jinx, it shouldn't be too big of a problem for Papyrus Supermassive. But the DSA will surely be back for round two next to the enemy's base. A game that was oscillating between a thousand goals if that apart between these two teams. Now 7,000 the lead. Paris himself a dark water dive. Ghost water dive. That's it. That he took me a second. And is certainly able to haunt these jungle pathways. Look to find the hooks, the bone skewers that might see the end of the game for Papara Supermassive. Diego laughs briefly, but what he's laughing about right now. It's looking pretty dire in this game. There's the charm onto Skumont, who's still not very tanky, it has to be said, but final remaining tier two falls and BDSA only got a base to break. The game is looking like theirs. The game is looking very close to victory for BDS Academy and they need this victory so much. Getting out of these groups is going to be so nice for them because this is a very tight, a very hard group for them to come through. But for Supermassive, last chance for them. Last stand, everybody. If they don't do this right now, they are not doing it this season. Looking to get a bit more. There's the Bone Skewer. Can look to get a bit more DPS down. Armor pulled back. Going to be trying to continue to tank up what he can as this Cassante. Zoom back out, looking for the wall, trying to low it, zoom off Lugo. He's in such a difficult position. Is there an arrow? Not an arrow, a lantern available. Says tries to stand to deliver the angle. Well, lantern is just miles away, nowhere to go. There is no flight out of there, no escape shuttle, and the Jinx is dead. He had the flash, he had the lantern. He was not allowed to use any of those. No flash because of Talia, no lantern because everybody on the enemy team was standing on this ladder. How do you even click that thing? You don't click it. How do you click any of the enemies? You don't because they are destroying your base right now. They're just teleporting what? to save the minion. Oh, my days, Jedi. What was that? A little bit of a BL as they break the mace. One inhibitor falls, BDSA. Come thundering, smashing forward to Sky Spinner. Comes on through all out onto Paris, who is low. Not quite down, begins to heal up with the gray health. Now trying to get some more damage. The box up down for Jack Stroll, but it is immediately turned into flat pack IKEA style. There is no furniture left and certainly no structures. They need another trip there to fill in the ravages of their home base. Super massive. What do you have left? This is your final moment. Potentially in this game, potentially your hopes of getting out of this group. It's a big hook on a Paris, a big knock back, trying to get something. Got it! The reset could be maybe coming in to come on through, but what about the damage after Janix? It's throwing Dark in Blade after Dark in Blade. The sweet spot tastes so wonderful to BDSA. Mid jungle top all in a dangerous position. Another one falls. BDSA looking for their fourth win, looking to secure playoffs, looking to make Super Massives and Mia Masters a disappointing end right here. Still two turrets, still two enemy members to cut through, to try to cut through, but should Luka's it be trying. an easy right for them? It should be right, but Jinx it can't. Jinx trying, got a flash on four oh! for a thundering smash. Jinx is dead, nothing left to be found, and Super Massive, the number one team from Turkey. 
They are going to be left head in hand. BDSA crush them in the late game fight. A 10,000 gold lead. Welcome to playoffs. It's done so in style. It's not done yet. Wait, it's Wait, not done yet. Happening? 50, 50 Wait, gold are not no. there yet. Wait, they're they left the, the ship. The they left the nexus. Kadui walks towards the fountain. They get a little eager, and I overspeak my lines. And somehow, some way, Papara Super Massive. They've been given a reprieve for how much longer? I do not know. They are on life support as best. Looks like BDSA just have to pull the plug, and it's all over. Skeens, though, willing to give up. Is Viego still a threat? You've got three items on Jinx. You've got two and a half on Ari. You've got no Nexus turrets, however. And I just don't know. Soul against them. A minute and a half to Belda. Maybe you flip it there and you pray. But do you survive before it? 33 seconds before the Baron is going to be out. BDS Academy, take the Baron. Go and finally finish your business that you have started such a long time ago but haven't been able to complete. I mean, you've got a teleporter, Rika. You've got an invisible pike and an invisible oh. twitch. Your ability to get into this base and just end the game. It's kind of all over the place. Finally, could do it back word. on the map. He's in. Mid lane by the tier two goes invisible, looking to go towards the blue buff respawn. Baron, as you said, spawning in five seconds. Elder in 45. Do Papara Super Massive have one last fight and then one last throw of the dice weighted against them, though it is. The Baron is life. 35 seconds before the Elder. I wonder if the, the priorities are very clear for Vidius Academy. The Attic and the Baron right now with Super Massive not being able to get anywhere close to that beat. Still staying close to their base. They still need to be sure that nobody suddenly teleports to their base and just goes there invisibly and destroys it. But now it's going to be one last. It has to be one last step for Super Massive this time. All the Turkey of Faithful will be head in hands, hands together, praying for success. The problem is on the other side, Twitch has been at chapel all day. He hits an R button, he sprays and prays, and everybody falls to their knees, looking to just run at the Nexus. What is going on? They were trying to play for the Elder Flip, and instead they go to the backside. Blue, hooked, in danger, down a half HP. Look at the other side, Luger falls out of his own base. Skewman now caught out, but the Jinx just isn't in the fight. It's a double kill for Kadui, who just unleashes into Tommy Gun. Armour brought down, he's dead. Genax gets that one. The whole team is gone. Alas, this is it. Their dreams of making it out of groups completely thwarted. BDSA succeeds a moment longer than maybe we thought, but they are still the group that makes it out or the team that makes it out. What a tense moment at the end of the game. There just wasn't enough left, enough left in the tank. And you've got to feel for them. It's been such a rough tournament for Kapara Supermassive, but BDSA still looking scary, still looking dangerous, still looking to be that team to beat. 4-1. They have done it. They still have this one last match before them. But this was the most important one, and they've gotten through it. That was the game score required. They are out. They are locked in. And a last moment here for Papara Supermassive. An unfortunate tournament for them, but this is a brutal, unforgiving place. You have two days to make your mark, and unfortunately for them, it's in the sand and it's washed away by the ocean that was BDSA. We'll be washing ourselves clean of this cast desk and over towards the analyst desk instead to break it all down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome huh? back to the huh? desk. Well, Supermassive is out of the groups. They will not be able to move on into knockout stage. They are promoted to spectator, as we just said at the beginning of the stream. It is a rough one, obviously, for Turkey and uh, on BDSA side. I mean, that was wonderful. We finally get to see Jinx losing for yeah. Twitch. Whoa, crazy. Yeah. I mean, they, they <laughs> learned. It's funny. Like, we got... Such excitement. Oh, wow. Wow. crazy. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, I guess. I'm, Wait, what? How can you be so I'm sad laughing? for Turkey. I, I, I feel like also Turkey, uh, yeah. you know, super massive, obviously learned and took a page out of Enigma's book with the B1 Jinx that wasn't banned away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think bot lane was just weird and kind of unexpected. And, you know, we were talking backstage about like how, you know, bot ahead again, uh, kind of finding a mark as well. Yeah. Topside went well. Um, and it kind of looked like super massive game. But I want to understand that uh, that Pike, that Volibear, they they had the job, yeah. they had the mission, right, Ergon? Yeah. So I think I think the real story of this game was quite interesting. Was um, I feel like they didn't win in a traditional fashion. When you usually draft yeah. Pike and Volibear, you're very much committed to the early game because these champs don't really end up being useful as the game goes on. Yet they won later on with the Pike and Volibear, right? So that's the interesting part. So. 
The Twitch, I feel like though, mm. was an adaptation to the meta as it's being, you know, as it gets figured out over time, this generally True. happens in metas. Usually you pick Twitch as an answer to scaling because Twitch is very weak early. You need to have time to scale and farm up. And usually you see it picked into champions like the Zeri and Jinx is very similar to Zeri. Mm. So over time, what we've seen is, you know, answers being developed into it. I understand the thought process about the Volibear and the, the Pike and the Twitch at this point. But then we go into the mid game. Armwood did a really, really good job on the top side, I believe. Yeah, it did. was not only schemes. Uh, Whoa, no, it was, it was him and it was also uh, it was also Blue as well. You know, say yeah. either sacking mid wave or, or moving up after he gets priority. And then uh, I think it was Aragorn saying backstage, you yeah. know, as well, like the fact he just, what do you call it? Condition trade? Yeah, condition. So yeah. I wanted to um, talk it. about, yeah, a concept called condition trading where you will trade specifically whether it's like you use your resources to affect the enemy's condition in the lane whatever lane it is you chunk them to create opportunities for example a dive which you know which will come soon so what yeah. happened a lot of this game was armor would ult preemptively to create a chunk um onto the enemy top laner and then blue would find a roam window and capitalize on that chunk with a dive right this is called condition trading and they did that really well this is how armor created a load of opportunities to snowball the game and that's why he was my mvp and then as well you know skeen's benefiting off that getting a lot of kills early as well uh he was doing so much work but the problem was you know like while well, armor gets mvp while skeen yeah. as well was successful blue as well i think for how he played through mid the bottom was a gaping hole you know i said earlier mm. on it was it was okay but like there were moments where jack troll and luger started getting picked out as well and somehow, uh, you know, BDSA got given a game back in where there's no early game from the Volibear Pike, yeah. but you go into the mid game where suddenly they come online and yeah. suddenly this Volibear is like the best mid game this team fighter I've ever seen. Dude, this champion is useless at 20 minutes. I'm just telling yeah. you. But then suddenly, like, watch Luger here. You know, we're sitting He's backstage. He's like, to win. Okay, steps up. Okay, get six sided. Has Ghost active. Runs into the Volibear. Skin. Runs into a Volibear. Yeah. Runs right into a so Volibear. I think what is, is strange, I think they lived and died by Jack Troll and Luger. They, Jack Troll made so many good plays with so many good hooks, but then he would also whiff a bunch. He would just yep. flash and hook air. I think this was the, after this fight was a big one. See, you would find Luger would get picked here, get chunked, but then he would also carry some fights. It was really, really coin flips to what bot lane you were going to get from Supermassive. And ultimately, that was the there problem. It's Kimon. It's Kimon show. As soon as he got to the yeah. late game, the Volibear goes in and just bite people off. That, that was perfect for them. And that's enough for BDSI to show off with this sort of composition. They could have ended a little bit earlier, even initialized was like, what happened? Uh, but it's enough for them to qualify as well. I mean, I think I think the fact that, again, that they are ending this game at all, you know, past 20 minutes with how early game was going for the top side of the map was already uh, uh, big enough for me. And at the very least, like, it's disappointing for Supermassive. I know the Turkish fans out there are going to be upset with you know, how the setup Makes of these sense. fights looked, how, you know, the quality of this roster performed. They can be happy that they've got Skeens and Armut who looked really good towards the yeah. end. I think Skeens for me Skeens, yeah. is the MVP yeah. throughout. Like if anyone wants to take anything away from this roster is that Skeens has a very, very sore back. <sighs> like alongside people, maybe like Blue and Armut as yeah. well, you yeah. know, at least helping one shoulder each. But yeah, overall like Skeens is someone I'd have my eye on uh, coming up, you know, maybe to LEC in yeah. future. I mean, Again. his, his, Viego and Lee Sin, they love to play these pairings, right? With mm. the mid jungle duos, where you can play off of resets or what have you, with setup for them from the mid into the jungle. That he is so damn good at playing with blue. Yeah. So maybe as a duo potentially as well as scouting. Yeah, very true. The mid jungle duo is actually really good. Yeah. Again, we said, you know, in that game, blue was, um, blue was like he was in the Oriana game last game mm -hmm. as well. We were really good at map movements, setting up and hitting mid game hard. Did the same thing as you recall mm -hmm. back in the Oriana game, syncing up with skins on the Lee Sin. So. I think again, mid jungle pairing is a good call yep. because we are looking at like a duo or at least individual players that are so good in their own right and that, you know, maybe are LEC caliber, depending on how they play. This is the shot. stage to show yourself and maybe go up a little bit higher. But as we started today and as we stated yesterday, it was the match of the day. KC Blue versus SK Prime. Round two. Yes. Round two. Yesterday was match of the day. Today, it's about revenge. I'll see you soon after three minutes. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh man, I feel like that was my best intro ever. It, yeah. yeah, not bad, hey, not bad. Same. I can go yeah. pro. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you.
We're back with the rematch of Germany versus France. No, Spain versus France. Let's try that one more time. Of nice. course, KC Blue coming back. And we saw this yesterday, didn't we? We right? did. We France. saw this yesterday. Yes. Uh, SK Prime behind us. Did I say... I said Spain. Yeah, no. you did for some reason. But I, it is, in fact, said, France versus Germany. I said Germany at the start. Nice one, Why did I correct myself? Nice one, I don't know. But yeah, game of the day again. Yep. The uh, the LEC organizations that, again, SK had a bit of a grudge against KC, or at least in way, knocked them down in winter. Um, for KC and, and SK, let's just quickly you know, touch on this. Again, yep. it's been a weird meta day. This is battle kind of for first at this point. Mm. Both sitting three and one, four and one yep. from memory. So I think it's interesting. I think the way KC Blue plays is very different from the way Skate Prime plays. Yep. Like you see a lot of um, reset compositions, a lot of resources over to Linsus on mm -hmm. stuff like Diego. You know, they'll pick an early flex, flex away, give counter pick to uh, Linsus on yep. champions like this. Whereas on SK Prime, the Prime League was very slow. Like you had uh, lane swaps galore, Jinx Prior very heavy as well. Yeah. Okay. So again, different compositions. I feel like lane swaps already today. We've kind of seen like yeah. a response to. Yeah. In a way, right? Jinx ban's been coming through. You and far between to a degree. Mm -hmm. So arm bands being seen seen as well. I think Twitch as well being picked up as a counter into Jinx specifically response. as yeah. a response, True. like developing that over time because you get free scaling. Um, but that wasn't specifically a lane swap Jinx. But that's and you know another strength you have flexibility and you don't have to lane swap with Jinx. True again, the flexibility is a big thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. Last time we see these guys, did we see lane swap. Uh, we did not, I believe. Yeah, but, this is one of the few games yesterday that wasn't. Yeah, the majority so the problem was. I had with Casey Blue and why I thought so the, the big big story of this game was the fact that you know they had very strong sides for KC mm. Blue and they kept the game in. Um, but they, they got outscaled really hard by Jinx Aesol from SK Prime. True. Right, so um, that was the big problem. They, they kept themselves in with Sideling. Vladi in particular was really good on the Azir. All right, let's go on to Big Ban though. Starting off again, again, three and one to correct myself. Yep. It's been a long start of the day. And after watching the bottom lane play yep. through last game, I have to reset a little bit here. Uh, KC Blue, the ban's already away for the Poppy yep. here. What do we got for the I setup? I think that, that setup, that's a setup ban for Callista. I think with the Poppy ban, you're looking for Callista, especially Vi taking away as well, that isolation. Cool. I think uh, Callista B1 could be extremely good. Let's see if they adapt SK Prime with that red side three ban. Uh, it could be Callista, I think. Side as well. I mean, seeing Jinx on blue is also just kind of a rarity so far. We've seen yeah. it on Ren side or not at all. So, again, this is another minor adaptation to what we've seen so far in lane swaps. Mm -hmm. uh, the Orianna band away. Okay, on the other side. About that that opens up Talia more, you know, good matchup into Talia. So, these picks rising up, these meta picks that we see, Talia, um, Kalista. Azir. It does empower those picks as yeah. well. This is what the set of bands are for. So, it really is up to them. We'll pick your poison. Just the Kalista's gone now. So, Talia B1. You know, it's pretty we've, spicy. We've walked away from. I mean, other regions yeah. haven't. I mean, we're watching LPL this morning. The virus priority was, was there. It was mm -hmm. massive here in uh, EMEA Masters. The virus priority is kind of like dipping yeah. or not being there at we've all. We've seen a bit of like. Um, Varus plus Nautilus, I think, earlier yeah. on in the day. Um, Callista, Varus, I think. But nothing something. like the Ash, Varus, the powerful 2v2 lanes yeah, that we exactly. saw earlier on. Instead, it's been this Talia that's been first big priority. Mm -hmm. Now left open, as we talked about, it was either going to be the Callista or Talia. Yeah. On the other side, let's see if bot lane gets short up here by SK Prime, because yeah. so far, you know, with things not like Jinx on the board, we've seen other other carries come through, like what, Zyra Rakan so far mm -hmm. today as well. Uh, Azir instead is going to be picked up by the mid lane here by Diplex. Yeah. I think oh, Aris, wow. there, just like you said, I think <laughs> Zinzao is looking pretty good for SK Prime Gaming. Um, typically, what you can see is uh, pairings with Talia, right? You know, you have mm -hmm. your Volley Bears, your Viegos, your Leesons are all pretty good. Um, let's see if they pick up there um, in mid. You know, Talia gets Prio into the Azir. So what SK Prime is saying is we're going to trade lane, you know, our Prio in lane for scaling on that Azir. True. And get the priority in lane that comes from the Talia as well. All roads lead to the bottom lane normally. The Zeri is something again, when a lot of options are taken off the board. Zeri Lulu. There's an option here, but again, yeah. you're going up against Varus. What are your thoughts about uh, what we see in the bottom side? Nautilus being up is still pretty spicy. Another um, one, yeah. Usually, very, usually banned, actually. So Zeri Nautilus could be a doer. That's also a lot of single target bursts to stack on top of the Talia. Um, you just press R, another Talia flip, and it's very free GG. Against Varus as well with no mobility too, and actually exactly. pain to deal with. So that's a good call. I think that these are definitely options, but you, like, you have to decide now. What do you pick, right? So it looks like they're going to drop everything and just pick their support. Real reasonable option, though. Remember, not flex, yeah. folks. The... Uh, jungle scaling has gone completely. There's no extra monster damage at all, so it doesn't help yep. with the smite. So that is going to be the 2v2. Okay, we talked about hard engage. That comes through from KC Blue. On the other side for SK Prime, Varus and Renata is something that, again... I think that's a, that's a sick pick. If they pick okay. Renata here, it denies the reset potential compositions that can come out of the single target burst of KC Blue. Um, fortunately, they're not going to go for it, which is a shame. Just more front line for the front to back. Yeah, with that Azir. Okay, so Maokai gets locked on in. So that, that one for Rabble in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like KC Blue then? I mean, now you see 
uh, or maybe ban away the Renata. Yeah, I think banning away Renata is a good call. Mm. Um, Nautilus is also a pain to deal with, potentially just so consistent in terms of engage. Mm. I think if you are KC Blue, you're fishing for stuff like the Viego. I think it's just such a Linsus champion. It gives him so much agency. That's True. the problem I had yesterday, where he was on Vi, and naturally on Vi, you're playing more scaling, uh, where you have to get to your ultimate. You can't have impact early, which is what he's good at. And you're telling me something backstage as well, like with the Viego comp, you want to see a lot of bursts as well, yeah. right? To set up, get the first reset. I mean, I see a lot of bursts here already. I see KC Blue with Talia yeah. as well. Great mid jungle pairing. So I like that point. We'll keep an eye on it. For now, it is a rumble ban actually towards the top side from SK Prime. Yeah. I think uh, that's talking to Mainta. He likes to blind it a lot. And mm. it also, you can layer on from far away to get that reset. I think uh, Renekton could work really well with the Talia as well as a pairing, but they banned it out themselves. Good call, though. Rumble is a setup ban for Renekton, so that also makes sense. Um, your blind pick top laners are now. You're going down the tier list a little bit. Uh, Cassante comes Still to mind. Open. Yeah, Cassante comes to mind. I think Zach as well, but that's more lane swappy. We haven't seen we haven't seen much Gragas so far in the Gragas, tournament. That's the other one, yes. I mean, Gragas, I really like. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, we've been I think watching so, LBL this morning, but like, uh, you know, Gragas has always been an option in some of those high tier regions. So to keep an eye for this Viego band. So again, targeted towards I think, Linsus. I think uh, Volley Jax come to mind now for Linsus. Yep. Maybe uh, Volley Jax, I think, because uh, Jax, he's played a lot of, and it also you have that stun to set up for the Talia W, I think is cool. also really good. Volley and Talia set each other up well, although despite it being weaker, obviously it's sounding a little bit, it's still seeing a lot of play. But then you have a, a lot of onus on the early game you have to play for. So let's see. Also, what do you blind on the side of four? You probably picked your support away here. Best support into Volley Rel. Bit. I think Braum is not bad here. Are um, they are they assuming the Malachi is going somewhere else with a volley ban on KC Blue, or are they saying, well, it ooh, might have gone? They're top. preserving the flex, right? If they lock in top here. They're preserving the uh, the Malachi a flex support. I think it's more likely to go jungle um, because you know the front line is solid for yeah, yeah, yeah as well. Rare, few and far between have we seen you know Malachi bottom lane. It's been with center lanes mm -hmm. uh, in particular. Um, I'm just, again, it's off high top, right? Yeah, so okay. off high top of Venno. This guy he plays a bunch of champions like Aurelia. You know, typically is on tanks these days. Stuff like the Gragas that is iconic for him. Uh, but they yeah. are going to give him. I love how talk about the Gragas, and again, this is the one yeah, guy yeah, in the league yeah. that plays it. That's true, actually. Right. So must be a uh, must be right time, right place. We're going to see what Casey Blue yeah. pick up now, though. Uh, we already talked about it. Linsus was out in our champion thoughts because he lost to Viego. Uh, what else is up here? I think uh, the biggest pick that I'm looking at now is Jax, although that is, might be a little bit tricky. Olaf into tanks with the jungle buffs. Oh, that's mega. Might be that still might be top lane though, um, but I think that's looking like jungle. Linsus, he's a carry jungle player, and this got a bunch of buffs. Got, Super yeah. good into tanks. Your clear speed is crazy now, um, and you just out farm you out one v one. You get five damage per undertow when you max undertow first two, right? Uh, yes, you absolutely do. So yeah, there I mean, it is. It's, it's Olaf jungle. Wow, good. All right, adaptation from Casey Blue. You Ooh. love to see it. From this one of the is an tournament favorites. One. Right, so the, the thing is what they lack is they lack a bit of setup in the mid-jungle duo, but they have so much proactivity level one. So what you saw in the past with Olaf jungle is you saw so much invading, splitting them at level one because the the enemy team, they just can't match. Olaf level yeah. one is absolutely mental. So I want to see what KC Blue can do with it. Well, as they lock in that Olaf on the other side, it's going to be the Twisted Fate. So now uh, let's kind of question how Vanilla goes in the top side here because yeah. he's got a bit of a free lane versus Cassante as well, right? We do have a bit of range coming through, a lot of pick potential, yeah. a lot of zone control as well from SK Prime. So I see a lot of front to back. Um, you have isolated scaling matchup in top lane mm -hmm. uh, for SK Prime that wins. Um, you have losing lane in mid lane, although you have a bunch of setup, but more front to back for that side. SK Prime, their gameplay is going to be a little bit slower. Okay. I think in terms of raw power, early game, I much more favor KC Blue, especially because of that jungle pick. I mean, again, look, the damage we talked about from the Olaf as well. Let's not forget, yeah. you know, through that, that jungle pathing, sorry, um, jungle pairing, with Olaf Rel, that seems like a that seems like a painful duo to verse as well. Like, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of CC, a lot of CC control. So, kind of exciting to see the adaptation yep. from Linsus because remember, we're in 14.7. This is the the patch that Olaf Jungle actually got uh, buffed as well. Yeah. They ch they changed a bunch of things. They gave his ult a mana cost, which which 100 mana I think, and that hurts top lane uh, Olaf. Lot. But Jungle gets a bunch of mana regen, True. right? So when you hit camps, it's not too bad, and you have blue buff as well to rely on. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do level one. I think the level one could be really spicy or maybe, you know, some kind of three camp into invade. There's so much potential here. The only question mark is the strength of the virus nor early, but mm. Maokai is so weak. And typically the counterplay into Maokai is you invade him early. True. You absolutely attack his early clear because he's not that strong. And it's six as well, you just run him down too. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Olaf as well. Like, yeah. how does Maokai get out? He yeah. doesn't. Yeah. His CC chain to auto to auto out in the past is things like phase rush as well. At the moment now, chain, run. Yeah. Re-engage, like, how does this comp deal with a level 6 Olaf running at them? Yeah, I think uh, typically the weaknesses of Olaf are DPS, right? So the, they do have a lot of DPS they in terms indeed. of the Azir, and Varus is a champion that, as well as a Twisted Fate, right? But Varus is a champion that also executes when low. Mm. And 
Olaf hates that, right? Because he wants to drain tank when low HP. So Olaf can just absolutely one pop from half HP via the virus who's might be lethality. Um, that's my only concern for the Olaf. There is a lot of damage uh, DPS on the side of K uh, SK Prime if they go even. Okay, well, with that DPS, still has to get an action. So yeah. probably not lethality virus, right? Uh, potentially not. I think he could free hit a little bit here. He might need to. He might need to go on hit because there's a lot of beef case like in, in his face. True. So medium range as well, right? Yeah. So I feel like with this is one of the few games as well that Varus probably can get in range to on hit DPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think on hit probably. I, I think I think you're onto something there. Okay. Well, SK Prime. We'll see. If we can get in the game. Remember, folks, it's three and one apiece. Uh, winner of this already gets secure. I think four is like the magic number in a lot of these groups as mm -hmm. well. Um, Four two, yeah. And, you know, it's not going to be first in the group, but I mean, the win here is probably going to get you over the line as you only have one more game after this anyway. A KC Blue favorites, SK Gaming Prime, though, still have brought a lot out of the water here coming into the tournament. And I will say, I mean, the draft has been good. I like the adaptation of the, the Olaf yeah. coming into jungle. It feels quite chill. Uh, yeah, you know? and maybe, maybe in the long term, this gets rid of the blind pick tanks that we're seeing, stuff like the Sejuani, stuff like the Maokai. Oh, yeah. And then, because what would happen in the past was you'd have Olaf blind. And then stuff like Trundle would come out because it's the only champion that can 1v1 in. Yeah, I was thinking like, um, then we get the response to the response. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you have this whole like domino effect of meta. Yeah. I think that's always super interesting to see when you get big wild cards in a patch because then this has implications on MSI, right? For True. example, you know, there's so many so many different things that so happen. So what, what's the triangle? Because it's Olaf and then Trundle's the response to Olaf. Yeah. What's the response to Trundle? What's the response to Trundle? I think you've got carry junglers. Like I know historically Nidalee was played into it. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's been so long since I've seen a Trundle. Um, AP junglers as well, you know, stuff like Lilia who can just kite. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's also incredibly interesting. But yeah, it's been a while. We have had Maokai meta for the past two to three years. True. So, yeah. It would be interesting to see that go away. It's been a while since we've been in that circle. I mean, the last time I saw carry jungle Olaf, or at least just Olaf in jungle, was like Bow's era in LPL was like 2019, 2020. That is a long time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> oh, if yeah. Was... He went like 16 kills or something. Dude, he that dropped was a 16 kill bomb. He literally level one Q flashes over the wall. Yeah. That's level one, right? Yeah. So, man. No, that's what I want to see crazy. from Linsus here. And he is so good at being proactive, mm. right? Linsus, like this guy, he will just make the plays. He 1v9 the finals. I remember watching L level finals and on the Viego game, the resets consistently finding the right skirmishes, yeah. not just outplaying pathing, but specifically micro outplays too. I mean, this guy's so good. I mean, he should, yeah. he should be in the LEC. And I feel like this guy again, um, you know, top jungler at EME Masters for a reason. Uh, we've already seen him on the Viego, like yeah. carry junglers for for that reason. We're waiting to get in the game, obviously, waiting for the delay. And once that's finished, yeah. uh, we'll be jumping in. But this is, I don't know. I think uh, the vibe. There was a big pause. A big pause. A big pause, we've told. I think uh, I think it's fair to talk about SK Prime. We've, we've yapped a little bit about the Alu of Olaf like and uh, SKC Bleed. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. not? Let's, um, I think uh, <laughs> their comp is slow. I don't think uh, it's any secret. True. They have a lot of volatility in terms of the TF that they can play for. They have isolated scaling, generate mm. a bunch of gold. Um, but it, a lot of it's about mitigation. I think they have a bunch of prior they can play for in bot side, bot side because yeah. Varus into Zari is pretty nice. Um, and whether or not they can use that to stop the Maokai being invaded is the question. Um, so yeah, that's that's the big deal. I think SK Prime though, they upset them last time, All right? Yeah, yesterday, yesterday a big upset in terms of um, playing versus KC Blue. Yeah, I mean again, uh, this has been a really good team that a lot mm -hmm. of people, I don't know, quite doubtful on. I feel like even though SK yeah. Prime were, I think it was were the best disappointing of Prime League. Prime League um, yeah, yeah, showing. Right, that was the problem. I think Neon had a, a screamer of a series. <laughs> yeah. Neon, uh, yeah, he was walking to buy cooks. Um, but yesterday, you know, showing a different Neon, I think. Yeah, I mean, the Neon, that again, has been in LEC yeah. before. Um, quick touch up as well. You know, on this comp, very versatile, I will say. You know, yep. you talk about it, it could be quite slow, but I feel like you can you can pivot a lot. You know, you've got Maokai Twisted Fate. There's a lot of pick potential as well. Like yeah. a, little, a lot of pick one, three, tools one, to catch two. out on side. Yeah. The side lane, Twisted Fate, you can play with the global. Um, I think there's a lot of potential going from mid to side as well. You can like drop a Maokai ult and a TF ult on someone. And that's why I wonder about, you know, I brought up the the question of on hit virus before i mean yeah. also you know poke virus as well make sure it, love it nasty piece actually with the on hit virus as well they got the azir double item, two that. items as well yeah. as the kraken slayer on virus uh, yeah. sorry on twisted fate and virus on hit as well True. so a lot of potential 20 minutes just to explode the game um i think that's really where you have to contest the game and because this this comp is probably going to be contesting a three uh, third drake as well well I think we've that, exhausted that, the draft, that, haven't that's we? That's about all. <laughs> <laughs> that you is know, about as much as I can yap, I think. That's nice. Well, we'll just wait in the game. We can just chill here for the time being. True. Sunglasses on. I didn't bring them. You didn't? No, I didn't bring them. No. Could, have, could have put them on. Comfy, just... though. It's weird to sit while casting. I don't I don't sit while casting. Usually a stand as well. It I mean, we could. But Let's, yeah. I think we'd be off frame, I actually. was about to say, <laughs> if you stand, that's a dangerous camera angle. 
<laughs> true, actually. True, actually. You weren't actually. thinking about that one? No, I wasn't. That'd be crotch cam, actually. There you go. Yeah, well, you didn't have to say yeah. it, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Aragon. Yeah, thank you. Histagon duo. Histagon, yeah. It's we potential. I'm we sound like we're something out of fairy tale, I think you know? We're a 16 sided shape. A histagon. Is that what it is? No, I've made that up. I know, but you know, there are like, it keeps going up. So the octagon. So the names are unlimited. Dodecahedron. Yeah, that's which 12. Is like 12. Yeah, that's 12. Then where what are the go? rest of them? I think their decahedron's the famous one. The famous one. Of, of that's shapes. the one that made it big. Of, of <laughs> that's the one that cut it to 12. It's like, there's probably names for like the 18 sided, the 22 sided, right? Oh, yeah. But just, I a don't nonagon know. is nine. Really? A nonagon, yeah. Nonagon. A nonagon. A 19 or nine? Uh, that's nine, I think. It's just nine. I think that's nine. Nonagon. Um, uh, it's, <laughs> it's an a Italian hepti- a shape. A heptagon is seven. Dude, we're yeah. getting, uh, I can see the skate potch emotes. <laughs> oh yeah! No, I, 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 oh yeah! The de- uh, dentist. <laughs> dentist. <laughs> That's new for me. Trust me. Oh my goodness. Um. Yeah. There's probably a bunch of them. So I want to talk about this shirt. Okay. Okay. Me. So everyone at home, right? See this shirt? I got this from a very hip store in 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 Berlin. Okay. And I think it is a cool vibe. It's from a '70s store. Give me uh, crocodile vibes. You, you reckon? Like crocodile Dundee. You know. Yeah, it is very, it is very crocodile Dundee-ish, isn't it? It looks like the Australian bush. <laughs> Look at all the dirt. You know, do you know that like ninety percent of Australia is uninhabitable? Uh, yeah, it's mostly well, desert, right? Not uninhabitable, but like not it's inhabited. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. It's all desert. The middle of Australia is like, yeah, it's like desert. It's, it's like the Sahara. Why is the the climate so variable? I don't know. You're Australian. I have no clue. You can't we, open we up with all, a fact and not be able we to explain it. We all live it. on the border. Oh yeah. Because that's where the water is. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the geography of a lot of countries, right? It's either like the terrain is terrible, it's, mountainous. It's just big, you know, like, and because it's so big, how many the middle is bad. How many Francis can fit in an Australia? I reckon about four. A four, at least. I don't know if that's I, right. I, I think at least two. You, okay, so if you put the United States, like Australia over the United States, United States is like one and a half times bigger, I think. See, I feel like the maps deceive you and Australia looks a lot smaller than the United States. You know yeah, I mean? it does. It does because it's at the bottom of the globe, so it yeah. it shrinks. Like mm, I like the shape. And people think like, oh, maybe New Zealand's comparable. Like New Zealand's like one tenth or something of it. Is it really that much smaller? I think it's actually that much smaller. Is this like when you compare maybe. the whole of Africa to, to to USA and you realize wait, USA can fit in Africa like can it seven times, and it doesn't look like that. Wait, can I actually? Yeah, it's huge. Africa is gigantic. Like, wow. it's way, way bigger than you expect. It's, it could fit like two and a half Chinas or something. <laughs> two and a half <laughs> yeah. Chinas? Yeah, it's gigantic. Well, that's I might nice. be spewing absolutely nonsense, by the way. That's okay. I'll take my word no, for we're, it. We're chilling. Guys, we're Trust. told it was at least a seven minute pause. So, right? We've exhausted four of those, maybe <laughs> five. I wouldn't mind two minutes more to go. If we could get uh, Atron back here to give us a croissant. Where is your croissant, by the My way? My croissant, I didn't finish it and I've lost it. You've lost it? <laughs> I've lost Where did it, it go? Oh, precious oh, gift. Oh, the French in you. I don't even remember what bet I won to win it. Win it. You won the your gangplank. Your, like you saw a pixel of a, of a gangplank. No, 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 it was yesterday's. I won mm. the guess that it would be a B1 drinks. Everyone else said different drinks. That was it. Oh. That was it, that was I it, thought, that was it. I thought Initialize won that. No, 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 no. Initialize yeah. said something else. I think um, you said Rumble. Yeah, I did, I don't know why. He's back. Oh, oh, what have you got for me? He's uh, back. Have a grape. They're all back. I would I, love, I'd a, love grape. a grape. Are you gonna? F- no. Oh my god! Wait, we've got the, the squad. I have. I'm not casting in these, by the way. I can't see. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Hey, you Thank got you. your own. You got your own. Thank you. Can you feed me too? Why is there a sticker on it? <laughs> Thank you. So we're just chilling, mm. and that's this is group stage. That means, while we wait, five. Oh, I'm I'm four too late. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I feel like people just appreciated that I'm muted. <laughs> I'm so shy. Okay. Help me. <laughs> Archer arm, what are you doing to my duo? <laughs> Okay. Get me in. Get ready. Game number four. <laughs> Game number four. Oh, oh my grape is so wet. <laughs> All right, get me in. Focus on. Right, so let's talk about draft. Well, I ate. Okay, so I'm here to blab because Hysterics is eating about seven grapes that got shoved down his gullet. Um, 
instant five-man stack ward up top side. This is very common, right? Then when you're playing versus ranged top lanes, you want to use the bushes a lot. So you drop a ward top so that the the, uh, the enemy top laner cannot go into the bush and then stop dodge, uh, dodge your autos. Sorry, that was the grapes talking. Um, regardless. Oh. Well, what a way to get into this game. Yeah. Well, Vision down on the rates. We see this a lot because Maokai can just invade, but this also marks out potential Olaf. So what we said before the uh, shenanigans yep. was Olaf has a lot of potential early game, right? He can yeah. level one invade, he can split maps, he can do so much. Now, they don't have a lot of strength in that AD carry, um, so maybe they don't go for that. But he can also, if that doesn't work out, clear extremely quickly. Yep. One of the strongest level ones in the game as well, I feel. Yeah. Uh, so again, Linsas, by the way, has taken Ghost, as you've commonly seen in the past. The ward spotted down, though, needs uh, is worth mentioning. As for SK Prime, the early clear here is going to be spotted out by Rabble. No, he's going up towards topside. I'm just looking towards his Swiss of Fate because Vanua, I don't yeah. know if he was slow playing towards topside. I think what he was doing was he was <laughs> shattering a potential invade from the Olaf. So yeah. they knew it was going to come as well, the level one, and he really didn't want his Maokai to be invaded on the right. raid camp. So as we get a pause. Another one. Oh, dear Lord. I've I had enough grapes. Thank you. We don't need to do that <laughs> don't again. Don't come back. Don't come back, no, Archer. No, 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 no. Oh, where's the damage? 0.1k? It's a, it's a short one. How many said. autos is 0.1k? They have 50-ish AD at level 1, like Dude, 60, 70. So that's... GG. Look at that virus. That's probably bar. two autos traded each. I think uh, down in the bot lane. Huge. 100 gold lead. KC Blue. Oh, oh I can hear it. I think we're coming back. Jug, we're jug. getting the live update of the Dude, grass as well. Dude, we're actually getting a live update. <laughs> and the question is, can you cast Dude. from a live update? Yeah, all right. Well, it's just a fight, bit of trade in top. Oh, yeah. It was an auto. <laughs> it was a single <laughs> auto. You imagine if that's what League of Legends was, you get like a real budget version. Yeah. So I think something really interesting right now is Maokai is clearing, Rabble on this Maokai is clearing um, to protect his bot side camps from potential invades. So they have no idea where Olaf started on that wolf camp. He thought that maybe we could three camp down bot side or one camp into invade onto that blue buff. Things are coming down for that invade now. So this clear from Rabble is going to guard from potential invade that Linz is looking for. I mean, again, it's quick on the Gromp as well as Botsai yeah. continues getting pushed in. Just a note on the 2v2. Looks like Callista and Fleshy hit two first. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned the Rel and Draft. Good engage tool here onto the Varus. We know the Nautilus is used defensively as well. Yeah. I, I love pings in this game, right? Because they, yep. they tell a story, right? Like, so the pings are coming down from blue side onto a red water on that uh, river entrance. So mm -hmm. they know that it's watered to point out any kind of Linsus invade. So what does he do? He decides, not going to invade. And they're just going to commit to a full clear. This was really well played from SK Prime already to mitigate any kind of invade potential. I mean, for Rabble as well as he clears topside, it means that it's a stable early game, right? We talked about it. It is exactly what you want as SK Prime. You don't want to get uh, yeah. uh, bullied out by the early Olaf. More importantly as well, you know, once level six is a hit as well, we know there's going to be tempo heaven for KC Blue as they, what, try to play towards bot lane it was? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So pings are coming out. They're kind of just figuring out what kind of clear Maokai did. I think they're figuring out now that Maokai did a clear to cover off the ganks. He sees that there's no Gromp up now. He's going to have to settle for crap. Because wave's too thin to dive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And they're way too... They're not chunked enough, right? The condition trades weren't there. They they weren't chunked enough, so there's no dive potential. He's going to have to reset. Maybe he can run straight up topside after this crab because Maokai's got a relatively slow clear. He does have prior mid. He can't do the same thing in topside, by the way, for Rabble. No dive going to be there yeah. regardless. Diving Kasante, yeah. even as Maokai, Twisted right. Fate, where's your damage early? Yeah. So what's going to happen now is this is going to settle for a deep ward after, after a full clear end. Probably just go back to clearing his camps again. You know a lot about the game, don't you? Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's the truth. But he knows now, right? So he knows the adaptive clear has come through, and he knows that race. I might have to hold that. Ignite is there. Neon is just going to walk it out. Holds onto the flash, but not the heal. That's a good trade. Kalist used cleanse and flash, and now flash comes from Kalist. Limits hook coming out was clutch, and Neon is yeah. going to be the benefactor. Someone has traded. Neon, uh, Kalist, no flash now as well. That might be an angle. Yep. Uh, easy and point and click Maokai W on a potential gank in the future too. You can see here, look at his pivot bot. He's like, he's just running now. Going over a couple of wards though, so yeah. Casey Blue, thumbs in the air because this bottom lane knows that Maokai is coming in. Nothing in the bottom side, no camps to steal as well. So he's just trying to pivot, yep. get a bit of vision himself while he angles in case Casey Blue are greedy. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big information game right now. They're figuring out what their clears were so that they know where they can go to potentially invade rotation camps, right? You saw that Olaf Linsus on the other knew after seeing that the Gromp was down that Maokai had taken the Wraith camp first, so he invaded the respawns. Maokai tried to do the same, found that Linsus hadn't done the same sort of clear, so now he's kind of stuck here. Bloody as well, if he gets involved in the fight, I mean, the stronger 2v2 is going to be the Olaf and, and Talia. I mean, we talked about it after 6, I mean, I mentioned it just mm -hmm. before, but that's the other thing, all game long, yep. such a big 2v2 that just snaps. I clicked if anyone didn't hear that. 
Um, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely quick damage. But yeah, 40 CS to 28 now. We highlighted really fast clear speed. Buffed yep. as well on 14.7. So now I'm going to be happy getting uh, getting his first uh, recall. And he has a bunch of gold. An easy tunneler. Now you can open up pings on the grubs already. You know, the other thing as well is grubs, Olaf, is, uh, is going to be super quick as well. You know, it's undertow that does yeah. so much damage. Extra base damage. Flat. It's not percentage like we've normally seen in monsters as well. What do you see, Bob? I saw potential gank. I might have overreacted, though. But yeah, yeah right. just to go on your point as well with what the clear, it? a bunch of true damage to get through the resist on the grubs as well. Yeah. Because you keep resetting. The buffs uh, to Olaf also included, like a reset to the true... Uh, like Every auto attack reduces the true damage spell more. Right, so you get the more true damage off. Um, still, not going to be a grub angle. Yeah, it's not because Vladdy has ult. Level 6 here on the Talia. Wants to wall this out. It's 3 versus 2 for now, but... Bottom lane's coming in. This is going to be a massive collapse. There's Dredge Line. Ooh. Limit may be lucky it didn't connect. Or is Linsas here? Undertow going to connect onto Ravel. Doesn't have the ulti, but doesn't need it. Vladdy comes in. The shove doesn't connect, though. All the Wombo from KC Blue doesn't connect. As Destiny pops up first. No top planner from Blue to follow down. First Blood. The Dragon going down is the only trade. But gold coming through after SK Prime, just watch them with. Yeah, really, really nice from the Twisted Fate, right? Coming out of base, looking through mid and dropping a wave for that. Just to, it doesn't they don't secure the dragon. Weirdly enough, though, Mainta doesn't commit to the top side. I think what Mainta just did was recall and potentially look for a TP, but Linsus just surviving that hook just at the tip right there. Fleshy doesn't find the connect. He goes in, he falls. Look at Watch Twist Fate. Comes from base, immediately comes here. This is something Adam on BDS does, yep. actually. He does this a bunch. He just walks through mid, finds these roams. Then watch Mainta. He actually resets. I think what Mainta was trying to do was reset and then TP down into the fight, potentially, with a reset and gold. But the fight was already done. It was already committed, yeah. So again, not the best play. I mean, for Casey Blue, again, they are the ones who got the dragon, as Rabble might be in trouble. Weaver's Wall wasn't used in the previous There's play. No Shove is there as well. That's a kill. And it goes over to Vladdy as well. Mid-jungle 2v2 comes alive, and now the invade begins. And what does that convert to? Yeah, exactly. Wraiths, he can actually backstep and then go to Grubs if he wants to. Getting defended a little bit by the Nautilus, but it should be absolutely fine. Should also get Grubs from that as well. So let's kind of look at where Linsas goes next. Already ahead in the jungle. And the setup onto Vladdy adds pressure towards mid and Diplex pulling back here as well. Close to a plate going down for Vladdy as well, just to add in a bit of context. Absolutely. I think if he wants to, Mainta can just come over down as well. Despite not having prior, there's no ghost for Venor, and he doesn't do that much damage early. So this should be just free, especially since Rabble is down bot side. And there's no cross map potential either. So Rabble's just going to clear his camps and. SK Prime is going to be pretty sad. How nice is it again? Undertow oh, on multiple spam. camps. It's, it's why Olaf clear on things like Raptors are so nice, right? Yeah, as well, yeah. like Krug, it's the same feeling. That's why you see, uh, we've seen all this game, just consistent invades onto the respawn Raptors over and over again. Because Olaf and Maokai both just spam clear them over yeah. and over because of the AoE. Look how quick that was. That was fast. That was like 15 seconds. I wish seconds. we timed it. Yeah, 15 seconds. Yeah, we'll look again next one. Because again, three grubs are already picked up and this is the composition that are, I guess trying to deny it from something like the Twisted Fate. So it is a big call. Is Vladdy not going to find Rabble there off the pick-off towards mid lane? He's Weaver's Wall half the way up before the next play commences, and that'll be along the lines of the next dragon, yeah. next uh, Rabble as well. Vladdy playing really bloodthirsty. He was really looking for that Maokai since he, Rabble does not have Flash, so if he could play the long game and find a combo, and then eventually his team could catch up, would have found a combo there, but... This dude was sick yesterday, by the way. Yeah, he really if was. If anyone missed out, it was the Zier game from Vladdy as well, that when KC Blue were getting outscaled, he played side lane so damn well. Uh, yeah. One of the favorite plays so far in tournament. Over and over again. I, every single time, like, it seemed like, you know, there were options for him to backdoor the base too, consistently yeah. inside lane. That was the only way they were going to win, but unfortunately, kept getting held by the ASOL. Still, really, really nice plays. Same in the LFL. Uh, in the finals, onto Leah, landed every single combo. I didn't oh, yeah. see this guy miss a single one. So, we'll see you can do the same thing here. Yeah, set up for it again. Already got the pi already got the kill, rather. Tier is in yeah. the inventory, stacking up nicely as well. Just backed off then, Merc Treads is going to be picked up against this Maokai Twister Fate comp, which, I mean, every single person locks down. So it's a nice pickup. Nice consideration, I think, for most of these players. As you can see, Manta. Manta? I'm Manta. Manta, thank you. Correction, I asked for it yesterday. Uh, also picks up Merc Treads here. So uh, definitely going to have a lot of uses in this game for KC Blue. As Rebel now level six, thinking about the options he can pick up going to be top. I mean, it is a hard lane to lock down. Yeah, absolutely. Five plates top still. Um, I'm really excited to see when Olaf recalls here. I'm, I'm pretty sure Linsus is very close to his Sundered Sky. Yeah. Um, so on that next dragon and on the Wraith respawn again. Tense corruption though. Let's pause on that. Level five on the rail. Can't crash down. Can't Magnet Storm. Can't do anything. Blood goes over to Neon. Destiny going to be used in the meantime as we look at our picture and picture. Look at the bottom right. This Olaf just having to fight it out. Runs out of the Ragnarok and is now dead. Casey Blue are bleeding Ooh. as now Kalis bleeds a little bit further. The Flashes down. Neon not getting the tag. And 
Casey Blue, a couple of plays across the map that are starting to burn. Yeah, wow. Skirmishes all the way across the map. You had fight over a race, every single respawn camp being contested. And then bot lane 2v2 as well. Kliss with a nice flash to dodge out on the hook at the end there. Trying to pick up a kill onto Limit, despite him having the shield pulled down. But Diplex! Really good. He tried to find the wall there. He could have been dead. He, he actually dead if wall. he doesn't shift away. The shifting sensor saves for now, but running into Vlad, he has to flash out instead. Wow. So, almost a solo kill coming through. Diplex avoids it. As we yeah. look at this replay one more time. Yeah, I, I think we need a Wraith Tracker or something because they just keep... They know the timers of each clear, yeah. right? So, they both keep invading. Um, Linsus tries to find something. Disrespects the fact that the DPS is coming out. I don't know what happened to Vladdy there. He just hops out early, but he's not in the fight. Oh, yeah. I had Flash available as well. Doesn't want to commit mm. that. You could see that Mainter on the Cassante was following the Twisted Fate to interrupt the ulti if he oh. ever wanted to join another Wraith fight. So, I think if Vladdy just committed to that fight on the Wraiths... It's quite unfortunate. Bit of a disconnect. And again, I mean, that hurts again when you want to see Tempo keep pushing Casey Blue's favor. They're down a 1,000 gold here. SK Prime have really held the early game strong. Yeah. And I think also we have to add in context that the bottom lane, if you weren't watching then, is really skyrocketing ahead. Neon here on mm. the Lethality virus, which, you know, we question whether it was going to be on here to Lethality. Already picked up the first item. Dragon's being done here. Casey Blue have to walk into this. At 2k, Linsats is already here. Ooh. Gets the steal from under their nose. Yet again, by the way. Now running down Ravel with a level advantage. Now Ragnarok, he doesn't care about the ulti turns. Over the limit with the Magnus Storm from Fleshy being a beauty. Neon is in harm's way as well. Kalis finally joins in. This for KC Blue is such an easy fight. And Diplex as he walks in, tries to find Vladdy, but the flash over the wall won't let him find Ooh. the return. Somehow the burn comes red down buff. thanks to the red buff. You said it. As Diplex is one hit away from dying himself. Kalis needs to get into range. And yes, he will. KC Blue back on the board in a big way. I think SK Pro ne needed to play with more confidence. They had a full item on the Varus. He had Flash, whereas Kalis didn't. They just didn't take the fight and they parted like the Red Sea. If you take a look at what happened Osis. here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I, mean, I <laughs> referenced that. But take a look. Linsus hasn't got an item. Varus does. They're super separated. If they just group up here, they have a huge item advantage and summoner advantage. Yet they're all running away. And they're all focusing separate targets as well. Very so, separate targets. Yeah, in, in the end, it's just enough. And it makes up for Casey uh, Blue's deficit. Well, Blue's just got a shutdown onto Neon. All right. I was going to say, at least they didn't give the shutdown away. But uh, Neon is dead. And Kalist is now suddenly at two kills. And when I was just complimenting this lethality virus is so far ahead, yeah. it feels like SK Prime have just given the game back over to Casey Blue in that dragon fight. Yeah, absolutely. Still not doom and gloom. They have an item not. on their carries. You know, Azir has that Nashus too and the opportunity for the virus. So... My only worry here is Linz is on this Olaf. He's also accelerated to his first item. So any kind of skirmish uh, that they do take versus no summoners and not quite a lot of DPS quite just yet. Definitely going to be the Olaf favored. The Kalis is well on the way. Static Shiv is picked up regardless. Now has a bounty on his own head. Uh, Linz, as we said, you know, he's got the element of control here. 500 gold lead. He's 100 to 80 yep. CS. I mean, this Olaf, despite having a, a bit of a Barney up towards Raptors or Wraiths, as you call it, such an old school player. <laughs> Like, like uh, yeah, everyone can tell you a player um, is, is still uh, pushing ahead. I do want to highlight, though, Kalis down bot side continues 2v2 kills as well alongside Fleshy. Yeah. Now, Linsus is pathing down bot side, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him kind of play. He has red buff as well. Find some kind of dive or invade in this. But Ping's coming down onto the respawning Rift Herald, so it's more likely going to be there. Okay, well, let's set up for it. Again, Herald uh, at the end of Tower Plating is I'm saying that because I'm like, I'm actually looking. How much turret plating was taken? Yeah. 4-4 four, four, and 4. We don't get blue side, but it's actually a very low turret plating game. Usually you expect a bunch more, especially top side with uh, Twisted Fate into Cassante, oh, yeah. uh, right? Like you just perma push the Cassante in. I think maybe that room early on the Twisted Fate kind of negated any kind of snowballing potential. True. Especially now on Kraken Slayer. I'd expect him to get the push, but maybe he's conceding because he's scared, you know, at this point in the game. He'd be ganked so easily by Atelier. We'll see how the, the engage or at least the setup comes yeah. through from someone like Fenor outside of the Herald, which, as we talked about, is set up here. Vision by Casey Blue are the ones who are looking at it for the time being. Pings are now going down from Linsas as well, while you can see Rabble nowhere near it. He's focusing on bot side. Yeah. Setting up for a potential dive. Yeah, so cross map being set up right now for the side of K uh, SK Prime. It's, it, and you can see that KC Blue know that's going to happen. So they're not over expanding resources onto the Rift Herald take. Instead, they're going to send Fleshy down bot side. So. Resources expended by SK Prime down bot. Now it's up to KC Blue to survive this. I think they have the way for it. For Rabble, Nature's Grass follows oh, no. through. There's a bit of poke to start us off, and they don't coordinate to avoid individual Nature's Grass, but still the wave is thinned out. So dive negated. Top yep. side here, the Herald is going to be traded, and not much given over to SK Prime for the trade. Cross map denied, winning across the map. This is a really good macro call by KC Blue. This is great mitigation on cross maps. Textbook. 
absolute textbook. Yep, really beautiful. So I think from now on, I mean, it's SK Prime. They just gotta. They don't have that many plays to make right now. They just gotta take it because they're against Grubs. They're against potential Rift Herald. I want to see. Um, KC Blue use that Riptail before the next dragon. It's in a minute's time. What you can do is just place it mid, draw their attention, then you can move first into the river as well. It's a great dragon as well, by the way. Mountain in a minute. We'll start stacking up towards assault. KC Blue. It's kind of been frustrating because SK Prime as uh, Weaver's War comes through, just pause it. Vladdy trying to deny the turret taking the bottom side for first turret blood. I was going to say, the dragon's been taken under the nose of SK Prime yeah. both times as well. You know, Linsass in the first trade where SK Prime are the ones that started up. Second time, same deal, 145 HP yeah. or around the swords where Linsass was able to come in, Q smite it again. So yep. again, it's given a condition for KC Blue to start forcing the neutral objective where SK Prime are going to have to group up before this disease is ready. And they, they really, really can't afford to give this up as well, like you're saying. Um, and the problem that they have, though, is KC Blue, you really can't cross map into the Rift Herald. You have yep. to answer the Rift Herald, then move into the river. So KC Blue, it feels like this Rift Herald is kind of securing the dragon for them. See, Pink's coming down already. They want mid. to place the Rift Herald in yeah. okay. and use that pressure. Three members mid so far. You can see as well, Vladdy, use the Weaver's Wall. That's the only thing that changes about this fight. There is yeah. no Talia ulti in five seconds for the start of the dragon. The Herald, as you mentioned, is going to give priority so that things open up for KC Blue mid. And SK Prime, as they react to it, Pink's also going down. I'm just noting that KC Blue aren't starting this no. up straight away. Maybe trying to lure and delay. And this is the problem, right? You have to expend resources to defend the Rift Herald charge so you can't cross map top on the dragon, right? right. This is why I'm saying you can't be proactive into a Rift Herald. You have to match first. Therefore, you get the dragon if you're KC Blue for nothing. You might get a bit of damage on turret, take a first tier one, but you'll take that any day for a third drake. I mean, top side as well was bound to go down at some yeah. point. Then looks like there's going to be a trade from KC Blue because look at who's on the bottom side of the map. Absolutely no one for the time being. Mid is under well, look control at the as well, and top is control. There are pinks coming down on a ward down there. Assistance pinks. I wonder if they're going to set up for a potential double TP. They they have oh, diplex there. Pinks are coming down. And he's almost close to his second really item, tense. but there's going to be good damage coming through from these. As you said, double TP an option, but you're running out of time, and you are out of time now. Yeah, I think the play fizzles. You can see TF was, Twisted Fate was running down as well. They were really, really set on yeah. making that play. I was really looking forward to it. Not sweeping out behind the potential misplay from KC Blue, but they get away with it. Get that first turret. Okay, so Soul is picked up. Soul point, rather. Yeah. We're getting close. Four minutes until that is a potential for KC Blue that SK Prime have to fight. A Z will be at two, maybe two and a bit items by then as well. Uh, for Diplex again, Carry, who's been going through the landing phase, not too bad. Even now, seeing a bit of damage, even through Fleshy, who's chilled roughs in the end. I want to point out as well, Neon should be close to his second item too here on the Lothali, uh, Lothali virus. Also note, Vanilla's already there. This guy's ahead, yeah. naturally, the TF lane. 2.2k ahead, actually, with a 40 CS lead. Just picked up that bottom side turret on our screen. Now bot is open, because the trade-off for KC Blue, they're through mid, they're through top. Aragon, Mainz is going to take an ulti, and that's just so that Vanilla can keep pushing on in. Almost picks up the tier two by himself. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what they want, right? They need to snowball before that dragon to get a bunch of items to make sure that they can fight that soul. And the, what their technique was, they were going to shadow the split push of Venor on this Twisted Fate to make sure that he gets a bunch of gold. Now, the problem is you'd rather have the gold on someone like the Azir. Still going to be a really, really good reprieve and a way back into the game. Now, they're going to need that tower to get that massive injection of gold. But that chip damage is going to be there from the Twisted Fate. It's going to be massive. I mean, I was just talking about items before. This is going to lead him to his third nice and early yep. as well. Uh, Mainter right now, you can see there's not that much damage, but it's still oppressive to stand in the lane for any longer here against this tier with rapid fire cannon. Uh, as now Casey Blue looks like they're rotating back. And we've only got a minute to the Baron, by the way. Yeah. Uh, one thing as well that we kind of got to watch out for. Something Casey Blue could do is potentially trade off Baron and position on the Baron for the fourth dragon because it'd only be the first was SK Prime. They don't have that much Baron DPS, so maybe not. Uh, Zeri at this point can do a bit, especially if he gets the Infinity Edge. But I think they just should settle for a team fight. This fourth Drake is going to be absolutely everything. Yeah, maybe it's more like looking at it on the other side for SK Prime. They're going to mega Baron. Yeah. Man, that team. They will, do. They will destroy Baron. Like, hot damn. But look at that vision all around the Baron. I think KC Blue know. Limited gauge. Chance corruption used by Neon as well. Nothing to fizzle from it as well. SK Prime moving as a four-man unit. Mainta gets the push in bot. Push in top as well. So SK Prime have to go manage the waves. Look at me talking about the game. <laughs> Crazy. Analyst hysterics. I know. I just, for the past couple of days, you know, being on desk, I'm just like, I'm talking about things like You're priority. In the zone. I've used tempo a couple of times. I must be an analyst, you know? Dive through mid though. Weaver's wall going to be useless. Pause on that good tempo. 
coming from KC. Blue is limited as a flash away from the seismic shove. Gold cards out, but no damage yet on this front line. And for KC Blue opening up the map, well, stage one is a success. Yeah, TP expended as well as Talia, so you'll take that trade any day. Now they have to match side lanes without teleport. They do have the Twisted Fate without ult too, but Drake's in a minute. So what, what uh, KC can do now is just go top, permanent push in, and then TP down if they need to, and they can't be matched. Just note that the virus holding might not be up and available. Minute 30, maybe Jake is wrong. Let's hold on that, but <laughs> there's something that's down. I was looking at Neon's timer and I'm like, actually, it'll be up in about 30 seconds time. But again, we're looking at alt usage because around this dragon, it is going to be a big fight. Yep. Casey Blue are moving to Soul Point. A Soul, rather. Vladdy doesn't have the Weaver's Wall. Again, in front of an important objective, Vladdy's Weaver's Wall is down. And it was used to force through mid turret. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep our eyes on how Vladdy uses that Weaver's Wall when it's up at that dragon fight potentially, if it is up by then. Um, as well as the Malkyle. These are the big ults that will create space to secure that dragon yep. in that team fight. Um, whether it's Malkyle to be able to move into the Ripper in the first place, or the Tilly to break up the team. A quick touch up before we get to the fight as well. Double item picked up here by Neon. He'll have a fully stacked Mura mana by that time as well. Recurve both of Venera in the top side. One and a half items for the Maokai. A pure tank item doesn't feel like it's there yet. Then that's just picked up plated steel caps. Okay, nice addition. Just gonna look what else he's got. Oh, he's got Sundered Sky as well. So yep. two item with a Sterix Gauge. Also Infinity Edge for Kalist. Yeah, but, item parity. I mean, two items across yeah. the board for every single carry. I feel like this is the closest you're gonna get if you're SK Prime. So just take it. Like, Talia is still one and a half items. I think this is the best opportunity. Oh, as they go through brush for Casey Blue, they'll get spotted out. And looks like SK Prime are going to get into River first. 10 seconds until Dragon spawns, yep. pops over the wall, and everyone's here to play. Gold Car going to hit Linsats. Bit of damage comes through as well. SK Prime are going to start this up. But again, remember, Casey Blue can run in with this Olaf. Yeah, you can absolutely. Like, watch the Malkyle. It's not going to stop Linsats. Usually it will guarantee Dragons. I feel like they can't hold this and play with the Malkyle because Linsats on this Olaf is such a good pick. Fleshy's angle. Well, look Finding at that flag. Potentially. Fleshy. You can wrap around. This could be a nasty flag from the side. He's not spotted out, is he? The Noor now walking into River. Flatty there with a seismic shove. Good poke out. Limit about to get spotted out. But still, Fleshy holds his mark. Neon trying to use range. Lins has taken a lot of damage. There it is. Corruptions there. The Magnet Storm comes down. The launch in is huge. The, the ultimate from Azir does nothing. Diplex getting ran, but no one's telling Lynx that Major runs in, but he's late as Kaliss gets depth charged. The KC Blue team fighting is so messy, it doesn't come together, and SK Prime are still running them apart. There's good poke from Flatty from Kalis, but they're outside the Dragon. The game is delayed. The Weaver's Wall from Flatty running into a Nautilus. The shove gives him time, but a dredge line and no steal. KC Blue are going to get it wiped here. It's just about how long it'll take. Venua with a Destiny in front of Kalis with no cleanse is a sure fire hit to send him to the grave. Limit no eating, no depth charge, no dredge line matters. Naughty Hex flashes in his face. He dies oh, for it as well. Kalist is just about how many he can take with him as he goes down. The question. He's against close. Rapid Fire. I think, well, uh, yeah. Gold card, there we go. <laughs> so, it's still Escape Prime. I don't know what happened there, but Linsus' Ragnarok immediately expired. Right, yep. So he walks in there. I think Ragnarok can't auto attack to keep refreshing it. And then it just fizzles. You saw a really good flank from the side from Fleshy. It gets flashed away from. Ragnarok expires here. Oh, <laughs> it's so unfortunate. It's actually heart wrenching because then he can't auto attack and sustain. There's no damage. The wall parts them. And the carry's isolated on the side. I mean, it's rough as well. It's rough when you consider that for Casey Blue. I mean, the fight started out really well. They were buying time. Things like the Weaver's Wall, you know, it looks like it was only back up and available then, or at least the best opportunity for Vladdy. Uh, get to track that one in the end, but it's a slow burn. SK Prime, deny the... Deny, deny. Let's try again. Deny the Salt. And the Mountain Salt away from Casey Blue. Pick up some techie stats themselves, and, and just in the replay. Outside of this, we saw mid lane turret going down. So a bit more gold in their back pocket. And yeah, Kalis is shortly about to die. I just want to see what, uh, what the play was in response. Hang on a minute. Ooh. Neon's dead. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay, here's a comeback. Yo. Nash was taken. Nash was taken. Uh, are we in the same game? <laughs> yeah, so Nash gets taken by uh, by SK Prime, but they get a pick in mid lane, so that slows down the potential Baron siege that'll come out of SK Prime. There's a there's a split pushing TF with Baron, but honestly, this is not what you want. If you've got Baron, you really want a positive Baron play. I mean, absolutely. Again, it is still a 3k gold lead. Baron power play so far is... Uh, Close to 1100, but without Neon, maybe not the end of the world. 
not the end of the world. They're holding side lane. You know, Vladdy has a bunch of wave clear, and they do get a mid tier two. A replay of a replay. Here we go. But how did Neon die here? It must have been a nice engage from Flesh. He's a hex flash. There it is. It is. Right, so he does get the hex flash into oh. the dash forward. Very good. And the chain CC is just there. Bliss picked up the kill too. So again, getting closer mm -hmm. and closer. What's he at? Three items? No, almost. Renan's on the way for Kalist. Uh, four kills. I mean, this is the thing we got to start talking about as well, right? I know we mentioned scaling and for SKP. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've got like a front to back. It might be a little bit slower. They've used their pick tools really nicely, but we are getting to the point of the three item is here too. Yeah. The Zeri is also a condition, I feel like, for KC Blue that is worth mentioning, especially when you have a lot of engaged tools like the Cassante, like the Olaf to run down to. So I'm just going to throw that out there that uh, the list yeah. is probably the saving grace. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nearly triple item AD carry. Always going to be a hyper carry in this regard. I think the point and click from the stun of the Twisted Fate and the Malka W as well as the Depth Charge might throw a wrench on the plans. Usually ban away point and click roots it when does. you pick Zeri. So I think that that makes it hard for us to find any kind of uptime. True. The other auto attack. The turret of trade. Bottom, you can see it's picked up by Vladdy. But SKP are getting closer towards mid as well. That cannon minion yep. from range. I mean, there's not much range in KC Blue. The Siege with Cannon Minions actually thinking about it, and Avaris Azir. Yeah. We're going to start throwing that word range in the mix again. Look at Linsus' flank right here. He has a TP ward. That they, he's been spotted out, so they know that he's there, and he decides not to opt for it, right? So KC Blue had a few options. They had to decide, you know, are we going to cross map this Baron Siege for top tier two, or are we just going to try and look for a fight and mitigate this potential Siege? And they opted for that. Fortunately, not going to be going for the top tier two. Still waiting, though. Yeah. Wait, Neon is the only one here. Neon shows, never mind. Mid is just going to be taken in the meantime from Lintas. Dragon in a minute, though. Dragon in a minute is going to be uh, next look at. And Baron will be down before Dragon starts as well. So all that pushing power from SK Prime is going to disappear for the time being. They're able to get inner turrets both, both mid and bottom by the looks of it as well. The base is still not broken. I think the most important part is that they find an engage, unlike the last one, where the carries can actually hit, because the carries were stuck in a really annoying choke next to the blue buff. So if they can find an engage where the carries can actually attack and not be outranged and CC'd, that's really important. As well as Linsus being able to maintain the ultimate, because the Azir wall, it made him have to run around and right. not be able to auto attack. That's the problem they were kind of facing last fight. But any kind of positive fight here and getting soul can just, it doesn't matter about the previous game, about the what? previous fight. Well, Tiplex, it is going to matter now that he has Rabbit on. So I will say three item Azir has come yeah. into play as Rabble's going to start us off. Bit of an engage, but only onto the tanky targets. Dragons there, pings are going down, and Escape Prime, with all the priority they have in this side of the jungle, are not going to give this one up, not going to give a chance at getting to Soul. They're going to continue giving more tanky stats over to Rabble, over to Limit as well. Part of their frontline engage as Dragon starts off again. Lids just makes himself known. He gets the vision on everyone. He has on the side. He can potentially look for a flank. Destiny Fleshy. sees him weaver's wall on the back end as well. Flatty zones off Fleshy. In fact, Limit starts to engage. Main to save by a seismic shove. There's Neon with the ulti as well. Backside Rabble's there and oh. will get the steal in front of the Olaf. Trying to chase him down with no damage right now as Linz has his Fleshy gets the engage, but can't get Limit. On the back end, they chase on in and this Olaf jungle now struggling. Teleport going to be burned in the midst of the fight by Diplex. And it looked good in the early game, but now no one's there to back him up. Yeah, it is just another disaster fight for KC Blue. The Olaf can't maintain Ragnarok again. Mainter gets chunked and uh, gets three-quarter health before he can press W, and the CC chain is just there, so he's out of the fight. Every single fight, uh, oh. except for Kalist. Is Venor dead? There is a, a cleanse available. Going to use it. Kalist now getting the flash over, is. matching it too. And that's big bad Kalis, the solo kill, a shutdown too. We go to a replay, we put a crown on his head, but Yo. this is SK Prime's crown from this fight. So SK Prime secure Dragon with a Q flash, particularly with Mainter. He gets perma chain CC before being able to press W, so he's completely out of the fight. Then it's just a 4v5. Fleshy's uh, just chunked and perma hooked as well. Linsus' ult once again expires frame perfectly. <laughs> that's really unfortunate. <laughs> But again, no one's there. I mean, a lot of KC Blue's fights are just different members in different places with yeah. different targets, right? And I think that's the issue we've seen so far is that a team that we have such high regard for and high expectations and like, you know, again, people are like, oh, this is the champion organization. Well, remember again, it's technically not. The champion organization of EME Masters bought the spot in LEC. Mm. Players went up as well, or at least, you know, new squad was built up. Kalis, the only remaining member, it's a brand new squad outside of him as well. And yep. a brand new, well, a brand new organization, a sisterhood organization in KC Blue. So these expectations can be thrown out the window for now because SK Prime are wiping the floor with some of these team fights. They've delayed Soul twice now. They're 5,000 gold ahead. 
And man, this Azir is a serious problem that I feel like we haven't even needed to talk about because none of the ults have been game-breaking yet. Yeah. But we know they will be. Just the raw DPS and the threat in the fights is there. Kalist, though, he's putting the game on his back. And he whether is. or not he can match this Azir, I think is the big question, like you're saying. Almost four items for both of them. Really big hyper carry fight. TP comes through. This Baron is going to be everything. Well, let's see if Champion Kalis can pull it back here. Level 16 on the Zyre as well. Almost four items. BF Sword sits in with a bit of extra damage amplification. Ooh. SK Primer moving towards a TP on the back end. Are you looking at this Aragon? Mainz is coming in for a yeah. flank. Yeah, Mainz is coming in for a flank. He could look kidnap at that Baron. Baron. He could look kidnap at that Baron, though. But look, it doesn't matter for the timing. Hang on, Neon. It might matter. He might die. He flashes away. He might get shoved back as well. A lot of mites here, but finally it does happen as Neon is taken out. It's a cost of Aaron so far as Fleshy jumps on him. Magnet Storm is a sacrificial lamb. Diplex caught out with his pants down as well. They need to get out of there. The disregard right now for Casey. Blue is too strong as Fleshy with the lens Ooh. out. Not going to spot the Maokai backing in the brush. And three members left alive. Casey Blue winning the fight, but losing the Baron. Yeah, four for Baron, three for Baron. You don't really like that, but two Baron, you'll take it, right? Yep. That was a decent enough trade for the side of SK Prime. They definitely are going to have to wait but until the wave clear is down, though. The wave clear is down. You trade it for probably just an in hip. You can definitely hold the super minions. What if you went for the end? Maybe. Look at the minion wave. You have four grubs. Y you have four grubs. You're worried right now about the disengage. What if you went for the end? That's the question. Is it, Sitting here disregarding KC Blue, maybe the end of them. Fanor's gonna die, gets run down by Linsas. Is it all for well, Nord? The Baron going down. Now a turret follows through. Linsas has oh, run no. out of the Ragnarok, and maybe they shouldn't have ended. <laughs> maybe they, should they have. shouldn't have ended. I asked, was it possible? They took too long. KC Blue, run for your lives. Yeah, they don't have teleports up, so there's no potential long chase here. So Lucky. Casey Blue going to be able to get out of that one. There's pings coming down. They know where wards are, so they were scared of the potential teleport still. Yeah, I think that was a bit of an overreach. I was a bit concerned. I respect it, actually. Yeah, I do too. Why not? I mean, let's look at the replay again. Well, this is actually of the Baron. Yeah, I was I was wondering, like, what with that Neon flank. Doing? I was wondering with that flank, you know, could he kidnap Rabble and find a potential spice steal? But everyone's too far away. So they find Neon instead, and this long chase comes out. Also find Diplex. Unfortunately, the Scryer's Bloom, it doesn't quite find and doesn't tag the Maokai on Rabble. I'm so, surprised. Look at the range here, right? Yeah. I mean, the angle, it's downwards, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you also walk over a ward there, but they were committed, right? They, they were yeah, really yeah. committed. They looked straight for this. They have the grubs. I think that's the line of logic, right? True. 30 seconds on Azir, too. 10 yeah, on, no on Varus at this point. I wonder if they land that combo onto Talia. They can fast combo and kill uh, the Twisted Fate and then hit the tower sooner. I think maybe there's an angle there. Maybe. But not enough, not enough. I still respect again. Linz yeah. trying to run them down. I know he's dead at that point too. One Nexus turret still standing. And for KC Blue after what has been some of a massacre in these fights and then losing the Baron, at least getting the pick off and trying for the end is respectable here for the French organization. Yep. Just after I was saying that this team ain't delivering on what we expected or more so yep. and what expectations demand. Dragon going to come up now though in SK Prime. Back in position while... Aragon set me up for this because... They're trading. They're trading once again. It's tier two. It's going to be tier two okay. for the dragon. They could potentially defend this if they send someone up and have people recall. Uh, but the problem is with this Baron Siege is it was so delayed by having people chain die that, you know, they also have the fight against the super minions. They can't quite <laughs> use it to break the base. Sorry, Destiny was just used. Oh, Major the, the is movement. taking no damage. <laughs> now, finally, it starts coming through. Is he ult? He's out. Gold card there, but unstoppable for the time being. Weaver's Wall is a counter play on oh to Casey God. Blue's top lane. If an on to job, Seismic Chop, he's lucky to walk past it with Ghost. Almost dies himself. Meanwhile, on the top side, Linsas is the split pusher <laughs> from hell. Look at this Olaf. He's like, you know what? I keep dying in fights. I'm sick of team fighting. Let's avoid that. Let's avoid that. Let's play Split Show off. We have an auto reset on W. You know what? Why not? You know, I really like Callista's, uh, Callis holding his cleanse right there. He was uh, maybe a bit scared, but he doesn't actually pop it, especially on that stun from the, the Varus who does a bunch of damage. But yes, good cross map defending on that Baron Siege. I'm going to lose out on anything. A positive trade for KC Blue. And the, uh, the Olaf doing nicely in the top side. The inner turret dropping down as well. Gold is shifting to about 3,000 know, when SK Prime had about a 5, 6k gold lead a little bit before. Gold is starting to be a little bit more meaningless, though, I will say. You know, we are getting to yeah. four items across these carries. It's not completely invalid, but it is getting to that point. I tell you what is valid, though. The fact that Rabble uh, and Limit are going to be so much harder to kill, denying three Mountain Dragons now as well. A lot of base stats with, what, 6, 12, 18% yeah. of extra armor and MR. So uh, when they finally build up, you know, fourth item yeah. there for the jungler, th third item for the support, we are going to get an engage tool or engage tools that are harder to kill by KC Blue.
So what I think SK Prime is doing now, no one's matching down bot side collecting the waves. They don't even care about the bot waves. They want everyone up top side just in case of engage because of the snap engage from uh, KC Blue. So mm -hmm. they're sending everyone top side, setting up a bunch of visual because Baron's up in one minute 30. They need everyone to be there. And those wards aren't typically swept out. So that ward right there at the entrance to the Wraith camp on red side, they're actually going to spoil any kind of cheeky startup from KC Blue. KC Blue right now, though, they're just going to shift back and at least yeah. get one last back in before we get towards that Baron's born yeah. in a minute 15. Yeah, they've got an ARAM. They can't afford to be split up. They can't afford to split push down bot side. The, the standing gold that they'd have to overreach to, like all the way down bot side to the 2-3 is too far. It would take too long. So they're just going to group up ARAM, be there for the engages. Like she starts it off. Good damage from Diplex. He's just picked up Crit Bloom, by the way. Yeah. Level 18 is there. A lot of damage, a lot of DPS that we already talked about. And as this group up continues from SK Prime, might be Vanor who catches topside wave, then sees if he can pivot with the Destiny up and available if he has to go back towards mid lane as well. But we're aiming, we're aiming on both sides of the time, being just closer towards this Baron start in 45 seconds. And for KC Blue, the flex and pings of bottom side to see if they can open up yeah. inner turret in the trade-off for it all. Yeah, SK, a bunch of vision up top side. This is going to be really, really useful for when Baron starts because they know when they're going to be engaged on. And now what you have is a trade for KC Blue. They're going for bot lane tier two. That is a bunch of gold. But I'd rather have this this vision on the top side for when Baron spawns to be way more valuable. But look, Kalista's not here, by the way. He was just pushing up mid, oh, holding no. the wave so there's no SCP. crash in. SKP are here. Uh, they're going to find the turret. Teleport, as you said, is going to be used by Vladdy to join into the fight. The Weaver's Wall might be good. Stop out. Nice oh, late. They've found Rebel by himself. Tanky enough again with the Mountain Dragon, but Mayna gets the flip on back. He gets the half HP, but no range indeed. Mayna and Fleshy are looking for the chase. SKP now running for their lives here. Ping's going down mid again. It's the macro play from KC Blue that they are so good at yesterday. Their mid to late game, wave control, it's there. And now trying to pivot again as they look for the pieces to pull apart the puzzle. Diplex gonna run out. Callista's ulti is running out and now truly gone. Diplex survives as well as Ping's getting oh, pulled on in. Destiny's there. He's gonna go CC immune because Linsas has got the Ragnarok under his belt. Venora has got auto attack damage for Dezo and into the GA. It's an absolute disaster. You can see KC Blue on the top side are trying to find the macro play again, but it's SKP who out rotate, find the jungle when the Baron just spawned as well, and they've got a minute to their own soul, which Linsas is going to be late to. Yeah, what a sequence of events. Linsas gets caught in the mid lane, trying to play for that mid lane wave and that push, but gets TP ported on, collapsed by the entire team. Now it's just going to be a Baron stop. Both junglers were chunked. Initially, that wouldn't have been Baron. Both junglers would have had to reset, so this uh, jungle wouldn't have started up. Now, Baron's up. Like you said, Soul's up. They're going to have first move on it. They're going to have set up easily as well, because remember, Baron takes 15 seconds from SK Prime. It's just gone immediately. Second Baron of the game as well. This time everyone survives from it too. Four and a half thousand gold up. A soul now to play for. I mean, for KC Blue, it's looking difficult again. And let's be honest, it's different conditions from yesterday yeah. where they just got plain out scaled. But we are still talking about a front-to-back team fight here with Azir, with Varus, and especially with the Twisted Fate, whose DPS is unreal. This Casey Blue are going to have to rely on Callist yeah. here, on the Zeri to try and carry, or at least yeah. It's going to have to be Callist. It's not the Olaf. Linz yep. is having such a hard time connecting in these team fights, failing to auto attack, and the DPS is just absolutely shredding him from all the sources now, which we talked about before. The Twisted Fate with all the Kraken Slayer and all the damage. It's not been the for a while, I think. It really, really <laughs> yeah. has been, hasn't it? Um, but he's just having such a hard time connecting, and I see Fleshy going for another flank, but they could turn on him here. Again, his angle now, as you said, has been found out. But Fleshy has got a control ward in that pit as well. Oh, it starts with it. the soul here. Nature's Grass kicks us off. Mainder is the one to look to tank it up again. He's in the front line. Absolutely fine as a pick. Starts onto the support. You can see Limit is tanking up the damage with the depth charge. Bails out. Time is close on the back. Oh, and he's getting nuked. Neon flashes on and pretty much wins the game by himself. He got caught out before, but now the pants are down on Kalis to follow through. Yes. KC Blue might have been favorites coming into the tournament, but SK Prime are favorites to finish off the group. Vladdy as well, going to get spotted out for the final hip here parade. And Venor with one more auto, should be able to seal the deal with the gold card in hand. Rabble to follow through as well. And just like that for SK Prime, the deed Ooh, is Vladdy. done. I don't care that Vladdy gets the kill because at the end, he's still going to die. That's true. And Aragon, the game's still going to be done. Yeah, it's absolutely going to be done. Mountain Soul as well. SK Prime, they win a team fight and they're just going to, the wave player's not going to be there, is it? Main turn's not going to be able to do anything. It's going to be the next falling. Well, for SK Prime, I mean, it's only groups, but again, top of the group now looking very likely for this team that was riddled as to whether they could come back from their regular season finish in the playoffs as well. The second seed from the Prime League looking red hot here as they take down France's pride. 2-0.
And 2-0, absolutely in the group. 2-0 for SK Prime over KC Blue. I think a lot of that was on KC Blue. They had the game in their hands. I think Linz is failing to connect on this Olaf, losing the ultimate in crucial stages. Great. But SK Prime capitalizing. You saw a great performance out of Neon, I think. I mean, Neon. Fighting the picks. Yeah, Neon, not too bad. I think um, the Olaf was a baller pick from KC Blue on the it other was. side for and the th early game. I think it did a bunch of work. I know, then. I know, again, we're talking about SK Prime, but like a lot of the early game was KC Blue until we got to the team fights. I think yeah. KC Blue, the game was kind of by their own making where the team fights were so split. The engages were split. The focus was split. Um, is that a weakness yesterday as well? I can't remember. I've had so many games. I think the team fighting yesterday was too rough because of the scaling, but SK Prime, yeah. that team fighting today, phenomenal. It was really, really good. Desk, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Alex. And we jump back into the desk after another victory coming in from Prime League versus LFL, which means if there's a tie for first place, well, they got the 2-0 versus LFL, which means they will be able to get uh, the first place on that group. I think with the way the group is locked out, actually, I don't think only KC is the only team that can match them at four wins. Mm -hmm. And because they've got the head-to-head, -head, not only have they won this game, they've just they won the group. Yeah. They are now the first place team coming out of this. Eintracht dropped a game in the other group, but are still looking pretty good over there as well. There's a world where we're going to have both Prime League representatives Ooh. coming out in first place of their groups, which I think will be a little bit of a surprise to some of the people coming into this tournament. Yes. We said it was going to be close. I think it's been a lot closer even than I was expecting with go. how good it's been. There you go. Four and one and... Desire can't match that. KCB just lost. They've got that zero and two head to head. Even if they win their last game, they cannot make first. That's the first place locked in for the SK Prime, Salari. It is. I'm not sure if I expected this outcome, to be uh -huh. honest. Not to doubt SK Prime, but throughout the split, their performance has been a little bit shaky. And we have seen some mistakes coming out from them throughout these two days. But today in this game, I mm -hmm. think they proved it to us very clearly that they are the strongest team in their group. Not only that, we look into Group D and uh, Lions Creed. Oh no! It is, it is what it is. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm we, so we've, sorry for you guys. Uh, since we, got, we, we got three <laughs> wins this tournament, since we are in France, we have to pull out the meme. There's nothing to be done. <laughs> I don't want to think about that Napoleon, one right now. Napoleon, look, Napoleon, there's nothing to I'm be like, done. Can we just go to the story where she can be happier? Orbit Anonymous, yes. three except and two, starting the day. Another one 22? we need to highlight just is the fact that the Arabian League oh, is yeah. just showing everybody the oh, powerhouse yes. they are and something that I've learned, they reached the stage and that's, it just said, halas. Yeah. <laughs> halas, yeah, I mean, it's Arabian. I, I know this word and that's all I know. I mean, I'm looking at this now. We've got GK at four and one, Nigma. Galaxy tiring up with BDSA mm -hmm. also at four and one. That means actually that last game for Group C is going to be white hot because they are fighting off against each other, I believe, to be um, playing for what will effectively decide who is the first place team in that group. Exactly. So that is monstrous stakes for that last game there. Now let's jump back into the game we just saw because not only yesterday, I brought in the fact that if these teams fought on the best of five, we had no idea who would win. Out of a sudden, it seems like SK Prime are saying, actually, and getting that one. Eric's not here, man. He can't, he I can't know, respond. I, I need... I'm bullying. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're quite easy to bully, it has to be said. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, KC Blue versus SK Ming Prime. I, yeah. I love this idea because yesterday you saw KC playing with, uh, hey, we can split push until we feel comfortable mm -hmm. to fight and win the game. And they did an awesome job until... SK actually was capable of closing. And today is the opposite. SK were like, hey, about that split push, we can do it as well. Yeah. And the I, amount of CC. I, I think as well, like... Stop. Halas. <laughs> every member of SK Prime has some CC, pretty heavy CC. Yeah. Gold card, Nautilus, entire kit, Maokai's entire kit, Varus R, Azir Shuffle. Um, and you saw the Kami Core Blue try to be clever. I think the Olaf pick was actually really smart because you can immune... Mm -hmm. All of that. And it means you can get to the back line. You can, in the early game, in those skirmishes, punish the fact that the, what would normally be your safety net of the CC isn't going to work. Yeah. The issue as the team fights rolled around was, you heard the cast talk about it a bit as well, having someone go with the Olaf is easier said than done. You need to have yeah. your flank ward set up really well. You need someone like the Cassandre to maybe help mitigate some of the CC as well and join you or the Relon and engage. And 
If that doesn't happen, it's Olaf against the world and everyone else from SK Prime locking down your important members. That's really tricky to match. Actually, the only fight that we saw K Corp winning fully and almost going to end the game was the, the fight where they found this flanking maneuver mm -hmm. onto Neon, removing him from the fight immediately. But everywhere else, it was a struggle because, yes, the Olaf can go in, but oh, he's going to be able to follow him. But I actually love the adaptability coming out of Linces on this Olaf mm -hmm. because he was being bullied in the jungle. He wasn't able to find any good gank opportunities as well. What does he do? He pivot into fully power farming to try to get to the items as quickly as possible. Yeah, exactly that. And it wasn't like KCB were out of tricks. And we saw this yeah. actually a lot yesterday as well against SK Prime. When the 5v5s became trickier, they tried to find other ways to win the yes. game. And I think they were very good at running with the triaging situations finding some of those emergency plans like game's not working what do we do how do we find some way of turning the tables and things like when we get to it that baron play where they kill a load of members and try to end the game if they had spotted the mouth yes, on the recall only. that might have been the end of the game despite how the fights were going and you're seeing time and time again kcb trying to play some of this stuff out but just look at the walls of cc everywhere it's so difficult for this team to play out especially if Ragnarok is down, or Cassante can't press W on some of that important CC. Exactly. Or if Kalist is out of the ultimate as well. Kalist was go. playing really great today. I gotta say, the AD carries both of them, or both teams are the highlights of the day for me. But Kalist was not able to play yes. the game. That's the problem. If he's 1v1, 2v2, he's shining. But in the team fights, there is no space for him to do anything. You can't move. The amount of CC yes. they bring into your face, it's like you get the warning from AFK. You, you, you're you're fed, <laughs> you're you're powerful, you're one of the best AD carries of the league, but you can't play the game. And again, credit to SK Prime for locking in a draft that made KC Blues um, win conditions quite difficult. Credit to KCB for playing despite that, actually. You can see the DPM numbers here pretty heavily favoring SK Prime, but the gold lead, you can see where it starts to be that little bit more volatile. That's where KCB were playing the map pretty intelligently considering the position yeah. they were in and actually making SK's job quite difficult in closing the game regardless. And in fairness, well, good early game as well from KCP. So there's lots there to come away from. It's just, I think there were perhaps a bit of a coach diff in terms of some of that drafting mm -hmm. that hurt them. Even if they did say, ah, oh, well, we're in a difficult position, the Olaf helps and was quite intelligent considering the position they were in. And they can finish with a Twisted Fate on the top, making him relevant yet again. Range top planners being a thing. You're a, you're a Pantheon player. It's going to be okay. Just just learn to play no, Varus. No, not. Look, it... you used to help me cast Kerberos, right? Who was the guy who made Varus top a thing, tank Varus top a thing. You should be like, not only, you know, encouraging this, but playing yourself, man. Why aren't you doing that? We have a final game coming up. <laughs> <but> after... <laughs> A small break. It's going to be Boost Gate versus SKP. It's going to be the last one of this group as well. Although they already locked in the first place, we still have to see where the remaining teams are going to land. And in order to do that, we need to land on that small break before we come back. So have a Kit Kat and chill a little bit because I'm nervous when you play range style planner. Seriously, I'm going to report you. I'll see you soon. Hey, Law. Yeah? I need a bit of help with styling since I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could show you a couple of outfits. Yeah, sure. Amazing, thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm a Poro snack. Get it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Woo! Mm, no, not really. I don't know, Law. It's hopeless. No, it's gonna be fine. Here, let's have a break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Back to the drawing board then, I guess.
Yeah. You know, I don't really do this too often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be good for real. Just watch. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. How you gon' feel when I take it? How you gon' feel when I take it? We about action. We don't say shit. We about action. We don't say shit. Coming for the crown. I need my fit. Stay in rooms that I don't fit in She swear that I stay up on her mind Like a fit, it ain't that cash She probably wouldn't give me time if I ain't out Please she see me, you know me I need all formalities, I need all incentives This money's about the only thing I'm mine Like my business, that's black on The type of wave I've been on And it's always got to crash like it's windows Need all of that and more, give me all the gold Give me one play, I'm on 24, Kobe right in that I will eat shot wet just like showers Tell me who got all of that power, oh, that's me I carry loaded team, I get that ring I'm MVP, no that ain't envy me Just like some men, I'm in these streets No opportunity, knock at the door I give you keys, my mama raised me selfish I don't share, I play for keys And that's all game time, know that win all mine I'ma keep the day How you gon' feel when I take it? How you gon' feel when I take it? We about actions, we don't say shit. We about action, we don't say shit. Yeah. How you gon' feel when I take it? Yeah. How you gon' feel when I take it? We about action, we don't say shit. We about action. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, in my ear at the same time as we're getting the, the random arrow across the screen. Sterex, Aragon. We changed because it's more exciting. Yep. That might not be the core reason, but <laughs> it is more exciting. I think uh, no, two, three, three no, two. No more SK no more Prime. Explanation. You know, let's be real. We just saw them. Then at number one, no matter what, we don't need to see that group anymore. You know what we need to see? Group A. Zero tenacity, last legs. I think if they lose this, they're definitely out. Yep. Uh, looks like they, you know, could already be. But more importantly, heretics or heretics, uh, chances to at least secure top two with a win here too, I believe, or at least yep. close to. So get us into draft. Really, really important. Yep. I think, uh, yeah, we've been a little bit disappointed in heretics. I think they've had a lot of throws on the interview True. yesterday. I think with Whiten, he was saying, you know, we threw a 7k gold lead. We played a bunch of lane swaps and uh, despite winning early games with players like Jack Spectra, who plays stuff like Alista, Draven, um, it just hasn't been enough. And I'm kind of disappointed. I mean, what if they start today? Were they one and two? I think they were one and two, yeah. Because they're three and two one now, and two so they've won both games. Yeah, and they could have been zero three, remember? That was True. the zero to nasty game where they played against uh, Nuzia, who was stopping their lane swap shenanigans. Yeah, because they, so. did, they, did, they did pull off a lane swap and then mm -hmm. um, was, this was that game, wasn't it? Was that game, yes. Was that so. game that didn't go too well until it got to the mid-game, mm. until we got the Wombo, and the setup and fights were really, really good. Carlson on the Zac, getting a three-man knock-up onto yeah. a bunch of mobile carries, and despite being 0-3 in like four minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was really good, though. A lot of 0-3 top lanes at the moment. They really, <laughs> they really are. are. They really are. Yeah. But so. again, uh, let's hope we get something like that out of the form. We've had a couple of Jinx bans in a row now yeah. uh, on our English side, on our, on our broadcast side as well, which has been good. Because yeah. again, stops a lot of the lane swap champions, even though we've seen it with others. We go into it now, double 80 carry ban starts on zero tenacity. They're zero five, zero tenacity are not making it through. I, I gotta re-correct myself, they're not making it. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for Ultra League is number one, I'm sorry. But Heretics, big game for them, they need four. Yeah. So double 80 carry ban already, draft tax versus Jack Spectra, you just have yep. to ban it away from him because he's too damn good at snowballing through bot lane. Now, Jinx is still there. I uh, imagine it could be taken away. The problem is Jack Spectra will lane swap with Aphelios. <laughs> we True. saw it yesterday. So um, we'll have to see if, you know, does the Jinx plant actually matter? I don't think Zero Tenacity want to swap, but maybe they want to get out of the Jack Spectra lane. Talia up though. That's what my eyes are on. Oh yeah, Talia as well with his first pick with it for Kofti. Yes. Yeah, Talia, Varus, I think uh, Nautilus is out already. Uh, Kalista's out already. So Varus really, um, the lane dominant pick. But... Yeah, and again, I mean, so far in this tournament, we've seen the most priority be on something like Jinx. That's been left open here again. Yep. Lee Sin banned away instead from Blue Zork. Now let's just see if Zero Tenacity want to follow the theme of the tournament in 14-7. It's not going to be the Malzahar. Remember the Jinx first pick. There it is. Okay. Insinuates lane swap doesn't yep. always guarantee it, as we've kind of learned. But again, it's the flexibility in draft, I think, that, that adds to it too. 
Yeah, I wonder if we'll see a uh, Varus into the Jinx and you try and match the lane swaps mm. and you just outplay them on the lane swaps, you know, and then you could still bully. Or if we see to the commit, you know, we're going to play FLS and we're just going to handshake the lane swaps, right? And it looks <laughs> like we're going to get a lane swap game. Now, Zach and Scion become giga priority and yep. I wonder if they're just going to secure the Scion here. Makes sense, right? I mean, Carlson was happy with the Zach last time around, though. Yep. Uh, has so, a really good weak side and yep. uh, is stopping the dives. Yeah, absolutely. You just can't get dove. I mean, it kind of fills the same thing. Lulu also very good with both champions here. Yep. And then um, you probably round it out with a bunch of weak side tanks. Um, oh, Rumble is something that it's funny that I see Zerk stay uh, here. Like in the past, you remember when, when he was on Splice? Yeah, um, that was a while ago. I'm old man, yeah. This was when Rumble Jungle was also a thing at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zerk say, I remember, was a big Rumble Jungle player. Not going to be the case, of course. I'm just, I'm just throwing back. While uh, Rumble this early on when we're talking about lane swaps is interesting, yeah. though. I mean, it is a flex. It's got giga high presence. In terms True. of in terms of this tournament, right? Specifically, it was like 90% in play-ins, and now just slightly less in group stages. Um, but top lane also functions in lane swaps. Um, yep. You could drop an equalizer on the wave and farm from a long way away. Very good. Of course, you have to get a level six by then, but that's the idea of it. And Volley Bear also coming out very, very good in terms of you know splitting the map and just finding dives. But as you said, let's continue on with our yep. top lane point. Uh, the potential of Scion, something like the Zach as well before we get to there the fan phase. Okay, I was just gonna think. Well. Something's going to be taken away. Either going to be Lulu or it's going to be the sign that I feel like Heretics are going to end up banning away or taking themselves right here, right now. Let's see the Lulu yeah. locked in. Show me Lulu. I think you can get, you still have a bunch of jungle options if you don't want to secure that. Lulu will get banned Show away. Me jungle. You have, like, I think Lulu, uh, Rakan are some of your best options on okay. the lane swaps because Rakan can be so mobile across the map. So they're going to drop both Sunday. support and jungle. So now we, yeah. Now we just get shown that the Rumble support does come through. There I mean, is. Rumble support. Oh, yeah, of course. So brutal, right? Yeah, so um, it was flexed. It was a flex all along. Yeah. And it's going to go over to Whiten. But, I mean, let's talk about the champions that are up and available for yep. the swap, right? Like, I'm glad we know so easily what the direction is. Lulu's a priority. That's gone. gone. Boom. All right. Name more. Come on. Rakan is the other one that you see a bunch. We saw Janna from G2, but that's probably not going to come out. I think Rel can function decently well yep. as well. These are all at the top of my mind. In Nautilus Band. Um, so, whichever ones they want to they deem is the best, because they have Rumble, right? I don't think much beats it in lane at the very least, in terms of huge stats, dude. Um, so, Realm, anyway, boom. You, you're two for two right two now. Two. What else you got? Two. I said you Rakan. said Rakan. I said Rakan. What I else? Think... Surely you got more. Ooh, this is where we're getting to a bit unknown territory. Talia right? ban, maybe, just for good good measure? Because I, think... I think Heretics were what? Talia on, th on Renata four? Renata is good with Aphelios, so I wonder if that gets pinched away by Zero mm. Tenacity. Um, it's very, very good in terms of the DPS and dish out, and he just doesn't die in that... Uh, like unending form. Right. Um, so I so you're saying, sorry, up. Renata for zero, uh, zero Tenacity. Renata for Zero Tenacity. Right. Rakan for, sorry, Renata for Lost Heretics. Rakan for Zero Tenacity should be like the Even though there's already a Rumble support. You're crazy. I am pretty you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting lost in the flexes. Lost oh, in the you source. are lost in the source <laughs> right now. Don't worry. Uh, Alistar, you didn't get. I didn't. So come on, I Rakan, didn't, I you already I'm said. disappointing you. So Rakan needs to go because Rakan Aphelios the pairing or is it Jinx uh, Rakan the pairing? Jinx Rakan is really, really solid. Okay. Right, so I would potentially be looking for that. Well, LeBlanc's going to be taking away. Interesting. What does LeBlanc indicate? Uh, LeBlanc indicates potential Azir. It's a good matchup into the Azir. Right, so, okay. um, Also a Kali, but Kali's not going to be picked in this context. So, so it's just can Azir. also just pick Orianna again. I mean, that, you know, feels like it functions with something like Rumble yep. Kasante. Yeah, potentially. Good Wombo combo. I think yeah. uh, maybe a little bit susceptible, but there's the Rakan. I think. Uh, Right for both teams. And the, wait, where does Rumble go? I told you. Wait, wait I was cooking. So it's Cassante mid. It's uh potentially mid Rumble or Jungle Rumble. Okay. Or Cassante mid. Wait, right. So they are maintaining the flex to the very end. I know. I know you're telling, but any other bloke looks at this <laughs> and says that's a Rumble support. Yeah. yeah. I think. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of the options now that Zero Tenacity has. And yeah. there really aren't that many. That's uh, a Zillion. Oh, into Ricard. Wow. This is a, this is a uh, something that I think it was Kasing pulled out. Um, but it was also uh, Limit. That was yeah, a yeah, yeah, Academy. Yeah. So really, really good into the Rakan because you drop a didn't, slow on the quickness. Didn't Hilly pick this out recently? Yeah, you're right. Was it against the Rakan? It was against the Rakan. Yeah. Yeah, so the reason why it's a good counter is I'm it's not even late. Okay, we are. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. No, no, no. I'm not walking away. This is actually, this is great. Wow. I love um, this. Flex is, um, yeah. Crofty is going to do his best Bjorkson impression. Uh, yeah. We can talk, break the drafts in a second. I just want to find out what hits last because, again, we get to find out where is what. Jungle okay. Rumble. Jungle Rumble. Man, it is Xerxes <laughs> again. Of course. It is Splice Xerxes. I hope I'm getting the right team. But wow. That is a comp. All right. 
So start breaking it down. Start uh start start breaking down yeah. the quadruple flex draft. Yes, sure, man. Where do you, where, <laughs> so, where do you want to start? You can so, start anyway. Okay, look. Okay, the reasoning for Zillion. Let's start with that. Let's go okay, one go, weird go pick that, at a time. So side. Zillion uh, interacts really well with the champions that can use the move speed. Yep. You have Volley Bear with the move speed, very, very good at for Jinx, onto it. Jinx on Same reset. With Jinx. Absolutely Ooh. right. And you have a little bit of a protect the Jinx with the Lantern plus the Zillion combo, and then all the lane swap shenanigans you can do yeah. with Psyop. So that's that idea between that behind that draft. Then you have Os Heretics, who have, uh, yeah, Rumble Jungle. I can't say I've seen it in a little while. I think it still functions. Um, it's just mm. such an impressive laner that you usually see in top lane. Um, but I have blanked on all the rest of the draft. That's okay. It's gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> Never gone. to be seen it's again. It's gone. Aphelios uh, Rakan is a good combination. It's just a little bit weaker in there. Yeah. Generally, uh, you, when you play Rakan, you have you to kind of scale up. No, yeah. Exactly. So. A well, little bit of a slower start, I think. You have very weak side lanes and very, like a mid lane that sort of gets well, priority, but... I mean, side lanes aren't going to matter because I feel like, let's yeah. just be honest, Zero Tenacity probably going to lane swap. I mean, a Heretic's going to try and lane swap. Like, who who tries it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? I think uh, if someone doesn't want to lane swap, it's the Jinx Thresh because they definitely have the winning lane yep. at the very least because Thresh is a very strong laner. They True. also have the Volley who can set up dives. Uh, so... That has potential there, but I think they are going to because of the Scion pick. Um, okay. I wonder if we'll see any W star Cassante shenanigans where he tries to survive the dive, level one. Oh yeah, w. you're talking about that as I well. I think that has potential um, if he plays it right, but it's all in Carlson for that. But again, you know, we also talk about Rumble Jungle. I mean, there's strong level one from Rumble too that we've got to consider. Yeah. Volley Bear early, I mean, again, is another big mega pick. Um, for Zero Tenacity, they're already out. They're already out, guys, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, Ultra League, can't come back from 0-5. Heretics can lock themselves up into the top two, I believe. Now, I could be spitting words, rhymes that don't make the crime, but um, I'm, I'm pretty confident. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm going, I feel like you uh, yep. you win this and you, you lock yourself in. The drafts are so cooked. <laughs> they are really <laughs> like cooked. That. But Dude. like, Kofti, is, is this a good matchup into Azir? I... Do you get so range on it? The idea with Zillion is you need to be able to scale up. So like the yep. Azir isn't as lane dominant as he was in the past. No. Right? So you can God. you can I probably in this sort of context scale up. You're also not under a bunch of threat. Generally, Rumble isn't going to spam Yank. You're not going to be roamed on by many uh ganks from a Rakan early game. So with Rumble in general, especially since you're talking about the Zillion, how he can't be ganked, Rumble typically with the AP junglers, you want to perma farm, 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 farm. Because your clear speed just gets faster and faster and faster. True. So it'll be a lot on, you know, can Rumble get these full clears off and what will happen with the Volley Bear as well? Will he invade? Oh, man, let's watch and find out. For starts, as we open up the game, Heretics, our second last game of the night versus Zero Tenacity, shows us some pretty fun drafts. So they're just going to spot out here with a fan. And it's all about this level one. It's all about where the yeah. start is. Edote is going towards the bottom side, as we already talked about for Harpoon and this Thresh. They're going to be looking to stay in the standard lane. It was mentioned by Aragon before. The strength is there in the 2v2, while... Jack's Petra and Widen might just might just handle it. Might just handle it. What you normally see with supports who both want to lane swap is they both kind of just chill around mid. They stay in the middle of the lane and then can, they can go from the middle of the map to whichever side lane they need to go to, right? Um, whether it's the Rakan or the Thresh. But it looks like we're going to see a commit of both side lanes down to the bot lane. Yeah, even uh, Jack Spectra is just not moving. Sitting in Pixel Brush. Mm. I mean, again, normally 80 carries as well start flaunting uh, left and right, you know, going between yeah. jungle. I think uh, both teams are, are okay with this bot lane. They don't want to swap away from it uh, because of the fact that, you know, you know it's 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 not that oppressive a lane on either side. I want to highlight something, though. Please. Carlson, with the Aftershock uh, Cassante, is a very big no-no because now he's not going to be able to get any Grass procs, not going to get any other bonus HP. And that is probably some tech he was taking because he will be having to 1v2 with that Aftershock to right. supply the dives. But it's going to be completely useless. What is, when does Aftershock proc? After CC, uh -huh. after after hard CC on the so, W pushback so or the flip Q3, yeah Q3 or the uh, W pushback as you yeah, said exactly right, and then you just maintain tankiness. You kind of can take it into range champs as well. Isn't grasp free in this matchup versus Sion? It is, but maybe he thought they were going to end up in a lane swap situation. Uh... That's why it's a little bit questionable. Um, it's not optimal because this should be a free grasp stacking matchup. That's rough. Um, yeah, actually, and, that is huge. Yeah, you lose a lot of value there. I feel like there's two three hundred HP by the fifteen minute mark. Yeah, it's a lot. You get a bunch of grass procs every single yeah, time. Good point. A grass proc is like thirteen gold or eighteen gold every single time. Yeah. Um, so gold? you just well, in terms of in terms of HP. Oh right, 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 right. In terms oh yeah, of, good uh, point. In terms of the <laughs> HP being worth gold, yeah, it's yeah. like thirteen gold per grass. I was proc. like, man, we get no. Uh... Ooh, grass proc. 
It would have been. It would have been. No, well, that's a real one from Melonic. <laughs> yeah, none for Carlson. Um, but yeah, Melonic. Be he's, happy there. He's kind of like um like Cassante is like uh, I'm trying to think of another tank. Orn is another great example where yep. you know you have HP like you feel like you're a, a much beefier trading tank. Zach is one as well. Yeah. Who am I thinking about who who just gets like free stats from tank versus tank matchups? What comes to mind? It, it is Scion. That's the big one. Scion um, is a big one. There's Nas is probably another one. Nasus with the free stacking, sure. But you're yeah. just labeling like I'm just labeling champs. all stacking <laughs> tank top laners. Mm. No, I think uh, Sion's the big one that requires you to be like last hit minions to get HP, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, this one, it's going to be a slower start, right? All three lanes, none of them have set up outside of Thresh Lantern or Azir Shuffle at six. Okay. Well, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to take my shoes off. And go for it, man. And just kick back and relax, because what a banger this is going to be. Zillion is going to be so much fun to watch. Good hook, by the way, from Edote. It was a nice little snipe at max range. But yeah, I think uh, full clear on full clear. Volley Bear trying to make impact. And you know what is going to make impact more as well and help Go him? Ahead. I feel like the Zillion XP is going to be given over to Volley. You know, because we've got to remember the, the <laughs> Zillion cooking. XP. No, but but they are. They're the ones who started this. Hebihime, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, who I don't remember talking about. I mean, there's a lot of people in this tournament, ladies and gentlemen, I have to apologize. First EMA Masters, I've come back, I've kicked up my feet, and I've decided, you know... He really has, by the way. His feet are on the desk. Are we... Have we casted him before? Heavy Hime, I think yeah. he's new. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a different mid laner. Yeah, it is. Uh, but I can't... I, the mind's, my eye's escaping me. Dude, there's 16 teams, there's a lot of different players. Uh, yeah. What's 16 times 5? 130. Is it actually? No, 80. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that was, I was going to say that would be good math. I completely math. lied. Dude, never um, do math on stream. No, no, never no. Never do math live. I do it all the time. Just a nice test, isn't it? There's another grass proc. Um, while we are sitting here vibing, again, XP is going to be given to the Volley Bear. Yeah. Volley Bear hit six earlier. That's not just cooking. That's good looking. Yeah, and maybe into dives as well. Yeah. That's, that's the what, tech. That's what I'm thinking, right? That would have been a grass proc. You have no idea how sad I am over Carlson taking aftershock. I mean, again, and not being able to trade. Dude, I'm, I'm starting to play top lane now as well. Yeah. I understand. Like, so many lanes are defined by who gets more grass box. You know, in scrims, right? So I'm a bit of a scrim Andy. I played a bunch of scrims, and what yeah. you do is you press tab, you open up, you, hi or you hover over grasp, and you compare. It's like a race. Who gets more? And, uh, you know, if you, if you look up there, and Sion has 13 grass procs, and you have zero because you have this terrible rune. <laughs> how, much, how much health is it exactly per grass proc? Oh, gosh, I only know in terms of gold value. I mean, you say 17 gold, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do math 18 again. Gold. 400 gold. <laughs> Don't do math. What is a ruby crystal? 180 health? Uh, 150 health. Oh, man. Okay, that's too hard for me to do the math. Dragon's going to be started off. I'm going to look at this instead. Play starts to stop. There's the engage coming through from the bottom lane, but Jack Spectre can't stop nice. this. The engage from the Rakan, a little bit ambitious, and First Blood goes over to, to Harpoon, who gets a little bit excited and zones him off. Now, there was a bit of damage done by Heretics here on the engage, and Certus is now coming in with oh, Zerthi. Flash engage instead. The Volley Bear doing the damage as you expect. Resurrected. He hit level six. Heavy Hime <laughs> saves the day. And for Zero Tenacity, they've found themselves, not the Dragon, but they found more kills coming through. Jack Spectra running for his life. He's going to be cleansed away. A bomb on his head. The range from Harpoon. Close to dying, but no cigar in the end. For Heretics, at least they stopped that first Dragon, but. Majority of kills goes over to zero tenacity. Yeah. A 4v4 coming out this early into the game. Yep. That lasted so damn long. A nice turn away. Oh, the knock-up engage Zerxe. as well. Zerse flashes in. He's overheated. He gets a kill. Actually, mega worth for Heretics after that fact. And the fact that Zerse gets a kill is huge for the early game Rumble. Yeah, Rumble doing so much damage in that team fight. In this first fight and in the second fight right here, he overheats. He came to the fight prepared in the river with, like, yellow overheat. And then he managed to just absolutely cook everyone, taking a bunch of damage. I hope we get a replay of that, because he absolutely did scorch them. So, um, massive fight win. Coming over to him, uh, Zerus Nasty. I guess you need to look, though. Yeah, what is more worthwhile? Good death sentence again, just to show you can do it. Why not? He's holding the wave. Why didn't he holding the wave? Certus is also flexing down. Big brain. Why did you put your hands in the air? What happened? Um, <laughs> it was There's mainly a, ah! because... I just missaid two teams twice, but that's all good. Nice freeze hold You're okay. by Whiten. Don't you have to worry about it. You know, we're, yeah. we're okay. God, I miss Grasp with the Undying on Cassante. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Let, like, it just, <laughs> it, you're right, it bothers me. It does. It I doesn't mean, mean it's necessarily a bad take. I mean, again, he's trying to, he, he was trying to predict, the, as you said, the lane swap. Yeah, but it's just frustrating now. I think now. it's tech, honestly. Like, looking at, these, looking at these lane swaps and how, you know, 
look at this draft. It's going to happen. I wonder if they saw Aftershock and they were like, guys, we don't need lane swap and he won't get any value out of his room. True. Adaptability. So it's nasty. <laughs> yeah, I love that's see you say you didn't want to see any lane swap. Like or you you want to go back to normal League of Legends. The reason the lane swap is so interesting is because it adds value where like, okay, people pivot from the lane swap itself, yeah. then they adjust, right? And then this is another adjustment on that adjustment. Like it's big brain League of Legends, and I think that's nice. You know, it, it gives nice. you color casters so much more to talk about. Look, I'm gonna agree with you. I want lane swaps gone. <laughs> you do? I have to, the, the whole goal is to avoid confrontation and fighting early. That is the entire premise. Yeah, but that doesn't happen in this lane swap. If, if it was if it was 2015 lane swap that was 4v4 on just turrets, you remember like yeah. this was way back when it was like everyone grouped up apart from the jungler, sat on turret and just attacked sides of the map and broke it down. And then we got to 10 minutes with no out of turrets. That I agree with, but this yeah. one's different. Sure. But I also feel like lane swaps, they have that, like, you know, the flavor of being new. <laughs> and uh, that's True. running out. And now what I get is Jinx versus Aphelios and zillion mids and no proactivity from anyone <laughs> with tanks off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it kind of expires a little. Yeah, I guess it's the type of lane swap. But you're right. Like, it can, it can be a little bit, a little bit played, a little bit more vanilla. Mm. I will say, you know, this game seeing standard League of Legends, I guess, I guess it's nicer because... You know, the bottom lanes are a little bit more yeah. standard anyway, and going into these tank matchups uh, would have been much of a muchness. We are playing towards bot side again. That's another bit of League of Legends. It's been the same for quite a while. Three versus yeah. three there, and I'm just waiting to see what happens here with level six picked up on both of these uh, junglers. Level six being big tools that they can use yeah. here. I mean, so just gets involved as well. They have a lot of single target bursts. They land a hook into a rocket and a volley stun. Like, they can absolutely burst someone and get a reset very, very easily there. So... I mean, it looks like they're just really committed down to this bot side. It's super hard to pick up a Rakan because he has so much mobility. Blue's all moving around Vision. I mean, Harpoon, as he steps up in the wave, you can see how skirt Vision is at the moment. Blue's all doesn't have Flash available, so that's the only difference about how he can pivot for the play. So just meanwhile, as this, uh, I guess this is mid-back timing, Maybe he may didn't have the teleport available, so Surge is able to get a tower play. Yeah, Whiten also very close to level six, so once he gets that, he can roam to mid, maybe uh, influence that lane as well. They have the shuffle on the Azir, like you're highlighting mid lane, and uh, he could potentially look for a shuffle onto the Zillion, push him back, and find a play with the Rakan. But it looks like the tension can be topside towards these grubs. You know, when I first saw Chrono shift the YouTube video, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. I mean, I look at it now. I don't find it as funny. I don't know Neither if that's because I've seen it so many times. But when I first saw it, I laughed for You were probably younger. I was were you, younger. Like 12? <laughs> 12. <laughs> 28 now. No, wait. I'm 29. Okay. I'm 29. I probably saw that. How old is it? About 10 years old? Oh, it's got to be more than that, mate. Surely This game not. is old. Dude, YouTube came out in 2007. And it's 2024. Yeah, it is. Oh, man. <laughs> Time goes on. Did you know eh? when you see new videos posted, so you look at old videos, and it's like yep. 11 years ago. You're like, wow, that was so long ago. Yeah. But it really wasn't. It was 2013. Remember, remember that YouTube used to be about guys playing with Star Wars, you know, pretending they're in Star Wars, waving, like, you know what I'm talking about? I think I think the first YouTube video <laughs> ever was my trip to the zoo. Um, oh, yeah? <laughs> on a phone, on a Nokia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the content, right? Oh, there. man, that was a vibe. <laughs> Imagine, I mean, people, old people must look at League of Legends and games and stuff and be like, man, what is this? P people have been cooking, you know? <laughs> the internet has expanded, and now here we are with a champion and, and called Jinx and Thresh, who find a hook, land a box, and the Rakan Ooh. almost dying in the back end. The eye ignite the Guardian. Guardian saves his life. Now with the unstoppable onslaught, Wyden gets nuked to oblivion, Ooh. sent upwards. Where are you going? Xerse can't move. An excited Jinx sends it out with a double kill over to Melodic. Oh, no. And Carlson comes on in. All right, baby. Show us your aftershock as the Chrono Shift ends up being pushed out. That's going to give another time to Harpoon to get saved by the Dark Lantern. Carlson's still flipping up, though, and finds it perfectly. A long extended fight working out perfectly for Heretic to shut down, goes over to Surtis. Now Melonic is up next for the cook and block as well. He flashes away, gets out in the back end as well, but Dragon, by the way, was not even taken as we just fight for blood. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a long fight. Where it initially started with the quickness. Urtis and Hook, but the quickness, yeah. Help me! He's got no Chrono Shift. He's got no Summoners. No he's got no either. Hope. Jack Spectra and Surge has picked up gold in that fight. And I have to say, overall, that's a Heretic's win through and through. Absolutely a Heretic's win. Carlson coming in at the end there to try and clean up as well with that Aftershock. But yeah, it all starts with Erdote on that hook, finding a single target burst. But 
all it's out. It's nothing. Uh-oh. They got Dragon, and now Blue Zor's about to die. Stormbringer on the outside. There's no equalizer to follow up on the back end. That's lucky mm. for him. But Dragon, a two apiece here for Heretics. They roll into a Hextech Salt. They roll into a 1500 gold lead here in the early game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the game kind of just exploded. Right, a bunch of gold. All the carries have a bunch of gold as well. You'd like the the, the gold distribution on the other side on the Heretics, yeah. uh, rather than Zero Tenacity, because the sign has two kills now. Regardless, still really good. I think this is still pretty even in terms of gold and uh, the game state as well. Oh, what? Because of scaling? Yeah, I think I think the scaling on top of just like no one hitting any kind of critical mass. The game is still really slow. No one has any tools to force anything. Yeah. So, so. Just, so do you think Zillion mega scales? I like, think Zillion is absolutely phenomenal. As a leader. Okay, I will say, you know what sucks is I, I remember casting this with, uh, I think it was Vettius in yeah. LEC. And he, like the, I almost said Heavy Hemet, uh, the, the Zillion I was casting and Hilly, we we're talking about the E slow. Yeah, that's it. Is it is 99% over it's two a seconds. It is a It root. is disgusting. Yeah. Like, and also, I mean, I think the cooldown is more disgusting on as well, because it's only like eight seconds. And you can refresh it and then yeah. perma slow again. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. So that's why it's really good into Rakan, because he pops the quickness, he's really fast, and then he's slow. And I mean, you know what they <laughs> use it for in Vitality as well? They use Go it to on. buff up the Volley Bear. Yeah. Because Volley Bear got on all fours, you, you give him the movement speed boost, which is like 75% of it's something crazy. Yeah. And he just runs you down and the perma stun. And in this comp, there is perma CC, right? Double Zillion Bomb, Volley Bear as well, Jinx Traps, Thresh Hawk, Scion Q. Like, everyone has CC. And that's what I, I kind of fear for if uh, Zero Tenacity get time with a pick. Yeah, 4v4 brewing in the top side right there. Oh, I yeah. wonder if they're going to look for something. A bunch of single target bursts, like we said. Last time, the fight started with a hook. It'll happen again. Jack Spectra Guns is wild for yeah. this fight, though. And he's just picked up Kraken. This guy is big. He's matching item for item here for Harpoon. Heretic still thinking about walking in as Herald is being done slowly. Zero Tenacity are walking away from it, though. They don't want to take this fight. They're kind of worried. Leandre's also picked up for Zerse, so there's a one-item rumble with the ult. Ready and, ready and willing. Ready and willing. Going to be fighting them. Man, numbers advantage over for Lost Heratox in this fight. Lost Heratox. Lost Heratox. Oh, yes. Zillion on the way as well. Oh, boys. <laughs> Engage comes through. White Run must walk away. Herald will go down in the end for the Heratox. <laughs> as they go for the Engage, you can see already Blue's almost walk away shove back oh stormbringer here today <laughs> already the herald has gone down though the so heretox melanic with the unstoppable oh. not gonna be picked what up what is as that well. noise <laughs> is that the sign ult? was that the sign ult? it was a sign ult. The, bro, the train right man that's scary you know um you know i i know someone who has a fear of like uh Trains? like the no the war the war sound you know the air raid sound that's terrifying because that's similar to that imagine you're walking home at night you start hearing that oh i mean hell well in this day and age it'd be <laughs> terrifying if you don't know what's going on but the cyan ulti sounds like it it does it actually uh, does well yeah not as okay maybe it doesn't really but like it's close enough that i'm like that's similar I mean, it, this joke's been run to death, but I love how he uh, he runs away and it's just cowards. It's, it's by far, it's by far my favorite. But he can also run in, he so can. it's it's like it's dependent. He loves cowards regardless, though. Yeah, he does. So what does that mean? It's either about himself or it's about the people he's running into. Because who runs into a sign ult? That's I, true. I, you I, guess want to say, I guess a tank who body blocks. Tank. Yeah, that's true. What are the stacks, by the way? Scion's at I'd 670. I'd love to know. If we could hover Scion's grasp stacks, I don't know if production could do 700. that. 700. <laughs> no, 700's a W passive. Because that's the other thing as well, people forget. Actually, heavy here, mate. Dude, something does damage. It really does. It really sucks. Um, 700 passive health on W. This is the thing. This is why Scion's is just, Scion is just such a good health stacker. Plus grasp is probably, what, 300 at this point? 400? Yeah, that's a solid amount. That's um, 1,100 over, health from... Overgrowth as well. Oh, yeah. Amplifying the amount of HP. He really, really stacks a bunch of health. Yeah, it is. It is uh, it's good for mixed comps like this one, right? As oh, Engage comes through, Equalizer. Oh, that's huge. Man, that's so beautiful from Heretics. Jack Spectra, by the way, about to carry yet another game. He's set up for success. As Meanwhile, we go back to this. Can't kill him the zillion. He's got Chrono Shift available. Carlson. What have you got? Not too much, when in the end of the day, it is very hard to find this wizard. Yeah, a little too quick. Right. And he can just wait there. Oh. Is this Echo? Like, his Echo is, ages. Is Zillion Echo? Like, or is it his father? Or something? Because they are related, surely. Surely, just time. Because the thing is, Zillion though, sold him the watch. Did he? Oh, that's but it could also now. be him. 
It could be like a Back to the Future situation, you know, with a dock. Mm. Arcane Season 2. Yeah, maybe. I hope we see more characters. I will say, I've been waiting for Arcane for a while. Like, memes aside, it was a very good show. Sirtis is dead here. Or is he? No, he's not. Wow. Sirtis ulti is also huge. Carlson coming in in the nick of time. Prontership already used. And Bluezor, even up against the fake Sun Turret, won't last for long. Engage follows through. And Heretics are on a mission from God. Jack Spectra running him down thanks for the Dark Passage. But with the Lantern out and now gone, the box, the only thing to separate time and space. The Wizard of White Run in the bottom side. It's an in at that as well. At the end of the day, heretics still find their way through, and I've got to just close my eyes and say, zero tenacity, let Jesus take the wheel at this point. Yeah, the the shuffle from Sets is carrying that fight into a giant rundown from Carlson. I mean, this Iceborne Gauntlet doing so much work, the Ghost as well. And a snowball into third dragon, and that's the sole point going from heretics. Now, what do you do as zero tenacity? I think there's really not much to be done. You try and get the se th second I item. I told you, let Jesus take the yeah, wheel. Let Jesus take the wheel, <laughs> sure. I mean, that, that really is it at this point. That's a that's a very slow stacking rower as well. That's is, just been completed. Is, Eight there, is there hope in scaling? Like, I mean, we, we talk no. about scaling elements, but, no. but um, how fights progress is kind of difficult. So the problem is, right, you know, you're so far high on the zillion. You've got rower. You're two stacks out of ten. Mm. And that's an eight more minutes. And if you can if you can survive this game for eight more minutes, sure. But like your first item's kind of dead right now. You have pure utility on the zillion, and you don't have two items on the jinx. I think if you get two items on the jinx, maybe you can find a kind of one shot and a reset. But even then, by the time you have two items, I mean he's got components. Like he's got everything for an infinity edge. So I don't think Harpoon's that far yeah, behind. I think he can get it for the next dragon. But 600 gold behind means that there's probably going to be something like a couple of long swords worth yeah. for Jack Spectra. You can see uh, they're kind of funneling him a bunch of gold as well, giving him the rates. Like, he's running between camps to farm up to make sure he gets this item. He's probably asking yeah. for it. This is what this is what AD carries do, by the way, in competitive. They they're, they're screaming. Guys, 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 I'm so close. Let's oh, just yeah. wait. Give me, give me these camps. Trust. You don't need it anymore. Bro. You know, it's a classic. That's a grasp. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Let's see if Carlson gets grasp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, right, I'm over it, that's the that's the dopamine it's just not there it, it is it's it's addictive isn't it, it like really getting is. grass procs as a top laner i mean you'd know this better than anyone if you play shen there you really go. know there's the block by the way cowards do run Balonic. wow the damage is insane uh, the chakrams i uh, uh, jack spectra like is he the best AD carry at this tournament? I think there's a really good argument for it. And if not AD carry, then at least Aphelios. I think this guy, he plays Aphelios so damn well. He played yeah. it in the LVP finals. He played it yesterday. And every single game that you see it, he's destroying lane as well as just carrying the game in the end. Thursday alongside him, I mean, already has had such a great game talking about him because he's angled for the equalizer. Mighty, the ulti, the range, Harpoon gets it to the face and under the turret with a couple more minions to go. Heretics find another oh, no. window to open up. Sertos has even, not even come through. Stormbringer is used to disengage. That is the third or fourth Stormbringer I've seen to run away. Um, having to disengage the CC is very unfortunate. He never has that tool to be able to use it offensively. Yeah. Uh, absolute tragedy for Blue Azor here. Not really what you want to see from Volleyball because this pick champ is picked to bridge early game. <laughs> and you really want to be able to find early proactive plays with the setup from the Thresh here. Well, if you've been watching the previous games, as we know, who was it just before? Who? SK Prime versus KCB? No, no, no. The Volley Bear game before that. The mid game volley. The mid game Bonanza. volley bear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Apologies to the players. Um, we just have terrible memories. No, it's also it's also the fact that like we're in Europe and the names. It was are super quite massive. Difficult. Yeah. Versus. Was it super? Yeah. Papar super massive. Because it was. Um, it was. Why is it so hard? Oh my god! Why is it so difficult? 80 players, remember. Why is it so difficult? We were just there. We talked about it on desk. We just they talked about it. They played Pike. <laughs> they played Pike Volley and they scaled. Why can't million. you remember? <laughs> okay, look. I Bro, I'm see. ADHD. I've got an excuse. My my memory is absolutely god awful. Oh, so is mine. Like, I can't even remember. I, I, You know, we watched the LPL series before this. I can't even remember what happened in What that. happened in the LPL finals today? I don't know. I just like the rock soundtrack. That's in my head. The rock. <laughs> Not The what, Rock. To WE. <laughs> the Rock soundtrack. Is that what you said? <laughs> the Rock. Genre of music soundtrack. Oh, the Rock. <laughs> as in rock and roll. The Rock and roll. Right. I thought you meant The Rock. Like, na, 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 you know, for WE, the entrance music. 
Never mind. TP is going to be burnt. Carlson, are you dead? No, Ebby. He may got burnt on the way in. He's just running. He's just toasting up. What a rumble. coward. Where are you going? Oh. Oh. I'm getting some information in my... I'm getting something in my ear. So... We thought, Hebe, you know, Hebehime, we're like, this has got to be a sub, right? And it is, because it's the owner of the organization. He's like, sub me in, sub coach. In, boys. I'll and, carry and you guys. And then coach was like, well, I'm not going to say no, he's the owner. <laughs> he's got no choice. He's the official sub as well, by the way, folks, but he's also the owner. So the official sub of this team <laughs> is the owner. Wow. <laughs> what elo is he? I, I mean, to, to own a team, that's not bad. I need to buy a team. And then sub myself in. True. Is that how I get in the LEC? It is, and it's how you could get a world skin if you're good enough as well. You know, just buy an LPL team. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all about a fun LPL fact. In 2018, I believe it was, before I joined LPL, the owner of IG, uh, Wang Sukong, I think his name is uh, in, in Chinese, in Mandarin. Okay. This guy, as why are we getting team fight now? Blues are going to get sped up looking for the engage, but heretics aren't going to give it to them. Hold on to the fact, guys. I'll tell you in a second. Carlson unstoppable once again as they're trying to group up because Dragon is now live. He subbed himself in just so he could. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just so he could, he could potentially well get himself a world skid or like also potentially play in playoffs. He just wanted to play one game. As AD carry, he did win though, undefeated as we look for the team fight finally, but Jack Spectre is so damn big. The Scion, understandable right now and understandably dead. Jack Spectre walks it away. He gets hooked in, doesn't care. Cleanses through, Blues all's there. They get the flash from him as well. He frontlined that. That was a big mistake. Thousand gold shutdown. Oh, Sertus. Sertus misses as well. Hello. Heretics, what are you doing? Ulti going to separate as Carlson finds Harpoon. That's the Jinx down, trying to solo carry himself. But Heavy Hime zones him off. Dragon now could be theirs. And that was all from Jack Spectra thinking he could go melee. He's been watching OMG Able VODs from the past or something or what? Heavy Hime, he subs himself in and they might get the first win. <laughs> 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 I think he was the, the missing ticket all along. Oh, good luck. Good luck playing with that team again. The owner's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I'm going to play every single split from now on. But yeah, the really big comeback. I think uh, what happened there was Whiten went in a little bit too deep, got slowed and absolutely popped. You saw Blue Rizzo get a, a massive gold swing and gold influx of 1,000 gold. So he must have got a huge shot down there onto Sertus. Who also missed the shuffle into the pushback. So you just know a, what? a bit of a whiff. He killed Jack Spectra, actually. Mm. Blue Zor just killed the Aphelios and got a thousand gold. <laughs> What is up with these mid-game volley bears? Mid-game volleys. I don't know. What is up with 80 carries just walking into volley bears? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's the same again. It's the same again. Uh, first, it was the Jinx before. And now, anyone who's associated with Jack, whether it's them or their support, just likes to go a little bit in. Likes to go a little bit in. Baron on the cards. They do have Chakrams if they choose to White do in it. could be dead. White in. Could be dead. Actually, is dead. All right, Heretics, what are you doing? Oh, that is a lot of chain CC into the, the perma slow. Stop Baron. Man. Draw them in. Oh. The Zillion pick. I wonder if this guy's just a Zillion OTP, and he's like, guys, I don't care about the matchup. Pick it for me. True. It was smart. He's got two moats, by the way, for ability haste just with this fight. So five versus four. They already took out White in before the equalizer down. Now remember that Heretics are still far ahead despite a little bit of inti behavior. They're still big in this game, and Jack Spectra now has the red and white feeling all right. Heavy Hime speeding up and looking to set up the engage, but the damage has already been done. Zero Tenacity have taken too much from their health bars. Now for Heretics, they're thinking like, wait, can we do it? No, surely not. Yeah, no sums available either for the side of Zero Tenacity on the carries, right? So they're really scared of potentially being shuffled in by Sertus. Now, I wonder if they're going to turn onto it. They have a lot of damage. They have the Andrews Rumble, the percentage health, and the Chakrams. Yeah, it's actually going down really quick. Yeah, and, uh, wow. Zero Tenacity oh need to bring word. the TP in. Look at it go what? down. I mean, Jack Spectra just takes it immediately with a Rumble Burn as well, just like that. Heretic's back on him. Melonic gets a good stun, but no one's nearby to deal the damage. And I was talking before about Heretics. They're just walking all over the place. Now they're walking right into place. <laughs> Zero Tenacity are running out. The slow is disgusting, but underneath the Azir turret, Heavy Hime almost dies. Gets the Mana Mune shield. 
to heal up as well. And Teleport being burned. Heretics want to push this to the limit. They're still they're still chasing. The long chase is coming out. Zer Zerxe oh, might be... Engage. Oh, That's not going to work. White in gets an engage of his own. And the Zerxe comes on out of the Golden Gate. It's Erdote who's left alone. But we must appreciate Heretics with another two on the board. Baron up as well. The base is going to be torn. That Baron can't have been more than three or four seconds. That was the fastest Baron I have ever seen. That was really fast. Genuinely. Azir, uh, Rumble uh, cooking with the... the Double the Andrews, yeah. Absolutely mental. I've never seen a Baron go down that quickly, especially since they buffed Baron to be tankier. True. Wait, is that this patch though? 14 That was ages ago, but they did it. They added like 5k onto the HP. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, very true, actually. Equalizer could again, though. Blue Zor just oh, in no. place, and he's dead again. Zerse burns him down. I mean, all of a sudden, we went from like, hey, heretics, what are you doing? Why are you running it? To, hey, heretics, they're running towards the base. Yeah. I think uh, a little bit of sloppiness from Zerotanasty around these Baron dancers. As they get on out of there. They do. Hex Exile up and available for Heretics. It was denied before. Zero to Nasty still on a run to be 0 and 6. It's an unfortunate score. But 10.5k gold lead. And Heretics are just back in control with a 4 item just about on the Aphelios. 4 items for the Azir coming up as well. I don't know if we'll even get there this game. Crypt Bloom picked up by Xerse, by the way. That is a 3 item rumble. It yeah. is so nice to get like this flashback. I was talking about Splice before from Xerse, like, mm. it was a meta where Rumble Jungle was very prevalent. I think he was one of the best in EU at the time as well. Yeah. And for me, yeah, it's a massive flashback to back when I used to, you know, watch EU LCS. Back in the day. This guy, I remember him being, he would sub in for teams that weren't doing so hard and he would suddenly make the team better. I remember on Astralis actually doing decently well. Oh yeah. Regardless though. Top lane turret. That's the next aim attack. No, even considering the soul. I'm gonna look for the end here. Pushing in top. They could just play with time. They've got super minions both bot and mid lane. And there's going to be no defense with Zertanasti. Absolutely none. I mean, again, it is just so easy to walk through the base now with Baron. And again, they fell assault him. Melonic is not tanking up. You can see him running away as Edote is a squishy little bean. Jack Spectre, the one to watch for sure. And he's untouched for the time being of the fight as Blue Zor is also getting way touched too much. Certus as he runs forward, I mean, his DPS insane as well. Zerse just stands in place, keeps going golden and burns him to a crisp. Heretics, it's a game that will secure them into four and two and likely into the top two. Spanish fans can be proud. That's a comeback. It is a good comeback. That was, uh, that was a, a struggling start, one and two. You expected a lot better and suddenly turning it completely around. Miserations to Zero Tenacity. Yeah. No, not doing so hot. Well, no, just... we, we had some good games. From at least they're not, yeah. at least they didn't just play pure scaling all the time. You know what I mean? Like we didn't get just like boring drafts of no creativity. Yeah, I did like we, as well. They had the adaptations into the lane swaps too. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I saw a lot of decent things out of them, at least in the early games. Yeah, I think uh, Ultra League should be proud of like the achievement, especially from their owner. You know, watch out. He played players. pretty well. I'm he gonna actually say. did. Yeah. Silly was really good. <laughs> I was impressed. Yeah. Some laning hiccups, but man, really like, once you got the... Jesus. You know what else stops time? That man over there. Yeah. I don't care if you're ready or not. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm always yeah, ready to you better be. Is this for the grapes earlier? Is, that, is, this, is this vengeance? No, no, I won't. If you want something <laughs> done, do it yourself. That's the zero tenacity way as they jump in <laughs> with a hime hime on the mid lane. And before anybody says anything, oh, he is currently Diamond 3 on EU East. Okay? <laughs> But he was a challenger on season seven. Okay, so yeah, as I understand it, he was a former pro. Exactly. So so We're it's building not like he has hope. No competitive experience <laughs> at all, guys. Just no, not in. So what is that? Not, not recently. Yeah. Calm down. If you back at home, Fine. if you're gold, and if you want to make it to EMEA Masters, stop buy being gold and at least go to diamond. Yeah. Buy at a least team. that. Buy a team. Just buy a team. <laughs> <Send me that. laughs> That's, the That's easier not way. that easy, though. So genuinely, though, it's probably a more reasonable way to get onto a tournament stage to pick one of the absolute best players in the world, period. He did a really good job. I'm actually giving him props. I, I was really... Was quite good. Somebody, hey, come on. You're getting that it's close to bullying. Exactly, you're getting that close to bullying a team from my region, and I'm already very hurt, okay? Because they're going down... I joined the crew. Least... I'm from NLC. Yeah, we got two wins this entire tournament. Come yeah. on now. I don't like your crew. I don't like your crew. You cast our region with us. That was a long time ago. Apparently, it doesn't count anymore, as I've been told is. recently. I'm glad we're on the opposite side of the desk here. This could go to Gosh. play. <laughs> Did you actually 
actually isn't me. Deser- you deserved it. I, I, I'm not denying that. Uh-huh. But okay, so you know. much pain. <laughs> Zero tenacity in Los Angeles. And this is quite important because heretics now are capable of getting a good kid. Sorry, Josh. I was sorry to have that. <laughs> so this means like Los, Los Angeles are in a really good position to move forward. And yes. this is exactly what the Spanish... Are you okay, Salari? No, I'm not okay. I am very hurt because look, zero tenacity. We're at least trying to go out with style because there was no they way did. for them to do anything with the school they were already having when they started this game. So at least they're trying to be a little bit more creative with the picks. And I gotta say that Harpoon and Melonic were actually having a really good game today. Melonic coming in with a double kill again. This is a player that has been being doubted throughout the regular season in Ultra Liga because he has a very long history going through so many teams. But this split was rough for him. I'm I'm happy to see him finally stepping up today, even though it was the swan song, it was a good one. Yeah, and on this side for Los Heretics, this is the end of that 3 0 road. They've gone from 1 and 2, they are now all the way up at 4 and 2. They've locked at least tiebreaker, I believe, at this point. The last game will decide exactly what's going on, because exactly. of course, if the Shiktas win, we end up in a juicy three way tiebreaker scenario, oh. which would be fun to keep our eyes on. But that is still to come, of course. And to the credit for Zero Tenacity, they sub in, they have some fun, the pressure's off. And actually, they do make this game interesting, of yes. course. The Zillion yeah. actually makes it a lot harder to, to deal with that jinx. On the other side, of course, Xerxes gets a bit spicy himself. He pulls out his Rumble Jungle. It was something he used to play back in the day a little bit more regularly. You've got the Azir, you've got the Aphelios. That is triple, very scary carries to deal with. But even then, we did see once again in the mid game, a little bit of propensity to give away a few kills and stuff in a way that against yes. the better team might have hurt them. We saw yesterday, or maybe heard as we didn't get to catch it on broadcast so easily, the fact that there was a habit of throwing away those big leads and maybe being a little bit too lackadaisical around those objective setups, around that mid game positioning of individual members. At the end of the day, well, Editex is now in a good position. Thousand this is what we need to bear. focus oh, yes. right now. The, the shutdown for Volley Bear of a thousand <laughs> gold. Oh. Well, I agree with what you said, but this Rumble, I don't think you're going to get access to him throughout the rest of the tournament. It's really complicated to get access to this champion. This is why he's one of the most contested champions, and he has constantly been banned as we were playing yes. the groups. It gives you so much, not only in terms of a control on a team fight, so I don't think they could use this weapon as we move forward. This is a win for Heretics, yes it is, but I'm still kind of shaky and I'm not judging. I know everybody from, from the Spanish community is saying, hey, we won, but there's like a little ick on your back, like, yeah, we won. What about the future though? What about the potential tiebreaker, right? Oh, oh, oh you want to talk about that one, so much. I'm not sure if I want to talk about it, but I have to talk about you it. You have to right? talk about it, so let's talk about it. We're done with this game and let's look into the next one. The Shiktas Esports versus GK Esports. And I know Sam is currently looking into the website to get more information about that one. Yeah. So if GK Esports wins, they're good. And in second place, it gets a bit interesting. So I'm still waiting on what production to see what exactly where the tiebreaker scenarios will be. But GK, as it stands, the fate is in their own hands. They win, they're five and one, they are locked first place. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be huge because they went three and oh yesterday. They've gone one and one so far today. So they have dropped a game. They are still looking very, very good. The fact that Heretics have managed to come all the way back up to that four wins, the fact that Besiktas have been a little bit more sloppy today, that they are at yeah. three and two, still very much in with the position of making it out, but it's not as easy it might once have been earlier in the day, does make it very, very interesting. So they are going to want to try and at least get this win because Heretics winning, yes, it was against Zero Tenacity, and obviously they've not had the easiest tournament, but still they secured that win. Let's put Besiktas in the frying pan. Uh, if they can get out of this, they've still got a way to get through. Theoretically, anyway, mm -hmm. pending tiebreaker uh, break. So I'll tell you everyone. I'll tell everyone about the tiebreakers and You've how got they the work. Yeah, I, I got the info. Don't worry. So if Besiktas wins, they will lock in first place. If they lose, there's going to be a tie between Ooh. three teams. And the, no, 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 no. Calm down. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. If Besiktas wins, there's a three-way tie. If they lose, they're out. Yeah. Quite simple. Can I okay. just say, this is not going to be the first three-way tie for Besiktas. Because in Turkish League, in the regular season, yes. they ended it with a three-way tie between Besiktas, Papara Supermassive, and Busgeri Sports. So we're used to that. 
Yes, they're used to that. That's a comfortable zone. Well, it's I... comfortable to also jump into break before we jump oh. into the last game of the day. So get ready. It's going to be a rumble in the jungle. And I'll see you in three minutes. Be right back. That was a good slap. <clears throat> Freely using Katarina's cook. <sighs> Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Cup. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Care freely using... Ugh. Kindred cautiously cook Kit Kat cupcake. Care... Oh, it doesn't even matter. I'll, I'm ready. It's fine. Okay, yeah, look. I'm running like a nosebleed. So stick them up, spread them out like a rollie. Day, it's our last time to be alive in the group stage of 2024 because after this it doesn't come through we're straight into draft let me tell wow. you guys something this is a sieve. <laughs> this is a sieve, and it's a lane swap sieve. a sieve. that sounds like not a bad option jinx ban aphelios ban they're like oh surely can't have lane swaps what and comes then they're next like, <laughs> hold my beer aphelios as well so we're like okay we're really down the tier list of lane swap yeah charms. we are no sieve farms can, if you can do it with sieve <laughs> that's interesting i guess you you get Big shot for the level yeah, three. I'm thinking about like Sorry, how well they. So, so what's important with this is turret taking damage, yep. right? And Sivir is not going to match up to the attack speed of a Jinx or an Aphelios Chakra. But you have an alter reset, I guess. You have really good push, and you could tempo swap really easily with the push. Doesn't Lulu take demolish though? Anyway. Yeah, so you can make up for it like that. I don't think the Sivir matters so much. I think the wave clear is going to be good though. All right. Well, so, I'm looking forward to Decap though because he has great hair. Mm. If you haven't already noticed. <laughs> Man, like, that's true. And by the way, first time we've seen GKE Esports on the broadcast. Um, which who, if they win, they lock in first. If not, uh, if Bajikdas win, we get like a three-way tiebreaker. Yeah. So we go down yeah. the rabbit hole a little bit. 
So let's see. Again, it's all about fighting for the top two position. And as we get the Ari locked in as well, well, not yep. locked in, just thought about here for the time being. Uh, what do you want to see? Because I know we've been kind of launched this one. Talia got banned, yeah, Aurelia yeah, yeah. Soul banned as well. We're kind of running down the mid lane options as well. So yeah. Giyu is going to lock in the Ari. I'm thinking of jungles and mid combos that are open right now. Mm. Um, Sichuani's open, that comes to mind. Maokai's open, that comes to mind. Um, yep. And then pairings with that, you could go double AD carry the Maokai plus Tristana. You oh, know? yeah. You could also do with Ari pairings like Viego and Lee Sin are also good, depending on Elramir's uh, champion pool. Um, I think those come to mind too. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking at mm. right now. Sorry, I was just Zin's about... Zin's out There it is. Yeah, I was thinking about, was thinking about Zin with one of those yeah. pairings as well. I think the problem with Sejuani is you're just way over like in indexed into magic damage. So you right. go Zin's out, you got a nice damage balance, no Merc Tread value, and you can go uh, any kind of mid laner that pairs off with it right now. There's so many different ones. Uh, Nico's great, any kind of setup's great. Front to back's great, Azir. It's interesting that... Um... You know, on two, um, red side two three. Oh, I guess I guess we had blue side, uh, blue side two three. The Nautilus. I'm I'm in the weeds here a little bit. You know, seeing the Siva after seeing the Nort. Yeah. Instead of seeing something like the Alistar. Mm, again, yeah, yeah. You know, I was just like, well, hang on. You are three severe into. Uh, yeah, Alistar, yeah. Right? So again, I, I think a smart move is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. Miru uh, does pick up the Z in the end of the day anyway. So a lot of team fighting has already come through here from Bajikdas. I am wondering wow, really? how you partner this. Sejuani finally comes through today. Yep. You're waiting to see that one, but partnership with the Ari, not as strong as something like the Vi or uh, the Volibear. Or the Viego or the Lee Sin, right? So what they valued yep. here was frontline for the front to back of the Severe. Yep. Um, and I was wondering if they were going to do something like this, because I really don't like Ari plus Sej. You have a lot of setup. The Merc Tread value is really high, mm. and your magic damage is a bit too much for me. Uh, regardless, though, front to back is what they value. Severe, creating space. Okay. Creating space, lovely to hear. <laughs> and in what could be a lane swap again? Well, what should be a lane swap? And you know, we're talking about it last game. We we're talking behind stage and we're like, it's interesting because last draft was set up for a lane swap, wasn't a lane swap, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. it was like the double negative where they're like, oh, we think it's going to be a lane swap. They took they after don't show. And then, yeah, they don't. They don't show. It just ends up a normal lane. Maybe we see that again. I think uh, mm. it was also the fact that they, neither of them were too afraid of the other lane. Right. right, they both could let each other scale. Thresh Jinx is all right for lane ganks, but it's not mm. that intimidating. The same for the other side. Um, so, with the, how these lanes are, with the Sivir versus Zeri lane, you're not that scared either. Maybe yeah. you lane swap away from the Nautilus, and you go up topside again. I think that's a possibility. All right. Well, you know what time it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to sit back, <laughs> put the feet up again, <laughs> and kick it into overdrive. It's been a nice day. It's been a nice night. If you're sitting there, let me take you through a journey. Let me take you through a story. Mm. You're walking out mm. on the beach. It's a sunny day. It's a Monday. You're meant to be at work, but you decided not to show up. 12 o'clock, middle of the day. You see someone sitting in the sand. Who is it? It's death. Right? <laughs> Where are we Why? going with the hysterics? <laughs> you walk over. You confront them. And you say, death, not today. That's Bajikdas. I'm yep. Bajikdas. That's in the story... I'm Bajictus Esports saying, mm. not today. Win against GK and you can confront death. You can walk up to them in the sand and say, not today. Because all that matters in the end of the day is how you expose yourself to danger, how you can get through moments like this. This is where heroes are created. This is where people like Hoon are remembered. I will dominate's favorite player of all time from the LCS. Bin versus Bong, Hoon top lane versus bong <laughs> let's this go is gonna be a cracker i'm so excited and we're lane swapping uh, lane swapping already five man stack top side want to see some junglers the helping I mean, the clears this is good because this is kind of new tech i mean you keep you know you keep saying you don't like lane swapping but you Ooh. how can you not when you see new tech like this Dude, i'm liking this i'm seeing all the dematerializers once again the ruby crystal starts who needs d shield if yeah. you're not trying to sustain poke and lane true just give it to your first time you have no economy anyway i wonder if we'll ever see something like a cold start Dude, both teams <laughs> are just trying to spot though in the meantime like yeah this is a fun little bit of scouting death pushing just in case they come scouting and then you five man stack this is something that bds did versus g2 they're deep wards but I think it might just be a handshake of a lane swap here. Mismatch lanes. Is a Zeri Nort? Do you want to match? I think uh, Zeri Nort wants, uh, wouldn't mind matching as long as they have jungle to play through, right? Because you right. have to set up for the Zinza to come gank. And that's what the Lulu Severe might be avoiding. Um, okay. Because the early game power of the Zinzao is there alongside the Nautilus. So yeah, we have a split map. Where Sivir, I mean, five, six on mega scale. Like, yeah, that would be uh, 35 <laughs> minutes in, but sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. But look. 
Probably all the all the while to get there sooner. Good trade from Giyu, by the way. Uh, GK, I mean, they're the ones who, you know, like other Arabian League mm -hmm. uh, of Nigma Galaxy, have just been consistently lane swapping. You know, not every game, but most games. Like, Arabian League is really on top of it. Yeah, they really are. This is the meta that evolved in their league. This is the same as Prime League, and now I feel like it's taking over Emir Masters. I wonder if it yeah. takes over MSI as well once that comes around. But now, both junglers going to be helped out with the top laners. And we're just going to get this, because they don't want to be dove on that three-stack crash. Because it's pretty unsurvivable. I think Sion could do it a little bit better than Zach, so he go down to bot side if he really wanted to. Actually, just sticking around towards uh, yep. towards jungle top. So invade, keeping it vertical for the time being. So all four members on the top side again. Zach doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> no more lane swapping. What please, is, this is great. I don't want any more it's lane great. swapping. Look, and it's turning into 2015 again. Look, everyone's about to hit top lane turret. Four members versus four members. They have demolished on Sion Shore, but I don't want to see more plates versus plates. Oh. I want to see cool lane and give me Zay on the Yone versus Aatrox. Don't give me Zach Who cares? No, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, like, this is so much better than watching 2v2s or 3v3s. Look, look at this. This is a change, isn't it? Flash Q. Flash and Flash, not bad. Yeah, actually, uh, huge gank. Yeah, and TP top TP. as well to potentially catch the wave. Has he thinned out? Has he, has he decided level two is the level I can survive well, dives? That's what he's committed to. Hoon is dead though, surely. Like, even if you think you can survive, there's no way he survives dives, right? No, I Elrim is level four. I don't think level two is enough, mate. Yeah, maybe level three. Maybe we could be wrong. The kiss back Ooh, the one bong is definitely dead. It is a one for one, but remember, cell division there. Elrimi has to flash. Bong in the zombie Wait, form bong? is just taking it. Look at him. <laughs> Giga bong. <laughs> it's a trade. Leo actually gets it. I think he got the last auto. Look at bot plates as well. Bot is down to two plates. This is a massive trade in favor of the carries for Besiktas. But still. Fairly even across the board. Bong going to be able to catch this wave down bot side. Zach going to go over there to match. And I wonder if we'll see a fast push coming in from Sion and then mismatch again. Oh, okay. Back's already coming through, but is timing good? I think timing's good. It, like, Sion has a bunch of wave right? He also has a DMAT. He could DMAT, um, DMAT the wave oh, and yeah, then just you mentioned push. That. Yeah, and then they swap back down bot side. Severe opening up through mid because they're not quite sure yet. Look, now they're going bot side. They're going to replace the Sion again. And uh, it's going to be mismatched lanes. Now more plates down bot side to be taken for the Sivir. Yeah, as you said, he gets to push in. Back's going to come through. You can see the Hoon might be trying to zone this off and stop the back. I mean, tempo is a big thing that the word gets thrown around a lot, but especially in tempo swaps. Yeah. Uh, as we come through, Sion actually makes it back in the end. No TP, remember, so just has to walk to the top lane. Is showing once again, Curry and Pikes D. Okay, so uh, hit me out. Okay. Go with Scion's it. cooking. He has triple tonic. He gets the the, 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 the pot that oh, makes yeah. him do true damage to minions. So when he's in zombie form, he has five extra true damage per hit on the zombie form for the Good. last hits. Is Giyu dead though? No, he's not. Elrami is here. So what that is tech, isn't it? Charm doesn't connect. Osman just zones out. Everything's tech these days. <laughs> like Everything. Ignite down. Hoon has like... to, wait, is Hoon just going to die to decap? Hoon is just going to die to decap. He's got flash available, but holds on to it. The nerve of that man. He's going to have to back away again. And another top laner absorbing pressure, as you'd expect. But both these side lanes are getting back on towards the turrets. Now, yeah. for now... Bong, going to be dove. I was going to say, it looks like another turret dive is coming through. Bong is going to try and decimate, smash the lane. Ooh, he gets a stun up. Osman actually tanking for way too long. Now we're going into round two. Kaori is close to dying to the ignite down. The DMAT gives him a bit of health as well because he got to level four. He's still there decimating smash after the... Uh, Demolish gets the turret plate, but Bong standing bong. strong. Look at Kiori. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, he's lucky that that <laughs> didn't get Oh, what are you thinking, Kiori? Over the wall. Come on, stop it. Demolish there. The minions. again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a chat. You know, I think globally, I think everyone is so lost. <laughs> I think we are all so drunk on oh, lane stops right are, now. Oh, man, we are. It's going too far. Like, they're just... Yeah, there's so much fun. How could you want to stop this? Why did Osman tank? He has a, a range champion who can tank from far out and then be able to flash away if needed. True. So if Kaori actually tanks, then they can play that like dive out a lot easier. The problem was he took a Q to the face and he can't flash away. And even the one for one is never worth. And look, let me just mention that was big for the game save because the turret plate denied. I mean, oh my the top's word. still standing strong. Remember that Leo 
was able to push in bot. Two turret plates picked up in the meantime. They're going for the mismatch again with Hoon sitting bot. And the bottom side of Kerry and, and Pakes... Uh, I'm going to butcher this. Pakes Deer. I hope. Pa pa Pakes Deer is how Pakes I was saying. Pakes Deer. Uh, that's what Let's I've go with been it, told. Bro. Thank you very much. Uh, they're still topside. Bong is still there. Remember, he's also got unsealed spellbook. Another benefit of running Sion on the weak mm -hmm. side of this uh, weird shenanigan lane. As they're just going to have to walk away. Yeah. Uh, Bong is able to just stop them in their tracks. Exhaust now if they go for the dive again. And with Osman walking topside, maybe that's another reality. Okay. So, round two. <laughs> lane swaps. Have the plates. I think we do a plate check in, right? You, you've got two plates down there, three plates down topside. I think it's fairly even across the board, actually. This is a very, very even lane swap in terms of gold distribution. But for how long? Here we go. Dredge oh, no, one again. into the wall. Bon on, now is level six. But this time, they finally do it right at Sins. And Pike's Deer is going to tank it up. So well done. Ooh. Bong able to hit some of the weight. Did you see? Did you see? He used the Elixir Lavarus as the dive comes out of Bong. Oh, did he? Okay. Well, <laughs> there's a tech again. Hoon is going to die, though. So it is a response, and we are just going to tower plate heaven again. But let's be real, the Zeri is going to take it a little bit quicker. Sorry, I'm just so infatuated with the fact that Bong has gone so deep in this rabbit hole for the wave clear that <laughs> yes. he's taking triple tonic for Elixir of Avarice to do true damage to minions on autos. This man, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's just cooking. I absolutely love it. There's so much tech. Oh, we're back to it, are we? One more plate left remaining. Kuri he gets a push in. Is close to taking this turret down completely, but Bong's wave clear is getting to the point where it's pretty much one shotting wave. No Bong. Pikesia is not going to die to the turret, and Bong is just going to die again. Dredge line in, damage out, zombie form there. First turret blood goes over to BJK, and uh, zombie form ain't, ain't able to get a trade in yet. First blood turret, first blood turret down bot wasn't quite gotten. That is heart wrenching. Regardless, though, I have to say. I feel so bad for top laners and the KDs and stats. The stats True. for top laners must be absolutely ruined Actually, globally. coming into MSI. MSI what are they going to do? I know. Because, like, everyone's going to be like, dude, Broken Blades died 25 times in three <laughs> games. <laughs> They're going to sort by KDA. Yeah, so. they are. And it's going to be, like, <laughs> Some... Broken Blade versus, like, Zayas. Like, I, I don't think... I, did 0. T1... 0.4 KDA. <laughs> did, did T1 lane swap? Oh, gosh. Is it... I'm trying to think back to it. I'm, I'm not sure if it happened as much. I know it's become a bit of a phenomenon, but I feel like G2 were one of the first teams. Yeah. And I know NIP did it, but I'm not sure to who else. But I, I think they have to filter out like they, specific champs. Oh, they do. Because you imagine putting Broken Blade versus Zayas or something. And if Zayas is a lane swap, it's, it's like some 15 KDA versus A wild card top 8. laner whose team hasn't adapted to lane swaps yet. Just yeah. has like a 7 KDA and Zayas is 0.2. Oh, yeah. Better than <laughs> Zayas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It would be so funny. Uh, yeah, they, they're gonna do something. Stats are gonna be all over the place. I mean, there's gonna be 80 carries with like damage to turrets or something. Yeah. You know, in the first 15 minutes of the game, being like 2k or something like that. Oh no. Uh, well, carries also gonna get bottom side. Okay, so there is a bit of a, a time advantage right oh, now for Bajikdas. They've got the gold lead. Top is getting pushed in as well. It looks like the Zack of Hoon. He's going to be absorbing damage. Bong just waiting out. Here we go. This is the one lane that acts as normal. And Spirit Rush comes through. All in is avoided. Observer doesn't want to see that. They want the lane swap. Here oh, comes. yes. They're hungry for it too. Guess what? Hoon's dead. What a surprise. All right. Bloblet. The Knight's Vow onto the Severe. So he heals just up the case. tank. That's <laughs> tanking tower. Very good. <laughs> oh. Trades in tower. This is the last standing gold tier one that they need to get left in the game. Okay. Or severe. There's like people don't realize there's different types of lane swaps in the actual lane swap. Like this is a, this is more. We just commit to the mismatch. Swap. Yeah, committing to the mismatch. There's other teams that will continue lane swapping up. They swaps. push. Yeah, yeah. But that's a proper tempo swap, right? Yeah. We saw a little bit of that with the Scion push. Yeah, into yeah. Swapping back. That's what to I mentioned. Avoid. I used the right wording earlier. I'm glad. Hang on. 80 carries first. It, wait, what? The Zeri is one v two. Wild Rift comes out. Kiori Kiori. flashes on in, and Leo's dead. Decap going to help on out as the Scion wants revenge, misses completely, but Bong still has a decimating smash. It's a shutdown, yeah. unfortunately, going to the top laner, but nevertheless, a shutdown given over as GK now look for a little bit more. Osman came out, but he came out late as Dredge Line from Paxidia needs to come in quick, but he's over the wall, takes a blast cone. Now the TP from Hoon as well. Everyone getting involved suddenly. 
We want to fight, but Bong's isolated again, even with his flash. He ain't getting out of this one in a hurry as Miru joins in first on the side. Giyu's now in here with a good charm too. Everyone just breaks out into alternative dance. Osman. Bong just dies. <laughs> <laughs> he kills Osman as he goes down. Charm flashed away from. Everyone's like, it's our last game. May as well go for it. What is this extended play? It all starts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what it starts. I think Kaori has static shiv, and because of the how, you know, he's managed to get both tier ones, whereas the Sivir hasn't. He has first item before the Sivir. Then you can just take that one versus two. And Wait, it just he's, devolves. He's just taking on the Ari. Elmer El Ramir is over the wall. Kaori's just gonna walk back before he does any more damage. Um <laughs> who won that fight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Kaori did pretty well, getting a solo kill, and then it kind of devolves a little bit. Sion getting the shutdown onto Zeri is a big win for Besiktas, because then the shutdown can't go to anyone else. So I do think that Besiktas came out on top there. And if Besiktas is coming out on top, that has a lot of implications. Yeah, there's a three-way tie. <laughs> All right. Of ties. Lots of uh, potential games coming up. Sure. Well... Dragon Side goes down. It's one apiece here. Early game has been again about Kaori here on this uh, on this Zeri. And remember that Leo has been a little bit behind. That was a flash stretch line, by the way. Mike <laughs> Steer just did that <laughs> off of the side of the screen. Elrami getting chased again. It's Kaori time. Ulti on the Nautilus. That stops the CC. Very smart target, if you Elrami. ask me. A spirit rush from Giyu to try and get out of this one. Kaori doesn't pop the ulti while Grub is going to be taken down. This is going to be... Yeah. What, third grub? No, it's not. Where's the grub? No, six, actually. They got all six grubs. Early game of success. Kaori really taking over this game as well. Great. Like, with that grub damage as well, being able to snowball and hit the towers fast to get more gold. He's just dashing around, but Bong <laughs> just <laughs> being wild. wailing on that tier two tower. I love the silence right now. The way <laughs> yeah. absolute Chad. Decap caught out, wild growth dead. We'll get the, get the cinders. Get move oh, speed. Actually, yeah, he's getting heaps of it. He's out. Wait, healed out? Yeah. Little Wait, where's the bong seal? He stopped the heal with Spellbook. <laughs> I thought it was him. I thought it was Leo. Dude, this is this is too much. <laughs> it really what is. What has top lead become? I know. He's 40 CS up, by the way. How did that happen? How's he 40 CS up? I think he said he's been out, had time to free farm, right? He got a kill on uh, top lane for that shutdown. That's given him room. That was my ulti. I just realized in the Crescent Guard, the ulti of Zinzao, he has briefcases in that skin. They just rotate <laughs> around his that, body. Actually. That is a, that's a strange one. That's a weird. Harold's up, by the way. Harold is up. Let's see. Let's do an item check. It's super important for this fight now. Will Zeri get to a second item for the fight? The answer is no. So they have relative parity in terms of items. Boom. Very tanky but, front line. I will there's say no GK. Growth. There's no Leo ulti. Yeah. I will say the big advantage GK have right now is their front line is super, super tanky. So yep. compared to the Besiktas who have stronger carries, it's like a battle of fed carries versus fed um, tanks. Okay. Uh, is that dynamic? And I think at this point, fed tanks comes out on top. True. Uh, also, Lulu's very accelerated. Look at the items. Ardent completed as well. So, 204. I don't know how that happened. Uh, Lulu's very fed. Oh, yeah. He's picking up more kills than you expect. Uh, PGK over the wall, just waiting for GK to come over. GK versus JK. <laughs> Man, that would get difficult, wouldn't it? That would get difficult. Like, Bin versus Bong. Sorry, yeah. I keep referencing that. It was too, it was too no, it iconic. No, it was too good not to. <laughs> Boon versus Bong doesn't have the same vibe to it, you know? It's still pretty good, though. <laughs> it is good. I mean, if anyone doesn't know, Hoon, uh, what team was he in? Was it Immortals? Dignitas. Dignitas. Dignitas Hoon. Legend of the top lane. He was not very good in Nelsius. No, he wasn't. But, but he's doing well here. At least the passion from I Will Dominate came out in force. Like, that dude... Literally loved who. I swear <laughs> it was his son, by the way, he talked about him. The tweets every single time he played? Yeah. And then Hoon got replaced and Fury incarnate <laughs> at that point. Oh, the boy, bong, boy. You know, one of the best wildcard top laners. True. Absolutely hyped up. Because, you know, on Twitch there's Gigabin and there's Gigabong. Now let's see how Bong reacts. Gears running on in. Ooh. This is a good pick here. Starting off for GK. Pike Steer is dead. Leo picks up the kill. They now have access to mid here that Kyori has to defend. More importantly, remember, Herald, now that it comes out, can open up that access as well. They've got demolished. The charge will at least start it off. 1,700 left. But take a look at top side. The gr six grubs are going to do work for the cross map on the tier two. That's a lot of gold injection. And you'd rather have the gold on the Azir than the Scion for Bong. 
So I think this is going to be a winning trade for the Besiktas on that trade. Depends on if that end of turret goes down the bottom side, but you're right. I feel like at the end of the day, yeah. BGK regardless going to find it here. That is a 168 CS is here at 16 minutes into the game. So a yep. little bit ahead of the clock even. Still still really good pick. Opening up the map is very, very important. Yep. Tier 1 turret mid. Extremely important objective. Now going to let them move into the jungle and have a lot more freedom of movement. Dragon coming up now, 45 seconds. What does Azir get off of that 750 gold from the top lane turret? And my, that is going to be a blasting one. My question for you is, yeah, also yeah. with the haunting guys as well, he didn't have that either. So he just picked up, like, huge, yeah, 1,600 worth of gold, feels like. Um, what's stronger at three items? Is it Sivir with an Enchanter with Arden, or is it... Uh, I would always go for the Sivir with an Enchanter. Any AD carry plus Lulu is really, really horrible to deal like with. Like an extra long, item and a half kind of thing. As long as the, the engage is peelable with the Lulu. So there's right. some engage, like Vi, unpeelable. But Bong, long chase here. It is indeed. Does get all gets, away. Oh, he flashes it. Oh, oh, Ulti no. gets stopped up as well. Osman's here too. Kerry also oh, no. here. Everyone on Bong. This I, is a story that's just unfair to him. I think Bong could have altered downwards and completely drifted towards the enemy team to get away. But oh, he commits. He commits trying to get to his turret. That's a really big shame. That might be Dragon given over, but GK like, okay, forget Dragon for the time being. They have the inside track on inner turret top, inner turret mid. Actually, very smart macro play. Yeah, time. Con considering that there's no way they were getting that Dragon. The problem is, though, that's going to be another tier two turret for the Azir. I'm really afraid. Oh, it is too. And it's going to be so much gold. This Azir turning up to these future Drakes is going to have two items so accelerated. And they don't lose anything apart from the mid turret. Yeah, that is not a word trade. If okay, you ask me. These tier two turrets are like the most gold in the entire game. So I, I am so terrified. That's a, that's a Leandri's plus component on and base. Solid, Just watch, watch solid his inventory. Gold as well. Like yeah. remember again, what is it? Six hundred something gold. It's seven fifty. So uh, total. And it is spread between localized members, isn't it? Yes. So does he get solo gold versus three or four members from? Uh, from GK getting mid turret. He's gonna gold. recall now. Just watch. Just watch. Dude, he's 1300 over. He comes Leandres, and then let's guess. Uh, Dude, I think he's got Leandres, and he's waiting there. Oh no, he's in back Okay. Okay. He's just waiting. I mean, Bong. Is, is this Bong a long play? Zinzao could be coming. Yeah. Oh, I think this is gonna are. be a long chase. Bong. No, not again. No, not Bong. <laughs> Somebody save him. This is not Giga Bong. It's not. I mean, where's he going? Do? What can you do? He's ghosted. He's running it out. He's got ult. <laughs> He's got ult now. He's got yeah, it. this there time we, we do it right. And he gets to clear the wave. Wow, he oh, one shot that. The oh, he's got it. It's the bow special. He's actually surely. Oh, he's got it. Demolish. Wait. Bong. Giga bong. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> well, now he's just got to survive. I mean, oh, he doesn't no. need to survive. Who cares? Actually worth. I mean, you can see, oh, if, if Baron was up here, that was a super play. Absolute mega play. But they were looking at the Baron. seconds too early. 50 seconds. Unfortunate. Still absolutely huge. That's huge. Actually worth. <laughs> Very worth. 700 gold localized on the Scion. Bowson's Law, Gigabong. I think we have a bunch of emotes. This spam there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Gold difference is there for the time being. All right, look at Ziz's inventory. I want to see after this gold difference, what does he have? Did he pick up a whole Leandri's and a component? Like a, like a Blighting Jewel? Let's see. Or maybe a Needlessly. I want to see the suspense. The gold difference is important. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with that, please. <laughs> can, I, can I have a look at Bong? Did we say Bong for? We want to see the Azir. I don't know. No, I want to look at Bong's eyes. Oh, of course. Completely Andrews and a blasting one. All right, going to be going towards that. Okay, that's great. Boy. Bong's picked up two items. <laughs> Dude, he's three and seven. Like, how rough this game is. Been. Well, it's, it's weird. Not to say it's rough. Baron started by Bajikdas. I mean, this is a, a, a bit of a call considering that GK reset onto the map but they are coming out super slowly yeah i mean they just water over the wall lulu's here with all the wards yeah okay. so they, they peel off of it i think it's too easy to steal if you're the, like how do you keep her out i guess you have the sejuani wall so the azir wall but it's too hard to keep Sejuani out as an engagement oh, picked though yeah gk setting it up the flash born by mirror he ulties up to nothing but as we get the re-engage for Bajik, that's in my turn. Okay, as Hoon has already got the less bounce down and zoning around as well. Kerry is still with oh, the ulti, but Bong sets it up in the fight. It's a melee engage. Is it enough though? I don't think so. Charm even connecting oh, on the back end, but it's not there. We don't have a Sivir online yet, and Kerry is more than happy to be in charge. Three members of GK now running for their lives as Bong made it believable and probably made it better. Then it was looking at the start. So a huge engage coming out from Hunan. And what? Oh, oh hang wait, on, never mind. Oh, Kerry's just dead. The flash away. Shut down. 
And with a Lulu there, there's no way that you can take him on. Yeah, Leo on the Severe, though. I just want to go back to that. There was a specific micro interaction that lost that team fight for GK. You cannot spell shield the Q2 from Zach, the auto attack to bang people together. You cannot spell shield that. Uh -huh. So he gets pulled in anyway. The spell shield is useless. And the engage actually comes through from Hoon. I hope we get a replay of that because I'd love to highlight it. I did not know you could spell, not spell shield that. Yeah, I love that in Aaron. Actually, I was playing Severe. Is that because what the actual it's particle? It's an auto attack. Ah. So it's classed as an auto attack with the and Q2 so is the clap together is not a... So it's no, just, exactly. It's all so an you auto. still get clapped together. Right. Um, wow. But yeah, they lost to that specifically because then you can't get uptime. Big time again, though. Practice has to flash away. The charm almost connecting. Giyu is trying to proactively bring this game back into their favor. Also, the Ari trying to hard out right now. Absolutely. The single target burst of the RA charm and the Sejuani CC layering, it's like their only win condition, and hopefully after that you can clean up with the Severe. But still, gonna need one more item. Bit of an item differential. Hopefully oh, here you can buy a Giant Slayer. Yeah, because again, Blighting Jewels has been picked up from the back as well. By the way, third item picked up from Kaori, even though he got shut down, and Navori Quick Legs just picked up. Lord Dominic's now picked up by Leo as well. Three item 80 carries have come out, and as you said, you prefer the Sif up with three items here, yep. especially with a Lulu it, by the side it and depends. Redemption. Can the Zac find the engage and the dive on the backline like he did in the last fight? Because if yep. so, then I much, much prefer that composition with, this, uh, the, 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 with the Zeri to clean up afterwards. Of course, there's also the shuffle potential, but I don't think he's going to go for that. This is a strict front-to-back team composition, and this Dragon, it's only going to be the second or third, and there's no towers to take. I feel like we're just in for an A round. I think we are too. I mean, at least for now, we're playing the mind games around yeah. Barrows. Bajikdas are moving through, clearing out vision. That's going to draw in GK to check the area, which is, again, quite blind. Bajikdas spotting out the last control, yep. but now Baron is still continued blind as ARAM sets up once again. Kind of scared. Now, if GK started up, they have double smite, right? So potential they with do. that spellbook. For now, he has Ignite, but if that ever happens... Oh, Glacial Prison is down to Miro, but he gets out immediately. The engage starts off. Kaori's... Oh, Free firing once again. Bong is trying to zone them out, but he can't do too much as he flashes away. It's only to his death to shuffle back as well. It's great again. Bajikdas have got this area oh, in charge. Severe. We'll die though, but the Sifer goes with it. Is that enough? GK, we're still questioning a gear you can carry oh it through. But Miru. Miru now again. The item disparity shows itself. An ace to come through. Three members left alive. And Bajikdas want to make sure tiebreakers are keeping us on tonight. GK comes in with the engage, tries to find the pick, but it isn't enough. Hoon then lies on the back line. He says, you know, I'm not going on the Severe. It's too difficult, so I'm going to jump on the Lulu, forces the Wild Growth onto the Lulu. And that way, they run down the fight. Now, you think Severe is going to win with the Ricochets, which isn't enough. In the end, Mira comes out top. Do this bad, they can't do this. Hoon has a bunch of sustain. This is very brief. But he's not going to take much Am I damage. Am telling a lie? I, I think. Dodge. Okay, oh, the honey nice, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> nice. Nice. It's so the good. Honeys. They tell me that does not look like lettuce. That actually, cabbage, yeah, like individual cabbages. It does. It definitely does. Actually, looking closer, it's like a Pokeball. Oh, um, true it is. Oh, it's copyright. Yeah, oh, whoops. Whoops. No, not, not that. You're okay. It's definitely not that thing. <laughs> no, not what I just no said. No way. Yantic, if you're listening, we apologize. All right. Dragon time. GK on the reset. They're the ones who are going to be able to find this. But Farron still goes over. 4K gold lead for Bajik. Yeah. as well. And got a highlight here, or he can't take away from Mirror as well with those items. And their gold injection from the tier two managed to take over fights despite despite what looks like potential turnarounds in these fights from the Severe and the Ricochets. Still think they're not out of the game though yet, GK. Yep. I think this Severe Lulu, you know, you always have that 500 CS win condition. They are super strong at these thresholds. Just a bit of an item gap at the moment. Let me just say, Kiori is playing a bit psychopathic. He like, is. Running. I'm liking it, to be it's, honest. It's playing like he's got the Lulu. I mean, again. It's great considering that what it costs to trade him off. Uh, it usually uses a lot from GK. As you said, Siva getting to that point, but we're just not quite there yet. Tarot goes down Where with some of power play. And Kaori in the top side. Uh, Ari was in the side lane, teleporting for a flank, but the base now broken. Inhibitor coming up next. Remember, Bajikdas aren't all here. They can pivot to top. Miru is caught out, though, trying to shifting sand away. Almost takes Giyu with him, but a shutdown goes over to Leo. Okay, that's a start. Baron power play halts for the time being. Quick base recalls come on in. Bajikdas aren't going to give anything away oh, no. as Inhibitor dies to minions. An explosion of Infernal Cinders and a bouncy going over to the Ari. And I don't think the super minions matter too much. Severe wave clear is super high. So can I just farm up some more gold? This can turn into the next dragon, though, with the super minions of pressure in that lane. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? I think more pressure using the Baron and the super minions in the side lane. It, it, 
you have a bunch of push. He's going to catch this wave deep now. So what Sivir's doing, he's going to catch the wave deep. That way he'll get more time to go and defend bot lane. Um, this Baron Siege is probably going to be muted as Baron expires. But that bot lane defense is going to be really important. I mean, still a minute of Baron. So it's not like it's expiring anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, Sivir now having to pace wage well. You can see Teleport going to be burned. Bajikta are like, well, we got to push this. Sivir finally makes it back. And... The only other thing is Elrami is not here and doesn't have ulti available to help with this defense. Look for a turnabout play. Yep. No teleports in for potential flank either. Giyu is chunked. He has, to re he has to walk back to base, sadly, and come back. Exhaust up for Bong from that spell book. See if he can land it on a crucial target. Jigda's still splitting the map nicely at the moment. I mean, look, GK are like trying to pivot towards bot, but Jigda's have just opened up mid. They're like, let's get the n more numbers advantage here. The charm is going to connect, but it's onto a tank. There's a Scion though. It's a perfect ult, but again, far away from everyone else. The Empress Divide is used on a single target though, which might be great, but he jumps on in to his oh death. No, Kiori Zeri just electrocutes everybody. Fork in the power point and you're gone. GK are running for their lives after being exploded, electrocuted, zapped and hit with carpet burn. Bong tries to save it, but Kaori says no. He pulls the trigger, zaps everyone after all the threats are down. And it looks like it's all she wrote for this game. Triple super in minions in every single lane. Incredibly hard to deal with. And with his six clubs, they, they, could, they could push for the end. But it's Civil Wave Clear. Civil Wave Clear. Teleport, never mind. Yoink. Civil Wave Clear is absolutely snapped away. There's good damage coming through. And even with this uh, push coming through, Bajikdas can't get past Leo for now. The charm not connecting, out of range with the slingshot. And they're safe for at least one part of this day. But it still feels like Bajikdas are going to take this game, I mean. Yeah, six super minions every single every single 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, even. Yep. That's going to be rough to deal with. Now, you have a ricochet. You have a lot of wave I mean, Sivir is four items. Four items severe. The problem is their single target burst is so low because Ori isn't that fed. He's picked True. up assists across the board. They really need severe to pump out damage, but every single fight, he feels outranged versus the Azir, so he can't get any uptime. And then he's also dealing with a bunch of dive from the sack. So, Kaori is crazy. Navigating that. Yeah, he really like, is. I mean, again, another play just running in and uh, ulting in front of everyone. Uh, it's just going to be severe running across the map. Now, this will accelerate him six items if they can hold on. In the long run, if they manage to survive the siege, he will be accelerated six items before the Zeri. Yep. But this is probably not going to happen, and they're probably going to lose probably. on the siege. Keyword, probably. Probably. They have a lot of wave clear. This could be a uh, smolder angle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> You know, you'd be in moments like this where, yeah. like, you're so far behind, you're in your base, you got a Nexus turret standing, nothing else. Yeah. Now, Smolder still wins the game. Now, the question is, does Pasixa say, all right, we'll use this super minions to secure Dragon and then stall out the game and not use the pressure? Great but question. Doesn't look like they're going to. There's pings on the base. I think they just run it down with this, these minions. I think it's too easy. They've got six rubs. They can just hit the towers. It's so satisfying now, though, being a Sivir. It really you is. You have so much mana. You've this is got what you live for. Navori quick blade, so you got a boomerang, you know, every time it comes back. And GK with one Nexus turret. That's enough, isn't it? That's enough. Do you believe? I mean, a Turkish number two seed oh, needs no. his win desperately. Oh, no. they're, they're layering the waves so the Civic can run to each lane and clear them. They're not stacking them and True. slow pushing. So, <laughs> it's Civic can just press W on them. Oh, no. Now top will come in completely mismatched. Oh, God. oh, no, I can see what's going to happen here. Unless there's some crazy engage from Persictus. I mean, 30 seconds till Baron. Baron stops it, right? Oh, whiff from Elvermere. Baron, Baron does make it hard you to defend even with cannot, individual waves or not. You cannot defend Baron six super minions. I'll die on this hill. But they have to still be timed up with Baron or not? They for sure have to be. But okay. if you do time them up, it's GG. It's absolutely okay. GG. They're unkillable. Well, at least they got bonus stats from the Infernal that goes down. So nice from Mirror to take in the meantime. Baron... Sitting there, and remember, you've got Zeri, you've got Aphelios too, so Baron can go down very quickly. They only need the Zeri that's now full build anyway. You're scratching your head because you're like, you see it, don't you? I do see it. You do I, see it. I see I see the super minions eventually expiring. I mean, I'm sure we only have like a couple minutes at best. Dude, he's going to have six items. He's going to sell the boots. This is, this is going to be a very small window now where they have super minions plus Baron, and they have to use it. Just stack the six supers walk into the base and hit the tower. There is nothing they can do. Oh, look how tanky they are. Mm. Not as tanky as I'd like. No, still <laughs> get cleared. Wave still there, teleport coming in. Well, there goes the Celestial Opposition. That's what he sells boots, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, six items for every single carry. 
It's gonna be off the back of Leo. If he can make it work. Also, that's a ricochet. Look at the damage. He didn't even defend hit his that It's annoying. Inhibitor number one goes down. Other two haven't respawned for now. There's a redemption to keep them in the fight as well. Finally, waves are coming in together. Top side, the, the only ricochets. exception, but there's enough. They get the engage on the back end as well. The engage, perfect. Leo alive, but he's jumped oh, on. It's, on. it's perfect. Now that Hoon sets it up to knock him down, Vajikdash are not going to the ground today. They're going to move us to a tiebreaker. And for GK, as they get sent backwards, they could not pull off the miracle defense. Vajikdash will not go silently into that quiet night. And just when you think it's over, just when you think he's going to be able to hold it with the super minions and the wave turn, the bouncing boomerangs, it's not enough. They just run it down. They outrange coming out from the Azir. They do. And the engage is coming out from Hoon. It's too much. Bong. Bong and Hoon. What Bong a legendary Hoon. matchup. Absolute legend. I'm a big fan of that game. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that so fun. Oh, but I don't like lane swaps. That's what you <laughs> I said. don't like lane swaps, but the way the top lane is played is I mean, that's right. That's yeah. right. You'll, you'll learn to love them again. Oh, well. um, both any carries. I mean, Mega Scaling, Kairi gets MVP, I think. Kairi, Fong I probably gets so, MVP, yeah. even though he lost. They played around him better and got him a bunch more income. I think he had the turrets um, before the Civited. So he had first item before the Civited. And True. then he pulled the trigger and got off of the back of his plays. Well, tiebreaker, three-way tiebreaker. What do you think about that? Chaos. Please. I love it. Welcome to the tiebreaker. We have three teams tied up in one of the groups. But before we move into that topic, we need to understand how we finished day two. At least the normal games. You ready? Nine. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We have more <laughs> League of Legends. I love it. I know you guys probably at home are tired. Nah, let's move on with this one. Let's go. Because every single group is wrapped up. Except this one. We have a tiebreaker of three teams and we'll have at least two games. Not at least. We'll have just we have two, two games, games. Yeah. to yeah. decide. Yeah. Yeah. There's no uh, points. This is it. <laughs> Only <over>. two games. <laughs> Calm down. It will be a best of... No, I'm kidding. It's a best of one. <laughs> it's done and done. Just to scare up, uh, Aragon and uh, Aesthetics is uh, having some issues getting his shoes back on. As you, get older, you have to give that info up, you know? Because <laughs> as you get older, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're going we're gonna to just pause right there. What is it about getting older specifically for you that makes it harder to get your shoes on, Ash? Hit me with the groups. I want to see the groups. <laughs> I want to see how we wrap that today. It's so wrong. <laughs> how has it gone this far wrong? There you go. Okay. So forget group A. We don't talk about it right now. Okay. We go into group B, which means SK went first, and then we get KC in second. Never mind. <laughs> that was fast. That was fast. How are we feeling? Pretty good. <laughs> no, regarding this situation, obviously, looking into the group A because we have the opportunity yep. to do it right now is the fact that we have a three-way tie. And due to time of the game, how fast they were capable of finishing the game, this is how we're going to do it. So it's going to be GK versus Heretics. Heretics? Yep. Oh, I just like that. And I'm kind of Spanish. So Heretics. And to decide who's going to be fighting versus Besiktas. To qualify. There you go. Yeah. On group A, we have a tiebreaker between Heretics, GK, to see who's going to move on at least for the second and sec uh, second place. And then Besiktas will fight off whoever comes from that one for first place or second place. So Besiktas is already qualified. We don't yeah. know if it's first place or second place. Hit me. Yeah, that's exactly it. The important thing you've got to know here is Besiktas are through. They are already going to be part of the top. Good. Who is joining them? That yes. is off timers. That's just the way that's worked. What this does mean have is GK who started the day 3-0 and and actually wow. had a pretty tight game there in the end of it as well are actually in a position where they could still end up locked out of playoffs if they fail this game. And this is up against Heretics, right? Who are supposed to be the team to go 3-0 and in the first place and have been on an absolute tear today. It could get very spicy indeed. But at least it's only one game that I need to win right now, right? Yes, because the yes. second game wouldn't matter that much in terms of who's getting out of the groups. It's only about this, who Seating. gets the first mm -hmm. place and the second yeah. place, yes. So Group B, it's uh, SK Prime coming in with uh, Carmine Corp yep. Blue for the first mm -hmm. and the second one. BDSA will be joined by Nigma, And to wrap it up on Group D, it's going to be Spendau and say it out loud. Orbit Anonimo, the pride of Poland. <laughs> she was so happy in the green yes, room. She had. It was, was like, there was just this stream of like yeah. Polish words. I'm not sure I can say them on broadcast, but yeah. she was very happy. At one point, I thought like it was Lord of the Rings communicating. <laughs> I, I was so confused. It's, it was beautiful, okay? 
I'm just saying this because I, I want to survive this night. <laughs> uh, regarding the tiebreaker, we're going to have any sort of uh, uh, predictions we might have between <sighs> both Ooh, of you. It's a tough one. It's a very tough one to predict, honestly. Yes. You know what? Let's make a bet. Go on. Again. <laughs> who do you think is going to win? Salari. Uh, do we talk but about who's English. going to be the first? Yeah, in English. Yeah, no, yeah. Not only one time in Poland. Yeah, okay, fine. English. Fact English. So who's going to take the first place only? No. I no. confused him. I, I'm game. sorry. Who's winning the through. first tiebreaker? Who's the going to first tiebreaker. Ooh, the first tiebreaker. You know what? The first one we have between GK and Lost Heretics, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Ah, tough one. I would say, I want to say Lost Heretics, but I feel like my heart is going towards GK Esports because GK, they have been okay. so consistent yesterday. Makes sense? Yeah. The thing is, like, in some ways, I would agree with you. I think they have played the best League of Legends. I'm still going to say Heretics. And the reason is GK just lost two very important games back to back mm -hmm. and have gone from being nearly guaranteed out of the groups to maybe not even making it. This is their, this is like a really significant one to be in. The rest of the region is doing really well. Mentally, that's not great. And also, they're going to be playing back to back. Heretics have had a bit yeah. of a break. They're on a tear. They've gone 3 0 today. They've done the absolute opposite. And I think they're in a really good space to go forward. And yes, Obviously, I don't think their games they were precisely clean. The last game with the owner subbing in to play the Zillion for 0 10, and it all got a bit weird and messy, but they still won. They're still on that tear. And that, for me, gives Heretics an edge in a match where I sometimes feel like mechanics are going to be less valuable than mental mm -hmm. fortitude. Yeah, we reach a point in the day where you have to give it all and you just use it all. Mentally, you must be exhausted in playing League of Legends nonstop. It's a bit different from playing solo queue eight hours nonstop. Guys. Very Let's different. be honest. It's a quite different because you have lane swap, you have to adapt to the micro, to the macro, and to the fact that you might just lost the opportunity to showcase yourself to the best teams in Europe or even the world. <laughs> you know, a small thing. So on that note, you believe that is going to be GK, GK and yes. then Heretics. Yeah. And at the end of the day. GK will be blue side. I just received that information. Okay. And at the end of the day, between Besiktas and whoever goes through, tell me who's going to win. I'll give you first because, yeah, initialize. I think if GK go through, it's GK. If okay. Heretics go through, it's Heretics. Because I think Heretics oh. at that point are going to be on four in a row, ridiculous form. Surprise me, somebody. I say if GK go through, it's GK. Mm -hmm. But if Heretics go through, I say it's Besiktas. Ooh. So it's split on the desk. Yeah. And to wrap it all, before we toss it to a break and we go into that game, I will allow, announce you that whoever wins, I'll pay your lunch. I, I'm down with that. Oh, that yes. sounds great. Yeah. Do we have to get both right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 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 My wallet was concerned for a second. Back at home, I want to get your predictions on chat. So I know moderators are really exhausted. So please spam the chat. With who do you yeah, think you is going to win? There, boys Come and girls. On, let's go. <laughs> get ready for more League of Legends. But before that, let's toss it to a break before we drop into the first tiebreaker of the night. Let's go! Let's go! Oh! League of Legends! Woo -hoo -hoo!
It's dark. You have two bright tiebreakers to go, and I can't see the screen. The night it. is dark and full of tiebreakers. So it is. That's two very different like media <laughs> references. Right? Blues Brothers and Game of Thrones. That's not a collaboration I was expecting. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Initialized Asalari. We're switching in, giving the other cast a bit of a break briefly because we have got ourselves two very, very important games here to go for Emir Masters here in the spring of 2024, namely. We are going to see who will be matching up against Besiktas and getting out of Group A. GK, having started the day 3-0, and falling to 4-2. and Heretic starting 1-2 and on a tear, going 3-0. and Now on the possibility of maybe looking at a 5-0 and day if they can run that entire gauntlet. Much improved indeed. Band's already in. Draven, Callista, Rel on the other side, getting rid of Giyu's Aurelian Soul, getting rid of the Viking, rid of the Senna. Very good bounce overall, especially happy with the really in Soul Band because we already had one Pentakill today. We would not be able to stand another one, you know? And a very good first pick from the GK side as well. Cyan just preparing for a potential lane swap and look at what Heralos Heretics are playing with the Jinx. Most likely going to be locked in with the support that is going to be a spicy map again. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I think if they don't lock in something like the Lulu here, we might well just see Leo go for the or Leo go for the Aphelios Lulu combo where yes. you get the Lulu, you've got the Aphelios, you just shred towers, you know what signs like in the lane swaps. And in fairness to GK, they tried it the last game and Bong actually pulled off some shenanigans, oh, shall yes. we that say. Oh, some crazy and, and moves. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was a close game in a lot of ways, but eventually carried on that on the Zeri getting the first item first snowballing from where they were at did a very very good job and actually carlson was pretty happy to take the zack into that lane top and yes the early dives were sucky but yes. the later game utility is always so useful on that Zach. But that's how Zach works on the lane swaps, right? You know he's going to suffer. You know, most likely there's going to be a situation where he's going to be dealt for three times in a row or something of that yeah, sort. But think. then the utility that he brings in is absolutely unmatched. But look at that, you were correct. Affiliates on moments. the side of GK. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, in fairness, at this point, the thing is, once you see that sound first, but you kind of have an idea about what's happening in the bot lane. It's yes. nearly a guarantee on what's locked, but that means we've got to see what Whiten likely wants to play alongside the Jinx. Could might be look at something like the Rakan. Yeah. I think that is not exactly a surprise. It's less lane dominant, but roams better. And when you've got the lane swap and map movements are a little bit murky, shall we say? Murky. I can see the value. That's that's not the word I would use, but it's a good word. It, it, it's a good word. What word have you? What word would you that you have used if I could, you know, finish a sentence in straight order? I would rather not elaborate on that. <laughs> what, my God! What word did you kick off? Like just coming through, it's like I'm going to start something seriously evil here on broadcast. <laughs> anyway, second, second. 
fucking face back. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jarvan off the table here from away from Elramir, who of course does like those go button champions, those early aggressive options. So things like that. Maybe the volley bear band might come on through. Xerxes having that rumble band away from him. Again, we're assuming that with the Rakan and the Zack locked in, unless it's Zack jungle, which is genuinely fallen out of meta, which is yes. wild considering <laughs> how many years he spent in the jungle. Uh, but hey, League champions and finding new roles. It's not exactly a surprise. Um, last ban here. What are you kind of expecting? Uh, I like the Ari ban coming in from Los Heritage yep. as the last ban. Um, I would expect something. Honestly, that is a good question. I think something jungle oriented still has to go from GK, right? Because right Maybe. now the problem, yeah. the, the biggest problem they have is Aphelius, who can do rather short range, especially going into a drink. So they need some more protection for him. I wonder whether we might see an Azir ban instead. They've gone towards the Ori and Infense. You've got very two close. very good ball carriers in the Zac and the and the Rakan. So I can see the, the thought there. But then the Judgment just become an Azir. Sertus loves that champion. Yeah. There it is. Okay, Giyu will put so much time into your control mages. The Aurelian Sol is off the table, but Talia is in. Has got ways to try and maybe join a side lane and make things pretty difficult. Can manage some of the attacks with the Leandris Oh, Poppy That is so got good. Through. Of course it did. Elramir's Poppy is a legendary thing. Yes. It's full build at level three and a red buff. You know how that works. <laughs> exactly. And this is so good into Rokan and into Zack, right? Everything that they want to be doing is engaging onto the enemies, trying to get to the back lane from this very yeah. first initial engage. And Poppy effectively just stops them on place. And if it's needed, if somebody gets too close and too personal with the back lane, she just drops them all the way across the whole map. Answer here, though, is going to be the Trundle to try and mitigate oh. some of the tankiness. And in fairness, Poppy, Scion, don't have a great time into that. Aphelios, yes. of course, as well. No real way over the pillar. There's no Lantern or anything to save him. And reminder, when Xerxes was kind of like one of the premier EU junglers in the LEC, that was the era of Trundle jungle. You know, the likes of Yankos and Xerxes, like tearing people apart on that champion. He has got so many games on there. It's certainly something he's comfortable with. And I think if you can set up with things like the pillar, to make Aphelios sweat a bit, try and follow that with a Rakan and a Zac. I can see that being pretty difficult to manage. And you spoke about Poppy pretty much popping off on level three in the buff, right? They think the Trundle in the jungle, he's impossible to fight with in the early stages in the jungle. If you just meet him in the jungle or if he goes to a gank, what do you even do with him? Because he has what, some of the biggest damage numbers when it comes to the early game. He's, especially if he can get in range and start brawling with you, right? So and again, yeah. you've got the Scion, you've got potential ability to pillar something like the Aphelios if you can fight the right angles for that. So could prove it pretty difficult to mitigate, obviously subjugate to try and deal with some of the tankiness. Yes. I still look at the other side and go, well, you know those dives you're trying to do again, or the fact that you've got this Rakan and the Zac trying to bounce around and Poppy's going to press W, still going to be really annoying to deal with. It's not just Poppy though, it's Poppy plus Talia. This is this combination that really worries me when it comes to what Lost Heretics want to be doing in those team fights because there is double insurance for GK Esports for what they can do with this initial engage. Yeah, that could be actually really important to keep our eyes on. Especially if you can then knock people away with the Keeper's Verdict and you're going to turn up faster theoretically there with the Weaver's Wall, uh, especially if teleports are down, you can then add in that Poppy whose ability to charge on forward with the road charge and make those dives happen. I can see that being difficult to manage for sure, but. The other thing we've got to call out again is it's two comps that are pretty happy with the lanes. So we're pretty happy to do it. Yeah. The Poppy and the Trundle, in some ways, the two seriously different elements to the draft, trying to answer each other. Everything else, you know, there's something of an equivalent there, even mm -hmm. if I'm looking at Lost Heretics and saying, well, look, you've got slightly more dive than on the other side. Yes, it, when it comes to the balance between the bot laners, what they want to be doing during the lanes and later on in the fights, when it comes to what the top laners want from their laning phases, yes, it's pretty much mirrored, but I feel like it is these slightly differentiating factors that are going to add the spice to this game. And to the level one setup we go. It should be no surprise to see where Leo on this Aphelios is going. Top lane already there, puts down no the ward. Carlson hanging around in that pixel brush at the top side river. On the other side, Jack Spectra, red side as ever, staying in the bot lane has been pretty common across this kind of resurgence of lane swapping. Great cry was held, felt, heard. I think heard. I went with some... I feel like they were felt the, 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 as well. I, I kind of went for a, a combination of felt and heard, and I don't think that was the, the correct option in this scenario. But <laughs> the point was, you know, this great cry of despair went up across the fandom to realize that we're going to have to deal with lane swaps again. As cool as they may be macro-wise, 
go back and watch the 2016 games and realize they were real slow, guys. Hey, at least today when you and I were casting, we didn't really get any lane swaps whatsoever. And now we're finally getting some. That's true enough. It's back again. It disappeared a little bit earlier on in the day. It's right back and working again as Carlson awesome. will face check a lot of people. You had to have an idea this was happening at the level one. May well be forced to flash before he even gets to something resembling a lane. The pings are immediately <laughs> on the bot lane wave from Jack Spectre, who will be throwing his rockets around and trying to make sure that shove comes in nice and early. As Decap just walks up and starts autoing and glitter lancing and getting Carlson down to half HP before a wave can even look to crash. He's going to try and reset and get out of there. We were talking about how we know that this Zack is going to get a bullet on the lane. The lane didn't even start and Phil Reddy's coming to get a bullet. Most unfortunate, going to have to go back to the lane, but going to lose a lot of wave. That was nearly a guarantee anyway. How many lane yeah. toppers actually get access? The uh, wave, especially poor yeah. old Zax. But even so, that's rougher than usual because he doesn't even get in range for XP, which is, is even more challenging. And of course, the fact that he was there in that lane and not helping Xerxes Leash means that Poppy already done with those first three camps can look to punish Carlson, who's turned back up again and gone, yeah, I probably, probably can't be <laughs> So I'm proxying on the bottle in the meantime. Jack Spectre is getting so much golden experience right now, right straight to his pockets because GK are really focused on the stop lane and not letting Carlson leave whatsoever. Uh, Bong just walked up the tower and got a demolish proc as well. So yeah. really trying to min-max the amount of damage they can do this turret. And importantly, isn't sticking around to share the plate either. Yeah. Problem is on the other side, I'm looking at Jack Spectre here who's claimed two plates, doing a super good job of that early on. Is it going to be again the five minute turret on the ball thing like we saw with Kalista yesterday? Oh, yeah. I mean, it feels yes. like it might well be, especially because Jinx... It didn't Jinx... end well, however. No, it didn't, but this is a bit of a different case, yeah, I guess, because this is... This is yeah, it's the Jinx, right, rather than the Kalista who had to deal with the Poppy that time around as well as Carlson finally gets oh, under the turret. Brother. I'm so sorry for Carlson right now, but that is what they have been prepared for. When they decided to pick this Zack, they knew what they were coming for. Bong gets under the turret, flashes to get there actually as well. <laughs> this is mad. Both top players having to pull out all the bells and whistles just to get access to a wave. It's misery down here. Xerxes level three is going to look at this side and go, oh, my son, you should not be here. <laughs> My goodness, there is even more proxying coming from Los Radix on the bolt lane right now. Are they going to dive him? They are! They're, of course they uh, are, there's nowhere to go. Ugly! This is just ugly, brother. Uh, there's a little bit, there's a demolish pot. was a demolish on Lulu as well, by the way. Carlson getting rooted, that'll be him down to cell division. Will likely be dropped down here as well. El Romeo will tank another turret shot. It's Leo that goes on forward, throws down a Dusk Wave and claims that kill. So one to one in terms of that, but it's important to know Heretic's got the first kill. And they're getting more plates currently down in the spot side. Oh, much more plates. It's going to be the first turret. They might even set a record for the Mia Masters this year, to it's be honest. It's a very fast turret. Yes. They, they're, they're calling for you, though. Look, they're going, they're going to tower dive again on this wave. It's a very small wave, but it's still something. They're, they're, they're roaming the Talira away. Bong knows what's up. It's just time to try and clear the wave as best you can. Actually, doing a fair amount of damage back on Zosi, who can't stand there. They'll uh -huh. have to eat away. They don't pull off the dive. The Soul Furnace, more than enough to hold it, didn't have the DPS to make this work, and this dive fails. Okay, the turret still stands, but it's 522 that I'm looking at at the timer. I really wonder if this turret is going to go down before that. It's it's a competition at this point. This wave is looking a little bit right. better for them to try to pull it off again for the third time. Okay. They're going to back away. Okay, yes. I, I appreciate the fact that if, if Bong had gone down, I think it probably would have been the turret. Yeah. It's not going to happen, though, and instead they're going to back away, but they've already got a first blood. Unfortunately, not on the Jinx, but yes. onto the Trundle. It would have been nice if they go into Jack, but still, four plates. Feeling pretty good about that. It's a full Berserk Screeve on first back. Oh, very nice first back for Jack Spectre. Going to come back to the lane now, feeling much <laughs> safer than before. But honestly, can you feel even safer than before? No, I, I don't think it's possible. That was a very nice lane for them. Anyway, I am digressing a little bit. What is the situation on the map right now? One to one, but yeah, I agree with you. I would love to see this kill on Jack Spectre, honestly. He needs this gold. And the fact that on the other side of the map, the kill went for Lear, means that he's feeling so much more confident because if you look at everything else apart from the turret plates, it is actually Aphelios who's feeling a little bit better. And the gold is even even between them. Yeah, he was, I think, up about 50 gold, something like that. It was saying yeah. 0.1 in the, the overlay. In fact, there it is again. So it's just slightly ahead. But it hasn't really led to a significant advantage between the AD carries, at yes. least. Um, there is a slight difference to the top lane, of course, where Paul <laughs> Carlson is down something like half away. But again, we haven't really seen the lane swaps, at least in the last couple games, truly lead to like 180 carry, absolutely yes. giga gapping the other straight away, which we have 
when lane swaps first started coming back again. But it's because there is finally an answer that the teams have found to the lane swaps. Before that, you could go lane swap and mm. be completely unpunished out of it because as top laners were not prepared, there was not any mirrored answer on the bot side of the map. But now that we finally have it, you lane swap, but the result is pretty much the same apart from, yes, your AD carry is not going to die. And that'll be a slight edge because, of course, Jack did get the um, first turret, so there's a slightly bigger gold lead there. And the other thing this does do is just funnel more gold early into the AD carries. Even if it's That's matched true. amounts, you are just getting way more plates at this point in the game than you would in a standard laning phase. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be a pretty big deal as well. It's actually, Elramir taken pretty low. We're going to pan away from that as Rakan did engage, but I don't think going to find too much more. Doesn't need to burn a flash or anything as it stands. And Certus hit with a Talia, who's starting the emote game early oh. alongside the thumbs up. You love to see it. Mental warfare. <laughs> Just a little bit, just to bring it even more fun to this game. I, I like your point, however, but the AD carry is getting faster to their gold because... Oh, wait for Ooh. it, Surtus! Feeling a little bit antsy having pe people throw those thumbs up. <laughs> he just does again. He knows what he's doing. That's fantastic stuff. That will be the flash down, importantly. <laughs> so it is still a win there for Surtus topside. Jack and White in with the supports running demolished now, because of course they are for the lane swaps. Just for get, the turrets, just to get the sweet, can. sweet program. This could get interesting, because Elramir is here. They're punishing this. Wait, Xerxes here as well. This is going to be a fight, nearly guaranteed. Teleport beginning to fly on through. Flash on forwards. Just try to get the damage in as Jack Spectre will flash. Ghost away. Wall coming on over. Trying to make this one out, but Polymorph now onto White, and he's not really got very far to go, but just not going to be able to make this one stick. Teleport burned. Decap flash, but on the other side, Jack having to burn both summoners. Very good reaction times from Jack Spectre because he stays alive and that is what is the most important. But I feel like this is an opening for GK to punish him really heavily for having to sacrifice both of uh, those summoner spells in this fight. Because yes, it didn't result in anything and GK did have to burn the teleport named little Talia, which is a very important TP to have considering we're going to enter the territory of wood groups in two minutes. Uh, however, yes, GK have to do something about it now. Uh, the one thing I'll say though is because Leo came to match, he's actually ended up missing a wave on the bot side, and there's still a couple of plates that went the way of Jack. So the gold leads actually slightly expended in favor of the Jinx, and because they didn't kill her, they've not managed to claim any of that call yes. back. They are going to want to capitalize on the fact those summoners are down to really make that play worthwhile, or it might just end up a bit hurting them in the long run. They didn't get that sweet, sweet 50 gold champion bounty overhead. Oh, such a shame. Beautiful. Game changer. I mean, I mean, it's the price of an Exus, right? That's pretty good value. Almost. It's 50 or 52? I think it's 50 gold, isn't it? Should be 50. Yeah. It's like, is it 52 gold for an Exus? When did this inflation hit Summoner's <laughs> Rift? When was, what was going on here? It's probably just me liking energy prices going on here? So I didn't need that. I played this game to escape from reality. Not that <laughs> that happened. Then I have bad news for you, bro. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Bong! Yes, what? just wait in the bush and clears the way. No. This man on Scion. There comes the rocket on the other side that goes wide. Carson has got Cell Division back, but I don't know for oh, how no. long. Oh, no. so I think we might be expecting a dive. Scion's going topside. It's going to be another bit of a brawl on both sides. Bong's Everyone clearing the wins. wave. Is he going to try and ultimate? No, he is not. There's an evil house being put down by Zerx, who for some reason I think he's Halloween in April. All the way he goes, Carlton, elastic slingshot, but I think there's a lackey band's about to snap in four and hit his forehead instead. Down towards the cell division, but unfortunately he didn't attend maths class and can't divide anymore. It's the game of who is going to bully the top laners more than the other team, right? The problem is the more you bully the top laners, the less money and value you actually get out of the bully so press. Strange. But I guess it's still the mentality, <laughs> right? I killed him again. I feel good. I learned that from solo queue. That has to work here too. What are they teaching you in solo queue these days? <laughs> I, I had you down as this wonderful, innocent human, then today you like threaten Archer him with like bodily violence. <laughs> you hiss at me like some feral cat on desk. Like what? What is going on, Slurry? Do you need to eat talk? My brother, if I tell you which division <laughs> they played last time, you would not believe it. Oh, whoa! <laughs> oh, right, we've got violence occurring no. on screen as well as off it. Big chunk with the decimating smash. And Bong will do what the Scion does when he dies, which is walk up and clear the wave best he can. Gets the cannon minion. It's a win. Yes! Oh, we no. Go. Look at the other side. Carlson, we've already granted two kills to Leo. He's about to claim a third. We'll make them kiss briefly. <laughs> but they didn't enjoy that very much, and instead he falls down. Matchmaking skills just not on point. <laughs> This is looking absolutely disgusting. Look at that, the inner turrets on the top lane and on the bot lane, right? Being close to destruction. It's oh, not even 11th Christian, minute it, in it's the game. Chakrams. It's Chakrams, and they're on the side of the map where there's less yes. resistance as anyway. They can yes. shove this they so will. aggressively. This is gone. Huge play from GK. Is this a base race? But GK are winning this base race then. Yeah, I mean, like, from, from a game state that felt like 
actually the AD carries were trading pretty well. It was Jack that got the first turret, was at the top side, got yes. a few more of those plates. They failed the pick on him. Suddenly, you're looking at an eight, and I fairly honest, it's three kills, got two turrets. Actually, the fact that Jack is still even in gold and slightly ahead is kind of bizarre, I mean, because he's got two kills of his own, so doing just fine. But both AD carries so heavily accelerated at this point in the game. But now with the bot lane open up so much, I would expect GK to at least try to go and pirate those dragon, especially considering that this is Lost Heretics who managed to claim the first dragon of the game. But now they are the ones taking the second one, and they are going to be just two dragons away from the soul. I don't know how quick this game is going to go because it's getting accelerated very quickly, but if we get to the soul, definitely Lost Heretics are now in a much better position to claw and claim it. Yeah, for sure. Um, that will be something to keep our eyes on. They have managed to get that additional element, of course. It has been three grubs to one so far for GK. If they claim these other two, they will get the five grubs. And so that will be something of an even objective trade. And you can see Decap and Leo are the ones body blocking any attempt at a contest. So that's the fourth, and this will shortly be the fifth. So there you have it. A relatively even trade of those neutral objectives across the map. Hughes getting out of there before <laughs> Surtis comes on down. Not the cleanest angle on the Weaver's Wall ever, but it doesn't really matter. Riding the wave gets you out to safety nonetheless. It does the job, so what does it matter how good of an angle it was in the end? He doesn't want to be fighting with Surges right now. Both of the mid laners are working to with their items, especially Surges, who is still not sitting on a complete item. He really needs this Nash or to finally feel like a champion. Thousand odd gold lead to GK, but uh, a lot of that's interestingly in the solo lane somehow. 700 gold lead to the Siren is zero oh with three goodness. versus the Zach. <laughs> it's not even because Bong has been doing fine, it's just no. because Carlson has been miserable oh. throughout this game. Well, I feel so bad for him. The thing is, it feels like in a lane swap meta, and you, you if you obviously in the green room, we've been talking with Eric Bogus and he's on the show and stuff, but like. His genuine hatred of lane swap matters because of what it does to the top lane yes. experience. Yeah. It's something to behold. You can sort of see why, because yeah. this Zack has got 60 odd CS, has died three times. It's just like, what do I do? <laughs> You, that, that's the thing, you don't do anything. At well, least you're still going to be useful later on because you're Zack and you cannot take it away from him. His survivability, his utility are going to be massive. The moment he builds Soundfire or anything of that sort, you just jump in and you still do damage. And we've seen already how much damage these items can bring. Worth noting here as well, Decap just picked up the Ardent Sensor first item as well, looking to really accelerate Leo's ability to do some damage. And on the other side, it's the Rakan, more of an engaged choice versus the Enchanter has gone towards the Locket somewhere to try and mitigate some of the damage. And Generally, we are seeing those first items largely completed, still waiting on the Archangel Staff of Gyu to be transformed into a Seraph's Embrace. That'll be a couple more waves or so before we get to that 360 stack mark and have that transformation complete. That is still in inventory. Otherwise, it's a relatively even affair here in the mid game. White in on the flank alongside Carlson as everyone's up in the mid lane. We've got Heralds just spawning. I wonder whether both teams are ready and willing to start our first 5v5. Heretics are ready and willing to, they just need to unleash Carlson. The problem is Poppy is still on the other side of the map and it is ready to go and stop them if they want to do something as Heretics need to be really careful about the timings they're going to choose for this fight and whether or not they're even going to choose this fight at all. Exactly what I'm saying there, it's not as simple as face checking, especially with the wards for Heretics largely being in their favor. Instead, it's just going to be a bit of an ARAM, a bit of a change in game state. We are Seven games deep today. This has uh, been a long, long day for all these teams. There's the MAGA Infernum Bomb there. The Moonlight Vigil comes on through. Bong goes forwards with that R. Gets chunked out. Not quite down. Subjugate though is still rolling. Carlson will throw out a stretching arm, but will not manage to get too much more. Managed to Elastic Slingshot his way to safety. No one dies, but a few ultimates pop. Giyu going Where away with going? the Weavers. We've got to find Carlson. He's going to have to try and escape here. Going to get out of the way of the seismic shove, but had to elastic slingshot into the enemy jungle to get there. Now, Heretic's looking to collapse themselves. A teleport coming on forwards. Giyu eats a grand entrance. Certain slides on forwards. Gets both solo laners. The knockup, though, and the wild gun keeps Giyu alive. Down to the cell division and down to Leo is that Zack. Now they're going to get the additional fight condensing. Surtis slowed down by a decimating smash. Elramir with the Keeper's Verdict. Flash, charge back into the seismic shove, into a dead Azir. Empire crumbling in front of his eyes. And the fight is over just like that, but that is a very good fight for GK in the end, especially since you finally got a kill. A kill and an assist to some additional money going into his pockets. And funny enough, I don't know how the stats have changed throughout this day, but going into it today, just looking at the statistics from the first day of the groups, Q was leading in terms of the KDA among all of the players that they we have right now in the EMA Masters. And he was leading massively, like the gap between him and everybody else is huge. 
I think he's died, unfortunately, a couple too many times today. That probably will have oh, died, died a little bit. We need to check in again on that, but two losses always hurts the KDA. We'll see how that's run. He was having a phenomenal tournament, is having a phenomenal tournament, but right here, everything's on the line. All well and good, saying you had a great tournament, but the problem is in a year or so. Hell, in six months or so. People who fell out in groups, not as many people remember you. It's the playoffs teams that people tend to keep in mind, whatever the complexities and the rest of the details that went into the group stage just not there in people's minds anymore towards the dragon instead we go heretics looking for that sole point they're looking to be remembered because you just pulled out a hollow statement and heretics definitely do not agree yeah. with you stepping forwards very bold indeed Oof. makes it work dragon started and heretics are the ones in the river first they were first river first the river last time as well and then we saw those mad little moves there's a Mega Blast going from Whiten. He can look for the Grand Entrance. Elramir winds up the Poppy Copter. Will not send it flying, though. Elramir chunked out a little lower. Bong looking for a flank angle. Is going to fight the Rikard, who Mega Blast cones towards him. Dragon down to 2,000 HP. The fight begins to commence. It's taken by the Jinx. Shuffle away. Trying to get some damage. Good use of the Moonlight Vigil. But it's already Scion down. Trying to get some more damage back. That's Whiten down. Flash forward from Leo, who's trying to make it like he's a true lion indeed. Xerxes getting hit with the Hammer Blow. The Buckler about to be picked up potentially throws down that Keeper's Verdict. Sorry, the Steadfast Presence. As I get my Poppy ability names mixed up, nonetheless, he falls and they lose three to claim Soul Point and GK. These 5v5s feel pretty in their favor so far. Yes, Heretics got the dragon, but they weren't able to get much out of it in return. Kiyo, again, he's the player that I keep looking at throughout the whole game because his knock-up in this team fight might have been one of those decisive things that changed the way of it. What was it? Three members knock-up at least, right? Ooh. Insane. I'm just looking at it now. Leo ends up now 6-0-2 oh. with a full infinity edge at 80 Ow. minutes. So talk about crashes. acceleration. Just, uh, and then he's got like a Lulu behind him with the Arden sensor. This Aphelios is going to absolutely melt whoever dares stand in front of him. Two and a half items, indeed. Oh, that is a very scary Aphelios. That is a very not scared Rakan. He should be able to just get away nicely out of it. Two items on Jinx, however, on the other side of the map as well. This is a Jinx that is really scary whenever she gets excited. And she did get excited in the previous fight, but yet again, this knockup didn't let her get too excited. Interestingly, he hasn't gone towards anything like the Rapid Fire Cannon, has gone towards the Hurricane, which to be core on Jinx and still kind of seen every now and then thinking with a number of melee champions a number of people potentially want to jump for her head you know the Talia jumping for his poppy Sion needs that additional ability with the rocks to hit as many people yes. as possible I guess and it's always the big fights right we're not seeing any smaller skirmishes anymore we're just starting going to the mid lane or to the big objectives all five members from both of the teams and yes I can see why the second item for Jinx is going to be so useful because you want to hit as many people as possible and there are as many people as possible trying to jump on top of you as well with that hurricane just so much wave clear with that mm -hmm. and the rockets trying to manage that one down to about a third hp they're gonna throw down the herald but between the pillar and the chomp is difficult to support it doesn't matter the herald charge is still just fine here goes charging on forwards but will not decide to take that one any further heroic though poppy may be very heroic, but she's just a small yodel with a very big hammer. He's yet. like a ridiculously big hammer, though. It is, but she's she's very strong, by the way, just going it around. Yeah, I, I, genuinely true. I think it might also be like a King Arthur sword in the stone scenario. It's like I yes, am the hero, exactly. That's and why as a result, carried, yeah. the size of this hammer is immaterial to the fact I'm just better than you. <laughs> <laughs> though probably more humble and heroic and less, you know, uh, cocky than I just. We don't made deserve her. We deserve you, but we don't deserve her. That was almost a compliment, and then I thought about it and went, no, no that was actually just act very mean, you know? Baron has spawned. I'm going to move away from the fact I was just trashed on air here in a tiebreaker game. Thank you, Solari. So glad to be casting with you. I love you too. Apparently you don't. We just went over this. <laughs> can I, can I, because I said Aragon, can I, can I get a replacement, please? What was this? Right now, Aragon, come just, in. Just, just, <laughs> the point probably listening to the green room. This way, he's going to turn up. Maybe Archer can feed me grapes too. You know, <laughs> isn't, isn't that like a play-by-play, -play, like 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 Privilege. perk at this point yes. of the game? Do I have to sign up for this? Did I not get the gold play-by-play -play membership? Is this what this is? <laughs> yeah, but you have to pay extra for oh, it. I see, and I you pay with your soul. I'm oh, sorry. Well, mm, there wasn't much to give, in fairness. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Not sure they'd be accepted. <laughs> Let's pipe it back into the game for yeah, a second. Moving away from the something. credit score of my soul. <laughs> that's, that's a very dour that's a thought. Very, yeah, that's a very depressing topic, to be honest. But 
You know who is not depressed right now about the state of the game. This is definitely GK because look at them, they are threatening this Baron. And I'm not talking about them figurative threat. No, this is a very mm. realistic threat coming in from them. Because yes, there are three dragons for heretics, so you might want to be piloting in towards the bot side of the map in a minute from now. That's when the fourth Drake of the game is going to spawn. But the soul is not that big, and it does feel like GK could have decided to prioritize Baron just because they can. They're so much stronger. EU's got the full completed item ahead. Uh, well, half yeah. he's got the completion ahead of Sertus right now, and that is the big point in item differences uh, as it stands. Actually, as well, Jack has got a third completed item on the uh, Jinx as well, despite the gold lead as it stands for Leo, because he's got the slightly cheaper build. So that could be pretty huge here in the expectation of a fight. You can't... Leo just doesn't have the completion cost quite yet for the Lord Doms. Heretics are saying, look, we have soul point. We can choose which objective we take. We're going to threaten Baron. If you take the dragon, we're happy to trade. El Ramir, on the wrong side of a pillar there as well. Well played by Xerxes. He forced the flash out of a poppy. Do you? What is that Talia doing on the body? Oh, look at the heretics. Wait, yeah, you're actually right. Heretics have to choose now. Do we go Baron and take it as quickly as possible? Or do we go stop Talia? Oh, Talia's not Talia's teleporting back. Got the wave shoved in, though. This could get very interesting indeed. Trying to play smoke and mirrors and dare people with a game of very deadly chicken indeed here in Amir Masters. Heretics gunning this Baron down to about half HP. Survival on the line, playoffs on the line. One final spot remaining and his Heretics on the Baron. Item with the what? Mega Blast code! Gets onto Leo, hasn't got the kill. The wall blocks off any response. Has to battle dance out to safety. The Moonlight Vigil lands. That gives the, uh, the Moonshot an option Bomb? with the Calibrum. Continue to do some damage. Bomb, take a note, not down. Baron secured by Poppy, by GK. They continue to charge on force heroically. Jack Spectre is down. He is a Spectre, a ghost, deceased, down in his grave. And Heretics, I think they might have met their match. They might have. Look at the state of the bolt lane. Do you remember that Talia on the bolt lane? Do you remember what oh, she was do. doing to the turret? Unspeakable things was she doing to it. And now it opens the way for GK with the Baron buff. They can go through this bolt lane so quick. The heretics are not allowed to leave their base anymore. I need to get the bat dragon to prevent soul. Heretics try to play the map wide. Unfortunately, they lose the gamble. They lose Baron. They lose the fight. They lose the dragon. And they are looking increasingly close to be losing this game. Arlos Heretics. It was a rough day one. We had a interview with White at the end of it. He was saying, like, look, we think we're going to 3-0 tomorrow. We are better than this. And they did 3-0. They're in the tiebreaker. <sighs> they got here, and it might just not have been enough. Maybe they needed that one additional point. It's not over yet, of course. This Jinx at three items could still be a threat, but moments like this, White in trying to find the flank angles, being forced oh. to run away. And it's just a solo kill from Giyu, this monster from Arabia who has finally had his showing on a stage like this and proven what the fans believed in him all those years out in the Arabian scene. Three, zero, and four. Two and a half thousand gold ahead of a player like Certis and potentially helping lead the team to a playoff berth here in Amiya Masters, recovering from a day that has just not been theirs. Nothing is finished yet, but it does look very desperate for Lost Heretics. And you have to admit it, even if you're a fan of the team right now, this is looking very dire. Look at the speed with which GK are cutting through their turrets. Not many turrets left on the side of Heretics, to be honest. The vault lane is almost open. The top lane is almost open right now as well. And now the Baron would mean that there is no way for Lost Heretics to get out of it. I'm going to interrupt a back, but it's not going to be someone valuable as yet. Wait, the moment I say that, they are going to continue mm -hmm. just stepping on forwards, contesting for vision. But they don't find someone being a little bit lazy with their backs. No, nobody's lazy. No, but nobody can afford to be lazy. Ah. Initialize. This is the tiebreaker. You want to be winning this one. Because if you win this one, yes, you have one more game to play. But at least you have a little bit of a breathing room because you know that you are getting out of the groups. Easier said than done, though, isn't it? True. On the other side, four loss heretics. The recovery was great, but it's also worth pointing out because Certis is a late addition to the roster. He hasn't been there the whole of the splits. Normally, it was Sparrow who went yes. up to the main team and joined the heretics' main roster. And it's Certis who's played, what, 10 games? Yes. I think is what I was hearing from Noah. That, that's it. And that's, that's a rough thing to do. For however talented a player Certis may be, it is difficult to come in and try to not only play well, but qualify towards a group that has been, frankly, way more stacked than I think a lot of people had down on paper and get out to a playoff berth. That is just that additional caveat that makes it so much harder to, to really make it work. And 
I don't want to use that as an excuse. I don't want to say that no. is the reason they lost, but it doesn't help. It it's does make not, things difficult. No, it's not an excuse, but it's an explanation, right? It is really hard because every single player individual is very skilled in the side of those higher ticks, and Sergius is definitely no exception there. But getting into the team that has already been playing for so long with another mid laner, it is just... Your mental capacity has to be really big to handle this one, especially going into the playoffs and then going into Emiya Masters and now trying to get into the very stuck group. A reminder of the words that I uh, got from Edward, the coach of GK, when I was asking about the team, saying, you know, what are you thinking your chances are? I said, look, we'll keep our heads down. And I think we can make it out of this group top one, too. And I mean, they can. They absolutely can. It was consistency for them. And they have been, on the whole, pretty consistent. Even in the losses, it felt like they had the game plan, even if it didn't work out. He just backs and buys a death cap. He is a full death cap ahead of Certus at this point. That is a rough rough place to be. What to even do with this at this point? 3-0 for is actually a 700 gold bounty they own ahead. If somebody manages to take a shutdown, it's going to be a massive one for Los Heretics. If they get down Dew and Leo, it's going to be a lot of goals for somebody on that team. Might just be the way for them to bounce back, but is this even ever going to be allowed to happen? Because GK are the ones who are leading this game right now, and they are the ones who are telling Los Heretics what to do. They've still got Jinx at three and a half items. They've still got some pretty scary flanking threats. If Whiten, who has been looking to find that Chemtech enhanced blast cone into a backline, if Ooh. Zach can flying and catch out particularly the Talia and the Athelic, preferably both at the same time, yes. if you get really lucky, you play like this. Oh, it's onto a Scion. It's just not who you really oh, need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dragon again in 50 seconds. Be happy to give that one up. They're going to recall, just not. Taking the bait as Bong smells something's up in the water there. <laughs> Something is a little bit fishy there on this top lane. It's like with Twitch and Pike, right? If you don't see that, the that enemies, most likely that, that, that was mad. Yeah, okay, right. I'm sorry. That was a really mad one. But this one is also mad. We are 27 minutes in the game, 28 entering right now. We are talking about a Baron in 44 seconds, the, four, the second, sorry, Baron of the game. And there is still not a soul claimed in this game. Heretics are just one dragon away, and this soul could have helped them out to get out of this desperate situation, but they are not allowed to get anywhere close to it. As it stands now, the full court press commences. The ward line is pretty intense. You can see all the control wards, all that swath of blue that just covers the map. They'll get all the waves shoved up. They'll take control of that blue side jungle. They'll move straight back towards Dragon's only the second of the game. Heretics, I think, pretty happy to give that one up. No point fighting it right now with the discrepancies they're under. It's a fourth item for Leo as well. So you would have been down so many of those important carry damage moments for your your Jinx, your Azir, who will still be threatening, will still be dangerous, but could just use that little bit more time. And now Heretics are at least trying to There's fight for Salvation in the top part of the map. I like it for them. They at least see something. They see it's something around the Baron. I wonder if they see enough considering the empowered Blast Coins they we have because of the map. But for Heretics, it is still the question of if we go to the Baron right now, we are teleports on the side of GK. And we already saw what happened during the previous Baron with you just going to the bolt and like there is no tomorrow and pushing into them. What if something like that happens again? Because GK are in a position where they can dictate something like that. A little bit of an attempt to bait the Baron there. Doesn't quite work out in the way GK were hoping. Back towards the mid lane we go. Cross Heretics here trying to garner what pressure they can. They've got a Sun Disc behind them, a replacement turret of sorts to keep things going. And that many walls to work with and a Weaver's Wall coming behind. Jack just about gets over it. An Elastic Slingshot as well. Gets Carlson out to safety as Giyu asks some questions and Jack Spectra answers with the Ghost. It's something for something, but it's still the prior around the Baron, heavily in control of GK. They don't have the vision in it, but they vision right now, they can go straight into it, wide in. Bong's been engaged, they'll have the subject down on them as well. The Keeper's Verdict knocks one away. It is in the end only the Trundle Bong, though, down to half HP, burns the Ghost, but he's got a spell book, so his summoner spell options are still pretty high. Now towards the Baron we go, my lord, it's disappearing under the DPS. But now Heretics can come over and try to contest Bong with the Teleport, might be looking to come back in here. Certus currently by his own inhibitor turret and GK decide, look, we don't actually take the flip. We don't feel like we've managed to get enough here to summon Certus and his teleport. It's a little bit too dangerous. They back off. A fight would be so nice for GK right now, but it also does feel like Los Heretics finally had some time to breathe throughout this game because they have been 
being pushed heavily into them. But now finally there was a time to farm up to get some more items into their pockets. Four items onto that Jinx, including the IE finally. It is a good fighter. Having a pretty decent front lane in front of her. The only thing that worries me is still only one item completed on Carlson. Then Zach, when Zach jumps in, he should be able to survive for at least some time. And you saw how much burst damage there is on the side of GK. I don't think it's going to be an option for Carlson. Bong sticking around to clear out this vision. He's currently semi-isolated, but they probably don't have the damage to deal with him, so he feels free enough to walk up and do that. He is, despite the early lane swap shenanigans that has put both top laners a little behind, in an okay position at this point, tank stat-wise. They have the insurance. They have so many insurances inside of GK, but they also have not the second item on Ludo, and that is their redemption. It heals ridiculous amounts right now. She just drops it in, and you could so even bonk in the previous fight when I need quite in decided to engage onto him. He healed up quite a lot. Why didn't speaking of, he's sitting in the fog of war constantly looking for an angle. He's been trying all game long. It looks like he's found or had found some good angles before, but just never really managed to get onto key targets. Even the last fight around the Baron when he gets on to Leo, the Weaver's Wall splitting off absolutely everyone else from Heretics, preventing any follow-up despite the angle onto the Aphelios. Pretty rough, but Giyu might be in the wrong end here. He's about to get jumped on. Shoved oh. off the wall. It's a wipeout for the surfer. Talia is down. 700 gold. The first of the two finally claimed. And he's a very good claim because he goes into the pockets of Surges, into the pockets of the Azir. He would like to get additional items on what he already has to be coming in. Do they want to try and force the Baron? 40 seconds on Giyu. This could be a 4v5 and a key moment because that was a lot of the gold lead. That was two and a half thousand gold that GK had over their opponents towards the mid lane. We go, big engage! Elmir knocks one away though. That was Jack trying to play his way out. Get so much damage. Heretic suddenly beginning to fire on all cylinders. Double shutdown, double shutdown for Surtis. This is the 1,400 gold in his Surely pocket. Not. Not and like now this. this is the turret additional gold. They go towards Baron. That was an over 7,000 gold lead. And suddenly in a matter of moments, two huge shutdowns going to two huge Karatek carries four lost heretics and they've got a baron to their name as well the gold it means not a jot they're right back to even oh now we're talking this is lost heretics who looked so done during the previous baron but now baron number two is completely changing the tides of the summoners if gk right now are the ones who need to be looking for some things to do not just because they can but because they have to one play from Sertus to claim the Talia, and suddenly you get a 4v5, and they pounce. Heretics looked down, they looked out, they could not win a fight. And somehow they managed to hold on long enough to get the items, to get the shutdowns, to get a Baron. Now it all looks so very winnable again. And so, look at that, there is a dragon coming up, five soul. seconds, and it's going to be a very nice soul for those Heretics. Got themselves a Zach, who doesn't mind playing at that low HP. Trundle's not so bad there either. Elramir doesn't have a Keeper's Verdict yet to work with, but does have a Blast Cone. Does he want to go in there and potentially trade his life for this? The Chompers go over the wall. Prevent too easy an ingress into the pit. Soul secure for Lost Heretics as well. It's just a mirror of the earlier moment around Baron where GK got Baron, Dragon in the fight. Well, Heretics can do that just as well. It took them an additional 10 minutes. And now this is GK who desperately needs some time. Now this is GK who need more items going into the main carries to you. Right now he's completing Crypto Bloom, but now this is all on the hands of Leo. Leo Whee. is being sent to the sidelines. Yeah, it's a little wee. Is it going? No, it's going a little bit too wide. Stop the recall. Looking for that oh, flank there briefly. Yeah. I got a bit nervous. Jack, though, alone with a tier two turret. And that date goes uh, very Jinx favored. Mm -hmm. Structural damage secured, 700 gold, and Elramir backing away from the grand entrance with a very swift, uh, steadfast presence. Tier 2 in mid lane, next to fall, they just disappear at this point, and Jinx once again excited. Very excited, look at that, the Terry goes down and she wants Four. to get a little bit more gear. Gonna get people over, that puts people in a different position, Jack may be forced to flash, uh, Bong goes ulting in, that's two people knocked away, Jack flashing away as well, double summoners off the Jinx could be huge. Jack Spectra doesn't want to be the one caught out because now he is the one with a massive champion gold bounty on his 650 gold for somebody could get some help out back into the game for GK, especially for Leo. Leo just needs one more item to complete and to be full build. And then the damage from this Aphelios, especially from the Moonlight Vigil, is going to be massive. This game, it was over. GK it had was. it in their hands and a moment of lapsed safety in a side lane, Giyu falls in the 4v5 afterwards, costs them so, so much. 
The items are pretty much at parity. Jinx is even ahead at this point. It's got a Bloodthirster oh. full build for this Jinx in the latest of late games. Quite an Elder Dragon. That'll be in about four minutes. And maybe I should save that statement for them. But still, the Baron about to end. And we'll take a breath. We'll hold our nerve as the teams will be trying to do the same because I think it might be going to an Elder Flip. <laughs> Quite possibly, but you gotta remember that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, and it already <laughs> hurt GK once in this game. Could hurt somebody else, maybe Lost Heretics, maybe GK again, but I would love to see both of them looking towards this Elder Drake, because everybody pretty much, or at least the main carries of both teams, are going to be sitting on their full builds. Finally, Leo right now is completing the Guardian Angel, which means both of the AD carries are fully built and very ready to fight each other. Team Blue Buff about to be secured by Lost Heretics. They've got Chemsol. They've got a nominal gold lead now, even. How much does it matter? How much will they be able to find as this game goes on? The turrets are even. The gold is good as even. Well, there's only one, only one spot remaining in playoffs in Group A. Looked like it was GK's. Been over that one already. Heretics, however, have refused to give it up. And now they are the ones who are shoving them. They are the ones who feel like the momentum has swung in their favor. They want to be remembered, and they want to be loud about their presence in the EMEA Masters. That's why they desperately need to win this game. However, the same can be said about GK Arabian League. So new, so fresh still in the EMEA Masters, and this team definitely wants to make a presence out of it. 2022, it was Heretics, before they moved the LEC, that won EMEA Masters. It was Jack Spectra championing that team at the time here. Looking to try and do it again. They had such an amazing split in the LVP. We're hearing from so many people how good they were, and they had a rough day one in groups, and today it's been absolute slog, a uh, crawl across broken glass to make it to this point, but they have made it here. The gauntlet has been run. One final hurdle remains between them and at least the next stage of the tournament. But still, you win this game, you breathe in, breathe out a little bit, you still have one <laughs> yeah, no. more to play, but the stakes are a little bit lower. There is not as much weight on your shoulders as it is in this game, because right now it is do or die for both of these teams. You yeah. win, you lose, you go home, you win, you go further. Still a little bit less on the Severum for Leo. Switching that one out will likely be the Gravitum to match up with the Inferno and the big Wombo combo. Gunsky, you going forward though, maybe looking for the three weapon combo will be Leo with the Severum combo into the Inferno. Gets a bit of a knock up into Cal into Carlson, who's pulled back a knock away. This might be a moment, but Whited looking for the quickness angle. Kiyu goes golden. Whited dead. Redemption coming on through. There's Severum crescendum now for Leo, who's going to step on force. A double kill for him, holding on to his things as best he can. Massive moment for GK, a fight going their way again. The pure itemization healing on the side of GK is absolutely massive in this fight. The redemption paired up with the creep to bloop. The moment you get one killer assist in this game as, as Talia right now, there is a massive reset coming for the rest of the team that allows them to still stay on the map after the fight is over and do something. For example, prepare for the next Baron that is coming up in just a couple of seconds. Forgive me, my knowledge on Anfelios three weapon combos is a little bit slim, but I think that was a dusk wave into using that to get loads of chakrams for Severum Crescendum for absolutely mad DPS uptime. Let's go back and look at that clip. Either way, it was pretty cool. Slightly yes. awkward <laughs> weapon rotations at this point. I'll be wanting to get rid of the chakrams to get towards the Infernum again at some point. Either way, slightly weird weapon rotations on Anfelios, notwithstanding the Baron is theirs. The gold lead is once again theirs. 30 seconds. 30 seconds until the Elder Dragon has a sell of an item for Jack as well. He's gotten rid of, has he gotten rid of I, uh, something to get rid of the Blade of the Ruin King in here? Not even sure. Kraken Slayer, he's got rid of the Kraken Slayer. Yes, Called right. the Blade of the Ruin King, took me a second to figure that one out. Heretics teleporting in, Heretics with control over this bot side river. They have the vision, there is no vision whatsoever available for GK, so they're going to step into complete full of This is very risky, but you has the, the ultimate available, so I believe there's going to be another Weaver's Wall, just to make sure they do it and get the pull of what they just did so successfully. Well, now with Chakram, Sasao, and Calibrum trying to make some things happen. There's the rocket coming on through, Redemption comes down to heal people back up. Giyu, chunked a little low though, does not have the teleport, may still look to reset with the empowered recall and Weaver's Wall back in. Always a little easier for the Talia to rejoin. Instead, Weaver's Walls now. There's still another Blast Cone. Certs can still rejoin despite the wall trying to split the team apart. Elder Dragon started by Heretics. It is started, but how long is it going to stand for? There's some vision for Jiken. They're still around. They still have the ultimates available. No! The Moonlight Vigil comes flying across. It's Leo now with Chakrams to, to burn. 
Chakrams to try and break the backs of Heretics. Down to half HP. Hold your nerve, everyone at home. Hold your nerve. GK Heretics, the one who blinks first, is the one that loses. One final spot remains. One final fight in this game. Pillar comes on down, 6,000 HP. It's getting so close. Elramir taken low. Surtis trying to continue trading. Decimating Smash, not what they're hoping for. They are still on touch, still trying to do some damage. Q looking for an angle over the wall with a thread. It volleys. Damage is high. It's two down. Elder Dragon taken by Athelios. Elder Dragon secured by Leo. A quadra kill. A penta denied. But GK will be going forwards in the tournaments. The Arabian League gets two teams into playoffs. They clutched it! Both of them clutched it, but GK just did it so massively. The way is open to them, and there is a light in the end of this way, and this is at least the second place out of these groups, maybe even the first one. We don't know about this yet. There is still a second tiebreaker, but this one is one! It's not 22, Summer. It is not a final hurdle crossed. It is GK. It is the second seed from the Arabian League who right the wrongs of a tough, second day to make it to playoffs. What a story. Absolute madness. Absolute madness. I wouldn't have put it any better. That was such a chaotic game, such a back and forth, such a roller coaster with Jiggy being so strongly in the lead. And then just one overstep, just one misuse, and we see Lost Heretics marching all the way to the victory with a Baron in their pockets. But then again, it gets turned around in just one single fight. <sighs> And you have to give credit to Lost Heretics yes. for coming back in a way that I think we would both thought very challenging, shall we say, yes. at the least. But Certus shadowing that side lane, getting the initial pick on Talia, getting uh, the pick on the Aphelios just after in the 4v5, getting the Baron, that huge reversal of the snowball made this game interesting. But they can't complete the run they were doing today. They can't recover from the unfortunate day one. And that is sometimes the breaks bluntly of the tournament format of the fact that you have two days and two days alone back to back to make your presence known to make it through to further stage of the tournament and heretics this time around fall short gk though oh gk oh, what a GK. story they have done that is when we came into this tournament i don't think people really had a true read on what the strength of the Arabian League was. I think last year they came in and they were fine. They weren't super exciting. They weren't winning the tournament, but they were fine. They weren't an absolute washout. But this year, the strength of them in the play-ins, the fact that it was a second year here, year in the tournament, the, the, the growth we'd seen regionally, it was like, well, how are they stacking up? Well, there's your answer, guys. Pretty bloody well. Very bloody well. There is still, however, one more game ahead of them because we're going to go into the second tie break soon. And that is where Besiktas are going to be waiting. I did mispronounce that. Besiktas. Besiktas. Very close. Besiktas. Fingers crossed I've got because it right. I am we'll get, we'll get sorry, word otherwise, yes. I'm sure. <laughs> DM us on Twitter. We'll try our very best. Um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one, isn't it? Because oh, yes. we, we, we aren't going to have a, a desk at this point. We're going to try and keep this one as tight as we can to try and get through these tie breaks as close as we can because we'll see. It's a very long day for us, but for the players... This has been a very, very long couple of days indeed. And um, Besiktas are the team that threw GK down to this lower bracket that took them out of the potential for first place earlier in the day. It was a very close game, though, the last time we saw them with the yes. Siver and everything else. But this is, again, their comfort zone, right? It is not the first rodeo with the three tie tiebreaker that they're going into. I'll put this out there, though, that Besiktas in that tiebreaker did lose to Parapara Supermassive uh, in the finals. That is not something that is nice to bring out before the upcoming game, but yes, you're absolutely right, they but, did. But on the other side, you know, Parapara Supermassive kind of got rolled in their group. They, uh, I don't believe, made it out. On the other side here, I'm trying to remember now because I've not got my notes in front of me, and I'm like, I think that's what happened. My brain is a bit fried, but Besiktas have had the better tournament showing. They are the ones that turned up in the second day and caused enough of... Um, an upset in the standings to leave us here with another tiebreaker coming. Speaking of which, we are going to get to a very quick break. And when we come back, a final tiebreaker, a final tiebreaker to decide who is going to be first out of this group and who will be second. Go absolutely nowhere. Turkey versus Arabian League. Besiktas versus GK coming right up.
Welcome back for a final time to the group stage of Amir Masters Spring 2024. I am still initialized. This is still Solari. We are still here. Yes, despite everything. Yes, we've still got a tiebreaker to yes. go. We are eight games deep. It is a very long one. It's getting slightly unhinged over here in Paris, but we have got one final game to decide who is going to be first place out of Turkey and Arabian League second seeds. Who will be the first to leave Group A? I have badly phrased. Who will be first placed <laughs> out of Group A? Yes. I, I should have thought about how that, how that phrased yes. perhaps before, before we said it, but there we go. It's too late. Hopefully the, the meaning of my words was still convert, like tran, transmitted, transferred. I'm going to give up giving up now. You yeah, start yeah. talking. You know what, it's fine. We have two tiebreakers today, right? And we're just past one. Unfortunately, had to weave goodbye to Lost Heretics because they had a really good run throughout this EMEA Masters part of the group's stage, but not good enough compared to GK Esports, right? It is just so hard to beat them, it seems. Yeah, I think that's very true. I think they have been very consistent with their drafts, very consistent yes. with the playstyles they're looking for. And effectively, it's being, can we get Giyu, Giyu and Leo on scaling carries? Yeah and make the team fights work with or without the uh, presence of a lane swap. They're on red side this time around, Besiktas on blue. They did get side selection, bands of the volley bear away from Elramir. The Aphelios we just saw Leo pop off on alongside that Poppy. His primary early game options off the table. The Jinx, the Callista away. Zeri, first pick, response of the Rakan to Leah from GK. Yes, I love the Installia for you so much. He proved to us in the previous game just how good mechanically player he is, especially when given such a strong champion. I wonder what else they're going to throw into the mix because in the previous game for Jiki, the strength was in the very strong carries, but also in the fact that everybody else was built to protect these carries at all costs, and they did a really good job at it. Scion comes through into the blue two role. Maybe they can now look for the lane swap. Scion has certainly been the primary enabler of that. I wonder whether that forces Bong into a Zac over on that oh. third pick. We'll see whether they want to look for that. Nautilus has been an interesting champion this tournament. People have been very willing to break things like Braum into it, so I'm not sure the success rate of it has been as high as it has been other points of play still. 
very obvious go button, a very practiced go button for most support teams yes. around the world, so it will be locked in nonetheless. Yes, and it's already a very strong composition for Besiktas, right? They have a really strong carry, and again, two very chunky, bulky champions, because Zeri wants to have a lot of front lane before her to dance around, and she already has it. That is exactly it. The Zaya locked in alongside the Rakan. It's back to an old faithful pairing there. They've the got themselves birds. a lot of zone control between the feathers and the stones. <laughs> the easiest spaces to be walking across. Looking out of the bands here in the second phase. Interesting to see GK are the ones banning away the really solid. Of course, they've already locked in the Talia, so they won't be needing to pick it unless they were doing some shenanigans, throwing it into the jungle, which has generally fallen away from concern. On the other side, Trundle being banned by Besiktas. By themselves, that is an interesting switch of toes, but okay, for GK, definitely it is very important to make sure that the mid lane is as protected as possible to take away some very Zach. strong picks from Maru. But yes, here is Zack finally coming through the bands, which means this answer for the top lane for GK is not available. Is it going to be something of the likes of Aatrox, I want? Might not be a bad option. The other thing is you yeah. have strictly got counter pick here and could give it to the jungle, but of course you already know what top lane you're likely playing in the Scion. So you would expect something for Pong here. The question is, what is he comfortable to do considering there is absolutely the possibility of that lane swap? A Shin Zhao picked up for El Ramir is one of those few remaining early aggressive junglers, but it also doubles up as a frontline, which I think yes. is pretty valuable this game. Yes, and he is a very good utility champion because in terms of his damage and his front lane ability, he does fall off a little bit later in the game, but his utility always stays with him. Baiting a Lee Sin here for Osman, one, two, three. Apparently, he'd like the one part of that name if he can come out of groups in first. I think he might just rename to that one oh. instead. They look towards a Corky. The other two mega scaling AP threats in mid lane are off the table. Well, why not go towards that third option of the Corky? Sorry, Anna, notwithstanding, but I don't think she scales quite the same way as the Corky does. Yes, yes, yes. At least it's not Azir Corky. Yes, I just wanted to say, thank God, it's not Azir Corky. It's me. It's just, it's so boring to watch. Corky into Tully is going to be, I hope at least, much more interesting, especially considering the junglers we have added to the equation. Both Leeson and Xin Zhao can be really proactive around this melee and both have really strong mid jungle duos. I've also just like complete side note, just decaps hair. Wow, I, that is so yes. impressive. I wish I could get hair that big. That is actually very impressive. Yes. Um, bring it back to the game a little bit. I hope he has oh. a performance as big as his hair. That's probably the the, 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 the comparison we'll go for at this point. Last lock-in though here though, is that Orn. They have now got themselves great front to back, but that's true across both sides. Are we seeing another lane swap? You know what, we might. With this Orn locked in, we might. And there is an opening for that because Orn is one of those other champions they can stand really semi-comfortably against the lane swap. I think part of it as well is you, you can still be useful despite low resources. Yes. I mean, like, I was chatting with Aragon a bit about it, and his issue with um, Orn in lane swaps is you are going to be prevented from hitting your level 14, your level yeah. 13 mark by quite a significant margin because you've zoned off experience more than anything else. Yeah. And that's when the ornaments come on through. That's when a huge part of your kit's power comes on through, at least in terms of enhancing your team and yourself. Yes, and he will want to get, hit this mark as soon as possible. However, he still is going to be useful because he's paired up with Tully in this team combination. So we have two very good, very solid long-range engages already on the side of GK. That's very true. And I did the Shin Tao as well on the Rakan for the secondary yeah. engage. And access to the Zeri and the Corki is pretty high. The damage of the Zaya and Talir is pretty good. But if you get towards that mid to late stage, you are going to get at least outranged, right? Zeri's yes. ability to throw W's over wall, Corky Rockets is just generically obnoxious. I could see yeah. that proving quite difficult if they don't make the engage happen. And they need to make this engage happen earlier in those team fights. I would expect the team fights around the dragons, around the big objectives as early as possible. As early as they have at least some items for Isaiah. Ideally, the two item mark is where GK want to have this window for them, and that's what they want to be winning through. Eyes, I think, once again, have to turn towards the bot lane. Kaori. Yes. One out last time on the Zeri that got yeah. so fed. It was a first pick Zeri here in this game as well. He is a player that has had time at top level. He did get to go over to LCS, came back to the ERLs. You're looking at the other side, Leo, who was in that game, was on the Civis, still got a lot of goals, still got a lot of goals, was still a serious threat, but couldn't get it over the line. Has been one of the best performing AD carries here at the tournament so far. You have got to wonder which side of this coin this particular toss is going to land. 
That is a good question. But you know what they say? When you toss a coin, you already know deep in your mind where exactly it's going to land. And both of you, both of us made a bet during the desk. Oh, so we, we got to stay true to we'll those We'll find bets, out right? who gets that one right as we head on to the riff for our final game of the day. A last tiebreaker to decide them all. Other Lord of the Rings references, oh. I'm sure that I will be making as we go a little deeper into the game. Already, are you looking... For an early little look into the enemy jungle, everyone on Besiktas grouped up for a level one play. Oh, it's also spicy already. Not going into the lane for a lane swap. They're looking to go for the five-man invade. Not seen a huge amount of that this tournament. It's been more about those lane ward allocations than looks in like this. As this tournament has gone along, instead we'll see a little bit of a roam along. Bong might end up face checking oh, bong. some people. Oh, bong. Oh, bong. No, R.I.P. Bong. I think he might be in danger. No, no, don't walk back. No, You've no, gone no, away. No, no, Not no. like this. Elramir's coming as well. Oh my days! What is happening on the level one? Decimating smash knocked into the air. First it's a flash away, and the wing just oh, Shin, Shin Sao gets out to safety. Giyu being hit with the Gatling gun as well. Someone has blown. No one is dead, but Besiktas. Getting away with some serious damage at the level one. But that flash, that flash on that Xin Zhao is so important for Besiktas to get out of the enemy's jungle because right now Xin Zhao's possibility to go to the lanes and get some shenanigans down there is significantly reduced. Wong has an idea about what's going on. Maybe going to try and stand here and contest some Krugs perhaps. Has an idea about what's happening. There's a decimating smash. You're going to throw down a Q. I wonder whether he's going to try to steal the little Krug or something. Oh. Sadly against it for now. Just. Something, you know, anything. XP, uh, please, yes, something. Please, anything. I'm starving here on the top lane. Thank you, lane swaps. Please, sir, can I have at least one crug? <laughs> well, maybe, 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 I know it's a long day, but maybe Oliver Twist is a step too far. <laughs> That's very British of you. But, but well, well phrased, by the way. Now, no tease to be found. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Bong. You're Osman not playing today. Already ward hopping forwards, Bong. Just eating so many autos. Not quite dead. The grass proc, I think, probably keeping him alive in the mid lane, though. Miru having a flash! Oh, oh. Solo killed the Giyu! Two minutes in, not even a third minute in, and Giyu already secures the first kill. Jiki have so much individual performance in this team. And honestly, mid lane is still the lane that I'm going to be looking forward to the most. What a tournament this player has had. Oh, yes. I mean, this is a guy that the community loved for years. Never had the chance to really go to an international tournament and really show who he was out of a region that many people just didn't really know about. Didn't, in some ways, consider existed because they weren't attached to the global ecosystem yes. in the way that so many other regions were. They are finally part of Amir Masters and Giyu who had kind of fallen off the boil from what I'd be hearing, who had disappeared from the heights of his earlier career. Now turns up to Amir Masters, turns up having had a great split of his own, is now performing like this. What a research and what a time to show what he can be. Bot light, we go. Hoon at level two, about to be dived. Yes, quite possibly. There are three members. No flash steal for Xin but I don't think he is worrying about it. There's the grand engine to prevent the decimating splash. The igniter's down as well. Flashes away. Decimating splash interrupted again. Low Cogwell gets the kill and a level up to three. That's going to be the wave largely gone. They'll try and get the autos down regardless. El Ramir will audacious charge to set up Leo for the kill regardless. So it is secured. And there is nothing this zombie Cyan can do. Oh, he can get one hit onto Leo. And that actually hurt much more than I would have expected. But that is not She's the zombie that's going zombie. to clear out the wave. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, he has the reason to be angry. He is standing against lane swap. As a top laner, you have to feel oh, absolutely miserable. Oh. Yeah, Bong too. Oh. Flashes it to get the one yet. He's still level no. one. He doesn't even get any of them. They're going to surely no. give the kill over to Kauri. But he dies, though. Does get a kill back. But oh Kauri takes over God. damage. All gets a kill despite that. It's worth it. One CS, one kill. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. But listen, now every time that Kauri and Braxidea will try to go onto Bong and get a kill onto him, they're going to get more money money for him because now this is a valuable champion who has kills in the pockets. And a one million! And a one million! <laughs> okay, that matters too. The fact that the kill prevents it from being reduced, God. Exactly. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Back to the lane, teleports in, finally hits level two with more than one CS. So yes, still not as clean as they would have liked there from Besiktas who do get onto the ball, but it's still three to one of the kills. The solo kill, the kill both side, Bong getting one in the dive on the other side, Besiktas not. Making this as clean as they would like with the level one plan that seems so scripted, seems so ready. They were the ones who got to sit and watch the tape of the last game and come up with a plan to try and take GK apart. And 
So far, that's successful. We're back to standard lanes. Both bot lanes quite happy to be standing here and finding out against each other. Elramir on the dragon right now. Osman is in the area, though, so we might end up seeing something of a scuffle. Quite possibly, but Osman doesn't have any vision on the dragon just yet, so they understand but don't exactly know what is going on with the rotation from the Jiggy's bot lane. No way he's going to go for a steal. The Sonic Waves is short anyway, would have been difficult to make it happen unless a ward hop was involved, so sides against it, dragon secured. As the announcer says, the red team has slain the dragon. For those who uh, aren't paying attention, that's GK today. <laughs> they are over here. Take it away, recovering from... A frustrating point. They were so close to just making it an easy first place. They've done it the hard way. Yes. They might still remain first. They might still make it out of this group first. But Besiktas in their way and would love to have something different to say about it. Unless my memory is failing, which may be the case because it is rather late, they also had to get to this stage in the groups all the way through play. Yes, they did. Both Arabian League teams did. And they have both managed to make it out of groups afterwards. That is a very rough path they've decided to take. But hey, at least for sure, 100% secured. The fact is that they are getting out of the groups. So in this game, you can relax a little bit and have a little bit more fun. But can you really? Because there is not just getting out of the groups at the stage. There is also the pride. So much so. And again, it's Arabian League versus Turkey as well. This is a bit of a regional rivalry as well. All the stories that start abounding there. This could be huge for the fans and pride of both regions. Things of the mere mass, of course, is those regional rivalries for fans, for LVP, for LFL, for Prime League. So proud, so vocal, frankly. And then a few more of those vocal fan bases now with the addition of Arabian League and Tokyo as a whole as well. A huge gold lead right now, especially as more and more plates go the way of carry. A knock up there onto the Zeri who took tower oh, aggro, whoa, 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 whoa. who has to get on out of there. Another tower shot would have done her in, has to flash as well. That's pretty scary indeed. Bong, making it work under the tower. Bami Cinder, that is such a smart use of Bami Cinder. We have seen it over and over with uh, going out of your own turret and making the enemy suffer for being too close to you. But yes, making sure that Zeri gets the hate of that Bami Cinder and gets the turret shot as a result. Hoon finally hits double sex, trying their very best to clear out the wave with the Soul Furnace. Still going to lose a couple plates and it's now trading back what happened in the side, just the edge of the decimating smash, locking up both Leo and Decap. Oh, the turret on the bot lane. Bonk is bonking into this turret, and it is almost open bong already bong. for him. A bonk bonk. Don't think it's a boing boing. That's probably something inappropriate for broadcast. What? You just—I don't know what you said. It's fine. Moving on. Just when, like, when you knock on the door. Oh. The that, sound it makes. That's the sound it makes to you. If I said anything inappropriate, I'm not a native speaker, that's and I don't true. know what I just it's said. It's fine. I, I, they normally just say knocking. Is this? Is that? Is that? Is that? That's the that thing you do to doors. Yes. You know what? <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> for those who can't, there was my eyebrow slowly rising on I mean, like, <laughs> Quickly save her from herself. Right, we're moving away towards. Fen's been put down. Oh dear, it's getting very late over here. That's true. So, we well, might be edging towards a midnight finish and burning the midnight oil. And again, a lot of these teams, they'll be playing in a local time zone as well. They haven't flown over to Paris like us. They'll be over in Turkey, somewhere in the Arabian League area as well. Some of the guys we know were Egyptian playing from that part of the world. It can be very, very late indeed yes. for these guys. The early hours, the eyes starting to feel very tired, starting to make this one as difficult as it can be. It has been a marathon, certainly not a sprint. And the last game to make it work, playing five, well, five games for GK today and three for Shikjas. And it's not even like it was all in a row. They had to take some breaks and <laughs> Delays between games, it's kept this one a very lengthy affair. But now they're here, this is the final one. You play this one, you play it really well, you show everything that you got in the I remember when looking for the quickness, didn't quite make it work. Still gonna try and keep going towards Carry, who of course didn't have the flash. Turret about to fall, we'll throw down the E there on the Nautilus. Not going too much more with it. And Max away the Riptide, that's the name of the ability, took me a second. And Somewhere out there, Medic and uh, Gulborg could disappoint me for not knowing them, not the uh, Nautilus abilities off the top of my head. I wouldn't be able to do it either if it helps. I'm it probably really pretty good. Help. I know most of the abilities. I know all of the Aphelios weapon abilities. That is something I didn't expect. There's some really good abilities. Actually, I think my favorite ability in the name in the game is Binding Eclipse, which is Gravitum Q. That is actually it's beautiful. Really it's really powerful, too, so it's a good one to know. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Now I know more. Yeah. Gravitum Q. Binding Eclipse. Very beautiful. You know what else is beautiful? 
It is the fact right Me. now for each. Don't, don't, don't. The silence is, is painful. Don't. <laughs> I don't know how to answer it appropriately at this point. I'm a little bit too scared. Very. That's probably fair. Moving instead towards what you were actually going to talk about before I derailed you so thoroughly. Actually, Pice there might be... Wait for Gaspic City. Yeah. Danger happen. There's the lockdown onto the Ricard. He battle lances over the wall. I think How we is... get a breather here. Uh, we don't. We don't really because there's a dragon coming up. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Smooth moves there from Erisman. Erisman, by the way, is one of the newer additions to Besiktas because they have some really big names in the yes, Turkish League. But he is one of the two newer additions. He doesn't really have much experience, especially on the international stage. Prove dangerous here on the inside. GK again, they've got a lot of experience themselves. Elramir alone. Never mind the likes of Giyu. Uh, instead, we look towards the dragon. First dragon was picked up by GK. But it's Besiktas that forced their way into the river and are the ones that are holding court in position there. For the win becomes lightning decimating smash into the dredge line. Damage back. Package comes on down. Jungler dead. But on the other side, Corky seismically shoved. Falks over the wall. Staying alive. Bong now coming alongside as a flash kick. Gets the Orn off the flanking angle. The health bar for Projectus, not high. Looking for a reset is the Cork. He does have the teleport to rejoin the fight. Giyu might stop it. Giyu oh! stops it. Giyu finds him. It's a beautiful stop, but a Foss Bomb will not keep him alive. That has to be now the second dragon for GK. They just want this fight very cleanly and very clearly. Such a good timing to pick up a fight from Besiktas because they have this package on cooking that is just a perfect place to use this one. But the moment they fly in, the damage and the control, especially Carry. coming back in, is too much. No way! Does so much damage. They weave his wall over and Carry just has to leave again into the back and goes, oh, but he's just dead! He's no. down! And GK. They tank a full package, they find the mid laner, they force off the rest of Besiktas, they're gonna get Dragon, a kill, and a shove in mid as well. It looked like Besiktas found the angle and instead they find a whole lot of nothing. But GK found the second breath. They found the kills, 2-5 is the situation in terms of the kills between the teams right now. Almost 2k gold lead for GK now with the Dragon, it's going to be a very nice Dragon lead for them as well and the infernal drake is going to be the soul we didn't really touch upon the scaling on both our teams. no we did touch a little bit especially talking about besiktas because they have the cook and they have the zero that are going to feel really comfortable going into the late game but now with this soul it is it is adding so much into the, into the soup that we already have on the rift they, both of the teams really want to grab this one because these dragons scale so well into the late game rubs being secured as it stands by osman Trying to make this one happen. Turret. Trying to be tamed by Kauri. Yeah. Still being a little bit wary. He's been attacked so much more aggressively than the last game. This is Zeri, given the freedom in some ways that she had the first time these teams played out today. It was 1-0-1, doing okay on that front. Claimed a lot of plates, but isn't getting access to the same amount of farm right now that Leo is, who's up that 25-30 on CS. Hoon on the other side, going to get a demolished proc at this point of the game. is going to hit. Pretty hard. There's another plate before they all fall, and Bong finally turned up, and we'll leave some fire on the minions under the turret. That's exactly what he's going to do, and he's going to make sure that the turret to the bot lane stands, because right now for GK, the bot lane is such a powerful lane that they can try to work around, and in general, the bot side of the map, because they have opened it up already, and they have opened it up rather early in the game. Not a huge gold lead, but a notable one nonetheless. 1.5k is pretty happy to be after the lane swap with all the plates just falling. But from this point on, the snowball can continue. Ah, oh, Decap gets on to Kauri. Blast cones him back. Where does Kauri go? He's trapped between a rock and a Rakan. Kauri does get towards the track. Flashed on in, calls the summon a spell. But now the rest of the is looking to come and punish. Miro is here, but now the teleport in response from GK. Decap throws down the quickness. Battle dance, grand entrance. Not going to land onto Miro, but a seismic shove is there regardless. Do you want a rampage? Oh, and now this is going to be the Herald for GK for sure. With a Koki down, there is no way Besiktas are going to be able to stop them. Such a powerful Herald. GK are going to go through the turrets yet again. They have some grubs, but with the Herald and with how quickly they have been already going through the turrets. Ah, oh, this is going to be such a nice lane opener for them. All right, the Herald targeted. About to be taken down. And GK, they look so much lore like the selves we saw of them yesterday in commanding control with that game plan working out well. And Besiktas, what a day they've had, but this time around their punches just aren't landing and they are being forced to respond in a bit of a panic to some very aggressive GK plays and they are not coming out the best for it. Kaori survives, yes, but once again is forced to lose a wave. Once How again, much? it's Mirror's attacked. 
much HP does this turret have? I need to know. I, it is barely alive. I, I, I couldn't tell you, Tony Stanza. Maybe production <laughs> can give us the word if we get a chance at some point. The mid lane we have to look for now, though, is Decap and Giyu looking and waiting for a potential angle. I don't think Giyu's ultimate's on that long a cooldown at this point. Two minutes until the next dragon. And they're all roaming together as a four-man squad to contest vision and mid lane control. Miru Botsai will claim first turret finally for Besiktas. Despite the lane swap, none of the turrets went fully down earlier on. So Herald summoned on mid lane, knowing where the core key is, and that will be another structure in favor of GK. And that is giving them such a huge prior coming towards the next dragons. And then already having taken two first dragons of the game, GK have to be working towards this soul right now because this is going Bonk. to be a huge win con for them. Bonk. It's a good word. Is it a safe word? That's a fine word. Sure. Yes. Thank you. you, you... <laughs> oh, I'm glad we checked that. That's, that's, that's confused. Over towards the bottom side of the river, we have to look. And G GK have done a very good job now of snowballing the gold lead they have. They are two dragons up. They've got an infernal soul to work with. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten all these outer turrets. They've gotten so much gold into the right places. This Talia is unreasonably strong at this point of the game. Hoon will at least claim another turret in the, the top side to even up the gold at least a little bit. We've got 50 seconds until what will be soul point for GK, and I just don't know whether Besiktas are going to be in a proper position to fight it. I don't think the package is going to be quite up either in time no. to come and contest, use it for this one either. No, no, no. It's going to be, I believe, a little bit too late for the party. And now the position for Besiktas is definitely not very appropriate because they have no vision around the dragon. Well, there is vision for GK that is going to help them out if Besiktas want to pull out a steal or any unusual movements around the dragon. That is why Besiktas are already around the pit trying to establish at least some of the wards here and there but it's definitely not enough. Mid lane shove. Like it's going to be going the way of GK. You can see they've got two items completed for Talia already. That is just certainly not the case on the other side. At the moment I say that, you can see there's still not the Muramana Ooh. transformation in, so I won't count that one quite yet. But here we go, into the back line we go. The quickness down, the shove afterwards. Down is Lee Sin, the blind monk. Not feeling or seeing anything more at all. Leo is going to have to flash away. They did have the package to work with, but it's not going to amount to anything as the feathers come bringing down the mechanical wings of Corky's biplane. Kauri dead as well the first time in this game. Hoon with a shield that will surely not be enough to keep himself alive. Over to claim another kill goes Giyu. A thick, make that a sick for him this game. Hoon dead as well, a full ace for GK, and Dragon Soul is theirs to claim. A very clean ace as well. Nobody from GK went down. They didn't have their health bars really scratched all that much. Kaori, on the other hand, which was very interesting to me because GK had their priorities really straight in this fight. They wanted to get on top of this Kogi as soon as possible. Kaori was left to free fire, but Kaori is only on an item and a half and boost on top of that. That is not the Zeri that is dealing any significant damage in the fight. That's why she was allowed to leave for very long, but in the end, GK turned towards her and killed her for good. Unlucky to stop the reset, doesn't find it, can find get into the board, and he's Oops. just too late. Didn't guess right, doesn't quite catch the reset. Unfortunate moment, the game just hasn't gone their way. Besiktas us down 5,000, well, 4,500 gold is in fact in front of me on the screen, and I still managed to misread, and that's a bad sign. It's getting late, that's for sure. Vori in for Leo. Redemption done for Decap. The item got discrepancy continues to grow more and more egregious. And then powered Bramble back. I don't think that's the Void Corrupted one. That's just the, the one that offers the two buffs. There's that mid-stage one. I don't know what the name is of the Bramble back. I do not remember myself, I, I did know and I have forgotten in the intervening months. I'm so sorry Someone out there... Yeah, I mean, I know. There's a lot of things I forget. It's just... How old are you? Probably too old to be doing this for a career, but here we are. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> you know what else is rough? The game state for Besiktas? Exactly. <laughs> Clap, we're on the same page. 2-11. Do you see this kill difference between the teams? I do indeed. Um, we are seeing a very difficult point upon the fact that it is the Talia and the Zaya that have claimed so much of the gold. Baron has spawned and they are doing it on spawn. They think they can do this. And Besiktas, they don't know. They're all idling around Red Buff. This is just no. going to go down. It's going to be way too slow to know. They're finally pinging, but everyone's on the wrong side of the map. There's no teleport for Miri. He can't join. They finally know. Can they even think about contesting? It's just gone, surely. It has to. It has to be gone. Yes. 
Are wow. they going to turn around? Now they are turning around How to fight. aggressive do they want to get? Osman in danger. Kauri will slide over the wall with the spark surge. Onto, D onto the side of Osman they get. Into the back line with the quickness is Decap. Has a battle dance in a dream. Redemption comes on down. He dies. They have gone too deep this time around. Besiktas now in a position potentially to get something more. Someone has blown across Besiktas and some low health bars. They do actually claim a kill. Does GK just get that a little bit too eager? Bong shunts his way on forward with a searing charge, but the knockup afterwards means Hoon has to go unstoppable. Will just about survive the tier two falls regardless. But there is no way Bishiktas can pull out a very good fight because this is the point where they want to be fighting back. They just got one down because GK overstepped just a little bit after getting this Baron buff into their pockets. But unfortunately for Bishiktas, I do spoil, but they don't. But Besiktas, their health bars were so low, they couldn't really fight any longer after that fight. Just teleported but now they can! This. Moon has made his way Ooh. all the way up here to try and make this happen. A ghost to try and catch up. Osman steps on forwards with the ward off, with the smite. Giyu, not like last game. Surely not again in a side lane. Finally shut down. Aaron Shove somewhat mitigated. They do get an additional kill, but this time there isn't a neutral objective to try and chain into something more bong. Falling the dredge line. And another death for Giyu, who and otherwise been having a superlative game. But right now, oh, this is turning around so quickly. There are three Void Grabs only for Besiktas, but that is more than enough for them though. to fight. Hang on, they're going to be so careful. That's oh, a big target for the knockup. The damage back is pretty huge. Decap needs to be afraid, but Elramir can continue to charge forwards. The wind becomes lightning and grounds Corky. Leo still got themselves the Baron and Power Minions. They need to reset because they don't have the wave clear remaining. They're finally back, but the Demolish Pot will come on through. Decap needs to be a bit afraid. Another auto will finally break the inhibitor turret. And they do so. GK striking back after the overload in the top lane to claim the Talia's life. Wouldn't even need to go for this inhibitor right now anyway. They have Baron buff down on two members, but still three of them are running with it, so they can try to look for more opportunities around the map. Oh my goodness, one minute before the dragon is going to come up. The sole point for GK is so close. This is the next target on the menu for them. Target on the menu, that sounds weird. That's a position on the menu? It's a dessert. You know what? It's just a very sweet dessert for GK. Well, it is indeed. They've decided to pick that section out because everything else has been pretty heavily consumed. The meat of the matter is GK are up 5,000 gold. Soul point for Lord Dominic's regard in their AD carry, who would love to deliver that message straight to the hearts of Besiktas, <laughs> namely that they will not be going out first in the groups, and instead it will be GK. A statement of intent that will be uh, very satisfying, I am sure. The Arabian League number two seed Cap interrupting Hoon's back, and it is going to be GK who have position in the river. Eyes on Corky, who will have teleport and likely package. Can they finally make a fight work? They've got themselves the transformation of the Muramana, but they're just behind a full item in AD carry, half an item in mid lane. It's tricky indeed to make this work. Zai is in a power spike, the three items on her are incredibly powerful. She's going to cut through everybody, through the front lane, through the back lane of Besiktas. Doesn't matter to her anymore. No eyes available for Besiktas on the river. They're going there blindly. Trying to force their way into Lear on a flanking angle, looking to get the Weaver's Wall from across the back of the Dragon Pit. Decap on the flank. For quickness, it's on to Corky! They're dead again! Every single fight! Corky hits inclement weather and immediately crash lands. Mayday, Mayday! Besiktas are falling! GK are soaring! They will surely be going first place out of the group. They will surely be teleporting to end the game. They chose the low road. They chose the hard road, but still they will be first place in this group. Starting from the bottom, but now they are here. And here for them is the enemy base, while Jew is probably going to <laughs> die and give away a very big shout out. But does it matter in the grand scheme of things when your Nexus is going down? Getting the enemy mid lane is nice, but it's not enough. The Emir regions, the Emir viewers, you might not know the Arabian League. You will soon. What a game. What a gauntlet run. What a recovery from GK. They will make sure Besiktas are forced to go second. But wait a second. <gasps> the respawns are through. Oh. Can they hold? Can they defend? Leo still firing. Leo doing damage. The roots come on through. And we have to bide our time. They teleported in, but Giyu's death. And the respawns are just just in time that they are punished trying to end the game. Besiktas hold on, and we must hold once more. The Turkish Lions have one more roar, Teleport. and they're not afraid to make they themselves loudly, but they, they have to do it now. It. They didn't think they could end it, so they, so they didn't think they could lose it, so they didn't take Dragon. 
Horseman and Kauri here, but Kiyu's teleported back in. There's a teleport back in response. How far have you gone? They've taken the dragon. It's now a 3v2. This could get very ugly indeed. Look at Osman, knocked up. Kiyu in danger. Kauri gonna get this kill for sure. There's nowhere for Kiyu to go. And now Aramir is in danger. GK, not like this. Surely not like this. You can't throw it like this. From being on the Nexus, from giving up the Infernal oh, redemption. Dragon. The Redemption Hills a lot. The what? Rocket afterwards. It's a big one from downtown. It's a very big one, but Decap, are you sure you can do anything? Bong is around you. They're very low health buzz, but are you sure? The call of the Forge God comes on through. The game, the game continues somehow, some way. Pashiktas, by the skin of their teeth, by the edge of their nails, are holding on to the precipice. Is it enough? Is it going to be there? They prevent Infernal Soul. Their Nexus exposed, but not down. It is just standing there, so unprotected. One inhibitor down on the vault and the others are still standing somehow, but surely they are. Seven seconds before Elmir is going to go up, but the Baron is already alive at this very point on the map. Team Blue Buff secured, Blast Cone over the wall. For now, the man advantage, Besiktas on the Rift. They won't quite be greedy enough to start up the Baron. It would have been a risk, at least. Instead, they look to put some wards down in their blue side jungle. They look to hold their nerve. They look to find another one of those Miracle Fighter carry who have been attacked and savaged nearly every fight in the early game. And then Miru after that got that fight in the base, got three kills, gets another one on the retreat. And GK settle their nerves. They claim the Baron and they'll go again. Round two. Here we go. Now we fight again, potentially, for the last time for today and for the last time in these games. The ornaments are coming through. Thank you very much. Bong says everybody, especially the carries of GK, this is exactly what we need for the last fight. A Leandri's Lament and a Worm Fallen Sacrifice in the inventories. Those are some bespoke relics to try and win the game. Elramir throws down the crisis strike. Osman in a dangerous position. Decap looking for the engage, does not find it. He's kicked straight back out. Kauri lets the storm surge through him. Continue to throw burst fire after burst fire. Trying to make it full auto. The lightning striking. Half to flash back away, the Ultra Shock laser doing some damage. Hoon just about alive, the burn not quite enough. A searing charge and a volcanic pillar does what it needs to do. Two dead already, Kauri included this time for sure. The call of the Forge God makes it a double. Bong makes it a home run. They will surely now be ending the game. They have to, they have to. There is no way they're not doing it right now, right here and right now. Teleporting this in. wasn't a fight, this was a dance, and this game is still a dance and still continues. Shiktas managed to throw a last minute sucker punch, but GK will not be denied another time. You had a moment there, Arabian League fans. I know you did, but your hearts were in your mouth. Settle your nerves and feel the elation. GK, go first in Group A. GK, take the victory. Arabian League is bringing some daylight to us after this game. That was a very big game. You know what? The big game is the only one that I'm able to use here. And for so much of that game, it was what we have come to expect from GK at the best. Controlled, um, solid map movements. Leo and Gyu doing so much of the team's damage. But some of the things we were warned about, the over-ambitious plays in the mid game, trying to shove that little bit too aggressively. They failed to end the game and suddenly you got nervous. Yes. Didn't matter in the end. They got the Baron, they got the fight. They did end the game on the second attempt of shoving. But I won't lie, you did get just that tiny bit nervous. Yeah, just a little bit, because Besiktas, they were that close to actually finding their way back into the game, to turning this somehow around. But in the end, they did roar, but it was not loud enough. Besiktas make their way to second place. They are still going through to playoffs. They will be disappointed, I am sure, not to have claimed the first place despite earning themselves that upper bracket berth there in the tiebreaker scenario. GK, they made it hard for themselves, I think it is fair to say. They started the day so very well. They ended the game so very well. The bits in the middle, well, maybe we'll leave the desk to break that one down. Thank you for that initialize in Solari and thank you for all the energy even though the hours are going <laughs> long. Welcome to the desk, get it on and thank how you. are you thank doing, you. aesthetics? Yeah, oh, so much bad. energy, I love it. <laughs> Why am I here? Like <laughs> not not here in the eve. I mean, I got swapped around, I mean. Like Oh I, yeah, you swapped. This I was confusing. on that side and I come in the room and he's just he's just 
This seat's sa- comfier, bro. Yeah, that's it why. is. That's why I picked it. <laughs> I and it. It goes up and down. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, are, are, are we analyzing seats? We are. We are. This one has a nice... Speaking uh, of seats... Kind of rubberized finish. Yeah. Bong was sick. Like, mm. that guy is a seat, right? Because... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go into it. If you look at Bong, you think, man, on Ord, on Scion, like what a comfy place to sit if you're GK. Yeah. I mean, at that point, this guy, he, I'm going to ignore that. He has to be enjoying it at this point, the lane swaps. And can I just say, I just want to make, make a statement, bro. This meta, it's reminding me of Banner of Command in that it just came out of nowhere. And everybody liked it at the start. They were like, this is, this is a great mini game. And now everyone hates it. I'm convinced everyone absolutely hates it. I saw oh, Zwyru. I hate it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done with lane it's, swaps. It's made him so insane. Zwyru made a tweet. Uh, Team Heretics yes. mid laner for LEC saying, this is ruining my watching experience. Please riot, step in and remove it. And I completely agree. Oh, I agree Today too. has been a day. My big swaps. question to you is... <laughs> Go ahead. Was well, that even a necessity to actually look at the swap? So that's the thing, right? I've started, it's like a lot of water. I don't know. I think cooking these lane swaps, sometimes I feel like we're just lane swapping because we're lane swapping, right? True. So exactly. here, I think you're going, you're very Nautilus. Nautilus is a really decent lane favored into the Rakan. But I guess what they're trying to do is they think that Scion is much better into the lane swaps than Orn. So Orn falling far behind um, and not getting to upgrades as early as possible. Um, matters more than Zion falling behind. So they lane swap to make up for that. But you can win Zeri yeah. Nautilus into Zaya Rakan and set it far behind rather than trade evenly because once you get into mid game, which is all about Geekay's problem, once you get into mid game with Zaya Rakan, uh, Talia, this, these, these combo, this core is so damn strong. Uh, it comes online a lot faster than something like a Lulu Severe, which we saw before. And fatigue also takes a huge part yeah. in those decisions as well. I mean, Absolutely. your future is at risk. I mean, I know like, it's seeding, but it's quite important. I think I think uh, you, you were what, we were watching together, and we just saw this dive by pa- Pike's Deer, yeah. um, and he was, yeah. just, he was top lane, and just took a tower shot too many. And I just I felt like that was a tired play. Yeah, I mean, I that's, mean like, yeah, that was just like oh, whoops, that's a bit too close. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you play, this is like their fifth or sixth game of the day, yeah. forty minutes every single game because they're all lane swaps. True. I think it gets to you, man. <laughs> nice. I, I think as well, like following up on that point, I agree. Like. This happens a lot in the meta where a lot of teams take the initiative and be like, this is why we lane swap, right? We we elevate the jinx yeah. to, to the mid game without getting contested in the 2v2 as we talked about. And then she gets free scaling. But a lot of teams also won't take that initiative. They'll be like, oh yeah, we want to lane swap too. And it doesn't like, I don't know, you know, maybe maybe GK, there was there's a lot more merit to the madness there. Uh, sorry, for Bajik Des, there's a lot more merit to the madness. But I think a lot of teams as well see lane swaps and be like, oh, yeah, we want to do that too because that's a meadow as well. Yeah, and Not everyone's an innovator. Other people uh-huh. are followers and they follow yeah. the trend. Yeah. And that's also something I think needs to be thrown out as a, as a possibility that, you know, maybe, maybe there are going to be teams that just follow and be like, yeah, let's just lane swap because, yeah, there's a small element here that we don't want to deal with or everyone else is doing it. I don't know. And on, on topic of who is good and bad at lane swaps... <laughs> Bong. I think this guy, you know, we had a plethora of top laners. Yeah. So many of them, you know, Perceit. some were terrible. Some were really, really good. Yeah. Um, I think, I think uh, Melanick comes to mind as one of the best yeah. ones to adapt. Um, I think Bong was actually so, really yeah, good. So what about Bong? Yeah, he's, think, he was good at it. Yeah, I think I think he was actually phenomenal. I love the way he played Orn and the dives. Um, and <laughs> and his Scion drifting in one of the games to get away from ganks consistently. True. I was, I was a big fan. AD's flash for a minion wave like three times. <laughs> oh, we're bloody <laughs> That's like, our I guy. <laughs> I'll still go in. On, on the oh last one, it did flash, but he got a kill. Yeah, yeah. that's improved my worth. Yeah. I think uh, there was some yeah. really fun level ones as well with Bong. With uh, Around the, those wraiths, I remember from the level one of the last game, you had Detective Bong. Oh, I think. yeah. Not, not sure where anyone was, but you could sort of smell it, you know? And then even though he could smell it, he just walked away, <laughs> left his jungle. Just walking jungler. and facing, like, I'm not stepping on those bushes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he threw the support. Yeah, that, that's yeah. decision making. And those mistakes will be heavily punished as you move forward because groups are done. And we have to look into who's going to make it through groups into the knockout stage. And the draw will happen in a few moments. So in order to understand how the knockouts will be, let's see how the groups actually finished. I need to see the groups. Because uh, we have a few surprises, obviously. We have a few surprises. Some I'm are painful. To see. Yes, Olari. 
others are more painful. Well, when we bring it yes, up, we initialize. Can, <laughs> we say goodbye. Online. Oh, oh, I was not expecting that. My question what? is, I was not expecting that. That. Bong. bong. He's he just wrote bong. on a bit of paper. He wrote bong. Hey, that's him. The, the seat. That's right. See, he is a seat. For all those on his team to sit on because he carries. He has a seat. Oh, because I he that. carries. I forgot we did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah, okay. It really was. I. Oh, here we go. There Let's you go. go. Okay. It wasn't a 6 and 0. That was what I was looking for. Did Iron Spandau get a 6 and 0? Because we didn't not. see the rest I think, of the game. I think they actually they lost to uh, Orbiter, which, by the way, Ultra League should be happy. How did wow. they? Wow. They are. Oh, Solari. Um, very happy. Gentlemates <laughs> losing was huge. <laughs> Like the LFL third wow. seed, who a lot of people yeah. said oh, you know Creed. should go as far as top eight. What happened, um, Lions Creed? Upset. Yeah, I'm just looking at my boys. Uh, good thing Ban you Banderas. guys don't cast NLC. Who? Banderas. Banderas. <laughs> Dude, Banderas. What That's happened? That's the last time we're going to say that name. I think they put up such a fight in all these games. But see how well, gentlemen as well. Like another team yeah. that fell, and we're like, wait, what? Desire was such a good team on the first day, and on the second one, they couldn't innovate as fast True. as possible. Sure. Editics is also another team we could look into. Zero tenacity, zero six. Yeah. Like that, I that's mean, rough. Like, so I was having conversations with a jungler for one of the Prime League teams. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I won't say who, uh, but he was very strongly opinionated about the fact that he thinks um, the Prime League teams, they don't stand a chance against uh, a lot of like the LFL, the top oh. of the other regions, right? Um, but we have two Prime League representatives in first place. On top of Casey, I think that's unexpected. It sounds that like that is really unexpected. It sounds like a really good way to cover your tracks that you were just talking to yourself and you've just said oh, a jungler <laughs> who I can't name <laughs> and said that the prime league wasn't very good. And you just literally I, talking I just to yourself wanna, in the I don't bathroom throw him or something. On the under the bus, but that's uh, that is a surprise. Okay, I I'll really expected Casey Blue to be tournament favorites, favorites, not flavorites. Yeah, they are flavors. <laughs> yeah, flavorites. Um, Interesting part, though, I want to test your knowledge and mm. also your predictions when yeah. you look into these teams without looking into the bracket because the drawing is still happening. I want you to tell me who do you think is going to make it to semifinals? Both yeah. Prime League seeds. I would say both Prime League oh. seeds would make it. Um, probably a year assuming KC Blue because they're in the same group. They won't verse SK Prime, which I'm assuming is the format. They can't verse people from the same group. Would be very fair. Yeah. So I would assume... That and maybe GK. I don't know. This is a hard thing as well. We're talking about semis where I look at about six of those teams. That I can confidently, mm. you probably see like that can probably draft in a BF5. Yeah. I, yeah. I also think like, you know, how a team's adapting to, there's, there's two things. How a team's adapting to the lane swaps. And I feel yeah. like KC Blue may be not the best um, uh -huh. despite being so strong. And, the, and their team fighting has actually not been good. So maybe I'll take yeah. it back. Yeah. But also um, an entirely other point that's just escaped my brain because I said the other one. That's unfortunate. Best of five. Uh, best of five, yeah, which can adapt. That wasn't the point. Okay, thanks, for the, thanks point. for the attempt. What's I, the other I point? It's attempt. just gone. It's just completely gone. It's just gone. You've been talking about jungler again. The jungler knows. We just yeah. don't know the jungler. We don't know. <laughs> so he gave uh, his opinion about the teams that are going to make through. What about mm. you? Yeah, that's difficult. Um, I know. That's the question. So I think it's going to be, I think saying Prime League is a bit of a cop out. Um, I think the, oh, this, this was the point. So the problem was there was about 50 games played that we, we didn't see. We didn't see about like 50 games. There were so many teams, 16 teams, yeah. and we just missed a bunch of them. So I would like to see Arabian League because I feel like they were slept on quite oh, a bit okay. True. Um, going through. I think, uh, you know, GK, uh, I think impressive. More? So, more? Need, yeah, more? Need, okay. But what do you mean? What do you mean Prime League's a cop out? Uh, because there's two of them already and they were, they, they're also obviously good. I yeah, feel like SK good. Prime are just, they, this is the perfect mess of them. Okay. Neon, Neon is a jinx main. Yeah, but what right? do you mean, cop out as in what you're expecting them to go semi finals? Uh, easily, yeah. Okay. So, that's so true. we'll go with that, yeah. Okay. And then, and then, sorry, you want, do you want or you think, I think Arabian could. League? I think, I think UK could, yep. GK or, or Nigma? GK. Uh, GK. I okay. think I was more convinced with them. Okay. Okay. For you back and, at home, I would like to know your opinion as well. So head on to the social media and hit us with who do you think is gonna, gonna pass? We had some videos coming in on Twitter, by the way. Good job. Uh, <laughs> we see a lot of uh, opinions coming in from the fans and I want to see the gifts and who do you think is going to make it into semifinals before we get into the quarterfinals that, that is the fun part like making mm -hmm. the predictions so we were talking about predictions a, a couple of moments ago with Salari and Initialize Initialize is still yeah he's no longer here so I would like to huh, I'd like to make a bet 
We both okay. Won. Again. Another bet. Yeah. For a cross. So far, team. everybody has won. Okay. It has been amazing. You complain a lot, but you still have fun. I, have, I didn't win anything. You 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 got a coffee. Yeah. You and killed the fly. It was dirt. No, the fly was my own making. That was a competition. That was a show of strength. And also, you got a dessert in the, at the beginning of the show. No, I didn't eat that. Oh, that. Oh, no, it was actually, alive. No, that's live. I did eat that on camera. Yeah. You no. had grapes. Yeah, I ate, I ate those too. <laughs> I have beefed up. So, yeah, with the top teams that we have in groups, I want to get your opinion on who do you think is going to take it all? Take it all. Yeah, and I we'll make this an SK interesting Prime. one. SK Prime. I think oh. this entire tournament is just going to be more and more and more lane swaps. I think like the rate of lane swaps is going up and eventually it's going to be every single game and it's just going to be SK Prime taking it because they're so good at it. Okay. As, as now it's a cop out because I was going to say, I said Eintracht earlier. as the Because for the one game we saw, I thought, I mean, again, they have really strong individual laners. I think mid as well with lane swaps going down is like the one lane that can also be volatile that matters yeah. as well for roaming. Um, so yeah, I'll say Eintracht. I think they're the best team from what I've seen so far. So prime, 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 prime. LFL prime. has no chance. We both live in Berlin, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I live, did live in Spandau, so I'm kind of biased as well. Oh, yeah, true. So LFL is not going to make it this year. Oh, come on, man. That's so harsh, right? I, I'm, just, I'm so disappointed in KC Blue. I feel like it was just, especially in that last game, it was Callist versus the world at some points, trying okay. to make picks on Azari at some, at some point, but it just wasn't enough because players like Linsus were a little bit disappointing as well as the mid lane. And this leads me to another question. We, we, we're just watching in the best of one and we get the lane swaps. But when we jump into best of five, is that a way to, 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 to leave mitigate. those lane swaps? And mitigate the lane swaps, like adapting. We've, we've already seen that you can get rid of Jinx, you can get rid of Aphelios, and you're still lane swapping with Zaya Rakan. It just won't end. And it doesn't matter um, the weak side as well. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. even this sign comes through, like Orn was, you know, putting weak side I as think well. Maybe you see Jinx and Scion bans. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe then, you know, the tools just aren't there, but I feel like... Interestingly enough, Udyr was out of the equation yeah. today most of the time. So people are realizing that Udyr may be strong in the beginning, but it, fall, it, oh, it falls good. late. So yeah. there's an yeah. adaptation going on in the tournament. I yeah. mean, yeah, of some sort, but in terms of lane swaps, I, I, I mean, Siv is back. Like, Siv they, you just go the down the tier list of stuff that you can lane swap on with it wave matter. clipper tempo swaps. Yeah, with Enchanter, right? Like, yeah. And even though that was a lost game, it was like, you see how it win. You know, she got accelerated. She, she got to play her mm -hmm. own lane. That wasn't the 2v2. So, yeah, I think I think we both kind of agreed that yeah. it's just going to keep happening no matter what. And a lot of teams are going to adapt it. I guess it's more yeah. about the adaptation of canceling it out or finding something that can stop it in its track. Like, yeah. that's the new level. Or, that's like, that's or like, Riot steps in. Or, and that's what we're praying but for. Riot won't step in, in this tournament. In the next couple of days. Please, please. <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> on the day you. off, you hit it with no, something. casting finals. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. Yeah, no I more. hate them now too. I changed my mind. After, car after seeing that many games, I was like, I don't want to see any more late yeah. swaps. I'm done. So We're I don't done. want to be unfair and I want to toss it to the casters who are still in the studio somehow, <laughs> just hibernating. Salari and Initialize, welcome back. I want to get your opinions on who do you think is going to take it all? Do you want a realistic opinion or a delusional opinion? Realistic. At this time, both. Really? I, I really want the delusional. So Delusional. I wonder what she's yeah. going to say. Oh, but anonymous. Because now I'm curious. You know what? I'm going to go with GK. They Ooh, did come oh, that's, that's what I said. But that is a realistic opinion. That's what it was. Oh, that's realistic. realistic. Yes. I, I, being serious here just for a second, just for you. Uh, I you. do think that they are a very strong team. And I think Arabian League has a really decent chance going through. I mean, it's going to be really hard for them. Let's be real. But I do think that they are very adaptive and their individual skill is absolutely amazing. The carries on this team are something else. So I do think they have a very decent chance of making it. But... Being the very uh, proud Ultra League representative, Orbit <laughs> Anonymous, my boys made me proud today. For the first time in a long time, Ultra League is getting out of the group. Let's go, Polska Gurom! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, moment. There you go, the Love of Rings again. <laughs> she was like, she's been like seriously hype in the green room about this and Anonymous things. We, yeah. Because she's been like, by the way, Anonymous won. Yes! Polska Gurom. Yeah, I pulled the cell phone to translate it. He's like, and no <laughs> language. <laughs> I think on my end, I think I think BDSA are still going to be, they were pre-tournament favorites for a lot okay. of people. I think that still holds on to that. 
for me, though, from what I've seen in terms of the level of consistent play, I think it has to be Eintracht Spandau, right? They've just been oh. playing the meta really, really well. They have played out pretty much all of their win conditions pretty consistently. We haven't seen the mid-game whoopsies okay. that we've seen out of people like GK when they have gotten these leads and then overreached afterwards. Even BDSA and KCB have been that bit scrappier. We both had those kind of issues. We've all had those issues of looking at those teams and seeing maybe there might be some issues in the mid-game. I do think Eintracht have been the ones that have been the most consistently clean and done the so to a high level. So we have Spandau, Spandau. You're going for the... I said SK Prime. SK Prime. SK Prime. You're going for the Arabian League. Yes. I love it. I love it. Hey, this is an interesting <laughs> take. Split test. I'm still waiting for the confirmation on the bracket to understand as, as we're going for the knockout stage. We'll have that on Monday. It will be two days of knockout, at least on quarterfinals. We, we wait for Monday <laughs> for the bracket. I guess, so. yeah. I guess so. Brace we yourself to back here at home. Monday. This is a non-stop. This is a subathon <laughs> with more lane swaps. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. That's top lane. And that one's you guys cast three, we cast three. You guys cast three, we cast three. <laughs> I think my I voice is about to put in a formal protest. <laughs> like, like body revolt. So at this moment, yeah, we're still waiting for that information. As soon as we get it, we'll uh, we'll put it on on for you. Obviously, we need to understand what games we're going to be following. And for that, you need to follow the social medias on Twitter, Instagram for EMEA Masters 2024 Spring. So you understand who you're going to be following, at what time the, the games are going to be played as well. Interestingly enough, Lucian. Lucian? Yeah. We Lucian saw in the finals, nice. LPL today. Yeah. We saw Elk. Yeah, and we no did. one was inspired. No one wanted to be Elk. True, we're joking we about one game Now I'm actually banned. disappointed. We had like one yeah. game of it banned, one or two game banned. Like yeah. a million game. Yeah, but outside of that, it was... That was specific but, but pairing, that's, just, right? that's just an EU thing. Like, it makes its way through LEC consistently without getting banned. No one wants to play it because I'm, no one knows how to pilot what's it. What's going to happen... At MSI, you. is it's going to be Lucian Miller is going to blast the lane swap out of the water, and we're never going to do it again. You reckon that's actually that's actually actually a good point. The mid game spike, and you just you shut it down before the scaling comes in, maybe. Mm. Because that's you a, you do tech. like against Lucian Nami or Lucian Milio. Yeah. Actually, don't you just blitz turrets as well? Oh. Do I would say the, the tower damage isn't as isn't that, high. No, it's definitely not as man. high as a Jinx with um, passive attacks. But so if you keep getting mismatched in the Lucian Nami lane swap. Yeah. But you don't need to win lane on Lucian Nami, that's the thing. Right? No, you don't. You, you just, just need to get, get to mid game. So if you're you going through it an even point. Put it in mid lane, yeah. and then you play from there, and that's okay. You're an extra 2, 3k powerful, yeah. like theoretically. Yeah. You know? I mean, all I'll say is the problem is usually EU Lucians, they fall behind a Leon lane. True. So this actually gets them out of it as well. But I feel like we're just cooking absolutely nothing. No. Uh, <laughs> It's not no, the easiest true. to navigate as well. Then true. Of... Well, look at this split screen. We should wow. verse. Oh, wow. We should verse. We could have a game show between is the two of you with true. that camera. I, I, That's I love crazy. It. Make one. Go. Right now? Yeah. Come on. Rock, it's paper, tomorrow. scissors. You know what? <laughs> you test me. I will bring you the content. Oh, oh we can fill in for now. Best Rock, paper, three? scissors. Any, yeah, any, get your any hands split up. screeners? See if we get the split screen. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, get the split screen again. Oh, yeah. Hell oh, yeah. No, there you we go. Oh, now we're talking. Say it, say it. you got to say it, bro. <clears throat> oh, the rock, paper, scissor? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Rock, paper, scissor. Go. No, but one, two, three, boom. <laughs> you bomb? told me this yesterday. All right. Bomb? Is it one, two? Th okay. Yeah. One, two, three, bomb. Say go. Okay. Okay. Go. <laughs> oh, yeah, come one. on. Great. Great. Okay. I'm it's tired. best of yeah, three. Yeah, we tired. Tired. Rock, paper, scissor. And they're coming in oh, for the. Oh, oh, he saw it. He cheated. Let's line swap. I win every Let's game. <laughs> I win, no, I win every game. Let's line swap. Law, I have never lost an Archeron game. At you, least you never lost 56, an Archeron 56 game. 56 and counting. Okay, okay, okay. 56. Okay. Yeah. No way. That's no, not true. No, it's not true. I lied. <laughs> Let's play a game of Guess Who Champion Edition out of the blue. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Let's go. So I'll make the clues as we go along. This is buying time, by the way. So moving on to the champion. I'll give you a clue. And you have to find which champion I'm talking about. Oh my god, they got about. the graphic for it. Wait, we have? The, the, oh, we actually have. Wow. Wow. Production is smurfing with this one. Quick, draw Aragon. Ooh. Sorry about that. What's the, hell? What's the clue? Oh, okay. what clue? What do you mean? Okay. When I approach you, you'll get a sign. I can't hear you. Evelyn. <laughs> Good job, actually. Yeah, I it is. It is Evelyn. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you mean you didn't hear You're me? You're whispering in my ears. You yeah. gotta say it louder. Okay, louder. When to I you. approach you, I get a sign. 
Evelyn. Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> really? Correct. God, you're a genius. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> you're a I never genius. lose. Okay, next one. One for one. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I have two states of mind. Kane. No. No, I'm not. I'm not in it anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? The next, next clue. Oh. <laughs> next yes. clue. Is it nah? It is not, my dude. It oh is my not. Okay. What do you mean? Okay, I'm ready. Come on, Edgar. I thought you won them all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ash. You have to step up. You gotta get the next one. Okay, 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 okay. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I summon stuff. Uh, York? No. Azir? No. Yeah, I have to make a complicated one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll make an easier one. Okay. What I'm a mean? genius. Is this the same one? I'm a digger. My boy. Yeah, obviously it's the same one. He constructs. That's not a summon. He constructs a turret, no? Yeah, he, he does construct. build it. It's science. He doesn't do it. He doesn't summon. It's, summon. it's not a summon. It's just, look, look, what's the statement? The statement is, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. It's summoning that. Can we mute wow. him? Or He's <laughs> under, <laughs> I, we, like, I like playing as <laughs> <in laughs> <the> Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. I got reworked. Yeah, let's make it hard. I got Warwick. <laughs> uh, what? Warwick. Come on. You're serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I used to be a seminar. A what? A, a seminar? Seminar. <laughs> a seminar. Seminar. A, a what? A seminar. Yorick. Yorick. No. A seminar. No. <laughs> seminar. A seminar? Yeah. Welcome, seminars. <laughs> you know? I used to be a seminar. Sona. No, no, she's Florian never been reworked. No, what'd you say? Kassarin? No, Kassarin. Uh, I'm the best player at Marco Polo. Um, Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> you got Actually, reworked. That makes sense. Is it minions? I don't know how that works. No, Their law, they look different. No, <laughs> I'll make a sound as the last clue, okay? But you guys have to raise your hands, okay? He <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> Lee Sin. Yeah, he was a summoner. How was he guys. a summoner? I didn't know that. He was a summoner on the lore. That's old was he? Lore, bro. Yeah. That is old lore. I'm not sure that's not been true for many years. He was a summoner. He was a summoner. Right. Is and that they disregarded the rules and the act they actually blinded him. What? Because he, he went under the rift. He They blinded him, he broke the rules, so he went on the rift. Sorry. That's it, the law. That's why he's is that the law? That's, I don't know. Well, that's not canon. Some of us have, have been retconned since like 2016, man. It's, it's been a while. Oh yeah, true. Wait, no, are we not summoners? Are they not? Are we so not who won? Anymore? I won, right? I got two. Facts. I mean, you're not on the desk, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be hysterics. No, no. Bring up the head to head again. Bring up the head to head. I can tell you, we didn't. This, this right here. This is the win. I was listening to voices. I was listening to voices. Sorry, um, Sina. <laughs> That's, That's a good guess. guess. Yeah, great. No, Aragorn, actually, Cleds. I'm yeah. just proud of Aragon for not saying Renekton once during that. Actually, That's yeah. actually really yeah. impressive. He I'm never sad. uses Renekton in games anymore. It's sad. Because uh, one last, one last guess who before I give the information. Okay. Mm. I have a brother. Renekton. Nasus. So close. <laughs> 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 so with that in mind, we're still waiting for information. We'll toss it to a small break and we'll be right back with the bracket. It's chaos, baby, and we'll be back soon. Oh. <laughs> wow. Should have seen it coming. You're still there. Still here. <laughs> I, did oh, call the break. I did call the break for the well, break. Is it. Let's this go to a break. break. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the break. We this can't break. advance. We can't get to the next stage. <laughs> Wait. We hit till Monday. <laughs> Actually, we got it. We got something. Solari, okay. I want to talk to you. What? what? Yes, we need no. to talk. So, tell us how was the experience. This is this is your last day. For it's me awesome. personally, for me as a representative of Ultra League, because these are two very different things. It's too late for that. <laughs> no, like, tell us, like, how you feel, yeah. Um, it it's was my first EMEA Masters. Yeah. I have never been on the official broadcast, and it feels 
great. You know what? I can do it again. Maybe not right now because it's very late, but I could definitely do it again. It's so lovely here. And the teams are so amazing. I got so invested into some of these leagues and they have been delivering apart from half of Ultra League, but we don't talk about it. You know what? I started casting with you on NLC Division 2 and I'm really proud of you. You're an amazing caster. Oh, that's yeah. wholesome. That is wholesome. I always believed in you and I knew you were going to make it. Thank you. Toss it back to me. So <laughs> to wrap it up, it's not a break. It's I'll see you soon on Monday because they're still waiting for the bracket to be to be over. And obviously there's a few decisions to, to go through and to follow those decisions. Follow us on all social medias, Instagram, Twitter, and more, more, more. So we'll be waiting for you because without you, it's not the same, obviously. So I'll see you Monday on quarterfinals of EMEA Masters oh, okay. Spring 2024. The draft is not... Draft, draft will be put on social media, so follow us and I'll see you soon. Until then, keep climbing. We okay. love you. Toodles! It's time for Ben. I'm so alive, my enemies running high. They witness how I arrive. They all tuck in their pride and cry. I'm so alive, my heart is cold as ice. I started to not right. They all tuck in their hide inside. Who gonna stop me? I am the man and they all the copy. Look at them stand, they looking real sloppy. I got these hands, they straight like it's rocky. I got the plan of becoming a leader. You just a fan, so stay in your pocket. I am the plan, the man, and you watch me. People, they saying I'm really chaotic, yeah. Uh -huh. I know I'm bad. Ain't come to play. So like a savage or renegade. I'm so chaotic, I show up, they cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. I know I'm bad, ain't come to play. So like a savage or renegade. I'm so chaotic, I show up, they cause a problem. They diagnose me a psycho, I'm taking off like a rocket. We fight, we fight, we fight.